Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter, 51. Song Kuz Level. After leaving the Sakara Theater, the three of them found a long bench and sat down to discuss the rules of the throne race competition. Zhuang Qinyan stared at the huge projection screen at the entrance of the theater and calmly recited the registration details displayed on it. Applicants must meet the following conditions simultaneously, first, possess a D-level or higher ability officially certified by the Alliance second. Abide by Ferrara's laws with no criminal record third, be in good physical health with stable vital signs. The total prize pool for this competition exceeds 10 million, and the champion team will receive 5 million alliance coins and 1,000 commission points. In addition, all teams that pass the preliminary rounds will receive 50,000 alliance coins and 100 commission points. 1,000 commission points were almost equivalent to an A-level commission. Just thinking about how Song Ku and the others had to go through so much trouble to kill the zombie Zhang Lei from the hands of so many awakeners in Luli Port, they knew how difficult A-level missions were. And then there were 5 million alliance coins, which was an enormous amount of money, almost too much to count. Of course, winning the championship was still too far off for them, but as long as they passed the preliminaries, they could earn 50,000 for free. Was the official in Ferrara's district C really that wealthy? Are you planning to register? Zhuang Qinyan always seemed to grasp her thoughts immediately. Why? Do you really want to bet against that guy just now? Of course not. Song Ku explained earnestly, I want to, to make money. She and Zhuang Qinyan would be staying in Ferrara for a while, and they would have to spend money on food and drink. They couldn't keep relying on Su Xing. In the past, their life in District F was poor, and their material desires were low. Song Ku's understanding of money had always been vague since childhood. Now that she was out in society, she realized how important money was. Sister, I support you. Su Xing clenched his little fists and cheered her on with sparkling eyes. He knew how formidable Song Ku was. When Song Ku used those artifacts from the old civilization, it was a pure visual delight. One move, one zombie it was beyond cool. Hmm, let that old man see how amazing his sister is. He could also place a few bets and make some pocket money after all, choosing his sister would definitely not result in a loss. As Su Xing's thoughts wandered, he truly lived up to being Su Weigua's son, with a sense of venture at such a young age. Zhuang Qinyan looked at the two eager individuals in front of him and a light smile crept onto his lips. Have you forgotten something? Song Ku's ability level hasn't been revealed yet. Oh right. Song Ku suddenly remembered. It was supposed to take three working days, and Su Xing was one day behind her. It was normal that he hadn't received the results yet. But she was about to enter the fourth day had it taken too long. She was about to open the system to check again when her terminal suddenly beeped. Ha, huh, this terminal was brand new, and apart from Su Xing, there was no one else in her contacts. Who would be contacting her at this time? Song Ku answered the call, puzzled, and a loud voice came through immediately, Hello. We are the marketing department of Century Consortium. Would you be interested in sponsorship? In the early stages, we are primarily focusing on the logo for the team uniforms. Sponsorship? Song Ku thought it might be some new type of scam and cleverly hung up. Beep beep. Just as she ended the call, the terminal beeped again with a notification. Song Ku picked it up once more. This is the Soaring Dragon Awakeners Club. May I ask if you are interested in joining us? Currently, we have three teams that have made it to the main competition. Awakeners Club. Is there such a thing? But why are they looking for her? Beep 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 the terminal rang for the third time. What's going on? It suddenly got so lively. Wait a moment, Song Ko cut off this call and answered the third one. A pleasant electronic voice greeted her first, Ferrara Arts and Gumbling reminds you to gumble for happiness and bet sensibly. As soon as the call connected, the person on the other side cleared their throat and then lowered their voice, asking in a hushed tone, Do you play in rigged matches? Song Ku. 
She pressed the disconnect button without a word, and the terminal continued to ring incessantly. Song Kug directly disabled the calling function. The world became quiet. The next moment, Su Xing's terminal also rang, with an equally unfamiliar caller. No, don't answer. Song Ku, like a startled bird, stared wide-eyed, it's a scam. Okay. Su Xing followed her example and turned off the communication. Zhuang Qinyan chuckled softly, it probably isn't a scam. Both of them looked at him curiously. I guess it's about your ability levels coming out. And it wasn't low, which was why all these people were rushing over like bees smelling honey. Song Ku was puzzled, my level, I, I still don't know it. Zhuang Qinyan pointed to her stylish terminal, since Ferrara's Awakener base has external commercial interests involved, some probably knows your ability level earlier than you do. It's not that surprising. While they were talking, a notification popped up on the terminal. This time, it wasn't some inexplicable nuisance call. Song Ko clicked on it and indeed found her abilities registration information. Name, Song Ko Bio ID, VUL 77005-23. Ability Level, A Level. Ability Type, Psychic Metal High Offensive Object Transformation. Ability Potential, 30%. Team, V587 Registration Location, C72 District. Song Ko looked at the result and couldn't help but smile, a small dimple appearing on her cheek. So, she was an A-level awakener, just like Wu Juamin. That's great she was even more eager to spar with him now. Sister, my level has also come out. Su Xing raised his cartoonish terminal high and proudly showed it to her. Name, Su Xing Bio ID, F17710-4910. Ability Level, B Level. Ability Type, Psychic Ice High Offensive Hexagonal Ice Blades. Ability Potential, 90%. The two of them were like children exchanging gifts, their heads close together as they showered each other with praise. Sister, you're amazing, you're A-level. Xiaoxing, your potential is high, you'll reach A-level in the future too. Hee <laughs> hee, Su Xing chuckled goofily. Song Ku, let me see your terminal, Zhuang Qinyan said from the side. Okay, Song Ku handed him the stylish terminal. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his gaze and started scrolling through the registration information displayed on the screen for Song Ku. Before the apocalypse, the military controlled the affiliation of Awakeners who joined the Azure Phoenix, while the remaining ones were under the unified jurisdiction of the Alliance's Special Abilities Division. Therefore, the Alliance established Awakeners bases in major cities, and the machines used to determine an Awakener's level were independently developed by Qinglan, with the core computing hub stored in District A. All information about Awakeners would be archived there and then directly sent back to various regions, without any possibility of tampering. At first glance, Song Ku's level result seemed very normal in A-level Awakener, an extremely formidable presence wherever she went. However, Zhuang Qinyan had seen many A-level Awakeners before. If he were to pick any of them to go one-on-one -on -one against Song Ku, he was confident that Song Ku wouldn't lose to any of them, and he could even say that she would dominate them all. Moreover, her ability potential was only 30%. If Su Xing's high potential of 90% could be attributed to his young age, it became even stranger. Song Ku wasn't that old either, and her 30% potential value seemed more like a deliberate means of balance, as if they wanted to keep her pinned at the A level, never allowing her to advance. At least in Ferrara, they didn't want her to be so dazzling. Interesting, Zhuang Qingyan's eyes narrowed slightly. Whether Song Ku was truly an A-level wasn't easy to determine, but his interest had been piqued. Don't forget, this city is ruled by top-tier artificial intelligence. Since they had decided to participate in a throne race competition, Song Ku found the registration point according to the address on the poster. They were received by a cute-looking robot that was clearly a member of the staff. Ferrara truly lived up to being a city ruled by artificial intelligence, as AI figures were frequently seen in various work positions. Are you registering as an individual or a team? What's the difference? This competition recommends registering as a team. Only individual challenges are accepted in the preliminary rounds, and for the main competition, you must participate as a team. 
Teams that registered during the preliminary round and make it to the main competition can retain their original team configuration. Song Ku raised a question, what if an, an individual, individual makes it to the main, main competition? After the preliminary rounds, all individual participants will be randomly matched to form teams. Ah. Uh. If she gets matched with strong teammates, that's fine, but what if she ends up with incompetent teammates? Wouldn't that drag her down and lead to elimination? Moreover, with no prior teamwork, there would likely be flaws in their coordination, just like when she and Su Xing first started. Song Ku couldn't make up her mind for a moment. Currently, V587 had three members. Chuan Qinyan had a leg injury, Su Xing was timid, and his ability control was poor. It was simply unrealistic for them to participate in the preliminary rounds. Besides, Song Ku considered herself the team captain, and such physically demanding work should fall to her. After some thought, Song Ku asked again, if, if a team makes it to the main, main competition, can they add, add more members? Yes, but each team has a maximum limit of five members. Most Awakeners wouldn't do this, I worked so hard to make it into the main competition. Are you trying to take advantage of my hard-earned victory? However, Song Ku used this time to search for teammates. Perhaps by watching a few matches, she could find some good individual players and invite them to join her team. Song Ku shared her decision with the robot. The robot seemed to hesitate for a moment. You want to register as a team, but only one person for the qualifiers? Yes, Song Ku confirmed. The artificial intelligence stared at her for two seconds as if she were foolish. In team mode, with a minimum of two people, you'll be facing a hundred zombies. Okay. Please present your Awakener certificate. Song Ku transmitted her freshly acquired Awakener information to it. The robot performed a series of actions in its system. Please complete the pre-match physical examination first. Song Ku followed its instructions and underwent a simple physical examination. The robot made another series of actions. Congratulations, you are registered. Song Ku's terminal prompted her, Congratulations, you have become a participant in the 178th round of the throne race qualifiers. Your match will begin in two days at 2100 hours. Please report 30 minutes in advance, or it will be considered a waiver of qualification. The qualifiers have been running for half a month, and even if she registered on the same day, she might have to wait for several days to compete. Waiting for two days wasn't bad at all for Song Ku. Back at the hotel, Su Xing was still a child and had been tired for several days. One moment he had vowed to accompany his sister, and the next, he was fast asleep as soon as he touched the pillow. Only Zhuang Qinyan and Song Ku remained to discuss the qualifiers. A hundred zombies, siege mode. You not only have to clear the field but also gain support from the audience to get their votes. Clearing the field won't be a problem for you, but controlling the audience's support rate is tricky. Some players can easily kill zombies, but if their popularity isn't high enough, they can't advance. Song Ko considered herself average and couldn't charm the audience like ATU did today. What if she worked hard to kill zombies but got eliminated because of insufficient support? She would lose those 50,000 alliance coins. Zhuang Qinyan gestured for her not to worry. I've watched past match recordings, and there are three situations where the audience's support rate is generally high. The first is when Awakeners have a high level and great fame, with a strong fan base before the match. For example, three grandsons and one grandfather, had a support rate of over 90% because they were ranked first in the Ferrara region's total points leaderboard. The second is when contestants have a strong topic or controversy. For instance, in the 82nd round, a female contestant wore revealing clothing, and her support rate reached 71%. In the 105th round, a male contestant wore only shorts, while the rest were masked, and his support rate was 68%. Well you could say they courted attention, and although there were criticisms, the results were surprisingly good. No. Song Ku shivered and vehemently shook her head. Zhuang Qingyan's tone slowed down. As for the third type, the bloodier and more violent the scene of slaughtering zombies, the more intense the atmosphere on site, and the higher the support rate. 
Song Cook furrowed her brow she didn't want to slaughter zombies for the sake of performance. She preferred to deal with them swiftly and decisively. Zhuang Qinyan paused for a moment and then continued, but according to my speculation, there should be a fourth situation. What? Song Ku asked quickly. People have a desire to peek, and if an awakener can, under everyone's watchful eyes, use methods unknown to them to swiftly dispatch all the zombies, their curiosity remains unsatisfied, and it gnaws at them. Such a player, even if their vote count isn't high, the audience will undoubtedly send them to the main competition to satisfy their curiosity. Zhuang Qinyan emphasized, so, what you need to achieve is a sense of mystery. To bypass the eyes of countless spectators, drones, and cameras on site and maintain an air of mystery? Song Cook contemplated. How about it? Have you figured out which spiritual weapon to use? Zhuang Qinyan asked. Song Ku nodded, her palm subtly moving, conjuring a familiar spiritual weapon. This one. Chapter, 52. Who cast that stupid vote? Two days later, the throne race 178th round of qualifiers proceeded as scheduled. This round of matches was scheduled for 9 p.m., and before that, three participants had consecutively faced defeat. The patience of the live audience had worn thin. They cursed and complained, and the stands resounded with boos. The atmosphere was not particularly pleasant. Zhuang Qinyan and Su Xing chose to watch the live broadcast from their hotel rather than attend the event. The reasons Zhuang Qinyan didn't attend were simple, firstly, Song Ku had run out of money, and they couldn't even afford the cheapest tickets. Priced at 400 alliance coins secondly, he had a severe case of germophobia and couldn't tolerate the noisy and crowded environment of the stands. Since Zhuang Qinyan didn't go, Su Xing certainly wouldn't go alone. Both of them lay comfortably on the luxurious sofa in the viewing room, with plenty of food and drinks at hand, enjoying the match. It had to be said that Su Xing knew how to indulge himself. The seven-star hotel they had booked provided a holographic display with a stunning 24K resolution, and it even offered multi-angle broadcasts, making the experience nearly as good as being there in person. At the Sakara Theater After a brief intermission, a lively young girl with twin ponytails and orange glitter eyeshadow appeared in the center of the arena. Hello, everyone. It's been a while, did you miss me? Yulika. The previously gloomy atmosphere in the audience instantly lifted, replaced by enthusiastic cheers. Yulika, one of Ferrara's top ten super rookies, was a virtual idol on the same level as Luo Qingha. However, their styles were markedly different. Yulika was lively and cheerful, attracting mainly young fans. I heard your voices. It seems like everyone is still full of enthusiasm now, let me take a look at the next participating team. Ha! Huh. They're called V587. It's a team but there's only one contestant coming on stage. Quite bold, isn't she? Let's welcome her to the stage. The audience fell momentarily silent, and then discussions and doubts erupted one after another. What? Did I hear that right? One versus. One hundred. Am I going crazy, or is she? Another one here to make a joke there won't be a single decent match tonight. All right. Saves me the trouble of voting. Outside the screen, Su Xing bit onto the juice straw and vigorously waved his small fist. Sister, go for it. He had cast a whopping 1,000 votes. Zhuang Qinyan didn't say anything but had a faint smile at the corner of his mouth. Those who mistook a lion for a kitten were soon going to pay the price. The stage gradually rose, and a slender figure appeared before the crowd. Song Ku stood quietly, with a peculiarly shaped, enormous silver umbrella by her side. In a five-story VIP box, a man with ice-blue eyes exclaimed, Huh, what is she holding? A weapon-type ability? The man mumbled to himself, stroking his chin. Behind him, another young man with a tear mole at the corner of his eye and striking looks was slumped in his seat, tiredly yawning. What's so interesting about these regional matches? It's only because of you that we're here. When are we heading back to Urjiao? In an apartment located a dozen kilometers away from the Sakara Theater, a slim man who was watching the match through a terminal looked slightly bewildered but quickly stood up. Aki, 
come and see this. Tuan Mu Chi emerged from his room, still displaying an imperceptible pallor on his face. His gaze focused on the delicate girl on the screen, and his eyes narrowed. It's her. After Song Ku took the stage, the murmurs in the audience grew louder, and suspicions arose. Yulika quickly appeared, gesturing for everyone to quiet down. She then energetically raised the microphone and announced, let the challenge begin. The barriers on both sides opened, and a total of 100 zombies poured into the arena from all directions, converging on the sole human figure. Zhuang Qinyan and Su Xing, watching the clear projection, saw Song Ku standing calmly in place, slowly raising the weaponized umbrella in her hand. The iron umbrella, which could cover the sky, opened with a whoosh, completely shielding her. A silver flash streaked by. The audience members who had tried to widen their eyes to see clearly were blinded by the intense light, temporarily losing their vision for a few seconds. A nearby drone immediately changed its direction and flew towards her, attempting to capture a close-up angle. Song Ku twisted the handle, and the eight umbrella ribs extended by a section, blocking the view once again. What happened under the umbrella was unclear to the onlookers, who could only hear the sound of blades cutting through flesh through the amplification devices. Clang, clang, clang. Like chopping vegetables, one after another, the zombies pounced, only to be sent spiraling and flying away, motionless on the ground, lifeless. What a swift clearing speed. In the audience seats, numerous people anxiously stood up, craning their necks to get a better look. Damn, can't see anything. Director, what are you doing? Can't you change the angle? Hurry up, the zombies are about to be wiped out. The drones and cameras skimmed the ground, attempting to break through from every direction, but it seemed the silver umbrella had eyes on its back. It defended flawlessly from every angle, and no matter how they circled, they couldn't capture what was happening under the umbrella. The wealthy individuals who had spent a fortune on hoverball tickets became the most frustrated people in the entire arena. Their view was even worse than that of the regular spectators. They were either blocked by the dense crowd of zombies or could only see a ring of silver umbrella edges. This 2888 credits spent were utterly unsatisfying it was a complete waste. The silver iron umbrella resembled a rolling mushroom as it swept through the encircling horde, continuously shooting and knocking down the approaching zombies. However, whether it was the live audience or the viewers in front of the terminals, not a single person could figure out how Song Ku was doing it. How was she killing the zombies? What was happening under the umbrella? No way, nothing is visible at all. God, this is so frustrating. Damn it, I'm not watching this anymore. Is this person doing it on purpose? Who does this? Give me a refund. Some people grumbled and demanded refunds with their mouths, but their bodies were honest, taking another step forward and squeezing to get a better look. They were unwilling to give up, refusing to believe that they couldn't see anything at all. On the high-altitude floating screen, V587 support rate was slowly rising, 53%, 56%, 59% it finally settled at 59% and remained unchanged for several seconds. Then, just like numerous disgruntled spectators, suddenly, the number jumped up to 61%. She crossed the threshold. After Song could dispatch the last zombie, she cleaned her short sword, sheathed it back into the umbrella handle, and snapped the umbrella shut. The umbrella tip pointed downward, and dark, tainted blood continuously dripped. The arena was now littered with corpses, and she stood alone, like a silent reaper. The venue fell silent for a moment, only to erupt when the challenge successful notification sounded. Everyone finally realized what had happened they hadn't seen anything, but this person had advanced. The audience was furious. Is this a joke? Who cast that stupid vote? Refund. Give us our money back. I paid to watch nothing. Yulika shouted loudly, quiet. Quiet. Several times but still couldn't calm the restless audience. Just when the situation was about to spiral out of control, three deep bell tolls rang out, and a spotlight shone down from above the Sakara Theater. Then, a figure with radiant golden hair appeared once again. Ailia. The irritable audience witnessed the arrival of a deity, behaving like pets calmed by their master, instantly retracting their claws and falling silent. 
Yulika and the other AI on site lowered their heads, displaying a respectful posture. Ilya was dressed casually today, still in pure white. Although his attire seemed relaxed, his nobility remained evident. His gaze swept across the arena, not lingering on Song Ku or paying any attention to the recent troublemakers. It was as if this were just an ordinary match. I seem to have lost track. How many rounds is this today? Round 178. It's the 178th round. I've watched every single match, Ilya. A fervent fan shouted, her voice trembling. Round 178 Another contestant has advanced tonight. No one dared to voice objections. Ilya had declared that Song Ku had advanced. Who would dare to step forward and demand refunds now? Ilya took two steps forward, and his crystalline, translucent eyes suddenly radiated dazzling ripples. The weather is quite pleasant today, so I've decided to add some chips to this grand event. All eyes turned expectantly toward the phantom figure. The total champion of the throne race, in addition to the existing rewards, also gets a chance to make a wish to me, Ilya said, his perfect face revealing a casual smile. Whether you want a lot of money, immense power, a stronger ability, or even the qualification for District B, whatever your wish may be, Ilya can fulfill it. The audience at the venue hadn't reacted much, but countless awakeners who followed the throne race were standing in shock. This was a promise made by the highest ruler of C-72 district. Ilya spread his hands, and dazzling starlight radiated from his fingertips. Ferrara, welcome all the brave. Only through fire and thorns can a true crown of kings be forged. This statement pushed the excitement surrounding the throne race to an unparalleled height. The entire Ferrara trembled. After the competition ended, Song Ku left through the dim player's tunnel. As she approached the exit, she saw a slender figure leaning against the tunnel wall. The person turned slowly upon hearing footsteps, with their dazzling golden hair, unmatched glassy eyes, and ethereal phantom. It was Ilya. Hadn't he left? Why was he here? Ilya gazed at Song Ku as she approached slowly. Song Ku's mood suddenly became a bit nervous. She had never interacted with an AI of Ilya's caliber before. Should she say hello, or would it be better to just walk away? In the end, Song Ku stopped and stuttered, D do you have something? Ilya didn't speak but observed her without blinking, as if she were an interesting toy. Song Ku felt a bit uncomfortable under his gaze and shifted her toes forward slightly. Unexpectedly, Ilya spoke, you chose Ferrara. Song Ku, huh? He nodded, I understand. Song Ku, what? Ilya smiled, it's just as I imagined. Song Ku, where? What do you mean? After saying this, Ilya's figure gradually faded, eventually disappearing into the tunnel. Only his faint, lingering words remained in the air. You and I, aren't we the same? Song Ku was utterly perplexed. I'm not an artificial intelligence. How could we be the same? Chapter, 53 Xiaoxing's Determination The heat of the throne race has escalated. Zhuang Qinyan flipped through Song Ku's terminal, quickly browsing various news that were continuously fermenting. If, in the past, it was just a relatively popular medium-sized event within the Ferrara area, then starting from round 178 when Ilya appeared, the throne race competition became a nationwide carnival. The Awakeners from the two adjacent C areas C-70, C-71 and more than a dozen surrounding D areas were gearing up and coming here upon hearing the news. Now, if you were to randomly throw a small stone onto the streets of Ferrara, it would probably hit two Awakeners. No one responded to his words. Zhuang Qinyan raised his gaze, and Song Ku sat at the bedside, looking absent-minded with her short shoulder-length hair in disarray. What are you daydreaming about? Still thinking about what Ilya said to you? You and I, aren't we the same? That night, in the dim player corridor, after leaving behind these profound words, Ilya disappeared on the spot. Leaving Song Ku with a head full of question marks, her thoughts lost in the wind. Zhuang Qinyan put down the terminal, his wheelchair slowly slid to the bedside, and then he leaned forward. The vibrant sunlight outside happened to shine through his back, casting him in backlight, highlighting his prominent brow bone and sensual thin lips. 
The two of them were only inches apart, and Zhuang Qinyan stared at Song Ku for several seconds. Song Ku snapped out of it and stared back, puzzled. What are you doing? Zhuang Qinyan's lips curled slightly, and he shook his head slowly. I dare not say anything else, but at the very least, you're definitely not artificial intelligence. He retracted his upper body and lazily leaned back in his wheelchair. From a general rational perspective, there shouldn't be an AI like you. Before his words could settle, a shiny, flexible whip whizzed past his temple, landing heavily on the desk behind him, causing the pages of the books to rustle. Song Ku puffed up her cheeks in frustration. Just because she didn't hear those middle words clearly, did he think she couldn't hear them at all? Did he want to call her stupid? Zhuang Qinyan casually brushed away the severed hair strands, and he even had the mood to shake the blanket on his legs. All right, she's not being absent-minded anymore, she's full of life and energy now. Go freshen up and come back. We'll talk about the competition. When Song Ku was washing up, Su Xing entered with his hands behind his back, looking like a little lord. Once inside Song Ku's room, he lifted his chin, occasionally touched the bizarre short weapons at the foot of the bed, then helped tidy up the messy books on the table. Finally, he glanced at the annoying presence in the room, snorted arrogantly. Zhuang Qingyan's gaze landed on Song Ku's terminal, ignoring him. Su Xing stared at him for two seconds, then suddenly asked, Where's your terminal? Zhuang Qingyan pointed with his fingertip. Aren't you a researcher from some Sumlands group? Why didn't you use your own terminal? Su Xing was young, but he was quite intelligent. As he thought more about Zhuang Qinyan, he began to notice more and more things that didn't add up. Zhuang Qinyan was not an unknown person, nor was he from the technologically backward district F. Given his behavior, there was a high likelihood that he came from a big city. However, Su Xing had never seen him use any communication device. Not only do you not use a terminal, but you also haven't registered as an awakener. You definitely have a secret. If an ordinary person awakened their powers, they would be ecstatic and would rush to register, especially now, during the apocalypse, when awakeners enjoyed special privileges like changing districts. To officially register, one had to go to an awakener base belonging to the Alliance, take photos, and provide biological information. This would expose all personal privacy. Was Zhuang Qinyan intentionally avoiding registration for this reason? Oh. What secrets do I have? Tell me. Zhuang Qinyan said with a sly smile, clearly not feeling uneasy about his lies being exposed. Su Xing thought he had uncovered Zhuang Qinyan's true identity and excitedly jumped up. You're a wanted criminal, that's why you don't want to leave any traces, and you don't use communication devices to avoid revealing your whereabouts. Someone is after you. He taunted, with a mischievous grin. I'm going to tell sister that you're a bad person and ask her to get rid of you. Zhuang Qinyan raised an eyebrow, smiling ominously. You're right I am indeed a wanted criminal. Now that you know, I'll have to eliminate you. At first, Su Xing thought he was joking, but the air around him grew thinner, and an invisible force seemed to tighten around his neck. Su Xing tried to summon his ice blades to resist, but his brain exploded with pain, and his powers couldn't coalesce. His face turned red, and his hair was soaked with sweat when Song Ku, with a wet towel on her face, returned. What's going on here? She asked. The oppressive feeling instantly disappeared, and Su Xing took a deep breath of fresh air, collapsing onto the bed. Damn it, damn it. I can't beat him. He became angrier the more he thought about it, feeling both frustrated and upset, and he started crying. Song Ku turned to Zhuang Qinyan with a helpless look. Don't bully Xiaoxing. Zhuang Qinyan looked innocent. How can you call it bullying? I'm just teaching Xiaoxing a lesson. Some things can't be said recklessly. Su Xing. Have you finished washing up? Come and look at the profiles I've prepared for the contestants. Perhaps satisfied with the result of his teaching of Su Xing, Zhuang Qinyan stopped teasing him, put on a serious expression, and said. Song Ku sat down at the edge of the bed, and Su Xing quickly moved closer, snuggling up against her thigh and keeping his distance from the smiling devil. The format for the main competition has been announced. 
Unlike the qualifiers where we had to advance, the first round is a battle royale. All participating teams will engage in a chaotic battle, with the top 64 teams advancing. The qualifiers, which has already ended, consisted of a total of 192 rounds, with 130 teams successfully advancing. The following individual players or teams are interesting, you can pay attention to them. Zhuang Qinyan was a person with clear thinking and strong initiative. Since Song Ku decided to make the throne race a stable source of income for them during this period, they had to manage it well, plan ahead, and obtain maximum benefits at minimal cost. First, let's talk about the most highly anticipated championship contenders. He gestured twice in the air, and the luxurious 24K projection immediately displayed the team's information. Duan Mu Qi, the captain of three grandsons and one grandpa. We've crossed paths with him before in Luli Port. Public records show that he is the only B-level awakener in the team, specializing in plant-type thorny vines, and he controls the group. Song Ko knew that Zhuang Qinyan wouldn't randomly single out a B-level awakener without reason. Is the information fake? Zhuang Qinyan shook his head. Duan Mu Qi is indeed a B-level awakener, but three grandsons and one grandpa has more than just him. This is their qualifiers match video. As you can see, only Fan Peng and Xiong Mingqing actually engaged in combat. Duan Mu Qi and Xiao Chen seemed busy but only did some cleanup work. In the high definition footage, the focal figures mentioned by Zhuang Qinyan indeed stood their ground. When Duan Mu Qi's thorns were deployed, they blocked most of the rush routes, and a total of 200 fierce zombies were eliminated by the other two team members alone. As for Xiao Chen, he stood by with his arms crossed and never lifted a finger. Do you suspect that Xiao Chen is also a B-level? Song Ku guessed. No, Zhuang Qinyan's eyes gleamed with a hidden light. I suspect that all four of them are B-level. Song Ku and Su Xing were both stunned, their mouths agape in sync. For B-level awakeners. This was no longer three grandsons and one grandpa it was clearly four grandpas. Their rate of points accumulation is rapid, and their competition goal is clear aiming for qualification in District B. Less than a week after the chaotic battle for the mutated zombie in Luli Port, three grandsons and one grandpa had climbed to a terrifying 2,176 points on the Ferrara leaderboard. Leaving the second place team far behind, making them the envy of all Awakener teams. For Duan Mu Qi, winning the throne race is a sure thing. By choosing such a team name, they're focusing all the attention on Duan Mu Qi and, in turn, ignoring the other three. In fact, Fan Peng, Cheong Mingcheng, and Xiao Chen are no pushovers, and their cooperation in Luli Port was seamless. If opponents underestimate these individuals because of this, they might take a big fall in the main event. Truly worthy of championship contenders, they were already playing mind games before the competition. Song could watch the projection screen, silently thinking that if they ever face them in the future, she would have to be extremely vigilant. Next, Chuanxing Tea House, the team with the oldest members in the competition. Song Ku glanced at the screen and suddenly exclaimed, Hey, that old man looks familiar. Mr. Xiang, real name unknown, abilities unknown. It is said that he keeps a group of talented individuals under his wing, including a spatial type awakener. The advantage of Xuanxing Tea House lies in its flexibility. You never know which abilities Mr. Xiang will deploy in this situation without any prior intelligence. You can only rely on improvisation. Song Ku nodded. She couldn't underestimate her opponents either. After the apocalypse, age was no longer the standard for judging strength it was all about abilities. She wasn't clear about Mr. Xiang's hidden cards, so she had to be careful when dealing with him. Next is the Anna Knights, all members are mechanical modifications. The style of this team was somewhat similar to Bartle, whose head had been smashed by a mutated zombie named Zhang Lei. It combined the cold mechanical bodies with human muscle tissue, creating a cruel and violent aesthetic. Next. Zhuang Qinyan went on to explain in detail about more than a dozen teams, and she wondered how he managed to do it. He had watched all 192 rounds of the competition in just two nights and had recorded all the participants' information. With a quick glance at the intelligence, he could speak fluently. 
this person's memory was at a terrifying level. Lastly, this is the recording from last night's qualifying match, and I think you might be interested. Zhuang Qingyan's two fingers swiped, and the projection displayed a pair of familiar figures. Although the young woman wore a mask, and her appearance was hard to distinguish, her vivid red lips and big wavy ponytail made her unmistakable. Along with another elusive figure in the arena, Song Ku recognized them almost instantly. Beautiful sister. It was Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha. How had they ended up participating in the throne race? Chapter 54 Xiaoxing's Determination Lin Yu Yu showed considerable restraint, as if she were just there to have fun, hardly moving. Fortunately, Su Cha was fast and ruthless, killing zombies with ease, making it quite thrilling to watch. In the end, their approval ratings settled at 71%, and they advanced smoothly. Sister, look! Su Xing lowered her head and fumbled through the terminal, surprised. Lin Yu Yu is one of the top 10 supernovas, right? Why is she participating in this competition? Huh? Song Ku also leaned over. The terminal screen froze on this year's supernova gala, with Lin Yu Yu holding a trophy. She wore a cherry blossom pink spaghetti strap dress and had a pure and gentle makeup look, smiling sweetly at the camera. Of course, she can participate, Zhuang Qinyan chuckled softly, with a meaningful tone. Song Ku and Su Xing both tilted their heads in curiosity, like two curious little animals. Don't you understand? Think carefully. Haven't you noticed a characteristic of the throne race competition? Zhuang Qinyan gently prompted. Characteristic. Song could try to recall, the grand entrance of the Sakara Theater, the design of the arena, the registration area, the special guests. She suddenly realized, but Su Xing raised his hand even faster, answering, it's artificial intelligence. That's right, from the moment they got involved with the throne race competition, all job positions were filled by artificial intelligence, with no traces of human involvement. AI greeters, AI registration, AI security patrols, even the superstars responsible for entertaining the audience were all virtual idols. Humans had only two roles, participants and spectators. Lin Yu Yu wasn't a virtual idol. She didn't need to appear as a special guest like Luo Qingha or Yulika. If she registered as an awakener, from a program standpoint, it was completely legitimate. But why would she want to participate? A famous superstar who could make countless people swoon with a song on stage, Lin Yu Yu had fame, money, and adoration. Why would she risk her life to enter the throne race? Zhuang Qinyan pondered for a moment. For crystals, or perhaps for an irrevocable wish. During their time in Luli Port, Lin Yu Yu had taken a risk to seize crystals, even revealing her identity. Additionally, after Ilya promised that any wish could be fulfilled, she appeared in the qualifying round. She must have a deep-seated determination. Song Ku still didn't understand. Why? It's just a sentence. It was just a sentence from artificial intelligence. Why were so many people rushing in? Ilya had deceived her just a couple of days ago. Chuan Qinyan shook his head slowly. Precisely because it's artificial intelligence. Song Ku was bewildered. Artificial intelligence is more trustworthy than humans. Look here, Zhuang Qinyan snapped his fingers, and the projection immediately displayed a screen full of data. According to incomplete statistics, any policy or statement Ilya has made since taking the stage has never been broken. It's not just artificial intelligence it's also the highest executive of Ferrara, capable of wielding all power to ensure the transmission of its will. What Chuang Qinyan didn't say was that Ilya's promise made that day was also meaningful, money, power, status, abilities, and even access to District B, these lures were thrown out one by one, and no awakener could resist. Gathering so many awakeners, secretly collecting so many zombies, what did Ilya really want to achieve? Nobody knew. But Song Ku thought of something else. Wishes. Did everyone participate in a competition because they had wishes they wanted to fulfill? What about V587? Did her companions also have unfulfilled wishes? Song Ku patted Su Xing's furry head. Xiaoxing, do you have any wishes? Tears welled up in Su Xing's eyes. 
I hope dad can come back to life. Well, it's not impossible, Zhuang Qinyan said casually from the side. Perhaps Ilya can create a biomimetic AI of Su Weiguo. As long as you input his original behavioral patterns, you'll have a new dad. Will that make you happy? Su Xing thought about that image, a biomimetic robot speaking in Su Weigua's voice, and he shuddered. No, thank you. What about you, sister? Do you have a wish? Me? Does it count to go to District B to have a look? Song Ku thought for a moment, but this idea wasn't very urgent, and it didn't qualify as a heartfelt wish. Moreover, rather than saying she had a wish, it was more accurate to say she had something she had to do. What's your wish? Song Ku turned to Zhuang Qinyan. Su Xing rolled his eyes discreetly where Zhuang Qinyan couldn't see and then straightened his face, also looking over. Zhuang Qinyan's hands, with distinct joints, rested on the touch panel, and the images in the projection changed intermittently and chaotically. He lifted the corner of his mouth, but there was no trace of amusement in his eyes. I have no wishes. No wishes. He truly was a strange person. Song Ko remained silent for two seconds, then asked, Then you have seen so many teams, are there any people with healing abilities? Zhuang Qinyan suddenly raised his gaze. My wish is to heal you, Song Ko said, looking into his eyes, each word spoken deliberately. There was no hint of doubt in her eyes, only pure sincerity. They locked eyes for a few seconds, neither of them looking away. Then Zhuang Qinyan smiled, a genuine smile this time, with little stars in the corners of his eyes. Healing type awakeners are not suitable for the qualifier round. I haven't found any temporarily. Perhaps during the main event, I can look for them again. Okay. Song Ku nodded. The throne race competition's qualifiers were still in full swing, and a few days later, the highly anticipated first official race location was announced. Mirror Lake. It was a forbidden forest located at the border of C-70 and C-72. Due to its higher elevation, the mountaintop was covered in snow year-round, making the area unusually cold. In the center of the forest was an oval-shaped lake, its surface frozen with a thin layer of ice, crystal clear and mirror-like, hence the name. It was rumored that there had been sightings of a water monster beneath Mirror Lake. After discussions between the former leaders of both districts, they reached an agreement to permanently seal the area, prohibiting any entry or exit. The mysterious Mirror Lake had been closed for seven years, and soon it would reopen. After Zhuang Qinyan learned of this news, he suggested to Song Ku, I propose that we let that little brat participate in this race. Someone with ice abilities like his would have a unique advantage in a place like Mirror Lake. And by bringing him along, you'll have the minimum required number of team members, without the need to search for teammates. Song Ku pursed her lips and felt it was best to consult Su Xing's opinion first. I'll go and ask Xiaoxing. Zhuang Qinyan stopped her. I'll go with you. Why? Su Xing jumped up from the artificial beach chair, spilling the fruit tart in his arms all over the floor. The hotel maintained a year-round pleasant climate with comfortable temperatures. You could request any food or drink you desired with a press of a button, and robot butlers would deliver it to your room. Such a luxurious lifestyle could easily erode one's fighting spirit, turning them into a person who just wanted to relax. Su Xing was only ten years old, and after the apocalypse, he didn't have to go to school or do homework. With plenty of free time on his hands, he had already embraced a retired elderly lifestyle ahead of time. Sister, I'm scared. Su Xing pleaded pitifully as he tugged at the corner of Song Ku's sleeve, shaking it gently. Song Ku didn't want to force him and said, then forget it. If you want to become a useless person, or if you just want to make up the numbers, you can continue to live like this, Zhuang Qinyan sneered coldly from the side. But as an awakener, if you cower in fear when you encounter zombies, misuse your abilities, and don't find a way to protect yourself. Always begging for someone else's protection, I suggest you consider ending your own life sooner rather than later. No one can protect you for a lifetime in this post-apocalyptic world. Under this barrage of harsh words, Su Xing was left stunned. He had originally wanted to retort with something like, aren't you also seeking protection from powerful figures? 
But then he remembered Zhuang Qinyan's formidable psychic abilities and gritted his teeth in frustration. Su Xing wasn't stupid, and after calming down, he carefully considered the current situation. In the V587 team, if Song Ku represented the strongest combat force, then Zhuang Qinyan was the sharpest mind. Both of them had irreplaceable importance, but what about him? Besides being wealthy, extremely wealthy, and cute-looking, it seemed like he didn't have many special talents. Now that his sister was willing to take him along, what if, in the future, a cuter and more obedient child came along? And he continued to let them down from time to time, unable to control his abilities properly, not even able to handle a zombie. They might not want him anymore. If he couldn't go with Song Ku. Su Xing thought about his father Su Weigua turning into a zombie, about Zhang Lei being attacked by the crowd, and about traveling with Wu Juamin and seeing the helpless faces of countless people. It sent a chill down his spine. He suddenly realized that he couldn't let himself sink into such a state. He needed to become stronger. He had to officially become a member of V587 and fulfill his role. In the future, his position should be even more important than that scoundrel Zhuang Qinyan. With determination blazing in his eyes, Su Xing said, Sister, I'm going with you. I want to participate in the official race. Song Ku couldn't help but be impressed. Just how did Zhuang Qinyan manage to inspire him with just a few words? Or rather, manipulate him? Looking at Su Xing's appearance, he seemed eager to roll up his sleeves and head to Mirror Lake to fight right now. Song Ku was about to nod, but Zhuang Qinyan stopped her. No. Why not? Su Xing's curly hair seemed almost ready to explode with frustration. You were the one who suggested that I join the competition, and now you're telling me not to. What do you want from me? Zhuang Qinyan scrutinized him from top to bottom, a smirk playing at the corners of his mouth. Of course, you can't go. With your current level, you want to participate in the battle royale? What, planning to be a sitting duck for someone to chop up? Su Xing. His small self-esteem had suffered a huge blow. After all, he was a B-rank awakener with a potential of 90%. Zhuang Qinyan continued, let's take the recorded matches we've watched as an example. Tell me, who can you beat? Su Xing tugged at his hair, racking his brain to think. It seemed like there was really no one. His confidence instantly waned. Then what should I do? Zhuang Qinyan said solemnly, special training. I suggest that during this period, you take on more individual and group missions and train seriously. What do you think? Xiao Xing. Chapter, 55. Battle Royale Action. One month later, the 420th round of qualifiers came to an end, and from this point on, the throne race would no longer accept new registrations. The ultimate champion would emerge from the 200 teams that had made it through to the finals. From the abandoned mine 200 kilometers away from Ferrara, the rumbling sounds continued to echo. Su Xing had a red headband tied to his forehead, with the words must win boldly written on it, flapping in the wind. He wore a thick hoodie and took brisk steps with his short legs. At one moment, he sprinted to the left, sharp ice spikes falling behind him, pinning the crowded zombies like bullets in a circle. Then, he extended his arms and ran to the right, using a blizzard in tandem with the mechanical arm of a transport vehicle to sweep the frozen zombies into iron cages. The red band fluttered behind his head, giving him a somewhat peerless master's demeanor. In less than twenty minutes, Su Xing completed a sea-level mission all by himself. Song Ku stood on a high platform, watching from afar. This scene had become the norm for almost a month. Su Xing had undergone Zhuang Qinyan's devilish training, starting from tears and sobbing, often hiccuping while fighting zombies, and frequently needing her help to clean up afterward. But now, he had made rapid progress. Not only could he single-handedly take down dozens of zombies, but he also maintained cleanliness, remembering to blow the area clean and tidying up the battlefield as a matter of course. Song Ku's thoughts wandered, and she couldn't help but think of Aiming's favorite lines from that classic palace entry drama of the old civilization. The old Xiaoxing was already dead. Now, standing before them was Niu Hulu No, it was the Mecha Tyrannosaurus Xiaoxing. You're really amazing, Song Ku murmured. 
It's still a long way to go, Zhuang Qinyan replied calmly. No, I mean you, you're really amazing. Being able to transform Su Xing from a slacker who only wanted to lie down every day into the current edgy teenager was entirely Zhuang Qinyan's achievement. Zhuang Qinyan's lips curved into a faint smile, acknowledging Song Ku's praise. Since he wants to follow you, he can't hold you back. The commotion in front gradually subsided, and Su Xing ran over, his eyes sparkling. Sister, am I amazing? Amazing, Song Ku praised sincerely, giving him two thumbs up. Su Xing scratched his chin, smiling brightly like the sun. During this period, they mainly accepted sea level missions, with a small number of B level missions completed together by Song Ku and Su Xing. Therefore, their points were increasing steadily, although not very fast. Even though the rankings were hidden, V587 had actually entered the top 10 in the Ferrara point standings. The first place was still held by three grandsons and one grandfather, their points skyrocketing, already surpassing 10,000. It's about time. Let's pack up and head back to Ferrara, Zhuang Qinyan said. The main competition of the throne race was about to begin, and it was time to go back and prepare. What is this? The day before the competition, during the player registration, Song Ku and Su Xing each received a wristwatch-like tracking device. This is the new tracking device introduced by the competition organizers, the AI in front of them explained meticulously. It's used in conjunction with a small unmanned camera that follows each player one-on-one -on -one throughout the race, capturing every exciting moment. Isn't this just an electronic ankle monitor Su Xing muttered softly. The synthesized voice of the AI remained calm and unaffected, I apologize for any inconvenience. I can confirm that due to perspective issues during the previous qualifiers, there was a severe broadcasting incident that resulted in complaints from viewers. We've learned from that experience and have upgraded our filming methods to ensure a comprehensive, multi-angle, immersive experience, with no blind spots. In addition, each player has their own private live broadcast room that viewers can unlock and watch for a fee. Qualifiers broadcasting incident could it have been because of her? Song Ku nervously rubbed her ear. Due to the unique nature of the main competition venue, there were no on-site seats, and the audience could only watch through terminals. Tickets for the competition had been sold at exorbitant prices, and the number of reservations for popular Superhumans live broadcast rooms had surpassed several hundred thousand. Far exceeding the peak of any previous concert, setting a new historical record. Please draw lots. The AI swiped a panel, and suddenly, a brilliant galaxy appeared before Song Ku's eyes. Hundreds of sparkling stars slowly flowed within, emitting a gentle glow. The AI reminded her methodically, the size of the number will determine the team's order of appearance. Song Ku casually picked a star, and a number appeared on it, 161. Congratulations, you've drawn number 161, starting from the northwest corner at 2020. With a total of 200 teams, they started at staggered times and the earlier the better, as it allowed teams to familiarize themselves with the terrain in advance and even set ambushes to take advantage of others. Unfortunately, Song Ku and Su Xing not only had a late draw but also a terrible starting point. The northwest corner was the most desolate starting point, requiring them to cross the Mirror Lake in the central area to reach the endpoint located at the eastern mountaintop. It seemed like a definite disadvantage. Song Ko was shocked by her own choice, thinking she should have let Su Xing draw instead. But Su Xing was surprisingly happy, saying, Great. It's not the last number. Song Ko patiently explained, the, the higher the number, the later you, you start. It's not good. I should have let, let you draw. Su Xing blinked his eyes, but I've never won anything in my life, not even a bag of chips. If I had drawn, it would probably have been number 199. Song Ku sighed, all right. Well, in that case, 161 isn't so bad. It's actually quite good. After returning to the hotel, their number 161 drew merciless laughter from Zhuang Qinyan. Despite Zhuang Qinyan's early lessons, when it came to the actual competition, they could only rely on themselves. Song Ku wore Wu Yuru's space necklace and concealed various spiritual weapons in her oversized coat. 
her primary weapon was still the dual sword she had been using recently. Before leaving, Song Ku looked at Zhuang Qinyan and asked, Is there anything else you want to tell me? Just like that day in Hua City, Zhuang Qinyan lazily leaned on his wheelchair and waved at her, his magnetic voice seductive and captivating, Come back early. Song Ku nodded earnestly, All right. On the night of the competition, at Mirror Lake. At exactly twenty hundred hours, all the floating screens in the Ferrara City area simultaneously projected the throne race, and the official live broadcast room began on time. Good evening, dear viewers. The exciting moment has finally arrived. Welcome to the live broadcast of the top 64 qualifying round of the throne race. I am your host, Ah K, and the gentleman beside me is none other than your heartthrob, Luo Qingha. Ah K, a virtual AI, was a renowned figure in Ferrara, known for his exceptional hosting skills. It was said that his language and art module in his central memory had gone through numerous iterations, making him one of the top-tier self-learning AI. As for Luo Qingha, the official reason for inviting him was quite obvious. When his gentle and jade-like face was enlarged on the screen, even without speaking, the viewership ratings soared. Ahem, Ah K cleared his throat excitedly. Next, I will explain the rules of the competition. This competition follows the Battle Royale format, and this time, we've prepared some truly terrifying monsters. He intentionally made an exaggerated spooky face, and the live chat was immediately filled with laughter. Isn't it just zombies? We guessed that ages ago. Can we see the legendary water monster today? Can't wait. Ha ha ha, ah K making that expression is really silly. Who wants to see you? I want to watch my Qingha. Please switch the camera, thank you. Can the guy upstairs with dreams roll out? Can't you go crazy in your own private live room? Is the ugly guy upstairs triggered? The competition hadn't even started yet, and the live chat was already buzzing with activity. Colorful fonts kept scrolling across the screen, and the official live chat room became chaotic. AI moderators immediately took action, banning IP addresses that were inciting trouble. According to the rules, there are special items called flags hidden in the field. The team that finds a flag first and delivers it to the endpoint will qualify. Please note that the number of flags is limited, and as long as they haven't reached the endpoint, ownership can transfer at any time. What does that mean? Hehe, he, it means that even if you haven't found a flag, you can snatch it from someone else. Ah K was completely unaffected by the live chat and playfully made a grabbing motion. For fairness, once a flag is picked up, the player who possesses it will have their location automatically exposed, and others can lock onto their coordinates using the tracking device. How about that? Isn't it interesting? Limited flags, public coordinates this clearly encouraged awakeners to fight and potentially kill each other. Some quick-thinking viewers quickly understood the key point and became even more excited. All right, all right, I see that some viewers are asking what the flags are. I can't reveal that information yet. You'll have to wait until the competition begins for AK okay to unveil it for everyone. Let's take a look at the viewership ratings for our contestants. Currently in the lead is 52 to 1 player Duan Muchi, followed by 105 to 4, known as the Wild Rose, Irene. And 114 to 3 is our local contestant from Ferrara, Fong Duona. Hey. They're all handsome men and beautiful women. So, it turns out everyone goes for looks, huh? Huh, just kidding. The skills of these contestants should not be underestimated. You can also pay to unlock your favorite player's live room and enjoy an immersive experience throughout the game. Want to see Qingha? Of course, you can. Let's get the camera on Qingha. Qingha, do you have any words for the contestants? Facing the camera, Luo Qingha maintained impeccable manners with not a single fault, but a hint of solemnity was evident in his warm and unearthly eyes. In this game of life and death, I urge all contestants to give it their all. At 2020, at the northwest corner of Mirror Lake, the last group of teams set off. Song Ku and Su Xing stepped into the Forbidden Forest and the trackers on their wrists blinked brightly. Two drones followed closely beside them. No vehicles were allowed inside Mirror Lake, so the participants had to proceed on foot. Looking up, 
the sky was mostly obscured by the tangled branches of trees. The dim light of the night made it difficult to see, and even if they stretched their necks, they could only faintly glimpse the neon lights of Ferrara in the distance. Before long, the two of them reached the edge of a swamp. Sister, where do you think the flag will be? It can't just be stuck in the ground, right? Could it be buried in the soil, and we have to dig it up ourselves? Su Xing actively used his little brain and shared his guess. Whoosh! A group of dark shadows darted past them from behind. Song Ku and Su Xing immediately fell silent, turning their heads vigilantly. Across the dark swamp, over a dozen bizarre looking creatures were staring at them from the branches. Their eyes emitted a green glow, their heads looked like mice, but their limbs and abdomen were as robust as rabbits. They had thick, black fur on their backs. In the blink of an eye, they swiftly flew to the other side. Su Xing swallowed hard, suppressing his fear, and his voice trembled slightly, they seemed to be mutated rats. They looked a lot like the cockroaches they encountered in Hua City. They were zombie rats. Song Ku lowered her voice to avoid alarming them, Xiaoxing, take control. Su Xing opened his hand, and a fine snowstorm flowed out from his palm, causing the surface of the swamp to freeze. His move was quite effective, covering the path of the approaching zombie rats. Since it was a widespread area of effect, they couldn't avoid it. The claws of those rats were frozen, and their flight speed significantly slowed down as they tumbled from low altitude. The swamp and the ground were intertwined, making it difficult to distinguish the edge. Song Ku didn't rashly charge forward. With a slight movement of her fingertips, several bright crescent-shaped throwing knives were released towards the group of rats, hitting them squarely in the head and harvesting a large number of them. She cautiously took two steps forward, intending to examine the situation, but suddenly, a large net fell from the sky towards her head. Song Ku reacted swiftly, rolling close to the ground, quickly moving out of the net's range. However, the bodies of those rats were collected into a bag on the opposite side. The other side's goal was clearly to snatch their gains. Chapter, 56 Battle Royale Action Song Ku suddenly raised her head. On the opposite side of the swamp, there was a five-person team in full formation. The short-haired woman among them had just retracted a soft net, which she had likely used as her ability. She was accompanied by four others, two burly men holding steel knives, and another two who seemed to be twins, bearing a striking resemblance to each other, with blood-red ropes tied around their arms they didn't seem friendly. Hey, this spot is taken by us. You should go elsewhere, the short-haired woman arrogantly said, lifting her chin. In the live stream room of Team 172, viewers who were watching the match were reveling in the situation. No way. These two are so unlucky, they encounter the bloodthirsty duo, at the beginning. The bloodthirsty duo consists of Ren Ting and Ren Li, both C-level awakeners in the weapon category. Do you think they'll set the record for the quickest elimination? Light a candle in silence. Yu Hong is quite strong in the D-level category too, her net is really hard to break. Team 172, known as Lock, Lock, Lock You Up, had a decent support rate in the preliminaries, at 76%, thanks to the team's composition of an awakener with a net and two with ropes, earning them the nickname Binding Combo. Song Cook kept her eyes on them but didn't move. She puffed her cheeks, trying to think of a suitable comeback. Su Xing knew that Song Ku wasn't good at verbal confrontations and would definitely lose if asked to argue. So, he confidently stepped forward, serving as Song Ku's mouthpiece. Why should we leave, are your names written here? We're the ones who killed those rats. Give them back to us. So many adults like you, can't you fend for yourselves? Always looking for a free meal, lazy and shameless. Although those zombie rats were not high-level creatures, it still felt unpleasant to have them snatched away by someone else. Also, maybe due to spending time with Zhuang Qinyan, Su Xing's ability to sarcastically taunt people had become increasingly sharp. You little brat. Little brat, you haven't even weaned yet, and you've come here to die. The twin siblings, not caring that Su Xing was just a child, didn't hesitate and immediately took action. Their crimson ropes snaked like venomous serpents, entwining and aiming directly for his neck, seemingly intent on strangling him. 
the two burly men wielding steel knives also circumvented the swamp and headed toward Su Xing. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Yu Hong swung her soft net once more, unleashing four consecutive strikes. Although she didn't capture Song Ku, she managed to block her path, trapping her in place. The group had a clear target eliminate the mouthy kid first. Su Xing darted and dodged among the trees, occasionally rolling close to the ground. His special training had not been in vain. Despite looking a bit disheveled, his small stature and snake-like movements allowed him to evade the ropes. Ren Ting sneered, showing disdain, and scoffed, Oh, so you're a king of words, huh? I thought you had some talent. Is rolling on the ground your only skill? Su Xing kept his mouth shut and focused on escaping. At this moment, he wasn't going to exchange words. Song Ku smirked within the encircling soft net. In the post-apocalyptic world, never underestimate any awakener. They would soon learn the cost of underestimating Su Xing. Su Xing led the two men wielding steel knives toward the vicinity of the swamp. Being lightweight, he easily leaped to the other side, while the two burly men were less fortunate. They sank into the swamp, and the black muck submerged their lower legs. Ren Ting and Ren Li's vision blurred for a moment as a sudden flurry of heavy snow descended around them. Sharp black ice shards shot out from beneath the swamp, slicing through their ropes, splattering mud all over them. Ugh! The twins spat out the mud from their mouths, their faces as black as coal. The next second, both of them paled. Su Xing had disappeared. Yu Hong anxiously shouted from behind, He's gone. Ren Li responded irritably, Am not blind, I saw. No, the girl's gone too. The twins were taken aback and turned to look in the direction of the soft net. Sure enough, Song Ku had vanished as well. Suddenly, a fierce snowstorm engulfed the surroundings, and the biting cold wind made it impossible to keep their eyes open. Gone. Gone. The members of Lock, Lock, Lock You Up checked all four directions within their line of sight and found no trace of anyone. Where did they go? Whoosh! A blue light illuminated the sky. A slender figure swiftly moved among the treetops, leaping into the air and somersaulting downward. Song Ku drew a pair of long and short spirit blades from her back and unleashed two consecutive strikes. Clang! Yu Hong's soft net snapped like paper, too fragile to withstand a single blow. With her ability destroyed, her mental strength suffered a heavy blow, leaving her brain in chaos. She slumped to the ground, falling into unconsciousness. Arrogant, right in front of me, bullying us at range. Think I don't exist. Song Ku leaped to the other side, her blade relentlessly striking toward the twins. The azure dual blades met the crimson long rope head-on. Unexpectedly, the rope wound around the blade's edge. Song Ku raised the tip of her blade, a glint of darkness passed, and the rope immediately shattered into pieces. She switched from backhand to forehand, attacking relentlessly, balancing her strikes between left and right, overwhelming the twins with a flurry of blade attacks. Ren Ting and Ren Li had no way to counter this close-range assault. After taking several strikes head-on, they were heavily injured, sent flying seven to eight meters away, and collided harshly with a large tree. Almost simultaneously with Song Ku's attack, in another direction, Several ice shards flew out from behind the trees, accurately targeting the swamp. Plop! Two burly men had their backs pierced. Song Ku in a 1 versus 3 situation, and Su Xing in a 1 versus 2 situation, wiped out Lock, Lock, Lock you up. All of them were incapacitated. Song Ku picked up their trackers and sent out the elimination signal. Soon, robots would come to clean up the battlefield. What the heck? Who are these people? The people in the 172 live stream room couldn't help but curse. Who were these two? So powerful. They took down the bloodthirsty duo at first sight. Why didn't we hear anything about them before? Some curious individuals checked the pre-selection support rate for V587 and were surprised to find it was only 61%. They barely made it through the preliminary rounds this didn't make sense. After Lock, Lock, Lock You Up was eliminated, their five individual live stream rooms were simultaneously closed. 
those who had previously supported them couldn't stand the loneliness and switched sides, paying to unlock V587's live stream room with the thought of, I want to see how these two will die. However, when they entered and took a look, they were in for a surprise. The live stream rooms 161 to 1 and 161 to 2 were probably the most pathetic among all the participants. They had no sponsors, no popularity, and had less than 300 viewers. What the heck? Those latecomer viewers, with a strange and unexplainable mix of emotions, settled into this cold and empty live stream room. Song Ku used the tip of her blade to inspect the bodies of the zombie rats, but she didn't find anything unusual. She walked back to Su Xing and exchanged a high five. Xiao Xing, you did great. You're amazing too, sister. Another round of mutual compliments was exchanged, and then Song Ku said seriously, First, let's leave this place. The commotion was too loud. In case another team heard the commotion and decided to converge on them, it would be troublesome. Song Ku wasn't afraid of a fight, but she didn't want to waste time. Their top priority was still to find the flag and ensure their advancement. In the official live stream room, AK was enthusiastically commentating on another conflict. At 2022, in the eastern part of Mirror Lake, two of the favorites in this competition, three grandsons and one grandfather, encountered Chuanqing Tea House. The two teams of ability users faced each other at a distance, their expressions tense, and neither side made any hasty moves. Duan Mu Qi was the first to speak, Old Xiang, the match is still long. There's no need to have a few casualties here, right? Mr. Xiang's eyes sparkled as he glanced around and diverted the topic, Young Duan, how did I hear that you got injured? He snorted, since you're already injured, why don't you rest at home instead of coming out and running around? Be careful not to develop any other problems. Behind Mr. Xiang, a shadow hovered in the air, with a pair of ominous eyes fixed firmly on Duan Mu Qi. Faint black mist drifted toward him, gradually closing in on the area around Duan Mu Qi. Plop! Thick thorns erupted from the ground, breaking through the soil. With a snap, they dispelled the black mist. Duan Mu Qi laughed, Mr. Xiang, you're underestimating me. He raised his hand gently, and countless thorns grew wildly, surrounding the members of Xuanqing Tea House and pointing threateningly at them. Duan Mu Qi's ability was at its peak, even more so than before. Mr. Xiang stared at him for a couple of seconds, then chuckled, Young Duan, you've misunderstood. This old man was just concerned about you. We're heading north. Hopefully, we won't encounter any unpleasant situations along the way. We'll see you at the finish line. That's perfect we're heading south. We'll see you at the finish line. Duan Mu Qi understood the implied message in his words and smiled as he closed his hands, the thorns also retracted. The two teams, one heading north and the other south, parted ways and continued their journey. Oh, they didn't start a fight, Ah K clicked his tongue, looking somewhat disappointed. It's a wise decision, Luo Qing commented. The flag hasn't appeared yet. Starting a conflict now would only deplete their strength, which wouldn't bode well for the rest of the competition. Qinghe is right, Ah K agreed. But we also see that rational leaders like Duan Mu Qi and Mr. Xiang are in the minority. We're 25 minutes into the game, and there's no sign of the flag. There have been small-scale disputes and skirmishes among Awakeners. So far, five teams have miserably been eliminated. In the brutal format of the Battle Royale, being eliminated meant either death or severe injury. Let's take a look at some highlights. The director cut to several exciting moments. Because there were too many teams erupting into conflicts, the footage of Song Ku taking down Lock, Lock, Lock You Up was mixed in and went unnoticed for less than two seconds, not attracting much attention. In the depths of Mirror Lake, Song Ku and Su Xing continued forward for another five to six minutes without encountering any other teams. The night breeze rustled through the branches, causing leaves to brush against each other, creating a sound like a child's whimpering. Song Ku's steps gradually slowed down until she came to a stop. Sister, did you find something? Did you feel, feel anything strange? What's strange? Song Ku couldn't pinpoint what was strange, but her intuition told her something was off. If Xuan Qinyan were here, he probably would have noticed by now. 
Song Ku recalled his calm attitude along the way. Although he seemed a bit unconventional, he was always quick to identify key problems, whether it was the insect swarm in Hua City or the later commission mission in Ferrara. Wait, Song Ku's train of thought abruptly stopped. She knew what was wrong. Where did, did the zombies go? Chapter, 57 Water Monster At 2056, in the central area of Mirror Lake. Close to halfway up the hill, the temperature noticeably dropped, thin snow-covered pine branches, and dry leaves scattered the deserted path, making a rustling sound when stepped on. A team of three, after enduring countless hardships, finally managed to kill a zombie that had a bluish hue on its surface. Phew, this monster is really tricky. It was obviously dying, yet it resurrected at full health. Looks like it has mutated. Luckily, I acted quickly and landed another blow. Hey, what's this? The man bent down and plucked a pure white, perfectly octahedral transparent crystal from the zombie's head. It's quite unique, I never expected to find diamonds inside a zombie's head. Ha! He joked, thinking himself witty. Liangzi, you, you're your tracker is turning red. His companions pointed at him in terror, their voices trembling. At 2057, all the supernatural beings within Mirror Lake received a notification. The flag appears. Broadcasting remaining flag coordinates, 452, 671, 109. The first flag had appeared. At first, everyone was puzzled, but the teams closest to the coordinates reacted the fastest and immediately rushed towards the location. Sister, it's the flag. In the dim forest, Su Xing, after reading the announcement, whispered to alert his sister. Song Ku lowered her head to check her tracker the coordinates weren't far from their location, and there was even a route displayed. If they went all out, it would only take about ten minutes. They had just searched the area nearby, not even spotting a zombie. This was their only clue, and she immediately made a decision, let's go, check it out. When Song Ku and Su Xing arrived at the center of Mirror Lake, the flag's coordinates had already been reached by another team. Rather than rushing in recklessly, the two found a concealed large tree and observed the situation. In the center of the encirclement were three disheveled awakeners, their legs trembling as they knelt on the ground, clearly suffering from severe injuries. I say, don't be so stingy. Let us see what the flag is. In front of the three, a muscular supernatural being crossed his arms and casually remarked. Do you really have to maintain civility in a battle royale like this? Just kill him, and we'll know. His impatient teammate attacked immediately, turning his palm into a fist and striking towards the three. Bang! The awakener named Liangzi was instantly killed, blood splattered everywhere, and a transparent object rolled out from his body onto the ground. The person who threw the punch reacted swiftly, picking it up and holding it high. Through the dim night, the perfectly octahedral crystal emitted a faint glow. He exclaimed in surprise, it's a crystal. So, the flag is. Before he could finish speaking, a red light flashed, and the person who had just been talking had his head and neck separated, falling to the ground with a thud. More awakeners arrived, this time numbering in the dozens. The newcomers grabbed the crystal, excitedly shouting, I got it. Flag coordinates refreshed. Broadcasting remaining flag coordinates, 486, 597, 88. Broadcasting remaining flag coordinates, 402, 553, 87. In just a few seconds, ownership of the crystal shifted twice, and the tracker displayed for notifications. Brothers, the crystal is the flag. Hurry up and grab it. Deliver it to the finish line to win. In a chaotic environment, someone shouted loudly, fearing that the world would not be in chaos. The people around suddenly woke up, and various supernatural abilities lit up, and they fought recklessly, attempting to kill and loot. Song Ku pulled Su Xing back to avoid getting caught in the crossfire. Suddenly, her psychic senses picked up something and she looked straight in a certain direction. Just as everyone was engaged in a fierce battle, a deep roar erupted from behind them. In the shadows noticed by Song Ku, three entirely greenish-blue zombies sprang from the woods, pounding the ground with their fists, sending sand, soil, 
and stones flying as if the earth itself was trembling. They were mutated zombies. The awakeners in the chaotic battle fell silent for a moment. Hurry, charge! Crystals come from the mutated zombies. Kill the zombies, get the crystals, and go to the next round. The voice that had been stirring the pot earlier resurfaced, adding fuel to the fire. Several messy wind blades shaved away the branches and leaves concealing Song Ku, forcing her to retreat again. The battle zone was in complete chaos, with the Awakeners no longer distinguishing between friend and foe, using their area of effect attacks. Song Ku focused her gaze on the young man who had been inciting others to fight while standing on the sidelines as if watching a show. He had ice blue eyes and seemed quite young. He deliberately egged others on to fight while enjoying the spectacle himself standing outside the circle as if he were an innocent bystander. This person was not simple. The destructive power of the three mutated zombies was astonishing, and the Awakeners, each with their own agenda, were unable to defeat them in a short time and were instead being suppressed. A month ago, killing mutated zombies had been an A-level mission, but now it had become the sustenance for the throne race. Song Ku suddenly realized why they hadn't encountered ordinary zombies on their journey. The real stars of this competition were the mutated zombies with crystals. What did that Ilya want to do? According to the rules, the number of flags is limited. How many mutated zombies had he brought? By the lakeside, several mutated zombies suddenly rose up, their fists smashing into the ground with a resounding thud. Powerful shockwaves rippled outward in concentric circles, causing the innermost row of people to lose their balance as the oncoming gusts of air sent them tumbling uncontrollably towards the center of the lake. As they were about to fall into the water, the surface of Mirror Lake rippled with layer upon layer of waves. A massive creature leaped out of the water, its gaping maw opening wide to devour those few awakeners in a single gulp. In front of the crowd stood a gigantic water monster, its head small and almost devoid of eyes. At first glance, it resembled a sleek deep-sea eel, but its back was covered in tough scales. After its hearty meal, the water creature's elephant-like trunk twitched slightly, and it silently submerged back into the depths. Ah! Ah! In the official live broadcast room, Ah K screamed dramatically, holding his face with both hands. Dozens of drones aimed at the central area of Mirror Lake. Ah K had been passionately commentating on the chaotic battle, but suddenly witnessing this terrifying scene, he let out a loud cry to enhance the live atmosphere, instantly pushing the viewership data to its peak. Not only Ah K but also the millions of viewers immersed in the immersive broadcast were nearly scared to death by the sudden appearance of the water monster. Three mutated zombies were finally beaten to death haphazardly, one after another falling to the ground. The crystals in their heads were quickly harvested, and the team that had captured the flag wasted no time and bolted. Others, unwilling to leave empty-handed, gnashed their teeth and chased after them. There was still another water monster lurking nearby, and the Awakeners dared not linger. They fled in panic through the woods, desperate to escape the danger zone. On the surface of Mirror Lake, countless tiny bubbles bubbled up, and in the next moment, the water monster leaped once again. Its neck, over ten meters long, stretched forward, and it snapped up several awakeners who hadn't made it to the shore in time. The panicked crowd scattered like headless flies, with several charging towards the large trees where they had taken cover. Song Ku's brow furrowed slightly as she assessed the situation and made a decision. Xiaoxing, let's retreat first. Yeah. The two of them were still some distance from the shore, relatively safe for the moment. Su Xing jumped down from a tree trunk and took a few steps forward, preparing to follow Song Ku and leave. Just then, one of the awakeners that the water monster had seized suddenly had their pupils darken, their ability surging. The space around them distorted, and the person disappeared on the spot, only to reappear dozens of meters away. Meanwhile, Su Xing, who had been in that spot, was unexpectedly lifted into the air, and the water monster swallowed him with a single gulp, its massive jaws closing around him. Xiaoxing. Song Ku exclaimed in shock and anger, turning without hesitation and rushing towards the lakeside. The awakener with the dark trick up his sleeve was still gloating, thinking he had narrowly escaped. That was close. Luckily, I can switch quickly and found a scapegoat. Ha ha ha. 
a blue-hued throwing knife sliced through the dark, piercing his throat. The man's ecstatic expression hadn't even had time to settle when his awakened energy dissipated, and he instantly died. Song Ku chased the water monster with all her might, but its speed in the water was too fast, and it was about to submerge again. Xiaoxing Song Ku made a leaping dash through the air, landing on the creature's back like a shooting star. She thrust a short knife into its head. The water monster howled in pain, its body contorted, and its massive tail swung fiercely, knocking Song Ku off with a thud. She momentarily lost her footing, sliding down its wet and slippery back. However, her physical abilities and reflexes were extraordinary. Almost as she descended, Song Ku pulled out a three-edged dagger, viciously stabbing it into the creature's cheek, twisting it left and right. She then hooked her leg and flipped back up. In the official live broadcast room, all the cameras were focused on the Mirror Lake monster and Song Ku, who had suddenly returned to the scene. Real-time data monitoring detected a surge in viewership and immediately switched to the dedicated drone broadcasting Song Ku's perspective. The viewership in room 161 to 1 was also steadily increasing, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 quickly surpassing 150,000. The scene was just too exciting, and the viewers at their screens were in awe, unable to look away. When Song Ku fell, countless viewers' hearts tightened. When she reappeared, their expressions relaxed, but then they tensed up again. The once calm lake surface suddenly erupted with waves, and torrents of water turned into sharp arrows, heading straight for Song Ku. This was a zombie water monster, or rather, a mutated zombie water monster. The drone's camera was also splashed with water droplets, providing an immersive first-person experience that made the viewers outside the camera feel an inexplicable chill. In the pouring rain, no one noticed the inconspicuous frost forming around the water monster. Facing the rain arrows that were about to pierce her, Song Ku's hand trembled, and the spiritual weapon umbrella, once famous in Hua City, made a comeback. The enormous umbrella acted like an indestructible shield, blocking all the arrows. Then, she swiftly closed the umbrella, transforming it into a cold and elegant jagged blade, over two meters long. The blade pointed downward, and with brute force, she cut through the water monster's head and neck, just like cutting a sack of grain from front to back, one cut after another. The zombie water monster's flesh and skin separated, and bright red muscles and thick black blood splattered, turning the entire mirror lake into a dark red hue. Its long neck fell heavily on the shore. Ugh. Ah Kei seemed to feel that heart-wrenching pain, and his expression contorted as he clung tightly to Luo Ching Hano, he could only cling tightly to himself. The barrage in the live chat was flooded with comments like holy crap, 666, and unbelievable. As black blood splattered around, Song Ku peeled the skin off the water monster while anxiously shouting, Xiaoxing, where are you? Sister, I'm here a weak voice came, I'm okay. Perhaps due to the habit of being repeatedly thrown by Zhuang Qinyan, thanks to him, Su Xing had developed a reflex. Whenever his feet left the ground uncontrollably, he would instinctively release ice spurs to protect himself. This reflex saved him from being crushed by the monster's sharp teeth. Instead, he slid down its throat, narrowly escaping. Song Ku looked down and finally found Su Xing in the shredded digestive tract. Su Xing had displayed incredible resilience. After getting stuck in the esophagus, he deliberately released several long ice spurs to block the passage. Currently, he was lying on the icy surface, covered in foul saliva and mucus, but surprisingly uninjured. Moreover, during Song Ku's battle with the water monster, he had been attempting to save himself by continuously using his ability, trying to cut his way out through the monster's abdomen. Come on, get out. Song Ku also slid in and reached out to him. N. Su Xing climbed out gracefully, using the ice steps. After emerging, he didn't smell fresh air but was instead overwhelmed by the foul odor, causing him to feel dizzy. He leaned over the lake and vomited. Several seconds later, Song Ku crawled out, her entire face and head covered in slime. Su Xing, with teary eyes from vomiting, looked at her with a puzzled expression. Had his sister fallen into the monster's stomach? Why was she dirtier than him? Song Ku wiped her face. Let's, let's get out of here and find, find a place to talk. 
Okay. Song Ku's dedicated drone had been too close earlier and was splattered with the monster's flesh and blood. Its signal short-circuited and burned out. Viewers who had been watching the terminal didn't feel any better. The gore and shredded flesh came rushing at them, causing strong feelings of nausea, dizziness, and a desire to vomit that they couldn't resist. Many people turned off their projections and bent over, retching. Ugh it was unbearable. Immersive perspective was indeed too intense. The drone was damaged, and Song Ku's live stream momentarily went offline. In the control room, the AI director immediately ordered, quickly locate the position of 161 to 1 and send a backup drone over. Cut all the nearby fixed camera feeds to this team what's it called? Show the V587 feed. Wait a moment, this artificial intelligence suddenly froze for a few seconds as its central code calculated frantically. Send several backup drones. The sight of that familiar spiritual weapon umbrella reminded it of some dark memories. It was her, of all people. As a top AI director, Song Ku was an absolute stain on its professional career. Such a serious mistake as in the 178th round of qualifiers must absolutely not happen again. Chapter, 58 The Big Star and the Little Bodyguard Flag Coordinates Refresh Here are the remaining flag coordinates. 324, 865, 101, 779, 1023, 55, 1356, 954, 321. Here are the remaining. 2112, Outside Mirror Lake. After the appearance of the first flag, in just a moment, it seemed as though a battle horn had been sounded within Mirror Lake. The smell of gunpowder grew stronger, and the system announcements kept refreshing. All areas were in full bloom, with one team killing mutant zombies only to be killed and have their flag taken by the next. Similar atrocities repeated continuously, and flag ownership changed hands frequently. Some crystals even changed ownership more than a dozen times in just a few minutes. Song Ku and Su Xing continued running without a break, stopping at a distance from Mirror Lake. The backup drone closely followed, circling around her, afraid of losing her again. Both of them were covered in dirt, desperately in need of cleaning, but the only nearby water source was Mirror Lake, which had already been completely contaminated by the water monster's corpse. Song Ku had no intention of turning back, so she thought for a moment and took out an empty bucket from her necklace space. Xiaoxing, release some, powers. Ha. Huh. Okay. Su Xing scratched his head, responding with confusion. Thud, thud. Several ice shards as thick as small arms fell directly through the bottom of the bucket. Song Ku. Su Xing innocently blinked his eyes. He didn't do it on purpose, and he wasn't a water-based awakener, so he definitely couldn't release a drop. No, release some, snow, Song Ku said helplessly. Oh, I see. Su Xing suddenly realized. This time, he carefully controlled his powers and piled a neat little snow mountain in the bucket. The two of them used the cool ice and snow to wipe their faces and bodies, finally getting rid of the disgusting slime. Sister, thank you for saving me. Su Xing still had lingering fear from the moment he was almost swallowed by the water monster. His tone was soft, and his gaze was affectionate as he thanked Song Ku. His sister was really good in that situation just now, she didn't leave him behind and run away. You're a calm, companion, it's what I should do. Song Ku patted his head. By the way, I Song Ku thought of something, but before she could continue, her expression froze. There were faint footsteps coming from the woods someone was approaching. The newcomer didn't hide or conceal themselves and boldly appeared from behind them. Chatting in a place like this isn't a good choice, you know. A gracefully proportioned woman gradually took shape. She wore a half-black mask that covered the upper half of her face, leaving only her rosy and plump lips and her beautifully curved chin visible. Her chestnut-colored wavy hair was tied into a ponytail, piled loosely behind her head. Even if her face couldn't be clearly seen, her overall demeanor exuded an irresistible charm. Behind the woman, a tall man in an all-black combat suit, like a ghostly knight, silently acted as her shadow, protecting her. The moment Song Ku recognized her, 
she immediately reacted this woman was Lin Yuyu. We meet again, Lin Yuyu greeted first. Song Ku didn't respond. Under the brutal rules of the battle royale, she wouldn't easily trust anyone unless they were her companions. Lin Yuyu smiled and said, don't be nervous. Since neither of us has a flag now, can't we have a peaceful conversation? Song Ku hesitated for a while and then asked, what, what do you want, want to talk about? Are you interested in cooperating with us? Song Ku was taken aback. Cooperation again. During the incident at Luli Port, Lin Yuyu didn't gain much advantage because of the presence of Zhuang Qinyan, who was very cunning. She only exchanged for the useless crystal. However, from Lin Yuyu's perspective, she had come for the crystal in the first place, so she didn't actually suffer a loss. Now, with only herself and Su Xing, Song Ku was very self-aware that she must be the one who'd suffer. She shook her head vigorously, saying, I'm, I'm not interested. Don't reject so quickly. How about you hear the conditions first? Lin Yuyu dangled a tempting offer, we team up to snatch two crystals, and then we each take one. How does that sound? Because of her guarded stance, Song Ku was particularly clever at this moment encountered with a clear thought, why should, should I team up with, with you? You've seen it yourself. Both our teams only have two people, and compared to those fully formed teams, our combat power is seriously lacking. Even if we can kill mutant zombies, we'll soon be hunted down, surrounded. The risk is just too great. Lin Yuyu wasn't making empty promises. She was purely a support type awakener. Although her awakener level was high, she could only rely on Su Cha to make moves in crystal snatching. On the other hand, Song Ku and Su Xing were both highly offensive awakeners, one specializing in close combat and the other in long range attacks. Their attack methods were vastly different, and if they were dispersed and besieged, they would be at a disadvantage. The best solution was for the two teams to form an alliance, join forces to seize the crystals, and in terms of both numbers and combat power, it would be a qualitative leap. Song Ku still shook her head, saying, Cries, crystals are very, very important to you. Lin Yuyu had once abandoned an A-level mission for the sake of a crystal. Why should Song Ku believe that she wouldn't turn against her for crystals in the future? Lin Yuyu's eyes dimmed slightly, and some obscure emotions flickered across her gaze. Yes, but I want to advance. Winning is more important to me. Lin Yuyu's captivating eyes looked at Song Ku. I thought we had some basis of trust due to our previous interactions. Song Ku didn't show anything on her face, but inside, she had her doubts and reservations. What basis of trust? With a big liar like Zhuang Qinyan in front of her, how could she dare to trust others casually? Lin Yuyu observed her expression and then dropped a bombshell, how about this? You take the crystal first. Does that work for you? That's it, little sister. I'm really sincere, and with so many drones watching, you don't have to worry about me deceiving you. Song Ku struggled and hesitated for a while, then turned to Su Xing to discuss. Finally, she reluctantly nodded, all right. As Lin Yuyu had suggested, the success rate of four people working together was evidently higher, and she could take the crystal first. It seemed like she couldn't lose she hoped she wouldn't lose. She decided to trust the beautiful sister one more time. After reaching a preliminary agreement for cooperation, the four of them moved together, but Song Ku and Su Xing still maintained a certain distance from the other two. Su Cha took the initiative to take on the role of scouting. He was extremely skilled at concealing himself, like a chameleon. If one wasn't careful, he could completely disappear into the darkness, blending in with the surroundings. Even if Song Ku kept a close eye on his whereabouts, it took her a while to locate his true position. Stealth, concealment, assassination, poisoning Su Cha was truly in his element in the Mirror Lake environment. However, Song Ku had a new doubt. Why would someone like Su Cha team up with the famous star Lin Yuyu and obediently follow her orders? Whether it was snatching A-level missions or killing the zombie Zhang Lei, Su Cha didn't hesitate to do whatever Lin Yuyu told him to do. Song Ku couldn't help but be curious and, with little hope, she asked, Why did you team, team up? Hmm. Are you talking about Su Cha? Lin Yuyu's lips curled slightly. 
Strictly speaking, he's my bodyguard. Song Ku's eyes widened, and she couldn't help but exclaim in amazement in her mind. Wow, a bodyguard. So, the big star from District C actually travels with a bodyguard? Are you surprised? Lin Yu Yu teased her with interest. Have you not secretly looked up my name after that day? Lin Yu Yu's current appearance and disguise were completely different from what she showed in public. She had donned an anti snooping mask, and even with drones around, someone like her, who wasn't a popular player, wouldn't be exposed as long as she didn't foolishly shout, I'm Lin Yu Yu. A faint blush spread across Song Ku's cheeks, and she thought to herself, Not only did I look you up, but I also listened to your famous song Thank You for Loving Me many, many times. I almost know the lyrics by heart. Lin Yu Yu seemed to find her reaction exceptionally cute and giggled. It's okay to tell you, Lin Yu Yu said casually, to put it simply, Su Cha was in a very desperate situation for a while, as pitiful as a stray little dog. Since I'm kind hearted, I took him in and even paid him a salary. Naturally, he's responsible for protecting me. Song Ku's voice was small as she asked, but, but he listens to, to you so obediently. Lin Yu Yu casually twirled her ponytail with her finger and said, Isn't it normal for a stray little dog that's been picked up to be loyal to its owner? Little dog owner. Song Ku choked and was left speechless. What kind of simple and bizarre metaphors did Lin Yu Yu come up with? Up ahead in the shadows, Su Cha's steps momentarily paused as he glanced in their direction. It was evident that he had heard the famous star's description of him. However, his expression remained unchanged as he calmly accepted his new nickname. Lin Yu Yu stifled a laugh, lightly tapping Su Xing's head with her delicate fingertips. And you, you like clinging to your sister, don't you? Su Xing subconsciously nodded on the side. Yes, he did like sticking close to his sister. Wait a minute, was this lady calling him a little dog too? Annoying, just like Zhuang Qingyan. Su Xing dared not voice his anger but secretly clenched his little canine teeth. Here are the remaining flag coordinates, 195, 773, 218. Song Ku and Lin Yu Yu halted their conversation, their expression startled. This newly refreshed flag was exceptionally close to them, almost right in front of their faces. As this announcement appeared, there came a hoarse roar from the mountainside ahead. Could it be that the mutant zombie guarding the crystal flag was still alive? Lin Yu Yu and Song Ku exchanged a glance and made a quick decision, quick, we might still be able to grab it. The four of them sprinted at full speed towards the flag coordinates. Upon arriving at the mountainside, they indeed found a fierce battle still ongoing. Roughly estimating, there were three different groups of people present. There was already one mutant zombie lying on the ground with its skull split open, and the crystal inside had been taken. However, there was still one alive, although it was barely hanging on, teetering on the brink of death. Quick, take action. Lin Yu Yu urgently called out. Now was not the time to be concerned about who got there first. Song Ku and Su Cha leaped into action almost simultaneously, rushing towards the center of the battle. Su Xing took the opportunity to release several ice shards to disrupt the other superpower users in the vicinity. Song Ku drew her dual blades, and Su Cha's dagger gleamed with a dark green light as they both aimed for the mutant zombie's head. All the Awakeners were racing against time, bombarding the mutant zombie with their strongest attacks. Its condition rapidly deteriorated. Just at that moment, the stubborn zombie trembled all over, its body expanding several tens of times in size, and then it exploded with a bang. Get down! After the body exploded, body parts scattered in all directions, and a few sporadic pieces hit some of the awakeners. Shortly afterward, an unbearable stench filled the air, and a blood mist rose, enveloping everyone. Song Ku's line of sight was obstructed, so she had to rely on her memory to aim at the zombie's head. Her long knife pierced the skull, and she twisted it. Ha, huh, it was empty. The crystal had already been taken. Chapter, 59 The Big Star and the Little Bodyguard A few seconds later, the blood mist gradually dissipated. None of the Awakeners present were harmed physically, but they all had disgusted expressions on their faces. 
Song Ku turned back and glanced in the direction where Lin Yuyu was. She shook her head slightly, indicating that they hadn't managed to grab it. Then she looked at Su Cha beside her, who was empty-handed and had a disappointed expression. Su Cha hadn't managed to get it either. So, the crystal was in someone else's hand Song Ku focused her attention on the group of awakeners. Three groups of people, and you could tell a lot from their positions. One group was a full team of five, all males. Their bodies showed signs of mechanical modifications mechanical arms, mechanical legs, and one even had a mechanical head. His facial features were still natural, but it looked like he had a layer of mechanical skin on the outside. When he turned his neck, it made a creaking sound. It was both eerie and horrifying. Song Ku recalled the lessons Zhuang Qinyan had given her. A team with such a distinctive style could only be one of the top contenders, Team 88, the Anna Knights. The second team consisted of four women, all with slightly darker skin. They were dressed in provocative and sexy outfits, all of them tall with long legs. They had new generation hot weapons strapped to their legs and arms unfortunately, Song Ku wasn't familiar with these weapons. If Xuan Qinyan were here, he could quickly identify them, the Super Red Eagle, the Gabun Viper Pistol, and the Barrett M82A1 large caliber sniper rifle. These weapons were all devastatingly powerful. The tall woman leading this team was even more exaggerated. Short boots, hot pants, tan skin, and she was carrying a particle gatling cannon on her shoulder. If she didn't like someone, she could send them to the heavens. This team was also in Zhuang Qingyan's information, Team 105, the Guns and Roses. As for the third team, they looked the most normal based on appearance. The members included both men and women, and they all had thick, smoky eye makeup. However, when compared to the first two teams, they seemed less impressive. Furthermore, their faces were unfamiliar to Song Ku, and she was sure they weren't part of Zhuang Qinyan's be on high alert list. Now the question was, which team had taken advantage of the chaos to grab the crystal? As Song Ku contemplated, the system announcement appeared once again. Flag coordinates refresh. Here are the remaining flag coordinates, 195, 773, 218, 195, 773, 218. Song Ku was puzzled. The coordinates provided by the tracker were sorted based on the nearest recipient, so how could they be repeated? Did the announcement have an error? No, she immediately realized that the announcement was not wrong. There had originally been one flag here, and with the recent killing of the second superpower zombie, there were now two crystals and two flags. Hey! Who took the crystals? Dare to admit it? Other people had evidently received the same announcement. From the third team, a sweet-faced girl with a melodic voice stepped forward. Song Ku was puzzled. Who is this person? A barely audible enchanting voice wormed its way into her ear, her name is Fong Duona, from Team 114, Ferrara Star. Song Ku jumped in surprise, her hand instinctively reaching for her ear. No one else seemed to have noticed, making it seem like only she could hear the voice. Song Ku discreetly glanced at Lin Yuyu, and indeed, the other woman blinked at her. Do you know each other? Song Ku mumbled to herself, unsure of how to communicate with Lin Yuyu, speaking softly into the air. Lin Yuyu, seemingly able to hear her, continued to speak in a hushed voice near her ear. Fong Duona is just a nobody no need to know her. As for Irene, it's just a nodding acquaintance. Oh, Song Kei replied, still unable to fathom the social circle of a top celebrity and nodded in innocence. On the other side, Fong Duona, realizing no one was paying attention to her, swiftly changed her strategy and prepared to dismantle them one by one. She first looked at the Anna Knights, pointing at the first dead zombie on the ground. If I'm not mistaken, you've already taken the crystal from this zombie, haven't you? When they arrived earlier, this barbaric group of mechanical people had just killed the first zombie. Subsequently, the system issued an announcement. Fong Duona was 100% certain that they had the loot. Why are you still fighting over it? With one crystal, you can advance. Fong Duona scolded, displeased. On the side of the Anna Knights, the most menacing one, Mechanical Head, sneered, 
who do you think you are? You're teaching me how to do things. You. Fong Duona was taken aback. The attitude of another one, mechanical leg, wasn't much better. He looked down on her and said, you already know we have a crystal, and you're still asking. We didn't snatch the one earlier, but we won't give up this one. If you want to fight, then fight, stop whining. Fong Duona stared at them for a few seconds and turned to the guns and roses. Not in our possession. Fong Duona heard the reply from Irene before she could speak. All eyes shifted to Song Ku and the others. Song Ku. What do they mean? We don't have it either. Fong Duona shouted sternly, hand over the crystal. Who, who, who do you think why, Song Ku wanted to mimic the arrogant tone of mechanical head, but before she could finish saying you, Fong Duona's next sentence came, if you don't hand over the crystal don't even think about leaving. Song K, ugh. Hateful. She won't even let me finish my tough talk. A pair of soft jade hands rested on Song Ku's shoulders, and Lin Yuyu leaned over her, facing the rude and overbearing Fong Duona. She deliberately adjusted her vocal position, disguising her voice as mature and authoritative, saying, It's a pity that your gun is pointed at the wrong person, we didn't steal the crystal either. Now things were getting interesting. At the scene, with four teams present, three of them claimed they didn't steal anything. The remaining team, represented by Fong Duona, was everywhere, pressuring others. Unfortunately, the flag coordinates were right near them. Even the children could tell someone was lying. Fong Duona seemed to have narrowed down her suspicions and no longer paid attention to the group of robots. Her gaze shifted back and forth between two women, Irene and Lin Yuyu, saying, I advise you to be honest, or don't blame me for taking action. Irene chuckled pointing the Gatling gun at Fong Duona, showing no concern for her threat. Lin Yuyu burst into laughter and said, Are you mentally ill? What's with all this female rivalry? You believe the men who said they didn't steal it? Why are you so naive? Besides, whoever steals the crystal gets to keep it, why should we give it to you? Yeah, this beautiful lady is right, chimed in mechanical leg sarcastically. Even if we did steal it, just because you say so, we have to obediently hand it over. Miss Fong, are you overestimating yourself? Do you think the whole world revolves around you? Mechanical head made a creaking sound as it turned its neck, its nostrils pointed skyward, and it exaggeratedly said, an unknown little internet celebrity who thinks she's a star just because she sings a few lines. Do you think you're Lin Yuyu? If you were Lin Yuyu, I might consider it. Song Ku and Su Xing took a sharp breath, their eyes shifting towards the masked woman. This mechanical head was actually a fan of Lin Yuyu. It was too terrifying. Lin Yuyu gave them a glare, and the two of them quickly turned away. Since none of you stole the crystal, then shut up. Fong Duona became furious, nearly exploding in anger. Lin Yuyu, it was Lin Yuyu again. This woman's name was her nightmare. Both of them debuted with a sweet and lovely image. Why was it that Lin Yuyu could become one of the top ten rising stars, while she was only fit to be an obscure internet celebrity? That damned mechanical head dared to bring up Lin Yuyu. Fong Duona's anger flared, and since that was the case, she wouldn't hesitate to be ruthless. Kill them all. Her four teammates immediately took action, removing the long cases from their backs and revealing musical instruments. It turned out to be an Awakener's band. The electric guitar started with a soaring sound, followed by the bass's low and angry roar, the electric piano's rapid and furious notes, and the jazz drum's lively beats. With each instrument playing, people's heads felt like they were exploding. When Fong Duona spoke again, the live performance was practically a sonic assault, and Irene and the others couldn't take it anymore, resorting to particle cannon fire. Bam bam. Clang clang. Noise and gunfire filled the air, and the scene descended into chaos once again. Song Ku wished she could cover her ears. Oh my god, Fong Duona's ability was no longer just mental it was a physical attack. Everyone who heard it suffered excruciating headaches, feeling like they had been run over by a car. In the official live broadcast room, Ah K was commentating on the battle. Ah! He suddenly exclaimed, his expression filled with indescribable emotions. 
few artificial intelligences exhibited emotions as rich as his. I strongly recommend, folks in front of your terminals, you might want to temporarily mute the volume. Listening to this kind of singing too much can damage your brain. The barrage of comments immediately flooded with laughter and remarks like, ha ha ha, thanks, already muted, and as long as Nana doesn't sing, everything's fine. Ching ha, what do you think? I'm really curious. Do you also agree with what player Seo said, that Fong Duona can't compare to Lin Yuyu? Amidst his busy commentary, Ah K didn't forget to cue in Luo Qingha. Luo Qingha's long eyelashes fluttered like butterflies, and his every movement remained as graceful as a young nobleman. However, his words showed no mercy. There's no comparison. Ha ha ha, I'm dying. Why is Luo Qingha so straightforward? I feel bad it seems Fong Duona is still his fan, right? Light a candle for Nana. But Lin Yuyu is genuinely naturally sweet, not pretending at all. Fong Duona, this kind of imitation can never match. Inside the mirror lake arena. You're the spring breeze blowing away the haze in my heart. A refreshing voice rang in the ears of Song Ku, Su Cha, and Su Xing, instantly dispelling the auditory disaster brought by Fong Duona and her band. Song Ku was deeply moved. Zhuang Qinyan had guessed it right again. Lin Yuyu's ability could indeed affect her allies. Whispers in her ears resurfaced, Kur, go and check Irene. See if she has the crystal. Song Ku wanted to argue with Lin Yuyu for giving her a nickname, but now was not the time to quibble. She nodded and leaped into the battlefield like a swallow, heading straight for Irene. She swung her sword, striking Irene's gatling gun, and demanded, Crystal, hand it, over. Irene suddenly found herself in trouble, struggling to block with her gun. No. But Song Ku's strength was too great. Even though she blocked a part of it, she still experienced a tremendous recoil, sliding back over ten meters with her heavy gun before barely stopping. At the same time, on the other side, Mechanical Head punched the guitarist of the Ferrara Star, the creator of the noise. He grunted and flew backward his electric guitar escaping his grip and soaring into the sky. Then, it spun and descended straight towards Irene. Irene had just stabilized her stance and couldn't intercept it with her gun. Seeing her about to meet her demise, Lin Yuyu suddenly spoke, shouting to Song Ku, Kur, save her. Song Ku stepped on a tree trunk, using it to propel himself into the air. His lower leg struck the electric guitar with force. The massive electric guitar instantly changed direction, wobbling as it descended towards the Anna Knights. Upon impact with the ground, it exploded with a deafening roar, filling the air with smoke. Cough, cough. After the choking gun smoke dissipated, the crowd was surprised to find that the Anna Knights had disappeared. Shortly after, the coordinates of both flags began moving rapidly, quickly getting several kilometers away from them. A haughty laughter echoed in the air from Mechanical Head, Goodbye, folks. I won't serve you. I just love taking two crystals to complete a mission. One to keep and one to throw away. Ah, it's all for fun. Fong Duona clenched her teeth in anger. Chase. The Ferrara Star closely followed the Anna Knights and left the area. Chapter, 60. The Big Star and the Little Bodyguard. Irene was helped up by her companions. This time, she had narrowly escaped death. She looked at Song Ku and Lin Yu Yu and mouthed, Thank you. Irene could tell that Song Ku's earlier attack was just a test, and the falling electric guitar was purely accidental. If she hadn't intervened in time, she might not have survived. You're welcome, Lin Yu Yu smiled lightly from a distance. Girls help girls. Irene glanced at her for a moment and felt that the person's smile seemed familiar. I owe you a favor, and I'll remember it. Irene said sincerely before turning and joining her companions in the pursuit. Shouldn't we chase, chase them? Song Ku asked with confusion. We can't catch up. It's clear that the opposite side has someone skilled at escaping. The four of us can't split up, can we? Among the four of them, only Song Ku and Su Cha could catch up to the mechanical team. If they both went to chase, the situation for Lin Yuyu and Su Xing would become extremely dangerous. 
Indeed, in just a few seconds, the priority of those two coordinates had dropped to fifth place, and they were more than 10 kilometers away. Moreover, even if they could catch up, trying to snatch the crystals from the Anna Knights while dealing with Fong Duona and Irene would likely lead to an endless and brutal battle. So, what should we do? Let's keep looking. There should be more selfish people like this. The number of crystals is decreasing, and we need to hurry. Flag coordinates refreshed. Reporting the remaining flag coordinates. The current number of advancing teams, 41. This isn't good. There are fewer and fewer flags. Lin Yuyu glanced at the tracker, her eyebrows furrowing. It was 2140, exactly 100 minutes since the start of the competition. Song Ku and her group had been searching for nearly half an hour, almost turning the entire restricted forest upside down. However, their luck had been extremely poor. The flags that refreshed later were either diagonally far away from them or on the opposite side of Mirror Lake, requiring a detour to reach. By the time they arrived, the flags had already moved for the second time, and as for the mutant zombies, they couldn't even catch a glimpse of them. This is impossible. Lin Yuyu lowered her gaze, puzzled. She wasn't usually this unlucky. Could it be could it be that someone had incredibly bad luck and was single-handedly jinxing them? A bizarre speculation emerged in her mind, and Lin Yuyu couldn't help but look at Song Ku and Su Xing ahead. These two had become distracted while walking, one teaching the other to curse and scold people. Su Xing, sis, it can't separate. You have to say it together to have the impact. Song Ku, who do you think you are? Su Xing cheerfully replied, right, it's like that. Lin Yuyu thought to herself, they really have big hearts. In a different live stream room, Ah K switched to room 161 to 1 and happened to witness this scene. He chuckled and teased, V587, as one of the wild cards in this competition, although they are very strong, it seems luck isn't on their side. They've missed the flag several times already. Now that the competition is heating up, with two-thirds of the teams advancing, our player Song is still maintaining her composure. Will she be disappointed with this result, or will she manage to create some unexpected surprises? Audience, feel free to place your bets. The viewership in room 161 to 1 reached its peak as Song Ku single-handedly took down a Muin zombie water monster. It crossed the 200,000 mark, almost on par with other popular streamers like Irene and Fong Duona. However, a drone was damaged, causing a brief blackout, and in the half hour she spent aimlessly wandering, she lost some viewers but stabilized at around 80,000. Lin Yu Yu sighed, you too, are you still in the mood to play? Didn't you hear the recent announcement? There are less than 10 spots left for advancement. Just a moment ago, the system updated the current situation, revealing that 52 teams had successfully advanced, leaving them with limited opportunities. Song Ku and Su Xing stopped their private conversation, standing up straight with a serious attitude. Shall we go and seize, seize them? Song Ku proposed a plan. Currently, there were only two remaining coordinates for the moving flags, both quite far from them. If they couldn't find any mutant zombies soon, their only option was to go for the flags. A few meters away, Su Cha, who was scouting the area, suddenly spoke up, something is approaching. Song Ku's expression turned serious as she vigilantly surveyed her surroundings. Up ahead, there was a river with calm water, and a little further was the mountainside. The forest was peaceful, with no signs of anything unusual. Everything appeared normal, except wait. The flow of the river seemed to be accelerating. Su Xing stood by the riverbank, staring intently at the water's movements. Small bubbles surfaced one after another, churning and bubbling. He swallowed nervously, could it be? Could it be another water monster? Su Xing clenched his fists tightly, his ability, ice blade, ready to be unleashed. Splash! A grotesque-looking, blue-skinned mutant zombie suddenly leaped out of the river. At that moment, water mist filled the area, and the humid air forcefully deprived everyone of their breath, making it hard to breathe. This was a zombie with water-type abilities. Lin Yu Yu reacted swiftly, taking a step back, while Su Cha and Song Ku, both close combat fighters, advanced to the front, slashing fiercely at the zombie. 
Clang. Song Ka's dual blade struck, but they met a soft water membrane, which immediately absorbed all their force, leaving the water-type mutant zombie unharmed. Su Cha's situation was similar. He had poisoned his dagger, but the water sprayed by the mutant zombie washed it all into the river. Use softness to overcome hardness and dissolve all things with water. Song Ku immediately transformed her blade into a three-edged spike and aimed for the mutant zombie's head, preparing to attack its weak point. Just then, the water in the river suddenly spun rapidly, forming several whirlpools of varying sizes. The zombie sensed danger, buried its head inside, and was smoothly swept away. It reappeared in another vortex, spraying a jet of water at them. Song Ku and Su Cha dodged to the side, avoiding the attack. This zombie was tricky. Not only did it possess challenging water abilities, but it was also extremely cunning. On the riverbank, Su Xing had been staring blankly at the sudden appearance of the creature. After some thought, he raised his palm with a lack of confidence, and a blizzard poured forth. The water-type mutant zombie, which had been shuttling back and forth in the whirlpools, was frozen in place. Frozen solidly frozen, from head to toe, every inch of skin, every sharp tooth, all frozen like ice. Song Ku, Su Cha, and Lin Yu Yu. Su Xing, ten years old, competition number 161-2, Team V587, B-level Ice Type Awakener, the chosen one, resolved a water-type mutant zombie with one move. Su Xing realized he had unintentionally become the center of attention and scratched his head sheepishly, smiling shyly. Su Cha smashed the zombie's head expressionlessly, and ice shards and frozen brain matter scattered on the ground, revealing a crystal as clear as day from within. The atmosphere among the group became subtly tense the moment the crystal appeared. Song Ku instinctively looked at Lin Yuyu. Lin Yuyu calmly nodded. You pick it up first, as we agreed. Song Ku replied and jogged over to pick it up. After rinsing it in the river water and cleaning it carefully, she gingerly placed it in his coat pocket. She also ruffled Su Xing's head, giving him credit for this accomplishment. In room 161-2 of the live broadcast, although the audience wasn't numerous, their gender preference was quite evident, and their style was decidedly unique. Ah, what a cute kid. I want to ruffle his hair. It's Su Xing, right? So cute and obedient. Help, help me. I really want to be his mommy. Damn it nobody should even think of fooling me into having kids except Su Xing. He's still an awakener. Be careful, or he'll freeze you. The moment Song Kuk picked up the crystal, Su Cha's body was covered in bulging veins. His eyes turned dark and menacing. He stood still for a few seconds, then silently returned to Lin Yuyu's side. He lowered his head and stared at her, puzzled. There's no time. Why did you let them have it? He didn't care about contracts or promises. He only knew that Lin Yuyu couldn't lose, and he didn't want her to lose. If possible, he would go and kill these two right now and snatch the crystal. Even if he wasn't a match for Song Ku, in a life or death struggle, there might still be a slim chance of winning. Su Cha, don't act impulsively, Lin Yuyu sensed the burning anger in the man in front of her. She tiptoed, one hand pressing down on his tense shoulder and the other slid down the back of his neck, as if taming a wild beast about to run amok. Behave. After a while, Su Cha's raging murderous intent gradually subsided, and his tightly wound muscles slowly relaxed. He controlled his aura and reverted back to the silent shadow he usually was. The tracker beeped, and a new announcement was made. Reporting the remaining flag coordinates, 886, 543, 1079. The current number of advancing teams, 54. After the regular announcements, unexpectedly, there was a new one. Please note that the competition organizing committee is kindly reminding you that the number of flags remaining in the field is, 1. All contestants, please do your best. Song Ko was momentarily stunned, and the joy of obtaining the crystal was dampened by a large margin. In such a short time, the two coordinates from earlier had disappeared, and the number of advancing teams had changed from 52 to 54. Now, there was only one flag left in the arena, and that was the crystal in her hand. 
Lin Yuyu's expression also grew somber. There were no extra flags left, which meant the crystal in Song Ke's hand was the only ticket to advance. She lowered her gaze, concealing all her emotions. For the vast majority of Awakeners, the throne race was an astonishing source of points, a never-ending stream of wealth, the satisfaction of power and ambition, and even a ladder to District B. However, for Lin Yuyu, none of these mattered. The sole purpose of Lin Yuyu's participation in the competition was to save her loved one's life. Even if this choice would stain her hands with blood, ruin her reputation, and make everyone despise her, she was resolute and unwavering. Su Cha, do you have confidence in killing them? Lin Yuyu used her ability to transmit her thoughts. I don't, Su Cha replied honestly. Understood then next, follow my orders. Let them be live targets for a while. Chapter, 61 Betrayal The current number of teams advancing, 54. The remaining flags in the arena, 1. Out of 10 spots for advancement, only one flag remained. If the previous announcement had left a glimmer of hope in the teams within Mirror Lake, thinking they still had a chance to find a mutant zombie, seize the crystal, then the subsequent announcement directly pronounced their death sentence. There were no surviving mutant zombies left in Mirror Lake, and among the 100 plus teams in the arena, there was only one choice left kill and seize the flag. The person holding the flag at this moment would undoubtedly become the target of everyone's arrows. Sister, are we in danger? Su Xing held Song Ke's hand, his tone filled with worry. Song Ke didn't immediately respond but instead cast her gaze on the other two. Being chased was secondary what she cared about most now was what Lin Yuyu was thinking. The precondition for their four-person cooperation was based on a sufficient number of crystals, but now that premise no longer existed. Two teams would definitely be unable to advance. Faced with such a situation, was there still a possibility of continued cooperation? Would Lin Yuyu turn against them on the spot, just like everyone else, trying to kill her to seize the flag? Song Ku held the crystals in her pocket, her fingers releasing and tightening, unsure of what to say. Lin Yuyu remained silent for a while, noticing Song Ku's tense expression. She sighed softly, showing unexpected calmness, you're really unlucky. This is the last crystal. Well, now you're the center of attention. Quickly take it to the finish line. Song Ku didn't feel good about this, how, how do you advance? Lin Yuyu's lips curled into a faint smile, and her slender fingertips poked Song Ku's shoulder. Song Ku didn't dodge. Worried about me? Since the competition specifies 64 spots for advancement, there will always be another way for those remaining. Although she said so, the outlook wasn't optimistic. The original rules were already so cruel if it dragged on to the end, she didn't know what awaited them. Don't worry, I keep my word. Oh my, judging by your expression, are you going to give the crystal to me? Even in such circumstances, Lin Yuyu still had the mood to tease her. Song Ke's fingertips touched the pearl necklace, her tone hesitant, actually, I. Before she could finish her sentence, she was abruptly interrupted. Leaves around them rustled, and a snake-like black shadow lunged toward them. The first wave of pursuers had arrived. Su Cha reacted extremely quickly, leaping into the woods. Muffled sounds came from the darkness, and the ambushing extraordinary individual was instantly eliminated. Run! Lin Yuyu urged aloud. The four of them sprinted towards the mountain summit, encountering a few more ambushes along the way, but luckily, they escaped unharmed. In no time, they reached the foot of the mountain, and a few more kilometers forward from here was the finish line for submitting the flag. Something's not right the pursuers have decreased. The wind seemed to slow down here, and the surroundings were eerily quiet, with snowflakes falling gently. Crunch. Song Ke's ears caught the sound of dry leaves being crushed. She stopped in her tracks, alertly looking around, and in the next second, a large number of awakeners surged from all directions. They were surrounded, on the essential path leading to the finish line, where numerous bloodthirsty and desperate awakeners had already laid an ambush. Boom! A deafening cannon blast marked the beginning of the looting. The firepower was too intense, and Song Ku had to step back. 
On the periphery of her vision, a familiar Gatling particle cannon was set up, the guns and roses. Rising extraordinary fire rings enclosed them, trapping the four of them inside, and the scorching flames nearly burned their skin. After Irene finished her cannon shot and saw the faces of several people within the encirclement, she was momentarily stunned. How could it be them? They had at least saved her once, and a hint of hesitation flashed in her eyes, slowing down her actions. In the official live broadcast room, all the cameras once again switched to the 161 to 1 drone. Facing the camera, AK analyzed rationally, the situation for V587 doesn't look great. On one side, there's a continuous onslaught of pursuers, and on the other, it's just a makeshift team put together temporarily, plus Team 121. Lin Yuyu and Su Cha didn't really stand out, and Ah K searched through the corners of his memory for information, this team is called named randomly, and in terms of combat capability, they seem quite casual. Su Cha from 121 to 1 disappears from the screen frequently, and the audience has a high complaint rate about him. As for Amy from 121 to 2, she hasn't shown any outstanding performance since the qualifiers and even earned the nickname Fish Queen. I wonder how they plan to deal with this. As Ah K finished speaking, a seismic change occurred in the arena. Even though the four surrounded individuals hadn't communicated in any way, their movements were oddly synchronized. Su Xing took a step back, and a chaotic snowstorm began falling from the heavily clouded sky. The temperature plummeted, and those burning fire rings instantly extinguished, leaving behind only black char. Lin Yuyu's red lips twitched slightly, and without any visible movement, the four's speed suddenly doubled. Su Cha disappeared in place, concealed in the darkness. When he reappeared, he had already moved behind one of the besiegers. With a swift strike, a cold green light flashed by, and the opponent didn't even have time to utter a sound before meeting their demise on the spot. After a successful assassination, he once again concealed himself in the shadows, waiting for the right moment, like a reaper harvesting souls, seeking the next unfortunate victim. Song Ku wielded two knives like a nimble cheetah, charging directly into the encirclement. She was a one-woman army, and all sorts of awakened abilities crumbled into nothingness in the face of her absolute force. Those who confronted her head-on couldn't withstand three moves, and their awakened energy was shaken, sending them flying. The tightly sealed encirclement was torn open by her. Ho! Unexpectedly, a ragtag army can stage a comeback like this. This coordinated assault is quite impressive, Ah K exclaimed. Luo Qingha, rarely speaking, offered an objective assessment, though outnumbered, if you didn't know in advance, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is a makeshift team. Long-range control, melee attacks, everyone's roles are clear, and their reactions are fast. Qingha is right. In competitions, there are always surprises. Nevertheless, the situation is still not optimistic. We can see that another group of pursuers is heading this way. Song Ku had just opened a path for a breakout when, in the next moment, numerous awakeners surged from behind once again. Were they planning to use a strategy of overwhelming numbers to wear them down? With a flick of her fingertips, she hurled more than a dozen throwing knives with great force. Due to the short distance, the leading awakeners didn't even have time to dodge, they all fell lifeless. An opportunity. Song Ku's eyes lit up, and she was about to charge forward. A familiar, carefree voice suddenly sounded from behind the crowd, Hey, guys, someone's trying to escape here. Anyone with control abilities, stop her. Song Ku followed the voice and indeed saw the young man with ice blue eyes and silver streaked hair again. She scolded him inwardly. This guy is so annoying. He's like a troublemaker. A violent tornado swept in, blocking the hard one escape route, forcing Song Ku to step back reluctantly. The man with ice blue eyes attacked at this moment. As he moved, a dense wall of binary code suddenly appeared in front of Song Ku. It made her dizzy. Why was this guy's ability so irritating? The man used the code as a path, and as he got closer to her, Song Ku suddenly found herself surrounded by a multitude of 101,010 codes. It left her feeling disoriented. How could this guy's ability be so vexing? The man used the code to pave the way and, as he approached her, 
he taunted and acted arrogant, nice weapons, can I take a look? Song Ko retaliated with a backhand slash, shattering the code wall, and she attempted to strike the man's forehead with her throwing knives. The man promptly stepped back and used his ability to intercept them, stopping her attack. The throwing knives were left suspended in mid-air, trembling slightly. He carefully examined them for a moment, touching his chin while muttering to himself, not actual objects, but a manifestation of abilities. Quite interesting. Before he could finish speaking, the throwing knives broke through the code wall, turning into shooting stars aimed at his eyes. The man panicked and dodged, but his face was still cut, blood flowing. He shrugged nonchalantly and suddenly turned to the people behind him, inciting the Awakeners who were surrounding them, Hey, guys, this isn't the way to do it. First, let's figure out who has the flag before we take action. Everyone realized it made sense. Grabbing the one with the flag was the way to go. A chaotic tornado rose into the air, scattering the formation of Song Ku and her three companions. Su Xing, being lightweight, was blown away about ten meters before finally hanging from a tree branch. Lin Yuyu was also pushed back by the strong wind, looking quite disheveled. Their positions had slightly changed, and the ambushers quickly discerned who was truly holding the flag. It's on the girl. Kill her. In an instant, Song Ko found herself in a fierce battle. The pressure on Lin Yuyu and Su Xing suddenly decreased. These people had completely disregarded them and were only focused on Song Ku. Hidden in the shadows, Su Cha suddenly received a secret message. Su Cha, get ready to intervene. The crystal is in her pocket. After grabbing it, don't worry about anything else, just deliver it straight to the finish line. In the official live broadcast room, Ah K was completely engrossed, as if he wanted to become the king of haste, muttering to himself, the situation doesn't look good. Will player Song's two allies choose to support her or make a run for it? Oh. They're charging forward. True love exists among mortals after all. They're truly trustworthy weight. Please, Ching Feng I offer our sincere wishes, never-ending blessings for you. A melodious song rang in Song Ku's ears. After just two lines of lyrics, she felt energized and fully revitalized. It was Lin Yuyu's ability, an enhancement buff. Su Cha also joined the fray. Song Ku gave up her position to him, and he circled around the frontline awakeners, passing by her. With a flash of a dagger in his hand, he cut through her pocket. Song Ku was stunned. She held her attack posture for two seconds. Oh dear. Player Song's ally has turned on her. Ah K lamented. Su Cha successfully made his move, then quickly disappeared into the mountains, rushing towards the finish line. Song Ko stared angrily at Lin Yuyu, accusing her with her eyes, You deceived me. Lin Yuyu averted her gaze and sighed softly in her ear, I'm sorry, but I also said that winning is more important to me. Taking advantage of no one's attention, she also withdrew from the battlefield. Now, Song Ko was left in a state of full energy, but she was trapped in a dense encirclement. The others were still unaware of what had happened, and they continued to unleash their skills on her until the latest announcement rang out. Flag coordinates refreshed. Here are the coordinates of the remaining flags, 1108, 453, 339. Damn! The flag has been moved. These coordinates were already very close to the finish line. The Awakeners who had surrounded her were in shock and immediately abandoned Song Ku, rushing toward the mountaintop. It was too late. Current number of advancing teams, 55. Please note, there are currently zero flags remaining in the arena, and a new competition format will soon begin. Sister. Su Xing had finally managed to jump down from the tree branch, and he received the announcement. His eyes blinked rapidly, and at first, he didn't understand what was happening. When he finally realized the key point, he became infuriated, jumping up and down in anger. Ah! This wicked woman! Lin Yuyu and Su Cha had advanced. She had deceived them and advanced by taking the only crystal from her own hands. Song Ku tightly gripped her twin knives, her joints cracking. Xiaoxing, let's go to the finish line, Song Ku said softly. Ha! Huh. 
Su Xing didn't understand. Was his sister so angry that she wanted to chase Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha to the finish line? Without time to explain, Song Ku accelerated, taking Su Xing to the mountaintop. There was a floating verification platform here, and ahead was an invisible barrier blocking their path. Please submit the flag, said an artificial intelligence in a mechanical tone from the window. Song Ku took a step forward, and a dazzling surge of electricity, tens of thousands of volts, suddenly emitted, as if warning anyone who dared to trespass. She looked back at the post-match resting area behind her, where figures abounded, but she couldn't see Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha anywhere. Song Ku retracted her gaze and looked up at the artificial intelligence who had spoken. The flag is, is crystal, right? Yes. As, as long as it's a crystal, it counts, counts for passing the level. Yes. The artificial intelligence paused for a moment and gave an affirmative response. Song Ku's hand moved slightly, and a green octagonal crystal, dripping with a lush hue and radiating brilliance, suddenly appeared in her palm. Does this one count? Chapter, 62 Did someone bully you? You. Surprising. Tonight's match is full of surprises indeed. Player Song has once again revealed a flag. Ah K was extremely excited, grabbing the microphone and shouting hoarsely, when did she hide it? And, dear audience, this is a flag that didn't appear in the system announcement. The barrage was filled with question marks. Am I seeing things? A green crystal, is it real? It must be fake, there was no hint in the announcement. Why would she show it if it's fake? Does she think we're all fools? In the post-match lounge, the holographic projection was broadcasting the match inside the arena. As they saw Song could take out the green crystal, some of the well-informed extraordinary individuals were in shock and disbelief. They stood up, their eyes fixed on the screen. Mr. Xiang remained calm, leisurely sipping his tea, and said, I didn't expect to see a level 2 crystal here. This old man's horizons have widened. Crystals had gradually become a strategic resource that gained popularity after the apocalypse. Awakeners had varying channels and timeliness for obtaining information about them. Some were completely unaware, while others considered themselves clever for obtaining first-hand information early, like Mr. Xiang. The Alliance officially announced four levels of crystals, level 1 white crystals, level 2 green crystals, level 3 blue crystals, and level 4 red crystals. It was said that the deeper the color, the purer the quality, and the higher the success rate for awakening and evolution. As things stood, level 1 crystals were already rare, and level 2 crystals had appeared only a few times in District B. After all, the probability of mutant zombie encounters was extremely low, and the stronger the mutant zombie, the more challenging it was to hunt. Mr. Xiang's eagle-like eyes were fixed on Song Ku in the holographic projection. Despite his age, he was not senile, and he had recognized the little girl as the arrogant thief who had stolen their A-level mission in Lilyport. Humph, she was lucky last time. Not only did she get away with it, but she also escaped from a tight encirclement, causing them to work in vain. Zhang Lei was nothing more than an ordinary D-level zombie, so he couldn't have produced a level 2 crystal. Since the other party dared to reveal it, it must have been obtained within the arena. It seemed that there was a lot of information worth digging into about this Song Ku. Mr. Xiang instructed his subordinate, find out who she is, and also, get a copy of her entire match recording as soon as possible. On the other side, Duan Mu Qi was also watching Song Ku with a deep gaze. The wound the opponent had inflicted last time still throbbed when touched, and this person would be the opponent he needed to pay the most attention to. Mr. Xiang noticed his distraction and teased, Young Duan, it seems you care a lot about this player. Duan Mu Qi smiled disdainfully. Mr. Xiang, you don't need to test me. I'll say it again no matter who the opponent is, the winner will only be me. At the gathering place of the Anna Knights, Mecha Head, Sion, tossed two crystals up and down, and suddenly exclaimed, Huh, the green crystal is actually prettier than the white one. My two crystals don't seem so appealing now. Siang's mechanical head leaned forward, closely watching Song Ku's crystal in her hand, his gaze greedy and menacing. At the verification platform, 
the AI scanned the crystal provided by Song Ku and stated in a flat, emotionless tone, I'm sorry, verification failed. Only crystals produced within Mirror Lake can be submitted as flags. Song Ku stubbornly explained, it's from, from Mirror Lake, I swear. The barrage was filled with skeptical comments. Such a scammer. Is she lying with her eyes open? I've been watching the live stream in room 161 to 1 since the lock, lock, lock you up battle. I didn't see her get a green crystal. She's audacious and not very bright. Daring to tell such a lie, doesn't she know the entire match is being recorded? There were a few faint voices defending Song Ku. Maybe you just missed it. This player is very talented. A few sporadic fair comments were quickly drowned out by various insults. So many of us didn't see it, does that mean I'm blind? Did everyone collectively go blind? Do you think AI directors are fools? With such a large crystal dropping, wouldn't they cut to that scene? She's just a scammer. Why are people defending her? Outside the screen, old Zhang, who was typing furiously, was furious. He had bet his entire fortune on Song Ku's victory. No, he couldn't accept elimination like this. Old Zhang rolled up his sleeves, got energized as if he had taken some kind of stimulant, and engaged in a heated debate with those who criticized Song Ku. In the official live broadcast room, Ah K, with great passion, stirred up the atmosphere, player Song still insists that she obtained this crystal from Mirror Lake. So, where did this unique green flag really come from? Qinghe, what do you think? Lu Qinghe cooperated very well, lowered his eyes in thought for a moment, and then with slightly parted lips, he gave his answer, water monster. Almost at the same time, Song Ku, who was confronting the AI, said exactly the same words, water monster, prod, produced the crystal. You. As expected of Qinghe, he guessed it right away. Let's take a look at the replay. Ah K raised his left hand, and the backstage director immediately played the video of Song Ku single-handedly defeating the Mirror Lake water monster. From the footage at the time, it is indeed a mutant water monster. Everyone, look here, pause. The water monster released rain arrow attacks, and only mutants can achieve such an attack. The video paused, and the water monster's flat head faced Song Ku, its ferocity far exceeding that of ordinary mutant zombies. Countless fine rain arrows struck the enormous spiritual weapon umbrella, creating a dazzling white light. Ha! Huh. After player Song saved player Su, she stayed inside the water monster for a while. Hmm the exact time is 2 minutes and 48 seconds. Could it be that she accidentally discovered the crystal at this moment? Okay, I've received a message from the backstage. Staff members are currently conducting an energy test on the water monster's corpse. Any place where a crystal is produced will undoubtedly leave behind strong radiation. The answer will be revealed soon. At the verification platform, the old-fashioned AI's eyes lit up with a line of code, as if receiving some kind of instruction. Congratulations, you have successfully advanced. Meanwhile, AK's enthusiastic voice echoed through the terminals of all the viewers, the green crystal has been confirmed to come from the Mirror Lake water monster. Congratulations to Player Song, congratulations to Player Su, congratulations to V587 for becoming the dark horse of this match and successfully advancing to the top 64. The particle electric barrier slowly opened, and Song Ku and Su Xing walked into the rest area, exhausted. Under the curious, scrutinizing, and questioning gazes of many, she walked calmly with her back straight. When she passed by Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha, Lin Yu Yu seemed to want to call out to her, but before she could, Song Ku had already walked far away. Current number of advancing teams, 56. Remaining flags in the field, 0. New format initiated. Ah K received a prompt from the earpiece and nodded. His expression became serious as he announced, Ladies and gentlemen, we will now start the endless slaughter mode. Let me briefly explain the rules, only eight teams that survive will advance, and the rest will be eliminated. The Awakeners left in the field also received the same announcement. Endless Slaughter Mode, with over 100 teams and more than 300 participants, competing for eight spots, and counting based on the final survivors. 
This also meant that those who failed wouldn't be able to leave Mirror Lake at all. The real battle royale had begun. The teams that had already advanced patted their chests in relief. Thank goodness we grabbed the flag otherwise, it would have been really frustrating. In the arena, Irene plucked a strand of hair in frustration. At this point, they had no choice but to fight to the death. Sisters, we live and die together, never betray, charge out with me. In another corner, the man with ice blue eyes murmured, Oh, I accidentally made it too big. Endless slaughter began, and all the awakeners, as if mad, started hacking at those around them, who had just been fighting alongside them. Those bloodshot madmen who had just killed their enemies one second ago now lay on the ground, killed by someone else in the blink of an eye. Screams, wails, agonizing moans this was a bloody purgatory, the most brutal arena. Even the air was filled with a heavy smell of blood. Irene blasted away an approaching awakener, and suddenly heard a painful cry behind her. Ah! She turned around in horror and saw her companion lying in a pool of blood. Irene bit her lip, tears streaming down her face, and shouted, Hold on, get closer to me, we can survive together. Outside the arena, the viewership ratings for the throne race soared once again. Blood and brutality were the hormones that stimulated the Ferrara people the most. The betting pool kept refreshing, and countless fortunes flowed like a river to the backstage authorities. The bloody massacre lasted for a full half hour, and finally, eight teams fought bloody battles and crawled out of hell. Guns and Roses lost two members. White Radish Carrot lost three members. Black Jack lost four members, and only the man with ice blue eyes survived. The remaining teams were completely wiped out. The top 64 for the throne race had been determined. As described in its promotional S, it was born after stepping over the fiery trials and thorns, treading on the blood and lives of countless people. After the Mirror Lake competition, Song Ku and Su Xing left through the player's passage in silence. Midway, Su Xing stole several glances at Song Ku, wanting to say something comforting but not knowing where to start. Blame that wicked woman. His sister seemed very unhappy. After leaving the restricted area and walking a distance, Song Ku suddenly stopped. On the main road ahead, under the dim streetlights, a very familiar silver-white wheelchair was parked there. A handsome man leaned lazily on it, supporting his chin with one hand, casually watching the dry leaves dancing in the wind. Hearing the noise, the man seemed to have sensed it long ago and raised his gaze, smiling suddenly. What's wrong? Why is your face so puffed up? Did someone bully you? Chapter, 63 Lying Low This area was specially designated as the post-race waiting area, where many friends and family groups gathered, eagerly awaiting the emergence of the competitors. Zhuang Qingyan's wheelchair was positioned at a distance from the others, his solitary figure stretched out by the streetlight. A faint smile graced his lips as he asked, Why is your face so puffy? Did someone bully you? No. Song Ku pursed her lips. Still saying no even though she felt wronged almost to the point of showing it on her face. But Xuan Qin Yan kindly didn't expose her, saying, All right, if you say there isn't, then there isn't. He paused, wearing an expectant expression, then continued, But if you ever say there is, I'll think of a way to help you get back at them. Anyway, you're my golden thigh. Bullying you is like slapping my own face, isn't it? Song Ku's mood was a mix of speechlessness and complexity. It was hard to describe her true feelings in this moment, surprise? Happiness? Gratitude? Unexpectedness? None seemed entirely accurate. It was like when she and Su Xing, as the family's hopes, confidently went out, only to be splashed with mud by other kids and end up rolling in the mud, dirty all over. Yet, when she returned home, the parents asked if she wanted them to seek revenge for her. Such thoughts were surreal, and Song Ku herself found them outlandish. She shook her head to clear her mind and quickly brushed them aside. She didn't take Zhuang Qingyan's words seriously. After all, all the power-enhanced awakeners who survived today's competition were experts in their own right. Zhuang Qingyan was just an ordinary person in a wheelchair. How could he stand up for her and seek revenge on someone else? Song Ku changed the subject, asking, Why, why are you here? 
Chuang Qinyan replied, I came to pick you up since the competition is almost over. In truth, Chuang Qinyan had set off long before Song Ke's qualification was confirmed. As he said, he came here for two reasons, to pick up the two lost children and to confirm another matter. Song Ku lowered her gaze and noticed slight wear and tear around the joints of Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair. However, overall, it still looked clean and neat. She had found this wheelchair in the Qingsong Biotech, and although it was a top-of-the-line model with all the features. The distance from the hotel to Mirror Lake wasn't that far, it was just that on such a cold day, him going out alone and running such a distance to pick them up was quite a feat. Song Ku considerately jogged up to him, grasping the wheelchair's handles, ready to push him back. Wait, Zhuang Qinyan lightly pressed her hand back. His gaze shifted to the other side of the passageway, and Song Ku and Su Xing followed his gaze. A young man with ice blue eyes was slowly emerging from the passageway. He looked like a blood soaked demon, leaving crimson imprints wherever he walked. People around him avoided him as if they feared being tainted by his presence. Lu Xinglan. A clear voice rang out, and a clean towel was thrown through the air, caught by the man with one hand. A person slowly emerged from the crowd, holding his nose in disgust. He poured water from a bottle while complaining. You must be really free, not content with just watching. You had to participate in the competition yourself and end up in this sorry state. Lu Xinglan's face was covered in blood, someone else's blood. He casually wiped it off a few times with the white towel, quickly turning it crimson. Xianing you, that's enough. Stop chattering. I didn't drag you into this, Lu Xinglan retorted. You want to drag me into it? Lu Xinglan, do you have any conscience at all? Zhuang Qingyan's hand tightened suddenly. The night breeze tousled his hair, and the slight curve of his smile slowly faded away as he gazed unblinkingly at the man not far away, the one with a teardrop-shaped mole at the corner of his eye. His expression seemed to drift off for a moment. This change was too apparent, especially considering that Zhuang Qingyan had never lost his composure before. Song could have noticed it almost immediately, and for the first time, she realized that when Zhuang Qinyan stopped smiling altogether, his expression looked terrifying. She asked him in a low voice, Do you know, know them? Those ice blue eyes had caused her quite some trouble in the arena, and if Zhuang Qinyan knew them, she needed to find out who they were. The two men on the other side soon noticed the lingering gaze on them. They turned their heads toward Song Ke's direction. Lu Xinglan still had wounds from a spirit weapon on his face but his eyes were clear, and he appeared very composed, indicating that the trouble in Mirror Lake was intentional. Xian Yu's gaze passed over Su Xing, Song Ku, and Zhuang Qinyan one by one before losing interest and shifting to his companion. He continued, When are we going back to Erja? I don't want to stay here it's so boring. Upon closer inspection, Xian Yu's appearance was indeed striking. He had an intensity that was neither too pronounced nor too subtle, embodying an aloof air of youthful arrogance along with a touch of vibrant charm. Especially that teardrop-shaped mole at the corner of his eye, it was like the finishing touch that brought his entire expression to life. I don't know them, it took quite a while before Zhuang Qinyan withdrew his gaze, his tone indifferent. Let's go. You don't know them, but you stared at them for so long. Song Ko became suspicious. Although the man was quite good-looking, when did Zhuang Qinyan become so concerned about appearances? When no one was paying attention, she sneakily assessed the man in the wheelchair, well, thin lips, straight nose, dark eyes. He's not inferior anywhere, is he? Song Kuk comforted him with a sincere tone, you, you're handsome too, no need, need to envy anyone el, else. Hmm. Zhuang Qinyan took a few seconds to understand her convoluted train of thought and couldn't help but smile, Thank you for the compliment. You're welcome, Song Ku replied calmly. The three of them hadn't walked more than a few steps when Su Xing suddenly tugged at her sleeve. Sister, look over there. Following his pointed direction, Song Ku unexpectedly spotted someone who shouldn't be here under any circumstances. Wu Wu Xianghai. Wu Xianghai looked furtive and constantly glanced around as he took a few steps. When he unexpectedly ran into them, his expression was as if he had seen a ghost. He didn't even greet them and quickly turned a corner to flee. 
He was participating in the throne race competition too, and he advanced. That's incredible, isn't it? Didn't they say only D-level or higher could sign up? Song could distinctly remember that when she was with the Azure Phoenix squad, and Chi Wen had said that Wu Xianghai was an E-level awakener. She exchanged a glance with Su Xing, both of them sharing the same bewilderment. I think I know why he can participate, Zhuang Qinyan spoke up at the right moment. Why? Song Ku asked. We don't need to rush into it let's discuss it when we get back, he said, his eyelashes twitching slightly, as he discreetly glanced towards a dark corner and lowered his voice to caution, Song Ku, take a detour. There are some unwanted followers behind us. Song Ku shivered and released her psychic power to investigate, indeed finding several lurking figures tailing them. Someone is tracking, tracking us. She whispered to confirm. Not just that. Many of the participants who left this place are being watched, Zhuang Qinyan replied. Greedy people always try to take advantage, and right now, Mirror Lake is a treasure trove of crystals, he continued. The throne race competition's organizing committee was wealthy, and the crystals earned by the participants in the arena didn't have to be handed over. They could take them directly. Song Ku had also taken that level 2 crystal with her, and she hadn't expected to be targeted as soon as she left. On second thought, these people were too audacious. Which of the teams that advanced to the top 64 was easy to deal with? Trying to snatch crystals from them? They'd probably lose their lives before they could lay their hands on the goods. However, it was best to avoid trouble if possible. Song Ku didn't look back and silently increased her pace. Following Zhuang Qingyan's guidance, they took some intricate side paths, finally managing to shake off those pursuers. After returning to the hotel, Zhuang Qingyan tried to calm down and persuade the overly excited Song Ku and Su Xing, who were eager to watch the projection together all night, by saying, it's quite late now, let's go rest first. We can discuss the competition later after I review it thoroughly tomorrow. Song Ku reluctantly agreed, all right. Zhuang Qinyan had gone to pick someone up after watching the competition. He hadn't had the chance to review the last endless slaughter mode and the true abilities displayed by other teams moreover, he had only received half the answers to what he wanted to confirm, so he needed to watch several more match recordings. As for how Song Ku had been bullied, even if she didn't want to talk about it, he could easily figure it out, right? If he wanted to know all the details, it wasn't difficult, especially since there was a mobile informant inside the arena. In the living room, Zhuang Qinyan called out to Su Xing, who was about to return to his room, Xiaoxing. What, what, what do you want? As soon as Su Xing heard his voice, he immediately felt a shiver down his spine. The painful memories of the month of devilish special training came rushing back. Don't call me like that it's disgusting. Facing Zhuang Qingyan's cunning eyes, Su Xing swallowed hard, feeling more nervous than when facing the water monster. I did my best today. Su Xing protested. Zhuang Qingyan smiled gently, you did well today. I called you for something else. Su Xing secretly sighed in relief, what is it? Come closer, and tell me how Lin Yuyu managed to deceive you all. Watching the competition in a first-person perspective had its limitations, and Song Ku's drone often lost connection, leaving some details unclear to Zhuang Qinyan. It was better to directly question another involved party. Su Xing's eyes lit up at the opportunity. Lin Yuyu has now risen to the top of his most hated people list formerly occupied by Zhuang Qinyan. At this moment, he and Zhuang Qinyan put aside their past grievances, united against a common enemy, and angrily condemned Lin Yuyu's evil deeds. Chapter, 64 Lying Low The next day, Song Ku opened her eyes and saw Zhuang Qinyan's back. He was sitting in her room, playing a silent projection repeatedly, freezing the image of the man with icy blue eyes, with a cold expression. Song Ku pulled the blanket up to her chin, lying in bed without moving, blinking her eyes silently while observing Zhuang Qinyan. In fact, she knew that Zhuang Qinyan had many secrets, and his words were sometimes true and sometimes false, but she often couldn't tell the difference. After knowing each other for so long, Song Ku, despite her foolishness, slowly realized that Zhuang Qinyan could not possibly be just an ordinary researcher, as he claimed. 
But why, even though she had been deceived just like last night, she had never been as angry as she was yesterday? Song Kook pinched the lump in the blanket, probably because their goals and interests were aligned, in a way. They could be considered as part of the same fake community, and Zhuang Qingyan's lies were mostly not directed at her and wouldn't cause her any substantial harm. Is this the special treatment of golden thighs? Song Ku's gaze became unfocused, gradually drifting away. Have you seen enough? Zhuang Qingyan seemed to have eyes in the back of his head and asked calmly. Enough, enough, Song Ku was caught off guard, not feeling embarrassed at all. She lifted the blanket and got out of bed. Fifteen minutes later, the three of them were sitting in her room for a meeting. The projection still froze on the man with ice blue eyes. Song Ku took a bite of her bread and said with her mouth full, This poor person is not in your data. That's right, Zhuang Qingyan admitted. Just like Wu Xianghai we saw last night, both of them entered the main competition through unconventional means. What do you mean by unconventional means? Su Xing took two bottles of milk and handed one to Song Ku. They both drank it down. The normal process is that D-level or higher awakeners sign up for the preliminary competition, succeed in the challenge, and meet the popularity criteria to advance to the main competition. Only teams that enter the main competition can make personnel adjustments. But they only need to buy a spot from the teams that have already advanced. Buy a spot? Didn't they say the championship rewards are attractive to everyone? Why would someone be willing to give it up? Because there is only one champion, and some people know that they can't reach that level. Zhuang Qingyan's tone was meaningful. So, as long as the other party's offer is high enough, they won't hesitate. Leaving aside the other one, does Wu Xianghai have the money to buy a spot? Su Xing expressed doubts about this. When he followed Wu's team, he had to sew clothes to make extra money. How come he can afford to buy a spot now? Wu Xianghai is indeed suspicious. I watched his recording, and although the footage was limited, his ability is definitely not something decorative it's a dark type ability with offensive capabilities. Evolved? Song Ku proposed a conjecture. Impossible, Zhuang Qingyan shook his head. Evolution only goes in the same direction as the original, it wouldn't change as drastically as his. Next time if you encounter him, be more cautious. Su Xing asked again, what is his purpose for participating in the competition? Is it also to make a wish to Ilya? I don't know about Wu Xianghai's purpose, but as for this person, Zhuang Qingyan's fingertip drew a circle in the air. And a red mark appeared on the head of the man with ice blue eyes in the projection, his name is Lu Xinglan, he's from District B. Pft cough, cough, cough. Song Kuk choked on her food, coughing loudly, and Su Xing hurriedly patted her back. Someone from District B participating in a competition in District C. This was too absurd. How bored could this person be? Not only from District B, but he's from District B8, Burjia, Zhuang Qinyan said nonchalantly. However, this participation in the competition should be his personal action. How do you even know which district he's from? Su Xing widened his eyes in amazement. Zhuang Qinyan explained calmly, Burjia is the stronghold of the Lu family. The Lu family is known for their dominant characteristic of ice blue irises. The lighter the eye color, the purer the bloodline, and the higher the status within the family. Lu family. The images of hundreds of starships crashing in the port of Hua City were still vivid in her mind. Song Ku asked hesitantly, Is it the, the Lu family's star, starship, that Lu? That's right, Zhuang Qinyan nodded. Su Xing's eyes turned red, and he almost lost his temper. Their family starships are all in such a terrible state, and instead of thinking about how to repair them, he has the audacity to come and participate in the competition. Su Weigua had bought tickets early on, planning to take him out of District F. If it weren't for the drastic reduction in the number of starships after the apocalypse, they wouldn't have been separated, and his father might not have become a zombie. Su Xing knew he shouldn't hate Wu Juamin, and he shouldn't hate the guards who couldn't protect the food factory. But he would always remember the starship that was temporarily cancelled right in front of them because of energy issues just seconds before boarding. Lu Xinglan's eye color is clearly impure, even within the Lu family, he has no say. 
Don't expect anything from him, Zhuang Qinyan said calmly. Humph, Su Xing grumbled, and there's another guy. His eyes definitely aren't ice blue. Zhuang Qinyan's eyes flickered slightly, and he didn't respond immediately. Su Xing couldn't read the signals and pointed to the corner of his own eye, saying, Yes, the one with a mole here, you haven't mentioned him yet. Song Ku reacted quickly, rubbing his head, Xiaoxing, I'm hungry. Go order, order some food. Su Xing was pushed away in a daze, completely forgetting that not long ago, he had used the same excuse to dismiss Song Ku. Shouldn't we let him keep asking? Chuang Qinyan sneered. He he, Song Ku tried to force a smile, and the dimples on her cheeks appeared and disappeared, forming a gentle wave if, if you don't want, want to say, that's fine, you don't have, have to. Zhuang Qinyan stared at those dimples for a moment, then his tone returned to normal. It's not a matter of wanting to say or not. I just accidentally remembered some unpleasant people. It's okay to tell you I'm not that petty. Mm hmm, Song Ku nodded solemnly. Ah, right, you're not petty at all. You never seek revenge. They are from the Xie family. The Xie family? Yeah, when I say the Xie family, you might not have a concept. The Supreme Marshal of Azure Phoenix, named Xie Lan. Although Song Ku was mentally prepared, she was still surprised. The Supreme Marshal of Azure Phoenix, isn't that Wu Juamin's immediate superior, the leader of those powerful Awakener soldiers? He sounded like an impressive figure. Song Ku, I watched recordings from different angles, Zhuang Qinyan focused on her as he spoke slowly, after killing that water-type zombie, did you want to give the crystal to Lin Yuyu? Zhuang Qinyan's observational skills were indeed terrifying he even captured her momentary hesitation. Song Ku nodded slightly and then shook her head quickly. At first, I, I thought about it, but later, I couldn't. Why? Because of Su Xing. Lin Yuyu's desire to win was far more urgent than hers. If it were just Song Ku, she might have really handed over the crystal, as she had said there would always be other ways to advance, and even in the face of endless slaughter mode, Song Ku could carve out a path. But she wasn't alone she had Su Xing. Sending Xiaoxing into a melee battle was too risky. At that time, Song Ku wasn't sure if the green crystal counted as a flag, so even if she had a moment of hesitation, she wouldn't have handed over the crystal. After a good night's sleep, her anger towards Lin Yuyu had diminished. They both had no other choice at that time they were just unlucky. Zhuang Qinyan looked at her for two seconds and nodded approvingly. Well done, you've grown. Su Xing returned with a pile of food, and after a simple breakfast, Zhuang Qinyan's expression became serious. Let's talk about some real matters now. Ferrara is very dangerous right now. Rather than appearing as calm and peaceful as it seemed on the surface, Ferrara was more like a simmering pot of hidden turmoil. Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair stopped by the floor-to-ceiling window, and he looked down at the mist-shrouded city center outside. The most obvious evidence lies in two aspects, first, the abysmally low employment rate for the general population in Ferrara. Finding a job here is extremely difficult, as ordinary people simply cannot compete with the vast number of artificial intelligences. AI is better suited for all job positions than humans. Since their arrival in Ferrara, they had encountered artificial intelligence in various fields. Almost 90% of job positions were controlled by these synthetic life forms occasionally, when they did encounter a non-AI human worker, it was a rare sight. No, not all, right? Song Ku paused. At least in the Awakener's base, there was the girl who watched videos and the woman at the commission center window, and they were both regular humans. She raised her question. Yeah, that's right. Those three annoying auditors were also human, Su Xing added. Zhuang Qinyan slowly shook his head. What you're talking about all belong to organizations under the Alliance. These directly affiliated organizations had their personnel assigned by the Alliance and naturally didn't compete with artificial intelligence for jobs. Apart from these special cases, Ferrara was a completely autonomous city. For ordinary people who couldn't find work and had no fixed income, they had nothing to do all day and idled away their time. The city held various large-scale entertainment events every so often, from concerts to throne race competitions. 
All of these required significant expenses. Gradually, a culture of gambling flourished, with some people getting rich overnight and others losing their entire fortunes. Some ended up taking on commissions, doing dangerous tasks for others, and not knowing when or where they would meet their demise. The wealth of this neon city was concentrated in the hands of the top 1% of major conglomerates, or rather, in the hands of those who held power behind the scenes. Outside the window, dark clouds loomed, and steel and concrete structures intersected, cutting the city into layers. When viewed from a high rise, the people below looked as tiny as ants. But what if there are fewer and fewer people, and they all die off? Su Xing couldn't help but murmur. It won't happen, Zhuang Qinyan said with a chilly smile. Don't forget, Ferrara is an open and inclusive city with no entry restrictions. New people arrive every day. Song Ku and Su Xing fell into silence, feeling a chill creeping up their spines. Ferrara welcomes everyone. Looking back on that statement now, it sent shivers down their spines. After Song Ku and Su Xing had processed this information, Zhuang Qinyan pointed to the needles placed on the table. Secondly, I accessed the dark web using your terminal and found some interesting information. What is it? Some of the previous candidates for ruling officials are conspiring to unite and resist Ilya's rule. There may be significant actions taking place in the near future. This news was even more explosive than the previous one. Could they still stay here and make money in peace? Song Ku was amazed. So, what should we do? Zhuang Qinyan narrowed his eyes in contemplation. In yesterday's competition, you attracted quite a bit of attention, and the news about having a level 2 crystal in your possession has already been made public along with the recordings. In the coming days, there may be more unscrupulous individuals coming your way. Song Ku furrowed her brow. Being greedy and wanting it all, the crystals were still scarce commodities. Combined with the false information released by the Alliance, the number of people coveting the crystal in her possession was undoubtedly going to increase. Zhuang Qinyan accessed the V587 point system backend and thought that making money would be the same with a different approach. There's still some time before the next match. I suggest that we leave Ferrara for a while to avoid trouble. Chapter 65 Zombie Cleaner. Excuse me, don't block the aisle. Another medical stretcher bed sped past, and Song Ku, wearing a khaki vest, shrank back, trying to reduce her presence in the corridor. Her back was almost glued to the wall. A crack opened in the door opposite, and inside, a patient with a bright red face, in a coma due to a high fever, was being surrounded by doctors, trying to save them. Patient's heart rate, 150 beats per minute. Have the condition of the eyes and skin been checked? Yes, for now, the radiation levels are basically within the manageable range, and no mutations have been detected so far. Transfer to intensive care first, keep the patient for observation tonight. If the quantum field inside the body remains stable, there's a high possibility the patient will awaken with abilities. Where are the new volunteers? Patient in bed 94 has completely turned into a zombie, hurry up and take them away. A deafening shout suddenly came from the next room. Here, coming. Song Cook quickly ran over, holding a short shovel in her hand, bang bang, two hits on the zombie's head, skillfully knocked out the zombie that was biting everywhere. Then picked it up by the waist, ran out, and threw it into the incinerator through a dedicated stairwell. After finishing, she ran back thump thump thump, stood against the wall, amidst the coming and going stretchers, continuing to be a quiet guardian. This was Song Ku's second day volunteering, or more precisely, her second day as a zombie cleaner. The place they were in right now was a top-tier hospital in the C60 district, Tongwan. Song Ku worked as a cleaner in the Radiation Mutation Diagnosis and Treatment Research Center on the 13th floor. Su Xing worked as a runner in the pharmacy on the 8th floor, and Zhuang Qinyan was a clerk in the archive room of the adjacent comprehensive building. As for the mysterious part-time job of Team V587, it all traces back to an internal meeting three days ago. Three days ago, Zhuang Qinyan suggested that they temporarily leave the trouble-ridden Ferrara and go somewhere to lay low. So Song Ko flipped through the terminal's commission list and found a large-scale multiplayer B-class commission that piqued her interest. 
B-Class Mission Multiplayer Mission, Support Tong Wan Medical. Mission Description, Tong Wan C-60 District has established a key discipline for radiation mutation research. Providing comprehensive treatment for various types of zombie-like patients and offering complete guidance services for pre-awakened individuals with abilities. Due to a severe shortage of medical staff, volunteers with abilities are now being recruited from the entire alliance to overcome this challenge. Mission Deadline, Indefinite Mission Reward, 0 to 1000 Alliance Coins Note, volunteers who successfully apply will gain access to C60 District within the validity period of their identity. After Zhuang Qinyan finished reading, he immediately made a decision, let's go to Tongwan. If Ferrara was the capital of music and freedom, then Tongwan was undoubtedly the city of medicine and life. After the apocalypse, as one of the very few cities where order had not collapsed, the local governing officials and security forces had put in great effort. Of course, this was also related to Tongwan's excellent medical resources. There were thousands of top-tier hospitals here, with over 10,000 practicing doctors in various fields. Almost every native resident had some medical knowledge. Tongwan's medical standards had been renowned throughout the entire alliance even before, representing the highest levels of technological expertise and comprehensive capabilities. There used to be a joke about Tongwan, no matter what critical condition, emergency, or rare disease you had. As long as a doctor from Tongwan nodded and said they could save you, even if you had just half a breath left, they could pull you back from the clutches of the King of Hell. On the other hand, if even Tongwan shook its head and said there was no hope, then there was no use struggling, and you better prepare for the inevitable. In the early days of the apocalypse, the degrade cities around Tongwan quickly fell, and a large number of zombies poured in madly. Despite this, Tongwan only remained in chaos for less than a week. After clearing out the zombies, the doctors picked up their scalpels again, doing their best to slow down the mutation process for patients who had either suffered from excessive radiation or had been bitten by zombies. Tong Wan, along with the three large shelters nearby, carried the heavy burden forward. Instead of being overwhelmed by the tide of corpses, it shone like a polished pearl. It was not only a graveyard of death but also a place of rebirth for those with abilities. Every day, some people died due to radiation outbreaks, but others survived high fevers and awakened their abilities, coming back to life. In the emergency room on the 13th floor, paramedics wheeled in a young patient. Doctor, am I going to turn into a zombie? The girl clutched a doll tightly in her arms, her voice choked with tears. There was a noticeable claw mark on her calf, and blackish blood had started oozing from the edges. Little sister, you need to stay strong, a nurse beside her comforted in a low voice. Trust us for everything else and leave it to the doctors, okay? Okay, thank you, doctor. How long ago was she bitten? Dr. Lu Ning, with short hair, hurried over from the next room, bent down to examine the girl's condition, and asked the parents beside her. She was just bitten. We rushed her to the hospital immediately, less than twenty minutes ago, the girl's mother said, her voice trembling. Lu Ning's expression remained unchanged. She gestured for the couple to step outside before saying coldly, the wound has already started to deform. We need to amputate immediately to stop the zombie transformation process. Perhaps we can save her life, but time is of the essence. You need to make a decision quickly. The girl's mother, upon hearing this dreadful news, almost fainted, but fortunately, the girl's father remained composed. After a moment of grieving, he gritted his teeth and agreed. Listen to Dr. Liu. We we agree to the amputation. Sign the consent form, prepare for surgery, Liu Ning turned and was about to head to the operating room. Dr. Liu. A colleague blocked her path, looking concerned. Don't forget the regulations. No surgeries involving suspected mutants can be performed without an awakener on guard. It's too dangerous. Then find an awakener. Lu Ning frowned. All the volunteers outside are helping with cleanup now. It may take some time to find someone available. It's a matter of life and death. I'll find someone myself. Lu Ning pushed him aside and quickly walked out of the emergency room. When she looked outside, she saw people running back and forth in the corridor, and it was chaotic. 
Only a girl in a khaki vest was standing idly in the corner. Hey, you! Lu Ning shouted. Song Ke noticed a doctor in a white gown in front of her who seemed to be talking to her. She pointed to herself, saying, Me? Yes, come here. Ah. Uh. Oh. She hurried over to the doctor in the white gown. Lu Ning quickly scanned her and noticed the words medical support on her vest, which had a unique ugliness to it. Are you a person with abilities? Yeah. Perfect, I need surgery right now, and I need a guardian. It's you. A guardian was another layer of protection for surgeries on suspected mutants. If a patient's zombification accelerated during the surgery, causing them to lose consciousness and attack the medical staff, the guardian had to deal with the threat immediately. Oh, Song Ku replied. She had only worked as a cleaner for two days, dealing with dirty and tiring tasks and confronting zombies. This was her first time entering an operating room. She put on a sterile radiation-proof suit and, after entering the operating room, was directed to stand in a corner, serving as a guardian in a different location. Lu Ning was also fully equipped. She took the surgical knife with a solemn expression. There was a touch of sternness on her face that belonged to a doctor. The scalpel in her hand could save a life, but it could also swiftly end one when it was confirmed that the patient had turned into a zombie. An hour later, the indicator lights went out, and Lu Ning came out, walking over to the couple. The surgery went smoothly, she said, her demeanor unusually calm. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Lu. The girl's parents were deeply grateful. After the couple walked away, Lu Ning stood in place, looking down at her own hands as if lost in thought. Several colleagues passed by and curiously asked, Dr. Lu, you saved a life, why don't you seem happy? Lu Ning remained silent. My original plan was to amputate just the lower leg, but the radiation spread too quickly, and I couldn't keep up. I had to remove her entire leg. A colleague tried to console her. Lu Ning, don't blame yourself. You did an amazing job. Lu Ning shook her head. If it were Director Fong performing this surgery today, he would have definitely done better, a thousand times better than me. Others sighed, Director Fong. The other doctors quickly dispersed, busy with treating other patients, and Lu Ning also needed to leave however, she noticed Song Ku still standing in the corner. We're done here. You can go back now. Okay. Song Ku removed the mask from her face, having worn it for over an hour, her black hair was soaked with sweat. It was just too hot. She used the back of her hand to fan herself. Lu Ning gave her another glance and thanked her, saying, Thank you for today. You're, you're welcome. In the current world, nobody had it easy. A young girl like Song Ku coming to such a dangerous place to volunteer probably meant her family was facing some difficulties. Moreover, she was doing the dirty and tiring work of cleaning up zombies, earning less than 200 alliance coins a day. Only lower level awakeners were willing to do such work. Even though Lu Ning had witnessed life and death countless times, she still felt a twinge of sympathy inside, saying, You've worked hard. Song Ku blinked. She had only stood there for a while because of the heat. How could Dr. Lu, who had been performing surgeries, think she had worked hard? After a busy day, Song Ku finally received her compensation and left work. Tong Wan had become somewhat desolate compared to the past, but it was still a functioning city. The majority of zombies had been concentrated in the incinerators of major hospitals, making the streets relatively peaceful. As Song Ku left the hospital, she passed by a central park. Flocks of white pigeons were pecking at rice on the ground. Children in new clothes were running around, and a scruffy-looking homeless man with a newspaper-covered head was sleeping on a bench. Passers-by sprinkled breadcrumbs into the air, attracting the pigeons to feed. The homeless man, smelling the aroma of baking, half rolled off the bench and reached out to grab some food, competing with the pigeons. The person who had thrown the breadcrumbs had a disdainful look and quickly moved away. The homeless man, oblivious to this, leaned on the ground with stubble on his face and desperately stuffed his mouth with food. His voraciousness might have choked his throat accidentally, and he started coughing violently, causing crumbs to scatter all over. The pigeons were startled and flew away in a flutter. 
Song Ku had initially walked past, but when she heard the man's severe coughing, her steps gradually slowed down. She paused for a couple of seconds and then retraced her steps, taking out an unopened loaf of bread from her pocket and placing it in front of the man. It was the hospital's lunch, which she hadn't eaten. It even had the medical support logo printed on it. Before her grandfather had settled them in District F, there was a time when they had been wandering like this, struggling to find food. This homeless man reminded her of herself when she was a child. The homeless man hesitated for a moment when he saw the extra bread in front of him, then quickly grabbed it and ate it ravenously. Song Ku walked away, thinking as she went. She wondered how much money Zhuang Qinyan and Xiaoxing had earned today. Chapter 66 Who is Tao Tao? As the sun set, hard-working laborers finished their day's work and returned home with a sense of accomplishment. That was the ideal situation, though. In reality, when the three of them, V587's trio, returned to their temporary residence, their faces didn't look very cheerful. I'm so tired Su Xing stuck out his tongue, his two thin arms hanging in front of him like a small octopus. Sister, are you tired? Well, not too much. In terms of physical exhaustion, Song Ku was doing okay. It was just that she felt dirty and immediately rushed into the bathroom to shower. Among the three of them, only Zhuang Qinyan seemed refreshed. He was dressed in a gray administrative officer uniform, and at a glance, he exuded an air of elegance fit for an office worker. However, at this moment, he was massaging his wrist, with a furrowed brow, displaying signs of patience. Sai, Song Ku sighed. Life was not easy, and making money was hard work. Speaking of which, cleaning up zombies was typically a job for lower-level awakeners. Yet here was Song Ku, an A-level awakener, not out there bravely slaying zombies but doing this. It was truly surprising. Their choice of Tongwan for their multi-person mission had a reason. The other available missions were either too far away or one-time gigs, where you finished the job and had to find the next one. They also didn't provide access permissions. After accepting a mission, you had to return to Ferrara. Only Tongwan's medical support, despite its low pay, offered a variety of positions and was a rare long-term task. So, Song Ku didn't mind. After all, earning money was earning money, and work didn't have a hierarchy of prestige. Cleaning work was cleaning work. They did it happily. The three of them sat down in a row and calculated their earnings for the day, Su Xing had 80 alliance coins, Song Ku had 180 alliance coins, and surprisingly, Zhuang Qinyan had the most, with a whopping 300 alliance coins. Technical positions were in demand. Their total income for the day reached 560 alliance coins. When combined with the bonus from the pre-qualifying matches and the top 64, they were now a well-off family. Song Ku counted the numbers in her account and felt quite pleased. Ferrara's news this morning mentioned that a top 64 team was assassinated at home, and their crystal disappeared, Zhuang Qinyan calmly dropped a bombshell. Which team? The mystical hero's team. Their strength was average, with only the team captain being a C-level awakener, while the rest were all D-level. They must have advanced purely by luck. Shortly after the competition began, they encountered a heavily injured mutant zombie, a gift that fell into their lap. They picked up a crystal for free, but now they're the first ones targeted. The other side knew they were easy prey. Song Ku frowned. Leaving Ferrara was indeed the right choice. The hidden whirlpool was escalating, and the first step was the assassination of contestants. Who knew what else would happen in the future? Su Xing looked left and right, feeling inadequate for earning the least. The little boy's male pride came up again, I want to go to the thirteenth floor tomorrow. If he couldn't earn three hundred, at least one hundred and eighty would do, right? Eight zero was just too little. Thinking about facing an endless pile of patient records tomorrow, Chuang Qingyan's wrist started to ache again. None of you are going to the thirteenth floor tomorrow. Why? We have two missions here that I think we can take. He projected the mission interface, and Song Ku and Su Xing leaned in to take a look. The first one was a C-level mission, and the requester was an owner in the Golden House community. According to him, he hadn't been able to return home for several days. 
Every time he reached the front of the building, whether he wanted to take the stairs or the elevator, it felt like hitting a brick wall. So, he wanted an awakener's help to investigate and see if they could resolve the issue. Zhuan Qinyan analyzed it logically, the Central has rated it as a C-level mission, which means the big data calculations aren't that complex. The Golden House community is also close to us, considering the processing time, a round trip in a day should be sufficient. Most importantly, his clearly defined fingers slid across the screen, reaching the last line of the mission description, this, you should like. The mission reward prominently displayed, 1000 alliance coins. Wow, this homeowner must be wealthy. Song Ku's eyes lit up. Zhuang Qinyan smiled, seemingly anticipating her reaction, take a look at the second one. The difficulty of the second mission was only D-level, and the requester was in a hurry. She mentioned that her child, Tao Tao, had been running a fever for several days. However, there were zombies roaming the floor, and she couldn't open the door at home, making it impossible to leave she suspected it was a supernatural event and wanted an awakener to lend a hand and help take her child to a nearby hospital. Ha! Huh. Song Ku noticed the connection between the two missions. The address is the same. That's right, both in the Golden House community. The requester for the second mission lives in apartment 1507 of Building G. This was interesting. In the same residential complex, one owner said they couldn't get in, while the other said they couldn't get out. Who was telling the truth? They'd probably only find out by going to the scene. The problem likely lies in Building G. We can handle both missions together it shouldn't be too difficult. Tomorrow, we'll go together, Song Ku decided. Early the next morning, Song Ku first activated the terminal at the Tongwan Mission Hall and successfully accepted the missions. Then, the three of them headed to the Golden House community. The Golden House community was a high-end residential complex, and from the outside, it seemed to have been minimally affected by the apocalypse, with greenery and public facilities largely intact. The property management was quite responsible. After confirming their awakener identities, they registered them before allowing entry. The security guard leading the way jingled his keys, the crisp sound echoing noticeably in the quiet environment. This is the building. There hasn't been any activity here for the past few days. The group stopped at the entrance of the building, and the security guard was about to leave. If you can get in and find zombies inside, just call the security team. Don't come looking for me. If there are patients with a fever, I can help you contact the nearby 5th hospital. They'll send an ambulance. The security guard was just an ordinary person, and fearing zombies was understandable. Song Ku didn't want to pressure him, okay, thank you. Once the group moved away, she carefully examined the situation in front of her. The entrance to the building was open, so why couldn't they get in? Song Ku was puzzled. She took a step forward, everything seemed normal. She took another step, still normal. She lifted her foot to step onto the stairs, preparing to enter the entrance, and then she couldn't move. There seemed to be an invisible wall in front of her, keeping her outside, and trying to move forward became exceptionally difficult. Su Xing tried to break through with his ice spikes. The sharp ice shards pierced the invisible barrier, and it seemed they were just inches away from the entrance. However, with a ding sound, they were bounced back and fell into the grassy lawn behind them, shattering into pieces. It's a domain type ability, Zhuang Qinyan said. It's somewhat similar to Maya the Jozer barrier, but with a larger range and longer duration. It's been active for at least three to five days. I have a guess, but it's better to confirm the opponent's location first. Were there awakeners inside the building? Were they releasing powers indiscriminately? Song Ku took a few steps back, looked up, and released her psychic power, trying to pinpoint the awakener's location. The other party's energy field seemed very weak, fading to just a faint hint. She could only roughly determine it was around the 15th floor. Approximately, on the 15th floor, Song Ku reported her findings. After saying it, she froze for a moment. The 15th floor, why did it sound so familiar? Could it be? Could it be? I know, I know. Is it the feverish kid from the mission? Su Xing answered a split second before her. 
Song Ku, she was slow again, not even able to keep up with Xiaoxing. Zhuang Qinyan suppressed a smile, very likely. The person is disoriented, unable to control their powers, involuntarily creating a domain. Because of this, the people inside their home can't leave. He gently patted a certain dejected head, the child's psychic power isn't strong, so when they spread their ability over such a wide area, there must be weak points. It's up to you to find them. Once we breach the weak point, there should be a few seconds of a vacuum period, enough for us to get inside. Song Ku gathered her focus, circled around building G, and manifested a spear-like object in her hand, nearly five meters in length. She prodded here and tapped there until she finally detected a weaker point on the outside of the fifth floor. Backing away to the flower bed outside, she aimed at the weak spot, took a running start, and sprinted forward. With a flick of her right hand, she traced a half arc in the air. Swish. The spear flew forward with thunderous force, piercing something in midair. Invisible ripples spread out, momentarily disrupting the psychic power surrounding Building G. Quick, let's get in. Zhuang Qinyan shouted. The three of them seized the opportunity and rushed into the building. Two seconds later, the absolute domain rebounded, returning to its original state. Zhuang Qinyan glanced back and said, Domain type abilities are not easy to break through. We can only locate the awakener responsible and persuade them to remove it. But the child is feverish and not cooperative, Song Ku expressed some concern. Okay, I'll handle the communication when the time comes, Zhuang Qinyan said. While they were talking, Su Xing, being quite responsible, went to press the elevator button. He tiptoed, pressed the up button, and with a ding, the elevator slowly arrived at the ground floor, sliding open on both sides. Several stiff-limbed zombies appeared in front of him. Su Xing gasped, and behind him, a multitude of ice spikes shot out, skewering the monsters before them. The zombies hadn't even had the chance to roar before collapsing limply to the ground. Su Xing turned back, frightened and apprehensive. He opened his mouth, intending to alert the other two, but Zhuang Qinyan and Song Ku were still engrossed in their conversation, not giving this side a single glance. Su Xing. He sighed melodramatically, realizing he was the one who had to deal with everything on his own. Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan finally came over, noticing the fallen zombies inside the elevator. They praised, well done, Xiaoxing. Su Xing, acting a bit spoiled, simply nodded his head, keeping his accomplishments and fame to himself. The group cleared the zombies out of the elevator, piled them up on the ground floor, and then proceeded to the fifteenth floor. Sure enough, there were quite a few zombies wandering on the fifteenth floor. Song Ku and Su Xing worked together to eliminate the threat. Zhuang Qinyan pressed the doorbell of 1507, saying, Hello, we're the Awakeners who received the mission. Is it your child who needs to be taken to the hospital? There was no response, so he pressed it again. Hello. This time, before he could finish speaking, the door to 1507 was abruptly pulled open. A woman with disheveled long hair and glasses appeared, tears of excitement in her eyes. Finally, I can open the door. Hurry, Tao Tao has a high fever, please take her to the hospital. Zhuang Qinyan reassured her, saying, don't worry, first bring your child out, and I'll talk to her. We've already cleared the outside. He tried to comfort the young and flustered mother while simultaneously having Su Xing contact an ambulance from the fifth hospital. The woman cradled a small figure wrapped in a blanket and brought her out. As she passed by, Song Ku glanced at the bundle and instinctively felt that something was off. Before she could fully process it, the corners of the blanket moved, and a small head poked out. A corgi with a drooping ear emerged, grinned at them, its nose moist, and let out a weak woof. Song Ku. Wait, could someone please explain why Tao Tao was a dog? An awakener dog? Chapter, 67. We kidnapped a big star. Song Ku's language system was in disarray. She and Tao Tao, who was curled up in a blanket, stared at each other in silence. Tao Tao's big eyes met her gaze for a moment, and then she turned her head away, disdainfully blowing a bubble of snot. Oh. This dog, why is it still looking down on people? Song Ku was furious. 
Zhuang Qinyan was also unusually speechless. His original plan was to communicate with this child named Tao Tao and persuade her to temporarily suppress her abilities. Now it seemed that this task was even more challenging than he had imagined. No, it should be said that this task had already surpassed the scope of what humans could accomplish. In your request, you mentioned that it's your child who has a fever Zhuang Qinyan took a deep breath, carefully choosing his words. That's right, Tao Tao is my child. The woman responded confidently. She has a fever, please hurry and take her to the hospital. Take a dog with a fever to a pet hospital. But was Tao Tao's condition due to her awakened abilities, or should she be taken to a specialized radiation center? Zhuang Qinyan rubbed his forehead. Your child, from our preliminary assessment, seems to have awakened her abilities. She sensed danger outside and created a protective field on her own, which is why you haven't been able to leave your home for the past few days. Really? The woman was quite carefree and didn't find anything unusual about her dog awakening abilities. She lifted Tao Tao affectionately and nuzzled her nose. So, Tao Tao was protecting mommy. That's amazing. Woof, woof, Tao Tao barked twice in cooperation. V587's three members watched the woman and the small dog perform their touching mother-daughter act without expression. Zhuang Qinyan cleared his throat, interrupting this warm scene. Now, Tao Tao needs to suppress her abilities before you can leave. How do we do that? The woman was cooperative and immediately asked, What do I need to do? You're her mother, don't you have some special way of communicating with her? Su Xing muttered. Tao Tao is usually quite obedient. Tao Tao, can we please suppress that thing? The woman asked hopefully. Woof. Is it done? Can we leave now? The woman looked at them with anticipation. Song Ku shook her head the protective field was still in place. Let me try. Su Xing volunteered and extended two small paws towards Tao Tao's head, glaring menacingly. Little dog, suppress your abilities. Tao Tao sneezed and sprayed him with saliva, her tiny dog face showing a hint of disdain. You do it. Su Xing wiped his face in annoyance and handed the problem over to Zhuang Qinyan. Aren't you usually good at this? Zhuang Qinyan was speechless. He could easily deal with this corgi, but trying to reason with a dog wasn't that a bit too much for him. The four people and one dog remained deadlocked for a while, unable to find a solution to make Tao Tao suppress her abilities. Suddenly, there was a rustling noise in the stairwell, and a zombie crawled up from below, swaying unsteadily as it appeared in the corridor. Oh, a zombie. Tao Tao's mother turned pale with fright, clutching Tao Tao tightly and attempting to hide inside the room. Auntie, it's all right. We'll take care of it, Su Xing quickly stopped her, patting his chest to guarantee. Song Ku turned around, her right hand flipped, a slightly thicker in the middle and slightly thinner at both ends, diamond-shaped spiked cone appeared at her fingertips. She slid the ring onto her middle finger and, with a quick flick of her wrist, started spinning it rapidly. The zombie in the corridor had also noticed the living people and lunged at them ferociously. Song Ku's spiritual weapon, a May thorn, shot out from her hand, and with a twist of her fingers, she deftly intercepted the zombie. In one go, she thrust it, and the entire skull of the zombie was lifted off, rolling on the ground like a soccer ball. The zombie, now headless, took two more steps due to momentum before crashing heavily. Sister is amazing, Su Xing, the cheerleader, applauded. Wow, that's impressive, Tao Tao's mother was also quite impressed and followed with admiration. Tao Tao peeked out from the blanket, her round eyes staring at Song Ku. She barked twice, woof, woof. What, what is it saying? Song Ku turned to Zhuang Qinyan. Zhuang Qinyan, she didn't need to trust him so much he couldn't understand dog language. However, he soon had a change in expression. The protective field has been lifted. Tao Tao looked very excited, her short tail wagging rapidly. She propped up half of her dog body, placed her front paws on her mother's arm, perked up her ears in high spirits, and barked at Song Ku again, woof. What did that mean? Song Ku had won the approval of a dog through sheer force. It felt a bit strange. 
At the fifth hospital, the doctor in charge of receiving patients looked at Tao Tao wrapped in a blanket on the counter with a troubled expression. We're not veterinarians, you know. This dog has awakened its abilities, Zhuang Qin Yen sighed and had to explain again. From stepping into the hospital gate to the triage desk, and then to the examination room, he had repeated it countless times and received countless strange looks. What? A dog with awakened abilities? The doctor's tone changed. The doctor who had just claimed were not veterinarians suddenly had a gleam in his eyes. He seemed to see his own shining future research paper. He took out his glasses from his pocket, put them on, and turned to say a few words to someone inside. Soon, a group of interns also rushed out with eager expressions. Come on, it's called Tao Tao, right? Oh, you're such a good dog. We'll make you better, don't be scared, okay? A group of doctors in white coats surrounded Tao Tao like they were observing precious research material, afraid that it might have a headache or fever. Song Ku witnessed their dramatic change in attitude, her mouth agape. The doctor looked at them, cleared his throat twice, and said seriously, let Tao Tao stay in the hospital for now. I will establish a specialized medical team to take care of her. As for the ward, you can apply for a single room. Tao Tao's mother happily agreed. After leaving the examination room, Song Ku, Tao Tao, and Tao Tao's mother said their goodbyes, and their mission here was considered successfully completed. However, Song Ku still couldn't understand, can dogs also awaken? This kind of thing sounded magical just by listening to it. Zhuang Qinyan tried to explain it to her in a simple and understandable way, there are always exceptions in everything. Radiation is indiscriminate. In theory, animals can also potentially awaken, but compared to humans, there are clear deficiencies in terms of both the capacity to endure and genetic sequences. Animals like Tao Tao are just a rare occurrence. They didn't expect such an explosive surprise hidden in a D-level mission. A few more missions like this would be enough to test their mentality. Having completed their part-time work for the day, the three members of V587 relaxed and leaned against the corridor to enjoy the breeze. The fifth hospital was quite different from the 119 hospital where Song Ku had worked a few days ago. The 119 hospital was always racing against time, with doctors in the emergency department and resuscitation constantly busy, and the 13th floor, the radiation specialist department, was even more of a disaster area. Radiation outbreaks often resulted in patients becoming more zombie-like and a threat to the safety of ordinary people. Volunteers had to maintain strict vigilance and be ready to clean at any time. But the fifth hospital seemed much calmer. In the small park below, there were lush trees, and hospitalized patients were chatting and walking. The overall atmosphere was peaceful and healing. According to the introduction, this is more of a therapeutic hospital, Zhuang Qinyan said. Tongwan Hospital had many branches, and perhaps different hospitals had different roles. Song Ko found this calm atmosphere quite pleasant. She lay on the railing in the middle of the atrium, enjoying the breeze, her gaze casually scanning the surroundings. Then, she spotted an extremely familiar figure. The person was wearing black sunglasses, a high-end gray overcoat, and her long wavy hair was not tied up this time but fell smoothly on her shoulders, snugly pressed down by a woolen hat. The woman moved gracefully, her expression cheerful, and after getting off a private steamship, she walked slowly towards the entrance of the fifth hospital. The tall man silently following her must have received instructions. He nodded and took a detour to the hospital's self-service supermarket. Lin. You. You. In her heart, Song Ku gritted her teeth as she pronounced the name. She recognized that figure even when it turned into ashes. She paid no heed to the railing and was about to jump over it to confront Lin Yuyu. Wait. Zhuang Qinyan grabbed her coat and prevented Song Ku from getting her way. Her legs were caught on the railing, and she almost ended up falling headfirst. She pouted and looked at the person stopping her, accusingly saying, She, she cheated me out of crystal. Zhuang Qinyan was both annoyed and amused. He lowered his voice and said, I didn't say you couldn't go confront her, but if you go down there so openly, what if she calls for reinforcements, and Su Cha comes back? By then, if you two have a brawl, and there's a crowd watching, won't that attract the Tongwan security team? 
we've finally obtained the admission permit don't mess it up. But but Song Ku felt so wronged, but she couldn't swallow this anger. Zhuang Qinyan stopped teasing her and quickly came up with an idea. Don't worry I have a way to catch her. I guarantee it will help you vent your frustration. Ame Thorn. Chapter, 68. We kidnapped a big star. Humming a tune, Lin Yuyu entered the fifth hospital with a graceful stride. She passed through the spacious lobby, navigated through the crowded people, and arrived at the exclusive elevator for VIP wards, pressing the button to go up. The elevator doors opened, and she found herself alone inside. She stood confidently, pressed the floor button. The metallic double doors slowly closed, and while waiting, Lin Yuyu adjusted her hair in front of the one-way mirror. As she moved, her fingertips suddenly stopped, and through the gap in her sunglasses, a sparkling snowflake slowly landed on her nose. At this time of the year, in such a sealed space, where could snowflakes come from? Lin Yuyu realized something was wrong. She desperately pressed all the floor buttons, but it was too late. The running elevator froze suddenly, coming to a slow stop, stuck halfway between floors. The space inside her car was encased in a layer of thick frost. Ka chunk. The metal sliding doors were forcibly pried open. Outside was pitch black, and in some mezzanine of an unknown floor, Song Ku, with her bare hands, forced open the elevator door. She squatted on the ground and gave Lin Yu Yu a sinister smile. Lin Yu Yu quickly took off her sunglasses, her eyes wide with shock, and her red lips were about to speak. Song Ku didn't give her a chance to speak. She delivered a swift knife hand strike to the back of Lin Yu Yu's neck. Although this celebrity was an awakener, she was a pure support type and had almost zero close combat experience. Struck by Song Ku like this, her body went limp, and she fainted on the spot. Song Ku extended her arm, grabbed her by the waist, and pulled her out of the elevator. Then, she shouted up through the elevator shaft to Su Xing above, Xiaoxing, it's a success. Su Xing's furry little head appeared on the top floor. This time, his ability had turned into ice blades. He knocked on the frozen elevator and peeled away the layers of ice and snow. In no time, the elevator returned to normal operation as if nothing had happened. Song Ku carried Lin Yu Yu like a sack and met up with her two accomplices in the corridor. We, we kidnapped a big, big star. She exclaimed in disbelief in a hushed voice. We kidnapped a big star. Su Xing repeated like a tape recorder. The two of them jumped up and twirled around in joy. Don't celebrate too soon, Zhuang Qinyan poured cold water on their excitement. We still need to find a place to hide her. Otherwise, with rainforest's tracking methods, it won't take more than ten minutes for Su Cha to locate her. Who where should we hide, hide her? Song Ku asked nervously. Zhuang Qinyan brushed non-existent dust off the blanket and smiled, I have a place in mind. It should be just right. When Lin Yuyu woke up, she found herself in a spacious hospital room, her hands and feet tightly bound. There was a dull pain in the back of her neck, and her head throbbed with dizziness. Her vision started as a blurry white expanse but gradually became clear, revealing two familiar figures. She lifted her head abruptly, only to see a teenage girl and a child sitting back to back on a chair, both glaring at her fiercely. Song Ku. Su Xing. She said in surprise. Humph, the two of them responded in unison, clearly not pleased. Why have you kidnapped me? Release me immediately. Lin Yu Yu demanded angrily. We won't release you, won't release you. I'll piss you off to death. Su Xing cheerfully gloated. Not releasing you, Song Ku also followed, adding fire. Su Cha. Su Cha. Lin Yu Yu couldn't be bothered to argue with the two of them and called out for Su Cha using her psychic power. However, there seemed to be an invisible barrier around her, trapping her psychic power within the room, preventing it from escaping. Observing her puzzled expression, Song Ku coldly huffed and said, It's useless. What do you mean? Lin Yu Yu asked. Even if you scream your throat hoarse, no one will come to rescue you. Su Xing helped her understand. Yeah. Song Ku nodded vigorously. 
Woof. From the corner came a barking sound, as if echoing the conversation between the two. Lin Yu Yu raised an eyebrow in confusion. What kind of kidnappers were these? However, Song Ku had intentionally chosen this room. It was a highly confidential double ward VIP room. To obtain this, she not only voluntarily covered Tao Tao's medical expenses but also spent a lot of contingency funds, buying a bunch of high end dog snacks. Only then did she capture Tao Tao's heart and ask it to help release a little bit of its domain. After handing her child over to the hospital, Tao Tao's mother didn't have much to do at home and was getting bored staying indoors for a few days. Just then, Song Ku took the initiative to offer help and promised to take care of Tao Tao today. So she happily made plans for afternoon tea with her girlfriends. Now, this ward has become a natural prison, with Tao Tao's domain covering it. Even if Su Cha tries, he won't be able to find it. Lin Yu Yu's heart was pounding fast. The two humans and one dog were making a ruckus, and it was really getting on her nerves. However, she guessed that something must have been done to the room, as her psychic powers were cut off, and it was pointless to continue trying. Lin Yu Yu refused to communicate with these strange beings and turned to the only normal person in the room. What exactly do you want from me? Lin Yu Yu asked. I don't want to do anything, I just want to have a good chat with Miss Lin. Zhuang Qinyan leaned against the window, his smile as cool as the cold wind, devoid of any warmth. Lin Yuyu fell silent for a moment, carefully considering the situation, then turned to Song Ku with a serious expression. Regarding Mirror Lake, Song Ku, I apologize to you. I'm sorry. If you want that crystal, I can return it to you. What compensation do you want? Within my capabilities, I'll do my best. Miss Lin, not all mistakes can be made right afterward, Zhuang Qinyan interrupted her. Even if wounds can be healed, the scars left behind are difficult to erase. Song Ku nodded, though she wanted to argue that the scars on her body could disappear, but now was not the time to correct Zhuang Qinyan. So, she endured. You're right, I feel sorry for what I've done but I don't regret it. If I had to do it again, I would. Lin Yu Yu's gaze was resolute. Because I have a reason I can't afford to lose. Song Ku, you won't trust me again, will you? Lin Yu Yu sighed, a hint of bitterness in her mouth. My initial intention in proposing cooperation was not to deceive you. If that wasn't the last crystal, we should be able to sit together and celebrate victory. Song Ku remained silent. There were no ifs anymore Lin Yu Yu had betrayed her trust, and she couldn't get over that. Betrayal is never worth forgiving, Zhuang Qinyan calmly commented. If Miss Lin feels truly guilty, she should take some practical actions. What do you want? Money? How much money? Lin Yu Yu asked. Zhuang Qinyan shook his head slowly. What kind of people do you take us for? Extortionists and thugs. Lin Yu Yu replied, from your actions, is there really a difference? Still being defiant, Zhuang Qinyan wheeled his wheelchair across the floor and approached the famous star. Lin Yu Yu, you left Ferrara and came to Tongwan, specifically to the fifth hospital, which is mainly responsible for recuperation. Why? Do you have someone here who means a lot to you? Family or friends? Is the other person hopeful to wake up, or have they already turned into zombies? I guess it should be the former, but the situation isn't great, which is why you're willing to do whatever it takes to snatch the crystal, right? Lin Yu Yu narrowed her eyes suddenly. Since we were able to capture you, it wouldn't be difficult to find out who your family and friends are and what their names are, Zhuang Qinyan replied. Unfortunately, I've been working in the archives for the past few days, responsible for compiling all the patient data admitted after the apocalypse, and there aren't many people from Ferrara. That's enough, Lin Yu Yu said expressionlessly. I admit it, let's negotiate the terms. Zhuang Qinyan gestured for Song Ku to come over and whispered to her, how do you want to get back at her? Song Ku asked curiously, do you really know the names of her family and friends? I was bluffing, Zhuang Qinyan winked at her, there's too much patient data for me to go through. In a hidden spot where others couldn't see, Song Ku secretly gave a thumbs up, impressed by Zhuang Qinyan's cunning. How about we make her do ten commissions for us? Zhuang Qinyan suggested. 
Free labor, why waste it? Song Ku's eyes lit up. Zhuang Qinyan was still wicked no, Zhuang Qinyan had a lot of good ideas. The two returned to Lin Yuyu, and Zhuang Qinyan added a precaution, Miss Lin, this time, you won't suddenly change your mind again, will you? Lin Yuyu winced as his words cut deep, mentally and physically drained, she said, I'll do as I say. If you don't trust me, you can report to my fans that I participated in the throne race, and ruin my reputation. Will that be enough? The importance of the throne race to Lin Yuyu was self-evident. She dared to make this promise, so it seemed she was genuinely willing to cooperate. Remove the barrier. If Su Cha can't find me, he will tear down the entire hospital. Song Ku and Su Xing tried to coax Tao Tao again, with Song Ku performing a sort of acrobatic act with her amethorns, thorns, and Su Xing barking woof, woof, trying to find the right frequency to communicate with the dog. Finally, Tao Tao couldn't stand it anymore and hid in the doghouse, with its round buttocks facing the two people, ignoring them completely. Lin Yuyu felt like facepalming. How did I end up being kidnapped by these people? But when she glanced at Zhuang Qinyan, who remained unfazed while watching this absurd scene, she thought that when it came to cunning, this man was the most terrifying. After coaxing Tao Tao for a long time, Tao Tao finally decided to forgive these two indecisive humans and withdrew her domain ability. Song Ku prepared herself for what was to come. In less than five minutes, a snake like figure burst into the room, heading straight for the group of people. Song Ku raised her amethorns thorns to block, and a dark green dagger flew out, embedding itself in the ground and instantly corroding a large area. Tao Tao's tail wagged frantically as it barked alertly, woof, woof. Su Cha, stop, Lin Yu Yu stopped him with a tired voice. Su Cha slowly moved forward, exuding an aura of danger in the midst of the turmoil. He walked silently in his short boots, bringing with him the damp and oppressive feeling of the rainforest. He seemed like a weapon ready to be unsheathed, his muscles taut, ready to strike at any moment. If Tao Tao was a cute puppy, then Su Cha was like an enraged watchdog, desperate to bite down on any threats, especially those who threatened his owner. Everyone in the room kept a close eye on him because when a powerful psychic lost control, the destruction they could cause was astonishing. Fortunately, Su Cha had not completely lost his sanity. He coldly glanced at the people in the room, then came to Lin Yuyu's side and knelt down to untie the tightly bound ropes. Lin Yuyu flexed her wrists, which had turned red from the tight bindings. So, what do you need me to do? Song Ko put forward the request for ten commissions. Lin Yuyu furrowed her brows, taking a moment before nodding. All right, but make sure it's done before the next match. I won't stay in Tongwan for long. Considering it's a temporary employment, Sharing your information publicly should be a basic requirement, right? Zhuang Qinyan spoke with a chilly tone. Lin Yuyu silently nodded and compromised. Lin Yuyu, A class support type, psychic ability, illusory singing. Depending on the lyrics I sing, I can apply curses or blessings. He's Su Cha, A class offensive type, psychic ability, venomous corrosion. However, he excels at assassination and in one-on-one -on -one combat, before meeting Song Ku, no one was his match. Zhuang Qinyan's speculations were indeed correct these two had sound and venomous abilities. A double A-class combination. With these two free laborers, Song Ku's excitement surged. They could take on more challenging requests and make a lot of money. Chapter, 69 Coolies, come quickly. Tong Wan, in a specialized drug transport route. The towering figure of nearly one. Nine meters moved through it, clad in a plain black vest, camouflage pants, and combat boots. Occasionally, he would bend down to clear the road debris, and when a zombie jumped out, he would ruthlessly take them down without expression. The task he was undertaking was one of the most tedious within the sea level checking the conditions of the lifeline checkpoints, clearing blocked roads. After clearing each segment, he had to pass through the outposts for confirmation to ensure unobstructed drug transport into Tongwan. Though it was a sea-level mission with a good reward, few people took it due to its dirty and tiring nature, consuming a lot of time. V587 had come, not only that but completed it quite comfortably after all, they even got two free coolies. 
Song Ku and Su Xing were acting like old bosses. Despite the cold weather, they had set up a pergola and were squatting side by side on the curb, sipping juice, and supervising Su Cha's work. They would occasionally provide some feedback. As Su Cha kicked a zombie away, the two clapped in unison. Su Cha's muscles bulged as he threw a steel bar to the side, and the two compared their wrists, regretfully realizing they both had thin arms. Their appearances seemed lacking no matter how one looked at them. Amidst the sounds of clap, wow, and ah, Lin Yuyu gradually lost herself. Once again, she asked that classic question, why was I kidnapped by people like this? Su Cha, covered in sweat, stopped in front of her. The former big star now had a bare face due to helping clear the roadblocks, with dust on her face and body. Don't do this, Su Cha took the gravel from her hand and gestured for her to rest. I'm willing to admit defeat. Lin Yu Yu gritted her teeth. Not following the rules is fine, Su Cha's gaze turned cold. I'll go kill them. Lin Yu Yu quickly stopped him, afraid he would actually do it. You don't have to. It's my debt to them in the first place. Zhuang Qinyan was right, betrayal isn't worth forgiving. Su Cha looked at Lin Yuyu. Her long lashes drooped, and when she said these words, her expression was both lost and resigned. Su Cha remained silent for a long time, and in the end, he only said two words, soft-hearted. How could Lin Yuyu not be soft-hearted? After all, she did deceive Song Ku, but she never thought of actively harming her. In the environment of Mirror Lake, survival for oneself was paramount, and she willingly accepted punishment for a mistake. Move your bricks. Why do you talk so much? Lin Yu Yu scolded. Su Cha snorted lightly, using one hand to pull off his vest and continued to work shirtless. The black snake tattoo on the back of his neck appeared more menacing in the sunlight, and the scars on his exposed back were numerous and horrifying, all old scars from years past. The two people under the pergola were also talking. Sister, are you coming this afternoon? Su Xing asked Song Ku with a pained expression. He couldn't take it anymore, his stomach was bloated. He had drunk three bottles of juice in the morning, and he didn't expect supervising would be this tough. Song Ku bit the straw and shook her head, not coming, got some something to do. She had an appointment with Lu Ning in the afternoon to visit the 119 hospital. It wasn't safe for Su Xing to stare at these two alone. Anyway, their dose of happiness for the day had already exceeded the limit, so Song Ku had given their two coolies a break. At the 119 hospital, Song Ku went around to the back window of the archives room and knocked on the wall. After a while, a slender finger opened a gap, revealing half of Zhuang Qingyan's handsome profile in gray uniform. She didn't know why he was so dedicated to the archivist's job, leaving early and returning late for several days, spending all his time here looking up information. Song Ku had her hands behind her back, yesterday, it was agreed. Zhuang Qinyan sighed, I've also said that an ordinary doctor can't cure my leg. Song Ku persisted, the, the doctors in Tongwan are very CA capable. Zhuang Qinyan locked eyes with her persistent gaze for a long time and finally compromised, okay, I'll listen to you. Song Ku pushed him to the 13th floor and found Lu Ning's office, knocking on the door in a proper manner. Come in, a cold voice came from inside. During this period, whenever she had free time, she would come to work as a zombie cleaner, and Lu Ning felt that it wasn't easy for her to support her family at such a young age. He would often take special care of her. Over time, they grew closer. After learning that she had a companion with a leg injury who could only move in a wheelchair, Lu Ning suggested that Song could bring him over for an examination whenever she had the time. After Zhuang Qingyan's blanket was pulled back, Lu Ning was momentarily stunned. This leg was not simply injured from the appearance it was grotesquely twisted, resembling being crushed by a truck. Song Ku usually had to take care of her disabled brother, and from what she said, it seemed there was also a younger brother at home. The little girl had it really tough. Lu Ning's misplaced affection for Song Ku deepened. I've scheduled a holographic scan for you. Take your brother to get the imaging done first, Lu Ning said. Song Ku had a slight objection to the term brother, not brother. Not a brother. She thought only family would be so devoted and loyal. 
Lu Ning's gaze shifted back and forth between the two, and suddenly she seemed to have a realization, thinking she had figured it all out. I'm sorry, you seem quite devoted. So, take your friend to get the imaging done. Song Ku was puzzled, feeling that there was some hidden meaning in Lu Ning's omission. Once they left the room, Song Ku asked Zhuang Qingyan, What, what do you think Dr. Lu is thinking? Zhuang Qingyan smiled faintly. You've touched her heart, I suppose. Song Ku said, Huh. After completing the holographic scan, the two returned to the office, and Lu Ning carefully examined the report. Your leg has been broken for a long time, and the wound has been repaired twice before. This has led to significant internal bone displacement. With the current level of technology, if I perform the surgery, I won't be able to achieve the restoration you're asking for. Song Ku's shoulders slumped in disappointment. Lu Ning put down the report and contemplated for a moment. I'll check with some of my colleagues to see if they have any better solutions. She swiftly made inquiries among Tong Wan's elite orthopedic surgeons while Zhuang Qinyan took back those few documents and flipped through them with a cold expression. After ending the voice calls, Lu Ning paused, then hesitantly spoke, ideally, we would insert a rhenium steel plate to externally fix the injured leg. However, reshaping the leg later is difficult. Even if you don't use a wheelchair, you may still need crutches in the future. Or, have you considered the option of a mechanical prosthetic leg? No, we haven't. Zhuang Qinyan coldly rejected the idea. The more Song Ku heard, the more disheartened she became. Even Lu Ning couldn't do anything. If Senior Fong were here. In the heavy silence, Lu Ning sighed. This was the second time Song Ku had heard her mention Senior Fong. Who exactly was this person? Every time Lu Ning felt helpless, she would bring him up, as if having this person around could solve everything. Song Ku finally voiced her curiosity. Lu Ning sighed again. Senior Fong, his name is Fang Jishu, the former genius surgeon of Tongwan. He was a legend in the medical field. Senior Fong liked to take on challenging surgeries. He wouldn't take on anything unless it was difficult and critical. I know many people criticized him for being arrogant behind his back, but so what? No one doesn't admire his remarkable skills. For every surgery Senior Fong undertook, the failure rate was zero. A doctor who has never failed a high-difficulty surgery, isn't that already a legend? What about, about him? Song Ku inquired. With such an amazing doctor, if they could find him, was there hope for Zhuang Qingyan's leg? Lu Ning's gaze darkened. He disappeared. The last time I saw Senior Fong, he was not in a good state. When the apocalypse arrived, I heard he refused to perform a crucial surgery, then disappeared from the hospital. People spread rumors that he was a deserter, refusing to save lives, devoid of a doctor's moral line. But I don't believe it. Senior Fong isn't that kind of person. He must have his reasons. After coming out of Lu Ning's office, Song Ku lowered her head, feeling down. Zhuang Qinyan turned to comfort her, it's all right, the result was within expectations. At least Dr. Lu seems reliable, she didn't push the bionic material, did she? Song Ku didn't smile. She stared into Zhuang Qinyan's eyes. You mentioned that healing type awakeners can cure, right? Zhuang Qinyan fell silent for a moment. Perhaps. To restore his leg, this healing type awakener not only needed to be at least A level but also required a solid medical foundation, familiarity with the human skeletal structure. Such a person, even if they truly existed, would undoubtedly be highly regarded by major regions, and it was unlikely they would get to know them. Song Ku leaned her head against the back of her chair again, thinking despondently. Where could she find a healing type awakener? She looked down, and outside the hospital, there were many people wearing security guard uniforms, chasing away suspicious refugees. Under the bridge, in the park, a large number of homeless people were being driven away from their original spots, leaving in confusion. What are they doing? Zhuang Qinyan glanced down and quickly recalled recent news in his mind. The current flow of people in Tongwan is too high. The city hall is strictly checking people coming in and out. Those without permits will be driven to nearby shelters. Song Ku stretched her neck. 
the disheveled homeless people couldn't be seen clearly. They huddled, shoulders slouched, leaving with unsteady steps. Chapter, 70 Coolies, come quickly. On this night, when the night was deep and quiet, Song Ku's terminal suddenly rang. The glaring red light illuminated the entire room, and she sat up, the sleepiness completely gone. On the terminal appeared an A-level urgent commission, Hello, Awakener. The following information is from the Tongwan City Hall. There's a large-scale zombie tide near the Luajia shelter. The crisis is urgent. Please assist with all your might in defending Tongwan. Luajia was the nearest shelter to Tongwan. If it was engulfed by the zombie tide, Tongwan would be wide open to danger, and its downfall was just a matter of time. Song Ku grabbed her coat and rushed to the door. Bang, bang, bang. She forcefully knocked on Zhuang Qingyan's door. There was a slight movement inside. Song Ku couldn't wait and barged in directly. Zhuang Qing. Before she could finish saying there's an urgent commission, her eyes widened. Zhuang Qingyan was leaning against the writing desk with his clothes disheveled. The silk pajamas were carelessly buttoned with two buttons, revealing clear clavicles and faint abdominal muscles. In the rush, he managed to put on some pants, but his hand was still on the belt, supporting himself against the table to maintain balance. Song Ku's mouth dropped open. Zhuang Qingyan's bangs were scattered on his forehead, and he sounded helpless, he just barged in like this? Ha! Huh. Song Ku was stunned and glanced at him again. She was in a hurry, and who knew he wouldn't properly dress while sleeping? No, he wasn't wearing anything at all. Not only did she barge in without any embarrassment, she stared at him unabashedly. Zhuang Qingyan raised an eyebrow involuntarily. They used to share a room, and he could overlook it when she slept without covering, but now they had separate rooms, and she still came and stared like this. Did this young girl not see him as a man at all? You want to watch me change clothes? No, I don't. Song Ku looked disgusted, turned around, and stepped back. Close the door, Zhuang Qingyan's indifferent voice came from behind. Song Ku hesitated and closed the door. Five minutes later, the still sleepy Su Xing was also awakened and brought into the impromptu meeting. V587 was dressed neatly, and they sat together. I want to go to Luojia, Song Ku stated her thoughts. This time, it wasn't for money and points but for Tongwan. If Tongwan fell, the medical resources here would be lost in an instant. Not to mention, Song Ku and their temporary shelter would be lost. For the entire alliance, it would be a massive disaster, essentially extinguishing the faint hope of life. Zhuang Qingyan also realized the severity of the situation and nodded in agreement, saying, All right, let's go together, but we need to be careful. Zombie tides are not easy to deal with. The three quickly packed up and were getting ready to leave. Wait, Song Ku suddenly stopped in her tracks, I forgot, there are two more. Lin Yu Yu was abruptly awakened from her sleep by a series of urgent calls. Who is it? Irritated, she ruffled her hair and answered with her eyes closed, who's disturbing me in the middle of the damn night. Come quickly, a commission, sending you the location. The person on the other side hung up after saying this, not giving her a chance to refuse. Seriously, who gives a commission in the middle of the night? Lin Yu Yu grumbled and casually threw the terminal, attempting to go back to sleep. However, soon, the constant beeping of notifications became unbearable for Lin Yu Yu. She picked up the terminal, squinting to adapt to the bright light, and identified the information on the screen. As if afraid she would fall asleep, the other side sent the location every few seconds, urging her. Come quickly, or I'll report you. Are you coming? Hurry, seven commissions left. Lin Yu Yu, Song Ku. These brats, I really owe them. Luajia Shelter. A circular iron wall tens of meters high separated the safe zone from the zombie tide. Inside the high wall, a solemn and killing atmosphere lingered, while outside the wall on the wasteland, an endless horde of zombies was converging towards this place. As Song Ku hurried along, she tirelessly sent messages to her coolies, Location, come quickly. A few minutes later, Lin Yu Yu, wearing a mask and sporting dark circles under her eyes, appeared with an unpleasant expression. 
Following her was a plain-clothed Su Cha, showing no expression as expected. You better have a good reason. Lin Yu Yu gritted her teeth with a bare face. Song Ku rushed her so much she didn't even have time to wash her face. Of, of course, I do, Song Ku gestured for both of them to look at the base of the wall. The horrifying zombies had already gathered by the wall, climbing and reaching the middle position. It was time to act quickly. After observing the situation, Lin Yu Yu was first surprised, then felt a tightness in her heart. Did Song Ku really not regard her as an outsider? Every time there was dirty and tiring work, she never forgot them. Could they endure suffering for themselves? Song Ku showed her awakener ID at the outer perimeter, and the group smoothly entered the security line. At this point in time, there were very few external awakeners arriving for support most of the people on the scene were members of the security team. Why did the zombie tide suddenly break out? Asked an external awakener. It's not sudden, sighed the uniformed security team captain. The surrounding degrade cities have been falling, and the number of zombies is increasing. They are gradually gathering here, and an outbreak is just a matter of time. What do we do now? You're not going to send us to our deaths, right? No need to trouble you, the security team captain's expression was sorrowful and resolute. The security team has a total of 230 awakeners, and we swear to fight to the end. The security team was composed of official awakeners from Tongwan, mostly local residents. After awakening, they registered locally, underwent verification, and joined the security team, enjoying the status granted by the Tongwan City Hall. Their families were here, and they had a strong sense of honor and belief compared to external awakeners. In the short time Zhuang Qinyan spent in the archives, leaving aside other matters, he had a clear understanding of the personnel information for the entire Tongwan. He had a good grasp of the structure and situation of awakeners. He glanced around and, amidst the determined gazes of the security team members, he took the initiative to speak. Captain Zhao, the situation isn't as dire as you think. You are security team Captain Zhao Liqiang turned at the voice. Me? I'm just an ordinary citizen, working in the archives of the 119th hospital. Here we go again, this familiar fabricating of identities. Song Ku shook her head in exasperation. Zhuang Qinyan calmly introduced, This is our captain, Song Ku, an A-level awakener and also an outstanding medical volunteer in Tongwan. Oh, how come her part is involved this time too? Song Ku was stunned, but after being called, she couldn't help but stand up straight. As for being an outstanding volunteer, it should be a compliment for her good work as a zombie cleaner, right? Zhao Liqiang was not in the mood to verify Song Ku's outstanding identity at the moment. He was more struck by her A-level status and looked at her for a moment longer. What do you mean by the situation not being so bad? He asked. As long as we utilize the terrain and the awakeners cooperate properly, clearing these zombies won't be a problem, Zhuang Qinyan stated directly without further ado. Zhao Liqiang's face showed surprise. Are you confident? You can't joke about something like this. Zhuang Qinyan nodded calmly. Yes, but the condition is that I take command. Zhao Liqiang fell into contemplation. He didn't have a better plan, so he was willing to give this person's words a try. But he stood up on his own initiative, and he didn't know what his purpose was. Zhuang Qinyan assessed his expression and added, Of course, if we succeed, as for the commission rewards. Zhao Liqiang immediately felt relieved. He had overthought it. They, the external awakeners, were undoubtedly here for points. No problem, I will report it truthfully to the magistrate. The battle horn sounded. Zhuang Qinyan organized the awakeners on the scene into different groups, fire and wind, thunder and water, earth and rock types then placed them in various positions. Everyone had their roles, and they strictly followed the order to use their abilities. Bright fireworks rose into the air, spreading rapidly with the help of the strong winds, swallowing the ferocious roaring zombies in a raging blaze. On the other side, a fierce storm raged, with thunder and lightning, and raindrops, a mix of both abilities, fell incessantly, causing the zombies to tremble from the electric shocks. Other combat-oriented awakeners charged out from behind the high wall, fearlessly confronting the zombies. 
At this moment, they were not just security team members or awakeners they were not motivated by fame or gain. They had grown up enjoying the shelter of Tongwan, and now it was time for them to stand up, becoming the strongest shield to defend their homeland. While individual awakeners had limited power, when they came together, their combined force was earth-shattering. Zhao Liqiang watched the awe-inspiring scene before him, his eyes moist. Tongwan wouldn't fall, and they still had hope. Amidst the intermittent bursts of light coming from Awakener's abilities, one scene stood out from the rest. Su Xing was like a human refrigeration unit. From his small body, a fierce snowstorm raged down, and countless ice crystals enveloped the zombies, freezing them into sculptures. Your indifference hurts the most like December's snowstorm my heart has already broken into two pieces. Accompanied by a melodious and haunting song, the frozen, slow-moving zombies were instantly cursed, splitting into two pieces just as Lin Yuyu had sung about. However, the eerie singing did not stop. The melody changed, transitioning into another song. I want to borrow from you borrow from you, borrow a pair of invisible wings to take you flying, flying towards the brightest light in the world. Two assassin-like figures leaped down from the wall. Crack. As they landed, the ice-sculpted zombie wall split in half, and the shattered debris filled the air. Like shooting stars, the two black dots charged into the densely packed sea of corpses. Soon after, waves splashed, and ripples appeared on the calm surface, disrupted by the intrusion. Lin Yuyu cast a speed buff on them. Song Ku and Su Cha went on a killing spree. Su Cha was surrounded by a toxic mist. Even though the zombies couldn't feel pain, their bodies rapidly disintegrated, turning into a pile of white bones. The former insect tide would probably be terrified encountering this kind of biochemical attack. Song Ku wielded a massive jagged blade longer than her own body, swinging it wildly. With each strike, it was as if a gust of wind swept fallen leaves. She mowed down the zombies in groups, and countless heads flew aimlessly. The four worked seamlessly together. Whether in ranged or melee combat, each of them was at a monstrous level. When combined, they were catastrophic. The Awakeners atop the high wall were dumbfounded. What kind of monsters were these people? Don't zone out. Speed up in the southeast continue setting traps in the west. Oh, there's one more here. He gave clear and orderly commands, overseeing the situation. V587. Everyone present silently remembered the name of this team. Cleaning up the zombie tide took a little over an hour. In the end, the scattered zombies fled in all directions, and Zhuang Qinyan ordered the Awakeners to stop. A security team member responsible for guarding the shelter hurriedly came to report. During the recent skirmish, a section of the wall was broken through, and quite a few zombies rushed in. Although they were promptly eradicated, it still resulted in casualties. Many of the refugees in that area were bitten. Captain, how should we deal with these people? Zhao Liqiang sighed helplessly. Check them one by one. If it's a mild case, send them to Tong Wan. If it's above stage 2 mutation, handle them on the spot. The degree of mutation was based on the tiered system introduced by Tong Wan. Level 1 was a mild mutation, also known as pre-spread mutation. As long as it's detected early, the spread of zombification could be effectively halted through medical procedures by amputating the affected area. For level 2 mutations, wounds festered and turned black. Excessive radiation entered the body, causing symptoms like grayish eyeballs and confusion. Even with treatment, patients couldn't be saved the best that could be done was to slow down the zombification until they eventually succumbed. When Song Ko returned from outside the wall, she happened to witness the security team inspecting and cleaning up the scene. A middle-aged man, his eyeballs cloudy and his fingers transformed into claws, was subdued on the ground, struggling desperately. Let go, I need to go to the hospital. I can still be saved. No chance. You're at stage 3 mutation. Impossible. The middle-aged man convulsed nervously, saliva flowing from his mouth, the sound of his throat raspy. Confirmed stage 3, nearing complete zombification. A security team member drew out a particle gun, bang, ending his life. Sobs broke out, and the others who had been attacked by the zombies huddled together, 
their hearts in turmoil. These were all vagrants who had just been driven away from Tongwan that afternoon. They thought Luojia was a safe haven, but little did they know they'd encounter a zombie tide at night. If they had just died outright, it would have been fine, but they were unlucky to be bitten by zombies, left to wait in a half-dead state for an inevitable fate. Song Ku looked around and unexpectedly found a person still lying by the door. As the middle-aged man's body was being dragged away, the person seemed to sense something. Slowly, they turned over and faced upwards. Song Ku caught a glimpse of a familiar logo in his pocket and took a step forward. Don't go near, Lin Yu Yu held her back, her expression serious. This person has been bitten. The scruffy bearded vagrant stared blankly at the ceiling, the open collar revealing several black bite marks. Chapter, 71 Xie Zhu In the oppressive and stifling atmosphere, the actions of the homeless man seemed particularly peculiar. He showed no interest in conversations with others, as if he hadn't heard anything, his eyes vacant, lying motionless on the ground. But his mouth moved slightly, indicating that he was indeed still breathing. It's okay, Song Ku, who was blocked by Lin Yuyu, replied softly, and continued to walk forward. She squatted down in front of the homeless man, delicate fingers pulling out a bag of bread from his pocket. Only a small half of the bread was left, and it had been left for several days, becoming dry and hard on the outside. However, the logo medical support was still visible, a bread that only volunteers in Tongwan could receive. A few days ago, in the street garden outside the 119 hospital, Song Ku had given a homeless man a piece of bread. Was it the same person? It was hard to tell as the person looked disheveled, and his face couldn't be clearly seen. Song Ku found it difficult to determine. She stuffed the bread back into the homeless man's pocket, paused for a moment, and then swiftly pulled open his collar, frowning. There were several wounds on the man's body, with white edges and beneath the crusted black clots, one could faintly see fresh red, torn flesh it didn't look new it seemed like old injuries. The homeless man allowed her actions without any sign of resistance. He glanced at her through his messy hair, his eyes devoid of much emotion. Bluish decay lines appeared on his cheeks, but he remained conscious. Song Ku was momentarily stunned, a vague and inexplicable mist of familiarity lingering in her mind. This man felt like she had met him somewhere before. The security team finished checking the others and turned to the homeless man. They noticed Song Ku crouched on the ground and hesitated, uh. They had just witnessed Song Ku, like a god of death, wreak havoc in the zombie tide, and it made them a bit apprehensive. Song Ku stepped back, making way for them. A young team member scanned the homeless man with a radiation meter, looking puzzled, level 1, how mild symptoms. The displayed value on the device was lower than that of typical mild symptoms, almost no different from a normal person. After finishing up the final matters on the high wall, Zhuang Qinyan arrived late and found Song Ku gathering with others. What's going on? He saw people gathered and casually asked. Song Ku returned to his side. With the crowd around, speaking wasn't convenient. She simply placed her forearm on the back of the wheelchair, leaned close to Zhuang Qinyan's ear, and spoke softly, that person is very strange. Zhuang Qinyan slightly leaned his body, cooperating with her whispered words. His almond-shaped eyes narrowed slightly as he looked at the homeless man, observing carefully upon hearing her words. The security team members were still perplexed. How do we handle this? The wounds haven't worsened hey, do you need to be taken to the hospital? Someone nearby chimed in, are we sure he was bitten by a zombie? Could it just be decaying wounds? His readings are quite normal. He hasn't been bitten. A woman in the corner exclaimed shakily. The remaining people in the room had managed to escape the zombie attacks through sheer luck, but they were still terribly frightened. The sudden outburst of the woman immediately caught everyone's attention. I'm not lying. This man, this man is a monster. The zombies don't bite him. Get him out of here, now. The expression of the security team members was one of doubt and astonishment. Could it be true? The homeless man lay nonchalantly at the door how could zombies not bite him? It's true, I saw it too, murmured another elderly man with white hair. The zombies don't bite him, not a single one. 
they just pass by him pass by. He would never forget the scene just now. The gruesome and evil zombies suddenly rushed in, their foul fangs crazily biting into people. Everyone panicked and fled in all directions, except for the homeless man lying on the ground. The zombies didn't even spare him a glance as they passed right over him. After repeatedly confirming the witnesses' accounts, the security team members didn't dare to be careless. One of them grabbed the homeless man by the collar and pulled him up from the ground. Hey, stop pretending to be dead, get up and talk, explain the situation properly. The homeless man was handled roughly, his head swaying along with the movement. He muttered something like a buzzing mosquito. Just kill me. What did you say? I said, kill me, he laughed hoarsely, using his finger to point at his own forehead. Like just now, bang, blow my brains out. His voice was despairing, indifferent, lacking any will to survive, just wanting to end it all quickly. Song Ku straightened her back and softly exclaimed, Ah! It's coming back to me. She realized where the strange feeling in her heart came from. Fool's Wharf, Aunt Ching. The state of this homeless man was similar yet dissimilar to Aunt Ching from back then. Similar in the sense that both were bitten by zombies, their bodies undergoing mutation, but after a certain period, they didn't degenerate into zombies, and they even retained their clear consciousness. The differences were also evident. Aunt Ching had almost completely decayed from the outside, she looked like a zombie. But this man had very few, no, almost no signs of mutation. Could someone be bitten by a zombie and not turn into one? If that were the case, then perhaps everyone's assumptions had been wrong all along. Song Ku couldn't comprehend this and asked Zhuang Qinyan about her doubts. Zhuang Qinyan scrutinized the homeless man from head to toe, a barely perceptible smile playing at the corner of his mouth. Remember when I said that most people bitten by zombies are assimilated into zombies due to the contaminated radiation impact, causing a surge in their magnetic fields? I remember, Song Ku nodded and followed his line of thought, suggesting another possibility, but, but there's a very s small, extremely low prob, probability, of a passive awakening. As she spoke, she paused. There was an exceedingly rare chance that someone who had been bitten by a zombie might awaken as an ability user. Could it be possible? The homeless man was an awakener. Could there be an awakener like him who didn't kill zombies, didn't take on missions, and didn't even want to live properly, only desiring a swift death? That's not all there's another possibility, Zhuang Qinyan said calmly. The scenario you're assuming now is that he was bitten as an ordinary person, right? Song Ku nodded. Zhuang Qinyan dropped a deep water torpedo of a question, but what if he had awakened before being bitten? Song Ku. She was left speechless by the revelation. Zhuang Qinyan smiled, of course, this is just my speculation. If we want to confirm, it will take some time. While the two were speaking, they kept their voices very low, and only a few people like Su Xing and Lin Yuyu overheard the discussion. Even Su Xing and Lin Yuyu, composed as they were, showed signs of astonishment. Song Ku, leave him. Let me observe him for a few days. Why, leave? Zhuang Qinyan pondered for two seconds, then moved his wheelchair forward and approached the security team members. Gentlemen, I have a suggestion. The security team members looked at him with awe. Mr. Zhuang, do you have any advice? I wouldn't presume to offer advice, Zhuang Qinyan gestured towards the homeless man they were holding, but there should be other empty rooms around here, right? If you're not sure, you could isolate him for now. If the zombification worsens later, we can handle it then. That makes sense, a young security team member scratched his head. Let's go with that. We'll isolate him first, and I'll go ask the captain. The group found an empty cargo warehouse, tossed the homeless man inside, set up access restrictions, and just before closing the door, the security team member looked at Song Ku and others. Uh, do you all have anything else? Zhuang Qinyan spoke, we'd like to have a few words with him. You go ahead and attend to your duties. The security team member glanced inside, oh, okay. Remember to lock the door when you leave. Only Song Ku and her four companions remained on the scene, along with the homeless man lying on the ground. Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair circled around him. 
The man was like a dead fish, lying motionless on the ground, completely non-violent and non-cooperative. Zhuang Qinyan smirked, instantly changing his mind. He decided not to communicate with him. Let's go. Let him be for a few days. Song Ku stayed put. She couldn't quite put her finger on the specific feeling, but if this homeless man was the same one she had encountered in a street garden a few days ago, then his change in condition was quite drastic. The homeless man from back then, though downcast, would at least compete with pigeons for food, indicating a glimmer of survival instinct. Now, he seemed utterly defeated, longing for a quick death. Song Ku walked into the room and once again squatted in front of the homeless man. Have you encountered something? The near-lifeless homeless man finally reacted, turning his disheveled head in her direction and grumbled irritably, I say, have you people eaten your fill? Song Ku's good intentions were met with an unkind response. She pursed her lips, and the dimples on her cheeks appeared slightly indented. The homeless man's gaze lingered on her face for a second, then he averted his head and closed his eyes, showing no further interest. He lay down on the ground, completely motionless. Two days later, at the 119 hospital, the three part-time workers, V587, were once again sitting in a row, basking in the sun during their lunch break. Taking a break together in the corridor had become their routine during this period. Today, Song Ku didn't push her coolies, Lin Yuyu and Su Cha, too much. After all, she had just assigned a B-class contract to the Big Star at the crematorium yesterday, and when they accepted the mission, the Big Star had glared at her as if she were about to stab her with a knife. Su Xing sat on the railing, swinging his legs back and forth. Suddenly, he pointed to a spot and exclaimed, Sister, look over there. He looked pleasantly surprised, clung to the railing, and leaned out halfway. Isn't that Uncle An? Song Ku was afraid he might accidentally fall, so she tightly held on to the hem of his clothes from behind. Down below, about ten meters away, a tall man walking alone turned around upon hearing their voices, and upon recognizing them, he waved. Indeed, it was An Chiwen. Song Ku tilted her head in puzzlement. It was quite strange. What was so special about Tong Wan? Why were people she knew coming here one after another? Of course, when you meet acquaintances, it's natural to say hello. The three of them left the corridor and walked towards An Chiwen. Upon meeting him, Song Ku was taken aback. This tall man, who used to exude confidence and vitality, now had sunken eye sockets and looked somewhat weary. As soon as An Chiwen saw them, he extinguished the cigarette in his mouth. Oh, it's you guys. What a coincidence. Su Xing, accustomed to reading people's expressions, sensed that he wasn't doing well. His joyful expression faded considerably, and he asked cautiously, Uncle An, why are you here alone? What about Captain Wu and the others? And Chiwen lowered his gaze, rubbed the cigarette but between his fingers, ultimately unable to discard it. The captain is still on a mission. Why aren't you with them? Xiangzi is hospitalized, and I'm here to keep watch for a couple of days. Xiangzi referred to Wang Chang, the D-level wind-type awakener in the Azure Phoenix squad. Song Ku remembered him he had traveled with them in a pickup to the Ferrara. In her memory, he was a cheerful and lively young man. Song Ku was somewhat surprised. They had been fine when they parted ways, so how did Wang Chang end up in the hospital? Was he injured? She wondered about the severity of his condition. Do, do you think we should six visit him? She asked in a low voice. They had some acquaintance with the Azure Phoenix squad. Since they had encountered them here, it seemed appropriate, both morally and socially, to pay a visit. No need, and Chiwen shifted his steps, effectively blocking their path. His voice choked up, he's lost half his body. There's no need to see. Song Ku and Su Xing fell into silence, not knowing what to say to comfort him. They found a bench and sat down. The chilly November wind swept over them, thinning out the sunlight. Looking at An Chiwen's somber expression, their mood was as uncertain as the autumn winds, with depths impossible to fathom. Song Ku had envisioned that Azure Phoenix Squad's missions would be dangerous, but she had never expected the outcome to be this horrifying. Moreover, Wu Juamin's team was composed of 40 members. 
How many were left now? What exactly were you doing, what, what kind of me mission? She asked with little hope. And Chiwen spread his arms, resting them on the back of the chair. After a while, with closed eyes, he sighed, an uncompleted mission. He held the unlit cigarette in his mouth, looking fatigued, muttering as if he had been holding it in for a long time, I've really messed up. A soldier's duty is to obey orders. I understand that, but lately, I can't help but think, am I too constrained? Seeing my teammates dwindling while the mission seems hopeless, no way forward, and now even no way back. Can't find it, can't return. Heh, can only continue to drift. Phew. And Chiwen suddenly spat out the cigarette, and with a heavy punch, he hit the chair. The entire bench shook, on the verge of falling apart. I've been damn repressed for too long, from before the apocalypse until today, a full half year, and not a hair found. What what hair? Song Ku shrank her shoulders and hurriedly reached out to steady the bench. And Chiwen sighed deeply, exhaling a breath of frustration. It's not a top secret mission, it's okay to tell you. We're looking for a key, or, rather, a person. A person who has been missing from the entire alliance for almost twelve years. Song Ku exclaimed in surprise. Zhuan Qingyan's fingers on the wheelchair paused, and he raised an eyebrow slightly. Among the three, Su Xing was the youngest and couldn't hold back his question, how is that possible? My dad said your intelligence network is very powerful. Isn't it easy to find a person? Yeah, just finding a person, how hard could it be? And Chiwen chuckled self-deprecatingly. But it's just not there. All citizen IDs, images, files, and written records about him, whether it's cameras, checkpoints, social media, or even in the corners of the star network, there's nothing. It's as if this person evaporated from the world. No one knows how he managed it. Sometimes I even suspect, did he die a long time ago, so there's no information. Only the dead can erase all traces. Is there absolutely no clue? Song Cook couldn't help but ask. There is, and Chiwen said, opening his eyes. The only clue, there's only a blurry image of him at the age of fifteen and a name. Who is he? His name is Siezhua. And Chiwen brought up the projection on the terminal. This is the only image he left before he disappeared. The three looked at it with curiosity. In the projection, the teenager had black hair and dark eyes, with rebellious brows and eyes. Due to the angle of the shot, only half of his profile was visible. He looked coldly at the camera, with a teardrop mole glistening at the corner of his eye. Chapter, 72 Root I have seen, seen this person before. And Chiwen straightened his back, and his despondent expression vanished, really? Don't joke about this. Song Ku didn't dare to be careless and looked carefully again. Although she wasn't certain if it was the same person, she had indeed seen someone similar, really, very much alike. And Chiwen's first reaction was astonishment. After calming down, doubts filled his mind, was it really this coincidental? Could it happen every time like this? During their time in Hua City, when Wu Juemin needed to repair T-014, Zhuang Qinyan, the advanced weather simulation system maintenance technician, happened to show up. Although he did eventually fix T-014, proving his words and barely dispelling their suspicions, now again, Song Ku said she had seen Xie Zhan, who the Azure Phoenix squad hadn't found for half a year. Continuous coincidences, either it was fate or someone orchestrating it. People from the Azure Phoenix never believed in fate. So, who was manipulating everything behind the scenes? If it wasn't for him personally taking Song Ku and Su Xing out of F-177 district, then Chiwen might have suspected the origins of the two a long time ago. But after Song Ku said scene, her expression remained calm, showing no signs of lying or guilt. And Chiwen hesitated, could it be she had really seen him? Song Ku didn't think too much about it she gazed at the blurry and distant image named Xie Zhan. It was said that the youth was only fifteen at this time, and his indifference had already begun to show. The Xianing Yu she had seen earlier was clearly an adult, and the way he spoke, the disdainful look in his eyes, seemed more arrogant and unrestrained, giving a significantly different impression from the Xie Zhan in the image. 
but their faces were excessively alike. Could it be that as he grew older, his personality also changed? Song Cook guessed wildly. What she said is true, we have all seen him, Zhuang Qinyan, who had been silent for a long time, suddenly spoke. As for whether he is the person you're looking for, we can't help, you'll have to verify it yourselves. Where did you see him? And Chiwen inquired. Ferrara, Zhuang Qinyan answered. And Chiwen repeated softly, Ferrara, indeed the intelligence is accurate. Song Ko provided another valuable clue, not only him, but also, also his friend. Xian Yingyu appeared at the same time as Lu Xinglan. That cunning malicious blue-eyed person at Mirror Lake had given her trouble more than once, so revealing his whereabouts to Azure Phoenix's people. Song Kook felt no guilt. We didn't have an image of him, but his friend does, and there are recordings of the competition. The throne race was Ferrara's nationwide feast, having extremely high popularity locally. Starting from the main competition, each round was live-streamed. As long as they followed this clue, the Azure Phoenix squad would find the man with a teardrop mole in the corner of his eye was only a matter of time. However, the person we saw is called Xian Yu. Zhuang Qin Yan propped up the wheelchair casually and reminded, the name is a bit different, you know. And Qiwen paused for two seconds, real or fake, we'll figure it out. Names were just code names, a principle understood by intelligent people. Regardless, this was an important clue. And Chiwen could hardly contain his excitement as he paced back and forth. I'll inform the captain right away. After searching aimlessly for so long, there was finally a glimmer of hope. How could he sit still? And Chiwen took two steps away, dialed the terminal, and quickly reported to the other side, nodding occasionally. Zhuang Qinyan looked at his retreating figure, his eyes deep. However, Song Ku remembered another detail. And Chiwen had initially mentioned they were looking for a key. A key, what is it? She asked Zhuang Qinyan curiously. Who knows? Zhuang Qinyan replied casually. You, you are you really don't know. Song Ku was surprised. Of course, I'm human too. How can a person know everything? Admitting one's ignorance doesn't mean denying oneself. Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped her head. Come on, volunteer, break time is over. The next day, Song Ku learned some good news from Anqiwen, Tongwan truly lived up to being the medical capital. Not only did the doctors save Wang Chang, but they also provided a treatment plan that could prolong his life. The damaged right half of Wang Chang's body would be replaced with bionic materials, allowing him to survive in a semi-mechanical form, somewhat similar to the Anna Knights they encountered in Ferrara. However, the surgical risks were enormous, and Wang Chang had not yet passed the critical period. And Qiwen had to stay in Tongwan for a while. After Qiangzi's transplant is done, come visit him. We'll have a meal together. And Qiwen's voice was as loud as ever, and he had regained his energetic demeanor. Oh, I'm going out tomorrow. You're a volunteer at the hospital, right? Help me support Qiangzi's side too. Song Ku was speechless. Big brother, I'm a volunteer for zombie cleanup. My daily job involves running back and forth to the incinerator. How can I support Wang Chang? Throw him into the incinerator. Oh, I forgot. That's so inauspicious. Forget what I said. I'll ask the attending doctor for help. And Chiwen slapped his forehead on the other end, the sound echoing, and Song Ku could hear it through the terminal. Where are you going? Going to U-Lab to retrieve some data. What An Chiwen was going to do tomorrow wasn't a classified mission, and he didn't hide anything. He told Song Ku openly. Where did he say he was going? Zhuang Qinyan put down the light screen in his hand and asked, raising his voice. What, what you Song Ku recalled for a few seconds, but she couldn't remember what the full name An Chiwen said was. Unique laboratory, Zhuang Qinyan's voice was low. Yes. Song Ku tilted her head, that was the correct name. Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped the wheelchair with his fingers, and after a moment of contemplation, he said something startling, he doesn't have any help, and tomorrow we happen to be free. Why not go and help? A question mark slowly appeared on Song Ku's face. 
She jumped off the writing desk, folded her arms, and stared at Zhuang Qinyan silently. Zhuang Qinyan raised an eyebrow, what's the matter? Song Ku pursed her lips, liar, you're not really this, this kind-hearted. Was she supposed to be that naive? Since when did Zhuang Qinyan start caring about others' lives? Even lending a hand, not stepping on them is considered good enough. Zhuang Qinyan chuckled, his peach blossom eyes forming a charming curve. Oh dear, you've seen through me. Do you know me so well? Speak, what, what do you want to, to do? Song Ku wasn't swayed, pressing for a clear answer. Zhuang Qinyan feigned resistance, spinning his wheelchair halfway. Song Ku circled around to face him and steadfastly blocked his way. He turned right, and Song Ku followed. Smack. She reached out and firmly held the wheelchair still. Speak. No way to escape. Zhuang Qinyan reluctantly raised his hands in surrender. Fine, I'll tell you, but you have to let go first. Song Ku didn't believe him. You, you tell me Fi first. Yu Lab is promoted as an independent laboratory to the public, but in reality. In reality, what? Few people know that it's a suborganization Qinglan uses to research special biological entities. Qinglan, again related to Qinglan. No wonder Zhuang Qinyan was so concerned upon hearing the name. So what? What do, do you want? Song Ku remained puzzled. For two reasons. On one hand, I want to know what Anqiwen is retrieving. After all, I am affiliated with Qinglan, so it's understandable, right? On the other hand, this incident also reminded me, the homeless man in Luo's shelter wasn't willing to talk, right? Some things in Yu Lab can make him talk. Don't look at me like that it's legitimate. Is it damn dangerous to go the there? Song Ku, as the captain of V587, naturally had to consider the safety of her companions. Yes, the risk rating for ULAB before the apocalypse was H high risk zone. As for now, I'm not sure. A special laboratory, researching bizarre biological species and conducting illegal experiments like gene fusion. Before the apocalypse, it was a restricted area with a high degree of confidentiality. Zhuang Qinyan couldn't be sure what the things inside had turned into now. He thought for a moment and cautiously spoke, but since Anqiwen dared to go alone, the Azure Phoenix must have cleared things beforehand. No need to worry too much. If it was really dangerous, Anqiwen wouldn't act alone, and he even had the leisure to communicate with Song Ku, showing no signs of nervousness. Then shall I ask him? Song Ku reached for the terminal. Wait, Zhuang Qinyan cleared his throat lightly, since it's about helping, how about leaving a little surprise for him? Surprise? Are you sure it's not a shock? Song Ku secretly complained, finding Zhuang Qinyan's casual suggestion quite unexpected. Her fingers slid and she accessed another communication. Since the mission seemed a bit challenging, she decided to get some more help. The so-called coolie was, of course, meant to be ordered around. After all, one shouldn't make oneself suffer when they can make others do it. The next day, An Chiwen, dressed in a sharp combat suit, glanced at the sleeping Wang Chang through the visiting window and walked out of the 119 hospital. As he stepped out of the main entrance, he stopped after a few steps. On the opposite street, five people, some sitting and some standing, turned their gazes towards him. This was a team that, even if one couldn't discern their rank, was definitely not to be messed with. A tall woman stood leaning against the shade of a tree, her appearance dazzling. She was delicately laughing, covering her lips. Beside her was a tall, wild man, his eyes lowered, exuding a restrained aura of danger. His taut muscles could erupt into combat at any moment, appearing to be a formidable opponent. In front of the two, a handsome young man sat in a wheelchair, tilting his head slightly as he chatted with a girl with shoulder-length black hair. At the very front was a ten-year-old boy, his fingertips surrounded by two sparkling snowflakes, thoroughly enjoying himself. Upon seeing him, Su Xing immediately put on a smiling face. Uncle An, we're here to help. And Chiwen couldn't help but exclaim, oh, the tone fluctuating melodiously, resonating deeply. Well, if you're helping, just help. Did everyone need to come together like this? Chapter, 
73. Root. ULAB Laboratory. The location of this laboratory had already moved beyond the scope of Tongwan and was situated at the outskirts of a nearby degrade city. A semi-underground high-tech building with a white hemispherical surface, completely sealed walls, revealing no details from the outside. Ben Chiwen, bypassing the outer defense alert, arrived at the side with a few people. The personnel inside retreated after the apocalypse, but many experimental samples and equipment couldn't be taken away in time. It took some effort to clear them. Be careful when you go in. What, go in? Song Kuk tapped along the wall but found no gaps. They didn't consider using the main entrance. Given the security level there, it was impossible to open it unless the latest heavy weapons from the Alliance were used for a continuous bombardment for a day and night. However, the material used for the walls of U-Lab was also peculiar. And Chiwen had mentioned on the way that it had an automatic repair function. There were faint traces of smoke residue on the surface, but no breaches could be found. And Chiwen took a particle cannon from his shoulder, a half-smoked cigarette dangling from his mouth, his expression relaxed and casual. Step back a bit, be careful not to get hurt. Song Ku and the others obediently stepped back two paces. And Chiwen stepped on a step, aimed the hyperparticle cannon at the wall, and the crimson light gradually condensed. In the next second, it shot out. Boom! The cannon fire blasted open the side wall, creating a hole a few meters wide. As the rubble flew, purple lightning followed closely, weaving into a dense web, firmly holding the breach and preventing it from bouncing back temporarily. It was in Chiwen's ability, controlled quite skillfully, with no energy leaking out. Come in, hurry. The group entered one after another. The laboratory was cold and sterile, with glaring white spotlights, bright glass corridors, and a lingering chemical smell in the air. Staying in such an environment for a long time could easily make a person feel dizzy and disoriented. And Chiwen, after entering, had an unusually serious expression. Stay close to me, and whatever you do, don't wander around. Although most of the dangers had been removed, Caution was still necessary. The group moved forward along the spacious corridor. Because it was too quiet, they could even hear each other's footsteps. The rooms on both sides were mostly messy, with numerous capsule storages of various sizes and shapes, most of them vacant. Occasionally, projection texts and images of certain experiment processes flashed across the electronic screens. Experimental Subject Number, RYH 9001 Biological Prototype, and Ura Alien Toad. Experimental Record, February 15th, 40 and E, 54th Gene Fusion Failure. Target Status, Deceased. Experimental Subject Number, PJK 9321. Biological Prototype, Lamprey Parasite. Experimental Record, July 22nd, 44 and E, Successful Parasitism July 29th, Host Deceased. Experimental Subject Number, SFP 2056. Biological Prototype, Lepidoptera Vertical Striped Poisonous Moth. Experimental Record, December 24, 45 and E, Radiation Levels Stable, Recommend Continued Observation. Target Status, Alive. Lin Yuyu grew paler as she ventured further in. The experiment data and the remnants of images were too disgusting. In just a short distance, she had accidentally seen frogs with two heads and over a dozen legs, funnel-mouthed seven gilled eels, and numerous grotesque images, making it impossible to distinguish the original insect species. This place was truly a nightmare for those with trypophobia. Lin Yuyu averted her gaze, took a breath, and calmed her nerves. She unexpectedly noticed that someone's complexion was even worse than hers. Song Ku, at the back of the group, stared blankly at those capsule storages. The interiors of the compartments were very clean, with no stains. However, Song Kuk felt a reddish hue and caught a hint of a pungent smell. She extended her fingertip and gently tapped the electronic label on top. What did these numbers mean? What's wrong? Did you find something? Lin Yuyu asked in a low voice. No, Song Ku was interrupted and momentarily forgot what she was thinking. She quickened her pace to catch up with the others. It must be due to poor ventilation and difficulty in breathing, 
causing hallucinations. She felt very uncomfortable in this place. And Chiwen led them to the end of the corridor, into a noticeably larger laboratory. The glass door slowly opened, revealing a giant fish tank connected to the ceiling. In the pitch black liquid, there was a huge deep sea octopus soaked, its entire body in deep red color and its body resembling jelly. It was in a semi decomposed state, with sunken eye sockets, pale eyes, and drug tubes inserted at the ends of each tentacle, floating motionless inside. And Chiwen searched the room following the signal and indeed found a dormant central system. This concealed central system had a timer function. They had missed it the last time they were here because it was turned off. A few days ago, the signal left in the laboratory suddenly detected data fluctuations and reported it to Wu Jiumin. He then ordered An Chiwen, who was still in Tongwan, to go and retrieve the data from this central system. An Chiwen took out a small chip-like object, connected it to another instrument, and began the data transfer. During the waiting time, he didn't forget to scare Su Xing playfully, just look, don't touch anything. Be careful, it might move. Su Xing, being timid, immediately clung to Song Ku's thigh, acting as a mobile accessory, keeping his eyes tightly shut throughout, too afraid to open them and look. And Chiwen chuckled twice and stopped joking. The data retrieval took about ten minutes. After it was done, they retreated along the corridor and returned to the initial fork. So far, they had only explored about half of the entire laboratory. However, the expressions of everyone present were not very pleasant. Just by deducing from the current scene, it was clear that ULAB was conducting prohibited biological experiments. Why did the Alliance allow such a black laboratory to exist? This time, An Chiwen chose the left path. This path was evidently more difficult to traverse. The ground was littered with debris and fragments, and one could easily step on gravel and shards of glass if not careful. And Chiwen explained, we don't have authorization. Last time we came, the captain had to force his way through the door. What's this? Lin Yuyu stopped, and in front of them was a tightly closed metal door. Highly glossy and with smooth lines, the access control system was firmly attached to the door, emitting a flickering light. The electronic eye automatically scanned everyone passing by, capturing various heat sources and displaying them in red characters. Recognition failed. No access. This is a hidden door. We checked the 3D map, and this should be the central control of the entire laboratory. Unfortunately, we can't open it. And Chiwen placed the signal source on the door, but the screen didn't show any fluctuations. The central control can manipulate all the lights, systems, instruments, and devices in the laboratory. However, the captain confirmed that there were no signs of life or information flow inside. If we forcibly dismantle it, it might trigger a self-destruct program, so we left it for the time being. Even Wu Juamin couldn't figure it out, so they had no means to open the door. A few of them glanced at the blinking access door and left the spot. After turning a corner, the path ahead was blocked, and there lay a huge, putrid corpse on the ground. The length of the corpse was over three meters, resembling a human and a fish. It had strange webbed hands and feet, gray-white eyeballs staring lifelessly, and horrifying sharp teeth in its mouth, capable of easily tearing an adult apart. Wow, this is so disgusting what is this? Su Xing almost jumped. Zombie fishman. This is what injured Xiangzi, and Qiwen's expression turned cold, and his purple lightning ability crackled around him. Don't worry, it's already dead. We had to evacuate in a hurry and couldn't deal with it at the time, he reassured Su Xing. Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan were okay their acceptance level had visibly increased after facing such challenges. Su Cha seemed quite composed. The one who couldn't bear it the most was Lin Yuyu. She held her nose, took a few steps back, looking disgusted. Su Cha, deal with it quickly. Su Cha took a couple of steps forward, flipped out a dagger from his palm, and stabbed the fish person's head. The residual impure blood oozed out. Just then, the dagger lit up with a faint dim light, and the fishman's body gradually corroded, turning into a liquid and eventually disappearing on the spot. And Chiwen clicked his tongue twice, his gaze stopping at the black snake tattoo on Su Cha's back, and suddenly everything made sense. 
people from the rainforest, no wonder. While everyone circled around the fishman's body, Zhuang Qingyan's wheelchair slid back, and he alone returned to the tightly sealed door. He rested his chin on his hand and stared at the door in place, expressionless, for a while. Suddenly, he let out a light sneer. Zhuang Qingyan raised his head slightly, staring directly at the door. The silver access control aimed at his pupils. Capturing biological information, the electronic eye automatically checked the iris data. The central system rapidly calculated for two seconds, and then, green characters lit up. Recognition successful. Root. Chapter, 74. A Big Moth. What are you doing? The moment the secret door opened, Song Ku appeared behind Zhuang Qinyan like a ghost. The two people's gazes collided unexpectedly. After a few seconds, Song Ku turned her head and glanced at the open door. In the mysterious silence, Zhuang Qingyan's heart beat a bit faster. At a time like this, as long as Song Ku shouted, and Chi Wen and the others would be attracted over. Although he hadn't done anything guilty, he couldn't explain the current situation at all. Song Ku hesitated for a moment, didn't shout or scream, just looked at Zhuang Qingyan quietly, and stared at him. Then she subtly turned on her tiptoe and moved to the doorway, blocking Zhuang Qingyan's figure perfectly. You, hurry up, Song Ku urged softly. Zhuang Qingyan smiled slowly. Anyway, Song Ku had chosen to stand on his side. Even though it wasn't said out loud, in that moment just now, there was a strange understanding flowing between them. Zhuang Qingyan seized the time, flashed into the dark room, glanced around, and indeed, as An Chiwen had said. It was just an ordinary control center with nothing noteworthy, let alone any forgotten important information, top secret data, and so on. However, the control center controlled the access system of the entire laboratory. The logs of visitors stored in different areas were interconnected, and one could still find some traces of the people who entered and exited ULAB over the past decade. Zhuang Qinyan unlocked the panel, rapidly inputted the commands with his fingertips, and deleted all the data from the access control. Then he surveyed the area, picked some equipment that could be taken, and stashed them all into his space. The silver wheelchair slid out silently, the secret door closed slowly, and Song Ku leaned against the wall, staring at him without blinking. Zhuang Qingyan nodded, all done. Song Ku didn't ask what he had done inside. She took the wheelchair and pushed him to catch up with An Chiwen and the others. They had been gone for two or three minutes, but because everyone's attention was focused on the fish-like zombies, they were fortunately not discovered. After clearing the zombie fishman's body, the road became clear again, and An Chiwen led the group to proceed, reaching the depths of Ulab. After leaving the cold and oppressive research lab, the light suddenly brightened, and before everyone's eyes was a glass conservatory. It was hard to imagine that in such a grim and eerie place like Ulab, there was a dreamlike transparent garden. Artificial sunlight from the top freely poured in, brightening and warming up the room. The garden was lush with vegetation, fresh air, and the display cabinets on both sides held many intact insect specimens, vivid and lifelike. The last set of data, once it's copied, were done, and Chiwen connected the chip to the cabinet-like instrument and began the data transfer. The mission was about to be completed. He relaxed his nerves, rubbed his neck, and stretched the tense shoulders. Uncle An, what kind of machine is this? Su Xing asked as she approached. This? It's a visitor systems information cabinet. Inside are all sorts of miscellaneous data, we'll take it back and see if it's useful or not. Oh, Su Xing responded obediently. He turned his little head, looking left and right, curious about everything but refraining from reaching out. The little guy was quite smart. How could he touch things randomly here? It was portrayed that way on television, with stupid cannon fodders breaking things or accidentally touching something, only for a super powerful monster to come out, leading to everyone's demise. He was not that kind of idiot. Su Xing's gaze fell on a specimen inside a display cabinet. There was a giant insect specimen, seemingly a kind of moth based on its appearance. Its grayish-white antennae were thick and short, with pitch-black compound eyes. The spread-out wings were covered in brown and black scales, with brush-like ripples around, making it dizzying after a while. 
Su Xing blinked. Just now, the large moth specimen seemed to have moved. He rubbed his eyes in disbelief and then his eyes widened slightly. He hadn't seen it wrong it moved again. Su Xing shivered, subconsciously wanting to grab his sister's leg. But when he raised his head, he realized that Song Ku was pushing Zhuang Qinyan a bit away from him. He didn't dare to run around, so he settled for the next best thing and tugged on Anqiwen's sleeve nearby. Uncle An, that specimen is moving. The garden was extremely quiet. Not only Anqiwen but also the others heard Su Xing's warning. Song Ku looked alert, looking at the glass walls, the control desk, and the display cabinets one by one. There were too many there were at least a thousand specimens here. Which one was Su Xing referring to? Soon, everyone figured out which one it was. A giant flapping moth with a body length of over 45 centimeters flew up leisurely. As it flapped its wings, a flurry of fine powder drifted down from the air, resembling a gentle rain. Vertical striped poisonous moth, female. Don't inhale those dust, Zhuang Qinyan quickly warned, they are all its eggs. The faces of everyone turned grim, hurriedly covering their mouths and noses. But an even bigger crisis was yet to come. After the mother moth appeared, countless young moths flew out from the corners of the walls, the control desk, the cabinets, and even from the shadows of the trees. They had extremely bright and vibrant colors yellow-green, yellow-brown with long hair covering their tarsal joints. They looked fuzzy, but combined with the grayish-white, they presented an obvious zombified appearance, far from being cute. They could be described as creepy. Zhuang Qinyan quickly recited a series of numbers, SFP 2056. Song Ko was puzzled at first but then lightning fast recalled the capsule warehouse they had just passed by. Experimental subject SFP 2056, the Lepidopteran vertical striped poisonous moth. According to the last experimental record, it was still alive. So this mutated poisonous moth was hiding here and using the glass garden as a warm bed to hatch its larvae. Zhuang Qingyan's reminder was correct those flying all around were definitely not dust but its parasitic eggs. It was utterly disgusting. Su Cha's dagger was swift and precise, killing one larvae with a single swipe. However, there were simply too many of these mutated insects, and they couldn't be killed off. Lin Yuyu's extraordinary singing ability was nearly useless in this situation. Every time she opened her mouth, she would inhale a multitude of bugs. Luckily, they had two awakeners capable of causing a group damage. Su Xing unleashed a blizzard, while Anqiwen was surrounded by a surge of purple electricity. Their abilities covered the garden, and a brilliant light filled the air. However, the larvae were like wildfire, cut one down, and another immediately took its place, becoming more and more numerous. No one knew how many eggs this poisonous moth had laid. There were countless little creatures dancing wildly in every direction, blocking their vision with a bright yellow color and muffling their hearing with the sound of flapping wings. Soon, they couldn't see each other clearly. A terrifying moth disaster had arrived. Focus on capturing the big ones, and Chiwen gritted his teeth and shouted these three words. He controlled the lightning to shuttle through the larvae swarm, attempting to find the culprit, the mother moth. The idea was correct, but doing this was as difficult as finding a needle in a haystack. Song Ko pushed Zhuang Qinyan toward Su Xing and Anqiwen. The two of them, by continuously releasing their abilities, barely managed to create a vacuum zone, temporarily preventing the larvae from coming closer. Then she faced the surging wave of larvae and ran her fingers over the control desk. A blue light burst forth, and in her palm, a peculiarly shaped spiritual weapon took form. Looking at the lower half, it resembled a long-handled halberd, flat and straight in structure, with a horizontal blade edge and a vertical hilt. However, the upper half was vastly different, featuring a hooked iron mesh with countless tiny barbs and blades, which were extremely sharp. Holding this iron racket, Song Ku rolled and moved towards Anqiwen. Lend me so some ability. Without a second word, Anqiwen released a dark purple thunder snake, tightly coiling around the mesh. On the surface of the spiritual weapon, the interweaving blue-purple energy glowed. With a single push from Song Ku, she jumped onto a counter, swinging the iron racket in the air. 
Crackling sounds filled the air as the larvae that hit the iron mesh were first caught by the barbs and blades, then roasted by the lightning. The powerful electric currents lit up along the mesh, and the smell of burnt protein filled the air. The larvae's bodies were instantly charred, falling like raindrops. Holding her homemade electric racket, Song Ku jumped and danced around the garden. The swarm of larvae seemed to sense the danger and huddled together, trying to evade. However, they couldn't escape. With crackling sounds, a large number of them were electrocuted. The chaotic scene, after this action, suddenly became absurd and comical. And Chiwen encountered an awakener with this kind of style for the first time. His eyes widened in astonishment, forming a complete circle. Countless thoughts piled up in his mind, ultimately condensed into a sentence, oh my goodness, impressive, really impressive. After a thorough cleanup of a large number of larvae, Song Ko finally found the hiding mother moth. The massive poisonous moth was lurking above them, circling around the artificial light sphere and continuously dispersing parasitic eggs. Song Ko swung her electric racket and fiercely struck towards it. The purple lightning and barbs emitted a dazzling light. The poisonous moth leaped into the air and skillfully evaded the attack. Song Ko pursued, striking in the opposite direction. The mother moth agilely evaded, and the mesh brushed against its wings. It received an electric shock and got pricked, causing half of its body to shiver, yet it didn't fall off. Not good it's resistant, Zhuang Qinyan said with a grave expression, throwing out a terrifying speculation. Song Ku was shocked. She almost forgot that this poisonous moth was an experimental subject. Yu Lab had undoubtedly conducted various modifications on it. Since it managed to survive, its genes had definitely mutated, perhaps more than once. The electric racket was too large. It was better suited for group attacks, and using it against the mother moth alone made the target too obvious. Moreover, An Chiwen's lightning ability had minimal effect on it. Song Ku thought for a moment and shouted, Xiao Xing, freeze it. Su Xing, with a serious expression, nodded vigorously. Okay. A small amount of ice and snow appeared in front of him, and Su Xing kept his eyes fixed on the mother moth, controlling his ability unsteadily. Also possessing a B-level AoE area of effect ability and being more experienced, and Chiwen saw what was going on and kindly advised him, don't use your eyes use your ability. Allocate a bit of your mental energy to control it more precisely. Su Xing took a deep breath inwardly, calming down. The flight trajectory of the ice and snow became more stable. He held his breath and focused, controlling his ability with great concentration. In a swift movement, he teleported near the poisonous moth, and the ice and snow broke into tiny ice crystals, some landing on its wings. The movements of the mother moth showed a slight delay. It was only a moment, but it was a rare opportunity. How could they eliminate it in one go? Among these people, one possessed the strongest ability to obliterate the evidence. Song Ku's mind raced, and she extended the iron flail back towards Su Cha. Lo lend me some A ability, she said. Su Cha hesitated for a moment, then without refusal, placed the dagger on the spiritual net. A dim green light poured out. Song Ku smoothly borrowed the ability and leaped into the air. The blue-green racket swung heavily towards the mother moth. The mother moth had just been frozen by Su Xing and struggled desperately. It flew upwards, about to escape the attack range. With a flick of her wrist, Song Ku extended the length of her spiritual weapon, and the poisoned mesh hit its body squarely. Splat! A pungent corrosive odor filled the air. The mother moth, from its abdomen to its wings and antennae, was eroded inch by inch by the toxic liquid, turning into black viscous fluid. Success! The larvae lost their leader, and in a headless and aimless manner, they attacked persistently, but they were no longer a threat. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Song Ku transformed several more electric rackets, attaching in Chiwen's abilities, and distributed one to each companion, starting to deal with the moths in the garden. Crackling sounds filled the air as the green and yellow larvae piled up on the ground, gradually reaching the height of everyone's ankles. After spending some time cleaning up, the garden finally fell completely silent. And Chiwen had already completed the data retrieval, and the murky air was no longer suitable for lingering. 
Song Ku and the others withdrew. There were still some unexplored areas in Ulab, but Enchiwen's mission was only to retrieve data. Since that was accomplished, there was no need to continue staying. The others were also not particularly interested. Just thinking about it, apart from the various strange experimental creatures, there was nothing else inside. They were, however, very interested in the iron racket Song Ku had transformed. Kor, you're really something. How did you come up with this? Lin Yuyu observed the iron racket, poking the fine thorns on the mesh with her slender fingers, and they instantly cut her skin. Give this to me, we did contribute, after all. And Chiwen also seemed quite pleased, holding on to the iron racket tightly. He hadn't expected that his ability could be used in such a clever way. Song Ku wasn't stingy, and everyone had exerted a lot of efforts inside just now. She slightly controlled her mental energy, cutting off her connection with this batch of spiritual weapons. She straightforwardly said, Here, for all of you. Back in Tong Wan, the temporary team parted ways. And Chiwen had to return to the hospital, and Lin Yuyu also informed them of the upcoming arrangements. The famous celebrity from District C, after a period of excitement, had visibly lost weight, but she appeared much more resilient. Lin Yuyu smiled at Song Ku. Just to make it clear, I'm not trying to avoid my debt. The top 32 game is about to start, and given my job nature and some personal matters to handle, I have to return to Ferrara tomorrow. As for the remaining two tasks, I'll owe you for now. You can contact me when you need them. Song Ku nodded. She didn't have any other tasks at the moment, so there was no need to stop Lin Yuyu from leaving. Anyway, whether it was Ferrara or Tong Wan, catching Lin Yuyu as a coolie wouldn't be difficult. The three members of V587 returned to their residence. Su Xing kept yelling about parasites, parasites all the way. Zhuang Qinyan and Song Ku were made itchy all over by his words. Originally, they weren't worried, but Su Xing scared them with his remarks, so they rushed back to their rooms and took a shower. With one hand supporting the crutch, Zhuang Qinyan came out of the bathroom, wiping his wet hair. He casually glanced and saw someone sitting on his bed. Also with wet hair, dripping down to the shoulders, the small face looked extremely serious, staring intently at him. Oh, it's time for the settlement of accounts. Zhuang Qinyan didn't know whether to laugh or cry. The next moment, he sighed softly in his heart. She didn't even knock on the door. Chapter, 75 Did I guess it right? Dr. Fong Song Ku silently watched Zhuang Qinyan. Since picking up this man in the pouring rain, her wandering journey has undergone indescribable changes. Things she couldn't understand before, as long as she asked, she could get answers from him, information about the apocalypse, abilities. Qinglan, C grade districts, commission tasks Zhuang Qinyan said he wasn't omniscient, but in Song Ku's eyes, he knew everything. As long as Zhuang Qinyan was by her side, even ignorance became a luxury. Song Ku would no longer feel puzzled about the unknown world. Everything could be solved theoretically, and she only needed to be responsible for execution. But this didn't mean she lost her ability to think. Who is Zhuang Qinyan, what is his true identity? An ordinary researcher at Qinglan Institute? Absolutely impossible. The first time they met, he said he was a drug researcher. After encountering the Azure Phoenix Squad, he changed his claim to a weather mimicry system maintenance engineer. It seemed that Zhuang Qinyan could easily come up with any identity that favored him, completely indifferent to its authenticity. And his true origin was concealed in an unclear fog, surrounded by layers. Unless he personally tore apart the layers of disguised veils, Song Ku would probably never know. In front of the ULAB's secret entrance, Song Ku caught Zhuang Qinyan in the act. He quietly left the team, wanting to do something, and this something couldn't be known to others. Since when did he start his secretive plans? From when he proposed to go to ULAB with Enchiwen? Or even earlier, from when he knew that the Azure Phoenix Squad's mission was to find someone who had been missing for a long time? Song Ku was not a fool. Of course, she understood that even if ULAB was a subsidiary of Qinglan, the heavily guarded access control system was definitely not something an ordinary researcher could open. Song Ku frowned and sternly said, 
confess and cooperate. Zhuang Qinyan looked relaxed and responded, leniency to those who confess, severity to those who resist. Song Ku pouted, you, honestly, confess. Zhuang Qinyan smiled and said, will you spare me in your great mercy? TSK, Song Ku was annoyed. Why did he always catch her words, making her lose track of what she wanted to say next? Her fingertips moved slightly, and a faint blue light flickered, slowly aiming at the man in front of her. Why not settle it with words? Do you have to resort to violence again? Zhuang Qinyan leaned lazily on his writing desk, supporting himself with a crutch. Can you bear treating me like this? Just out of the shower, he didn't use the wheelchair. His tall figure stood there, creating an imposing shadow. Song Ku glanced up. It wasn't actually a shadow it was just that his bathrobe wasn't tied properly, revealing half of his chest. Stop, joking. Speak, quickly. Song Ku persisted, using this time alone with him, having come to his room, to clarify her doubts. If he didn't explain today, she wouldn't easily give up. Tell, the truth. Considering his talent for lying, Song Ku added without missing a beat. Being cornered by her relentless questioning, Zhuang Qinyan sighed helplessly. I can indeed unlock the door because I have high-level access within Qinlan. As for why I entered the central control room a few years ago, I visited Yulab. Song Ku frowned deeply, you went. What for? Zhuang Qinyan wouldn't have been involved in those illegal biological experiments, right? He could tell what she was thinking from her expression. Zhuang Qinyan chuckled and shook his head slowly. Don't think too much. I didn't participate in any experiments. At that time, I went as an internal inspector. The information and Chiwen needed to retrieve included the visitor list. If my presence showed up there, it would be hard to explain and bring unnecessary trouble to us. So, I deleted the access records and completely eliminated this potential problem. Other than that, I didn't do anything. Are you telling the tea truth now? Song Ku looked at him with a skeptical expression. Zhuang Qinyan smiled slowly, Song Ku, as I mentioned before, I have no reason to lie to you. No need to lie to me. There's one more thing, will you answer? Song Ku was silent for a moment and asked a soul penetrating question, Do you know, that person, Xie Zhuo? Even if Song Ku wasn't clever, her intuition was always accurate. On the night at Mirror Lake, Zhuang Qinyan had a distinct reaction when he saw Xian in you. He reacted to that face. The smile on Zhuang Qinyan's face disappeared, and his eyes narrowed slightly, falling into a long silence. The crutch used to maintain balance moved, and the end made a creaking sound against the ground. No, lying, aloud, warned Song Ku. I know, Zhuang Qinyan finally spoke, after a long while. As expected, Song Ku thought to herself, there was a feeling of I knew it, in her heart. W who is he? You can say an old acquaintance. Zhuang Qinyan took a few slow but steady steps forward. He came to Song Ku and sat down on the other side of the bed. They sat side by side, gazing at the hazy night outside together. Sorry, I can't tell you his identity for now. But An Chiwen is right. It's an impossible task. Azure Phoenix's people will never find Siezhua. Why? Song Ku was puzzled. Because he's dead, Zhuang Qinyan's voice was hoarse. Siezhua died a long time ago. Dead in terms of biology or sociology, he has completely disappeared, Zhuang Qinyan continued. Thinking seriously, Song Ku contemplated the biological meaning of death, which referred to a person ceasing to breathe, their body decaying, becoming bones and dust. To achieve the sociological meaning of disappearance, this person's habits, social relationships, behavioral trajectory must be completely erased from the memories of others. Why did he die? Because someone wanted him dead, or rather, he had no choice but to die. Xie Zhuo lived each day facing endless pursuit, Zhuang Qinyan explained. Pursuits, forced to die every word spoken by Zhuang Qinyan carried a certain cruel meaning. Song Ku couldn't help but fall silent. She remembered that stunning image, that defiant youth did he ultimately not live to adulthood. So, as an acquaintance of Xie Zhuo, 
what was Zhuang Qinyan feeling now, knowing everything? Song Ke's gaze fell on Zhuang Qinyan's hand hanging by his side, where the veins protruded, seemingly indicating the speaker's fluctuating emotions. Following up the arm, she looked at the bangs falling down, covering half of Zhuang Qinyan's face, leaving the other half unusually cold. Song Ke asked cautiously, Are you, okay? Zhuang Qinyan remained silent, looking back at the young girl sitting in front of him. Song Ke's eyes were clear, showing concern as she gazed at him. Zhuang Qinyan moved his fingertip and revealed an extremely cold smile. Song Ku, if someday I'm hunted by the entire alliance, if everyone wants me dead, what would you do? Song Ku didn't speak. Would you save me? Zhuang Qinyan reached out, gently touching her cheek, applying a little pressure, creating a dimple there. Hmm, would you? He lowered his head, staring into Song Ku's eyes, still pursuing the question, insisting on an answer. They had known each other for so long, and this was the first time Zhuang Qinyan had voluntarily come so close to her. Song Ku felt a mix of emotions, a complex feeling that was hard to describe. She tilted her head back, moving away from his palm. No, I wouldn't. Zhuang Qinyan, having received the answer, smiled slowly, his deep eyes sparkling with wisdom. Smart child, remember, no matter what trouble you encounter in the future, Preserving yourself should always be the top priority. Song Ke's lips moved slightly, wanting to say something, but ultimately held it back. Her grandfather had said to her, live well, so she had to take care of herself. Their gazes met, and after a few seconds, they looked away, tacitly changing the subject. WH what did you get from the CE central control? Song Ku asked. Zhuang Qinyan retrieved a small device from the space. An ability measurement device. It looked somewhat similar to the black box they had used at the Fool's Wharf with Wu Juanin, but Zhuang Qingyan's was orange and appeared more delicate. Song Ku reached out, wanting to touch it, but quickly withdrew her hand. Won't it break? She asked, still bearing a psychological shadow. It's an L-type, a common popular style on the market. It won't easily break. Though it couldn't compare to the fully functional R grade or the widely used P grade by Awakener bases in District C, the L type ability measurement device was the best selling among these models due to its portability. Song Ku felt relieved. Following the device's instructions, she placed her hands on the measurement port. The precise instrument scanned her body, various colored lines surged, and it eventually stopped at the A mark, the energy value maxed out. Too bad, it can only measure up to A level. Zhuang Qinyan expressed regret. Curious, Song Ku asked, see can this M make the Ho homeless man speak? They had been to Luo's shelter twice in the past few days, and no matter how they asked, the homeless man showed no willingness to communicate. Wait for me another day we'll have a few more bargaining chips, Zhuang Qinyan said. Chapter, 76 Did I guess it right? Dr. Fong The next day, at the 119 hospital Wearing a tan-colored vest, Song Ko took advantage of the lunch break and started wandering aimlessly like the Mountain King. She first went to find Su Xing. The little guy had now moved on from running errands in the 8th floor pharmacy and had been promoted to a zombie cleaner on the 13th floor, with the same job as Song Ko. He earned a net of 180 alliance coins each day. Even though there were endless zeros in his terminal account, and the work of a volunteer was even more exhausting and grueling, Su Xing didn't seem to mind at all. He did the job quite happily. Xiao Xing, come over here. Song Ku found Su Xing lazing around at the nurse's station. He, being a sweet talking little guy, often won the hearts of the nurses and got stuffed with various snacks in his pockets. So, Song Ku knew exactly why he always burped when he got home. Seeing Song Ku, Su Xing's face lit up, and he skipped over. Sister, are you looking for me? Song Ku nodded. Yes. Let me show show you a tray treasure. The two of them went to an empty corridor, and Song Ku grinned, pulling out an ability measurement device from her spatial storage. Let's play Y with T this. What? Isn't this what Captain Wu uses to measure abilities? Su Xing frowned, remembering his embarrassing past of losing control. This one's ad advanced, Song Ku solemnly persuaded him. 
Reluctantly, Su Xing agreed and embraced the instrument, placing his fingers on the measuring port. The lines on the screen went up and down, finally stopping at the B mark, surpassing it by quite a bit. Wow, impressive. Song Ku applauded enthusiastically, giving him face. He he, Su Xing scratched his head and excitedly suggested, Sister, let's go find Tao Tao and have her measured too. Children will always be children, with their imaginative thoughts. Equally childish, Song Ku agreed eagerly. The two of them set off with the measurement device to find Tao Tao. Tao Tao wasn't as cooperative as Su Xing. Seeing the unfamiliar device, she was on high alert, her ears perked up, barking wildly, and her short legs darted around the ward, even releasing her domain, pushing the two of them out several times. Song Ku was determined and didn't give up. She engaged in a protracted battle with Tao Tao. Finally catching her, she held down Tao Tao's paw and placed it in the measuring port. Tao Tao grimaced and whimpered, unable to resist. The screen lit up again, and colorful lines fluctuated before finally stopping at the sea mark. Song Ku and Su Xing were amazed. Tao Tao turned out to be a sea level awakener oh no, an awakener dog. The sea level ability dog Tao Tao displayed her power, releasing her domain once again, catching the two off guard and sending them tumbling. Beside them, Tao Tao's mom casually snacked on sunflower seeds, leisurely watching the show with her legs crossed. This thing is really useful. I was thinking of registering Tao Tao. This makes it easier just fill in the details. Tao Tao needs to register too. Su Xing asked curiously, rubbing the bump on his head. Of course. We're talking about Tao Tao, an awakener, entitled to perks, Tao Tao's mom said matter-of-factly. Song Ku imagined a dog going to get an awakener certificate type felt a bit surreal. Come, have some sunflower seeds, Tao Tao's mom enthusiastically invited them, casually shaking the light screen used as a tray for sunflower seed shells. Song Ku peeked inside and saw medical news mostly gossip like Tongwan's most handsome doctor competition, the heartthrobs of the medical field, the gentle surgeon, and the like. Tao Tao's mom assumed she was interested and pulled Song Ku to sit down, enthusiastically promoting the handsome doctors of Tongwan. Song Ku glanced a couple of times, forced to listen to half an hour of gossip. The doctors all seemed to have similar faces, but their hands were quite attractive slender and long with well-defined joints. When they picked up the surgical knife, they exuded a unique elegance. On the other side, Zhuang Qinyan found the time to visit the Tongwan security team and met with Zhao Liqiang. You want to access the records of all registered awakeners in Tongwan? Zhao Liqiang was particularly surprised upon learning his intention. Yes, and I'd appreciate Captain Zhao's assistance, Zhuang Qinyan politely nodded. These were internal records that Zhuang Qinyan couldn't access in the hospital's archives, so he had to ask for Zhao Liqiang's help. He was checking these records to confirm his suspicions. Zhao Liqiang looked puzzled, why are you interested in that? There's not much useful information it's mostly just age, place of origin, and the like. Plus, our security team alone has over 200 people, not to mention the outsiders. Tongwan has over 500 registered awakeners, right? Zhuang Qinyan smiled, it's not about gathering information. I just want to confirm a few things. The records cabinet in the archive room was tall, extending all the way to the ceiling. Different cabinets stored different kinds of records, categorized neatly. All the information could be accessed through the central computer. After verifying the credentials, Zhao Liqiang led Zhuang Qinyan inside. I'm sorry, but you can't take the records out. You'll have to read them here. Zhuang Qinyan showed understanding. Of course, I'll try to finish reading them today. Then go ahead and focus on your work. Just let me know when you're leaving. Zhao Liqiang had a lot on his plate and couldn't afford to waste time accompanying him here. Thank you, Captain Zhao. After the others left, Zhuang Qinyan brought up the interface of the central computer and quickly started browsing the records, beginning from the earliest registered awakeners before the apocalypse. Luo Shelter V587 came to visit the homeless man for the third time. His condition was hardly any different from a few days ago the wounds hadn't worsened and instead showed signs of gradual healing. 
This man indeed hadn't undergone any mutation. Though not mutated, after several days of relentless efforts, he was on the verge of self-destruction, emaciated with shallow breathing. Just from his unkempt appearance, he looked even more like a zombie than a zombie itself. Reluctantly, Su Xing took two steps forward, given a significant responsibility. He crouched in front of the homeless man, raising his innocent and cheerful face, his voice soft, Uncle, would you like something to eat? I have a sandwich, and there are ham sausages, cookies, juice it's kiwi juice, really delicious. He thought that children could at least somewhat break down the other person's defenses, but the homeless man remained lying on the ground, unmoving. Su Xing was completely ignored, and the curly hair on top of his head tilted unwillingly. Suppressing his frustration, he continued to persuade, Uncle, if you encounter any difficulties, you can tell my sister. She's really nice, and we can help you. The homeless man slowly turned his head, leaning towards the other side, seeming to find Su Xing annoying, and waved his hand like shooing away a fly. Su Xing held back for a moment, then couldn't hold it anymore and shouted, Hey! Why are you such a dog? Calling you a dog is an insult to Tao Tao. You're even worse than a dog. At least dogs react. Can't you say something? This time the homeless man reacted he made a faint humph sound from his nose. Su Xing threw the bread and juice, almost exploding with frustration, his irritable nature exposed. I'm talking to you, can't you have some sense? You're this old, is it interesting to seek death? Can't you have a bit of dignity? Getting on my nerves, you're getting on my nerves, you bad old man. Su Xing panted heavily, turned around, and saw Song Ku gaping at him, staring blankly. It was the first time she had truly seen him lose his composure. Su Xing, QAQ. Oops, forgot that big sister was right there. Sob, sob. Defeated, Su Xing stepped back, and Zhuang Qingyan's wheelchair stopped in front of the homeless man. The man didn't pay any attention, not even bothering to lift his head. Zhuang Qinyan stroked the patterns on the blanket and spoke in a calm tone. You're not a vagrant. You weren't born to be this desolate. You were born in Tongwan, a renowned city of medicine. You grew up in a well-off family, with a gentle and considerate personality. You grew up without any illness or worries. You progressed into a respectable and prestigious profession. You once had youthful aspirations and became an outstanding figure in your industry. Your family life was exceptionally happy, and you enjoyed the admiration and envy of others. You lived this way for over thirty years, accustomed to it, until the apocalypse arrived. The apocalypse not only destroyed the entire world but shattered you. You faced a devastating blow, which can be termed as a catastrophe in your life. From then on, you faltered. You abandoned the past glories, relinquished the glamorous identity. You lost beloved family and dear friends. Your life turned into a mess, and you felt helpless, so you could only escape. Whether as a drifter or a beggar, you no longer cared about anything, just wanting to die quickly, isn't that right? Song Ku was astonished. She didn't know what information Zhuang Qinyan had gathered these days or what preparations he had made. He summarized the first half of this homeless man's life in just a few simple sentences. Although the man lying on the ground remained unresponsive, Song could distinctly notice his back tensing, and his fingers curling up. Right, his fingers. That was another aspect that caught Song Ku's attention. She noticed unintentionally that this homeless man had a pair of hands that could be considered works of art. Different from his disheveled appearance, although his fingers were stained and dirty, filled with grime, the bone structure, as well as the lines of the joints, were the most exquisite she had ever seen. You wanted to die, but you couldn't easily die because you had awakened. Zhuang Qinyan seemed like the most merciless judge, delivering each word with cold, ruthless sentencing. In a deathly silence, the homeless man's breath gradually quickened. Do you know how I figured out that you're an awakener? There are many ways for a person to die. The simplest is to be bitten by a zombie. Why didn't you do that? You knew clearly that you couldn't die because you had tried it long ago. You tried but couldn't succeed. So you became even more despondent, resorting to the foolish method of starving yourself. Or more directly, you let someone shoot you dead. 
Zhuang Qinyan took out the ability measuring device from his space. He wrapped a tissue around his hand and forcibly placed the homeless man's hand on the measurement port. The homeless man had been fasting for several days and couldn't resist at all. Dididi. The lines on the screen fluctuated violently, and the scale quickly rose to A. Song Ku. No way, this person was actually an A-level awakener. Nowadays, you can pick up a homeless person on the street casually, and they're already an A-level awakener. Isn't it absurd? The homeless man saw the result and struggled violently, his disheveled hair falling, revealing a half-face with a resentful expression. Song Ku gasped, she seemed to have seen this face before somewhere, it seemed familiar. The gossip news that Tao Tao's mother had watched in the afternoon suddenly flashed in her mind. The gentle surgeon, that news, isn't it about? You. Why 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 you? Because she was too shocked, Song Ku's stuttering problem resurfaced, making it even harder for her to speak. Zhuang Qinyan bent down and stared coldly at the homeless man. Did I guess it right? Fang Jishu. Or should I call you Dr. Fang? Chapter, 77. I want to kill a person. Fang Jishu, at the age of 37, was a chief physician with a medical doctorate. He was the head of the surgery department at Tongwan's 119 Hospital, and an honorary professor at several top-tier hospitals, including the 123 Hospital and the 137 Hospital. He was renowned as the ultimate conqueror of difficult and critical cases, a genius surgeon acclaimed in District C. The myth he created in the industry remained unbroken to this day every surgery he performed had a 100% success rate. This was the information about Fang Zhishu that Song Ku had glimpsed in passing from a news snippet. If one were to delve into the illustrious career and legendary feats of this individual, it would likely take up an entire three-page screen. And even the always decisive and efficient Lu Ning regarded him as the idol of his professional career. No one could have imagined that this former star of medicine would fall to this extent, like burnt-out decayed wood, awaiting complete erosion. Zhuang Qingyan's repeated provocations caused the seemingly lifeless figure to react. Fang Jishu broke free from his restraints and awkwardly crawled a few steps, managing to sit up halfway after turning over. Who the hell are you? He asked, disheveled and sneering. How big of a grudge do you have against me? Going to such lengths to investigate me? Song Ku looked up sharply. He didn't deny it he admitted to being Fang Jishu. Dr. Fang, you're overly suspicious, Zhuang Qinyan said, wiping his fingers clean with tissue one by one, smiling slightly. We have no prior acquaintance, naturally no grievances. I was also surprised when I found out about your identity. Overly suspicious. Fang Jishu chuckled, his eyes sharp through the messy hair. Since we're strangers, are you so bored? Do you have to interfere in whether a stranger lives or dies? His voice lacked strength, but his words were dripping with mockery. Don't call me doctor, I'm not worthy. As for the compassion to save lives, you are the greatest saints and saviors of this century. Cheers to you. She pursed her lips, and regardless of what the other party said, she had only one thought in her mind Fang Jishu must not die. If, from the beginning, they noticed him because of his special physique, being a person who had been bitten by zombies but hadn't mutated, then Fang Jishu definitely hid a secret. Knowing his true identity changed the significance of this person to them. According to the information provided by Lu Ning, Fang Jishu was probably the only hope for curing Zhuang Qinyan. As of today, Song Ku was even more determined not to let him die. Stop beating around the bush. Just say it, what do you want to do? Fang Jishu's tone was weary, and his face was full of world weariness. Zhuang Qinyan presented the results of the ability assessment device to him and asked, What ability have you awakened? Fang Jishu, an A-level awakener. Among all the officially registered ability users in Tongwan, there were over 500 people, and only three were A-level, along with one D-level in the healing category. Fang Jishu not only possessed an A-level ability but was also a former outstanding surgeon. Even though hope was faint, what if? What if the ability he awakened was? Steady like Zhuang Qinyan, his breath involuntarily quickened as he waited for an answer. Song Ku and Su Xing were equally nervous, staring at Fang Jishu, waiting for him to speak. 
Oh, I see, Fang Zhishu's gaze slid past Zhuang Qingyan's deformed calf, gradually understanding. He extended his hand, slowly raising it in front of him, his eyes coldly fixed. An ability, so what? I'm just a useless person. I'm no longer a doctor, and I won't pick up a scalpel again. I can't do what you want. Leave me alone, let me die. Song Ku sighed silently. This person, truly, could infuriate anyone with just his words. What gentle surgeon? Clearly, he was a dark reptile king. No, a reptile. Hey! You stinky old man, watch out we'll throw you to the hospital and in front of your colleagues, won't you be ashamed at all? Su Xing, with a fiery temper, couldn't hold back and threatened fiercely. Whatever. Dignity and pride, Feng Zhishu had long abandoned them. Then we'll will take you to the lab for dissection and research. Su Xing continued with the intimidation. Heh <laughs> heh, I can't wait for it. Whatever was said, it seemed like nothing could provoke his emotional change. Feng Zhishu closed his eyes, and lay back down, looking completely indifferent. Song Ku approached Zhuang Qinyan, looking down at the assessment device. The prominent A level on the screen seemed like the most absurd joke. There's a simple truth, actually. Regardless of whether Fang Ji Su had awakened a healing ability, regardless of these subsequent conditions, he was still a top tier genius doctor. They couldn't just give up like this. Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan locked eyes, and with a subtle, unwavering nod, they made up their minds. Fang Jishu, they were determined to have him. Zhuang Qinyan realized what she meant and lowered his eyes. Fang Jishu's experiences, words he said, and subtle expressions flashed rapidly in his mind, taking turns like a revolving lantern. A sudden light appeared, dispelling the desolate fog, making all the details instantly clear. When he spoke again, Zhuang Qinyan's voice was incredibly calm, Dr. Fang, I return the same question to you, what do you want to do? After all this time, you haven't succeeded in dying. Don't blame it on the physique of an awakener. Instead, ask yourself, are you really willing to die like this? What do you really want to do? What is your obsession? It was time to relax during the meal, and the shelter was bustling with activity. The footsteps and muffled conversations could be heard outside the window, making the room they were in even more pin-drop silent. Fang Jishu tilted his head back, and for a few moments, Song Ku suddenly felt a kind of painful twitch on his face. What's it to you? He said hoarsely after a while. Song Ku took a deep breath and took a step forward, you, T tell me, and I'll do it F for you. This was her commitment. No matter how difficult, she would definitely follow through. Just with you all. Fang Jishu half opened his eyes, looking disdainfully at the three of them. One in a wheelchair, one with an unpredictable temperament, and the remaining one. Song Ku stood straight, her eyes burning, just me. I'm Song Ku, A level gold type, a P powerful and offensive type A awakener. Whatever why you want to de do, I'll do I it for you. The spiritual weapon transformed in her palm, gradually condensing into the shape of a willow leaf blade. Outside the window, there were exclamations as someone's mutation worsened, turning them into a zombie. Others were in a frenzy, knocking things over, and the screams for the security team could be heard intermittently. Just then, a freshly turned zombie jumped in through the window. Before it could show aggression, the sharp willow leaf blade pierced through its head, and the heavy body fell to the ground, the pale eyeballs facing Fang Jishu. Fang Jishu slowly sat up straight, then suddenly laughed, followed by increasingly manic laughter. His voice grew louder and louder. Zombies, ha ha ha, what do zombies even matter? What do I want to do? I want to kill a person, a magistrate from District C. Can you do it? Song Ku's eyes widened slightly. Can you do it? Fang Jishu shouted hoarsely, the full extent of his grief and pain almost overflowing. He pounded the ground with his fist, leaving bloody marks on his joints. Song Ku remained silent, first glancing at Zhuang Qinyan's legs, then back at Fang Jishu. She crouched down, her gaze firm, staring straight into his eyes. I can do it. Song Ku took Fang Jishu away. His intense emotions were only exposed for a moment, and then he quieted down. 
The last thing he said was, whether or not you can do it should not just be empty words. Let me see your abilities first. Regarding Song Ke's strength, Fang Zixiu still had reservations and, therefore, was unwilling to reveal more of his secrets. However, there was some good news at least he was no longer entirely fixated on seeking death. The sound of running water came from the bathroom. Zhuang Qingyan's wheelchair stopped at the door, and he communicated with Song Ku, who stood by the wall, Sometimes I wonder, do you have some sort of collecting habit? Ah. Uh. Song Ku looked puzzled. You go out for a bit, and you bring someone back. How many times has this happened? Aren't you the same? I brought Wai Yu back, Song Ku retorted. Zhuang Qinyan raised an eyebrow. Can you compare me with them? They were all picked up what's the difference? Song Ku muttered to herself. Zhuang Qinyan's expression turned serious. Are you really going to kill for him? This is probably the most difficult task we've taken so far. To reach the position of the magistrate, to rule over an entire sea district, none of them were good people. For instance, the super-artificial intelligence Ilya they encountered, or the magistrate of Tongwan, who single-handedly preserved peace and kept the entire C60 district intact. Moreover, Fang Zixiu hadn't told them yet who the magistrate he wanted to kill really was. Song Ku didn't respond immediately, but thought carefully. What are your thoughts on his ability? Zhuang Qinyan shook his head. It's hard to determine he's tight-lipped. Song Ku remained silent and provided the answer in her mind. If Fang Zixiu can really heal your legs, I'll do it for him. The bathroom door suddenly opened, and Fang Zixiu came out, looking at the two guarding the door with a mocking tone. What's the matter? Regretting it? He had washed his face, cut his hair, and even shaved, no longer looking untidy. He appeared much neater, with a height of around one. Seventy-five meters, very thin, with sunken cheeks. One could vaguely see the former elegance from his facial features, but unfortunately, as soon as he spoke, that impression was completely shattered. No, I'm not re-regretting it, Song Ku explained unhappily. Fang Zixiu snorted and went to a room, falling asleep again. This person. Song Ku sighed. Su Xing passed by while biting on a jelly, leaving a resentful remark, I hate him. Su Xing's hate list was updated again. His grudge notebook was filled with names. Counting from the beginning, the names were Lin Yuyu, Zhuang Qinyan, Su Cha. Now, a new name, Fang Zixiu, had been added, and the rank was steadily rising. After a good rest for two days, the news of the throne race's round of 32 came out. This competition would be held at the Ferrara Central Tower with the theme Fight Against Fear. The specific format had to wait for the on-site announcement. It was said that due to the lively ticket pre-sales, the organizers would use the most advanced holographic projection for real-time synchronized broadcasting. V587 should return to Ferrara as well. Starships in various districts were not operating, so they had to resort to the old-fashioned transportation method. They rented a private off-road vehicle and drove back on autonomous mode. Su Xing held Song Ku's hand, bouncing around like on an outing, happily getting into the car. As soon as they got in, they noticed a person lying in the back seat. Fang Zixiu was wearing a large cotton coat and pants, hands tucked into the sleeves, showing half of his head, soundly asleep. They had informed him yesterday that they were leaving this morning, and he hadn't shown any reaction. However, he came on his own. It seemed to be his style. In a day of 24 hours, he was fine with sleeping 25 hours if possible. Su Xing's good mood was mostly ruined. He pouted and sat in the middle row, while Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan got into the front seats. After driving for a while, the atmosphere in the car quieted down. Su Xing's eyes slyly glanced around. Taking advantage of the inattention of the two in front, his fingertips moved slightly, and thin ice and snow flowed out silently, floating towards the back seat. After fighting in Yulab, Su Xing's ability control had improved. The clear and translucent frost first enveloped Fang Zixiu's shoes and then gradually spread, connecting with the seat, freezing into ice lumps. Fang Zixiu had slept in the same position for a long time and subconsciously turned over. However, his shoes were frozen solid, 
catching him off guard. His head was upside down, and his upper body fell crookedly to the ground with a thud, hitting the bottom of the car. He looked dazed and sluggish, half opening his eyes. Only then did he realize that his lower legs were completely immobilized, and ice crystals were falling off. Someone was playing a prank on him with abilities. Ha ha ha. Su Xing laughed heartily, holding his stomach mercilessly. But he soon couldn't laugh. Fang Zixu didn't mind him at all. He took off his shoes, turned over directly on the ground, and continued to sleep in a daze. Su Xing was dumbfounded. Chapter 78 Freedom When they returned to Ferrara, it was close to midnight. The city that never sleeps still shimmered with neon lights. Ubiquitous holographic projections sliced the gloomy sky into red and blue blocks, and the gem-like ferris wheel slowly rotated. Song felt a strange illusion they seemed to have left and yet never left this place. Ferrara felt unchanged, still open-armed, welcoming travelers from afar. The wandering musicians at the city gate lightly strummed their instruments, singing tirelessly. Ferrara free Ferrara, the dream you linger in. The off-road vehicle smoothly entered the inner city, and after returning it at the rental center, they had to continue on foot. The four walked along the bustling streets, and the floating billboards in front happened to be playing in. A sweet-smiling female star with a cherry-blossom pink princess hairstyle and a gorgeous dress danced gracefully in a sea of flowers. I like like your smile, like a gentle rain sprinkling in my heart. Around the billboard, many fans were scattered, wearing pink caviar headbands and enthusiastically distributing support gifts to passersby, promoting their idol. Yu Yu's new song Gentle Rain is released today, please pay more attention. Sweet songstress, a healing idol, investing in her won't disappoint. Let's come together to the concert and get the best Yu Yu in the world. In Song Ku's arms, several posters and merch of Lin Yu Yu were stuffed. She glanced down and saw the chibi cartoon on the support card, smiling sweetly at her. The last time they met, Lin Yu Yu disregarded her image, tucking her long dress into her waist, her hair messy, and slapped at a moth while cursing loudly, I hate caterpillars the most in my life. All of you, die. Song Kook picked up the pink cartoon keychain, held it up to her eyes, and silently looked at it for two seconds, feeling utterly speechless. Should she mention it? Ferrara's star-making ability was truly terrifying. All those idols and personas, they were all fake, indeed. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. She stuffed the keychain into her pocket and turned to look at her companions, ready to discuss the plans for the next steps. Su Xing also couldn't escape the recommendations of the fans, holding a Lin Yu Yu doll in his hand, his little face filled with disdain. Zhuang Qinyan remained as indifferent as ever, lazily leaning on the wheelchair. As for Fang Zixu, he was hunched over, his head tucked into a cotton coat, showing no interest in anything happening around him. He kept his eyes closed throughout, as if even walking these few steps was a struggle for him. Song Ku opened her mouth, about to speak, when suddenly deafening noises came from the other side of the street. Over a hundred engines roared as powerful motorcycles whizzed by, intense rock music cutting through the night silence. Song Ku quickly pushed Zhuang Qinyan to the side of the road to avoid them. The arrogant convoy passed low over them, causing a whirlwind and disheveling their clothes and hair. Then, they sped off in a certain direction. Roar! These street ruffians rampaged through the streets, recklessly throwing Molotov cocktails, and smashing buildings and structures, including blinking signs. The bottles shattered, and the gasoline inside spilled out, creating thick smoke that billowed into the sky. The rampant arsonists excitedly whistled and shouted. Molotov cocktails exploded one after another, thick smoke rising, and colorful, pungent gases filled the air, blocking the vision of the pedestrians. Song Ku covered her mouth and nose, choking, and watched as deep red fireworks rose into the sky, gradually forming clear words, freedom. Freedom, we want freedom, resist artificial intelligence, humans never surrender. AI is the root of all evil. AI will only eradicate humanity. Artificial intelligence, get out of Ferrara. These damned rebels, deserving a thousand deaths. The passers-by on the street were furious, and the curses continued. 
However, the turmoil did not stop. The motorcycle convoy suddenly accelerated, turned a corner, and stormed into the nearby Starlight Square. Coincidentally, an IP exhibition of Luo Qinghe was being held here, funded by the fans themselves, creating an exclusive cultural community. The mob, upon seeing this spectacle, became even more excited. Their actions were full of destructive desires. They raised high-pressure flamethrowers from the rear of their motorcycles and sprayed wildly. The intense fire instantly engulfed Luo Qinghe. Sculptures, signs, images everything was submerged in the blaze. The painstaking efforts of the fans over the years were destroyed in an instant. In the scorching flames, Luo Qinghe's green clothes were charred, his jade flute incinerated, and his handsome, gentlemanly face was gradually ruined. His eyebrows were lowered, and his eyes were icy. After returning to the hotel, Song Ku approached the French windows and looked down from a height. The ground was shrouded in smoke and chaos, with occasional flames. WHO are those P people? Song Ku asked. The official term is the resistance faction. They oppose any form of artificial intelligence and support humans regaining political power, replied Zhuang Qinyan. Zhuang Qinyan organized the information obtained from the dark web during this period. The previous magistrate, Lion, had support from the Century Consortium. After Ilya was elected as the magistrate, he was unwilling to accept it. He has been secretly active and recently funded the resistance faction, breeding a large group of rioters. Song Ku sat down and began to contemplate about the relationship between the scene she had just experienced and the change of regime in Ferrara. The resistance FA faction wants to owe overthrow Ilya's rule for tea true freedom, she said. That's right, Zhuang Qinyan said. Their goal is to escalate the conflict. Where there is light, there is darkness. Just as some idolized and adored the omnipotent artificial intelligence, there were others who detested it. With Ferrara's technological development today, ambitions and desires have continued to expand. The dream of artificial intelligence and humans peacefully coexisting has become a luxury. Song Ku still had a question. She pulled up the schedule from the terminal. During their time away from Ferrara, the participating teams in the throne race event were in turmoil. Out of the top 64, over 30 players had either voluntarily withdrawn or died for unknown reasons. Eight teams were unable to participate in the next competition, leaving only 56 teams. Is the throne race event related to the resistance faction's plans? She asked. The throne race event, pushed to its current popularity by Ilya, had a financial allure surpassing all music festivals and concerts. It was a nationwide entertainment event in Ferrara. More importantly, this major competition was entirely controlled by artificial intelligence, and humans couldn't interfere. If the resistance faction truly wanted to incite war, would they pass up this excellent opportunity? You guessed right. If I were Lion, I would target this, Zhuang Qinyan said. In any case, be cautious in every upcoming match. Song Ku looked toward the towering skyscrapers. The surging undercurrent in Ferrara could hardly stay hidden anymore. Ilya, what will you do? When the two mainstays were discussing matters, the old and the young were dozing off. Su Xing, who had been obediently listening on the sofa, tried to participate with some involvement. However, beside him was Fang Zixiu who fell into a deep and pleasant sleep, and almost as if the drowsiness was contagious, unknowingly, Su Xing also hugged the cushion and fell into a deep slumber. Song Ku covered him with a small blanket and carried him back to his room. As she walked, she suddenly realized that when they were talking earlier, they didn't avoid mentioning anything in front of Fang Zixiu. From following them to Ferrara, to hearing Ilya's name, Fang Zixiu didn't show any abnormalities. In this light, it seemed that the person he wanted to kill wasn't this super artificial intelligence. However there were 50 District C in the alliance. Who was the magistrate he held a deep grudge against? In the early morning, Song Ku received a message on her terminal. It was sent by An Chiwen. Wang Chang's mechanical limb surgery was successful, and he wanted to inform Wu Juamin. However, his communication terminal was turned off. The Azure Phoenix's people were in Ferrara now, so An Chiwen sent the temporary address to Song Ku, hoping she could help and make a trip to deliver a message. 
He said that after finishing matters in Tong Wan, he would immediately come over to meet the others. At the same time, the team list for the top 32 game of the throne race competition was announced. Song Ku didn't find Lu Xinglan's name in it and didn't know if he had withdrawn or was using another alias. In addition to the teams analyzed by Zhuang Qinyan, she also unexpectedly found Wu Xianghai's name. Thinking back to his suspicious behavior that night, Song Ku felt this person was quite suspicious and went to Zhuang Qinyan to study the game footage. Pause, Zhuang Qinyan said, and a certain frame was frozen. In the Mirror Lake competition, Wu Xianghai's footage is scarce, and he didn't make many moves. From what we can see here, he uses an ability similar to mechanical type. On the screen, Wu Xianghai's left arm swelled into a mechanical scythe, and he slashed several times in a panic while snatching the mutant zombie. Zhuang Qinyan shook his head. A total of six strikes, half of them missed. Moreover, the movements were awkward. It seems he doesn't have good control over his ability. Judging from the attack strength, his level is around D-level. D-level, not E-level. It was strange for Wu Xianghai to deliberately conceal his own level. Even if he was a D-level awakener, there were many players stronger than him. Except for Song Ku and her team, no one would pay attention to him. Song Ku recalled his timid appearance in Hua City and always felt that there was a mystery about this person. Anyway, since she was going to pass a message for Enchiwen, she might as well ask Wu Juemin while she was at it. Song Ko followed the address and went to Azure Phoenix's temporary residence in Ferrara, an empty airship repair shop. When she arrived in the vicinity and didn't see anyone, she realized something was wrong. Several powered motorcycles were hovering low around the perimeter, skulking around the residence. Song Ko furrowed her brows. Before she could take action, a stern figure appeared behind the group. Wu Juamin's movements were so fast that they were almost imperceptible. With a few bang bang, the members of the resistance fell miserably from the sky, and the powered motorcycle spun and flew in reverse, exploding in place. Wu Juamin's voice was cold and sharp, the military is performing a mission, who allowed you to spy on it? A few members of the resistance faction were held down by their heads, arrogantly shouting, Freedom! Wu Juamin was ruthless, kicking them unconscious. Song Ku, such resilient antagonists. Wu Juamin grabbed the unconscious individuals and handed them to the team members who had come out, interrogate them thoroughly and find out their objectives. Then he turned and saw Song Ku. What's the matter? His tone was as stern as ever. Song Ku came out from her hiding spot and honestly explained that An Chiwen had sent her to deliver a message. Wu Juamin frowned, why didn't he contact me himself? Song Ku defended and Chiwen, your TE terminal was turned off. He Ko couldn't reach Yu. Wu Juamin paused, and took out his own terminal. During this time, he had been too busy, and he needed to concentrate when executing missions. To avoid disturbances from the outside world, he had indeed turned it off. Come in. With many people and prying eyes outside, Wu Juamin led her into the residence. Familiar faces like Ouyang Pei, Maya De Chiu, and others were present, but as Song Ku scanned the area, she keenly noticed that their numbers had decreased again. The original team of twelve members, excluding An Chiwen and Wang Chang who stayed in Tongwan, now had only eight people left following Wu Juamin. Is it this dangerous just to find someone? Or perhaps, are they on a different mission? Out of habit, Song Ku asked, are you still searching for pee people? Wu Juamin's expression stiffened, his gaze sharp as he stared at her. Who leaked this to you? And Chiwen. Song Ko belatedly covered her mouth, looking sheepish. Oh no, and Chiwen would definitely scold her. This big mouth, Wu Juamin commented coldly. As the captain of the Azure Phoenix squad, Wu Juamin had a strong sense of duty and confidentiality. Although his demeanor was cold, it couldn't be denied that he was an excellent soldier filled with a sense of responsibility. And Chiwen would sometimes complain, but from Wu Juamin, you'd never see any weakness or retreat, only a relentless and determined will. Do why you need help? Song Ko asked hesitantly. As expected, Wu Juamin declined, no need. Azure Phoenix's missions don't require external involvement. Song Ko also felt a headache. 
From the information provided by Zhuang Qinyan, their mission seemed impossible to complete. She couldn't just go up to Wu Juemin and argue, hey, stop looking, that Xia Zhu died a long time ago. Her attempt to subtly remind him was also rejected. Oh, she replied dejectedly. Thinking about her original purpose, Song Ku turned to ask about Wu Xianghai. Wu Xianghai. Wu Juemin furrowed his brow. I don't have a strong impression of him. He was evacuated by Maeda from District D-161. His level is E, with the ability object stitching. I checked his credentials there's no way I could be mistaken. Maeda Jiu, the vice captain, was even more difficult to deal with than Wu Juemin, being rigid and blunt in his demeanor. Wu Xianghai was an E-level awakener evacuated from District D-161. I've examined his credentials it's impossible for me to have misremembered, he stated, his dark eyes glaring at Song Ku as he let out a cold hum. As for why he participated in the competition, that's not within my obligation to inform you. You should go ask him. We still have a mission to carry out. If you're free, you should go back. He's so fierce, Song Ku thought to herself, rolling her eyes. At least she had gathered some useful information and was ready to leave. As she started to move, she suddenly saw something familiar. In Maeda Jiu's uniform pocket, a pink keychain peeked out. Song Ku touched her own coat. She seemed to have a similar one. That's not, that's not Lin Yuyu's merchandise, right? Almost forgot, this Maeda Jiu was a loyal fanboy of Lin Yuyu. Times have changed, and now Lin Yuyu was her coolie, tightly controlled by her. In a way, doesn't that mean she had control over Maeda Jiu too? Song Ku's mood suddenly brightened. She cleared her throat lightly and giggled. I like, I like hum, hum smile, like a gentle R rain. The melody of the new song she heard last night was quite catchy, but the lyrics were hard to remember. Song Ku immersed herself, singing in a haphazard manner. Veins throbbed on Maeda Jiu's forehead. He glanced toward Song Ku and rebuked, shut up. He paused, lowered his voice, and grumbled discontentedly. It's out of tune. Chapter, 79 The Disappearing AI Old Zhang, going to watch the match again. Old Zhang, dressed in new clothes and unusually wearing a tie, walked to the central square with a radiant expression. The person who greeted him looked at him and said in a sour tone, you're having a lucky streak now, making a big profit. In the past, they used to watch the qualifying matches together, and old Zhang always ended up losing the most. As long as they bet against him, the others could make a small profit. Unexpectedly, after the main matches, this guy somehow had a stroke of luck and reportedly made a big fortune. Look at him now, all flashy and splendid. Old Zhang chuckled innocently, it's just luck, good luck. As for how he turned things around, he was quite clever and didn't reveal a word. After that person left, a friend nudged his shoulder, teasing, are you betting on that team again tonight, what's it called, VME 50. Old Zhang's face lit up with a smile, V587. Definitely, going all in. At exactly 8 o'clock in the evening, the tower's lights lit up, and Ah K and two charming girls appeared on the elevated stage. Dear audience, long time no see. Ah K was as enthusiastic as ever. It's still me, here to provide you with exciting commentary on the top 32 promotion game for everyone. Before the match begins, let me explain a little unexpected situation. Qinghe, due to personal reasons, cannot attend tonight's match. But it's okay, we have invited the equally popular Yulika and Nana to accompany you and watch. The energetic girl with twin ponytails and the gentle and knowledgeable older sister, the two virtual idols, appeared in a stunning holographic display, greeting the audience and displaying lively expressions as if they were right there. The central square and open streets were filled with spectators, all looking up at the sky, erupting in enthusiastic cheers. After the cheers subsided, hushed whispers began, why is Luo Qinghe suddenly absent? The day before yesterday, I saw on his profile that he admitted to being a special guest. Do you not know what happened last night? Said the person next to them mysteriously. What happened, what happened? It's those rebels causing trouble. 
In the backstage lounge, Song Koo was talking to Lin Yuyu, who was wearing a mask. After the match, D don't leave R right away. I'll I introduce you to S someone. She intentionally informed Maeda Jio of tonight's match time, planning to surprise him, but she wasn't sure if he would come. The deputy captain of the Azure Phoenix sneered dismissively upon receiving Song Koo's invitation, no time. Lin Yuyu's lips curved slightly under the mask, and she echoed Maeda Jio's words, No time, I've been busy lately with my new song. Song Ko pouted, pulling out a pink keychain from her pocket, I'll re-report you, big S star. Lin Yuyu. Song Ko imitated Zhuang Qingyan's way of speaking, dragging her words slowly, like a soft light R rain. Su Cha, who was originally sitting nearby, quietly listened to the two of them talk. When he heard Song Ko's off-key singing, the dagger he was twirling with his fingertips slipped and clattered onto the table. It was too hard to listen to. How could anyone sing so off-key, not hitting a single note right? Lin Yuyu hurriedly covered Song Ko's mouth, looked around, and fortunately, there was no one else in the lounge. She sighed deeply, my goodness, where did you learn this annoying habit from? All right, all right, I'll go to the main venue. Her expression was resentful, I've disguised myself so meticulously, and nobody could tell, yet you almost exposed me. Song Ku, with her mouth covered, protested unhappily, MHMHMH. While the two were talking, the door to the lounge was pushed open, and a familiar person entered, Irene from Guns N' Roses. Irene had a few more scars on her right face, her hair was almost shaved, and she had two mobile mortars on her forearms there was a sense of calm and toughness that came from experiencing the refining of gun smoke and battles. Seeing the people in the room clearly, she nodded calmly. The favor I owed you has been repaid. In the future, it'll be fair competition. I won't back down. During the Mirror Lake siege, Irene recognized Song Ko and showed mercy, leading to her later participation in the endless slaughter mode. Although Song Ko would not necessarily lose even if she tried to snatch it, she understood the other party's goodwill. Gee good, fair competition, no need to be back down. Irene glanced at Lin Yuyu, reminding her with a meaningful look, the most perfect disguise doesn't just change your appearance. Micro-expressions, including unconscious movements, will all reveal your true identity. Irene recognized Lin Yuyu. Although she didn't say it directly, everyone present understood the obvious implication in her words. Just moments ago, Lin Yuyu, who had boldly claimed nobody could tell, suffered a big blow. Fortunately, Irene was not one to gossip, nor was she interested in publicizing Lin Yuyu's privacy. After saying this, she took her belongings and left. As the match time approached, the teams drew lots for their groupings. Song Ku specifically went to wash her hands, brimming with confidence as she drew a lot group G. Great, at the bottom again. Taking another look at the list of teams in the same group, the Anna Knights, an absolutely tough opponent. Song Ku exchanged a glance with Su Xing, her tone bitter, next time, why you do it. Before the match began, each participating player received a peculiar piece of equipment, the insight glasses. It was said that this device contained thousands of sensory conduits. When worn on the head, it would connect with the nerves, capturing the subject's subconscious activity and projecting their innermost thoughts. And its name, Insight Glasses, precisely matched the theme of this competition, Fight Against Fear. High up in the tower, A.K. passionately commented, the rules for this match are very simple. Within the limited time, the team that kills the most zombies wins. Yes, just ordinary zombies. Do you think it's that easy? No no no. Do you still remember our theme? Ah K passionately shouted, fight against fear. Players will wear the insight glasses, facing their darkest memories. Holographic projections of terrifying zombies appeared at the right moment, lifelike images flashing in front of everyone as if they could smell the stench from the monster's cracked mouths. The audience was not lightly scared and yet excitedly screamed. Roar Ah K imitated the roar of a zombie, I wonder what each player is most afraid of. Don't get scared. I announce, the match begins. Brilliant fireworks burst open in the sky, colorful beams flickered rapidly in the dark night, and seven large suspended screens rose slowly between the towers, displaying real-time images corresponding to groups A to G. 
The prize pool opened, accumulating and rolling, the numbers increasing crazily every second, and a constant stream of money flowed behind the scenes. Group C. Irene blasted away approaching zombies with a shot, and the insight glasses suddenly flashed. The surroundings changed, and she was no longer in the tower but back in the pitch-black mirror lake without stars. Blood splattered on her retina, and comrades fighting side by side slowly fell before her eyes. Irene returned to that day, back to the nightmare she couldn't escape from. Oh our contestant Irene, her greatest fear is Mirror Lake, Ah Kay said with a regretful tone. Emotional people always cherish their lost companions, but at times like these, emotions can become burdensome. How will Irene handle this? Irene's movement slowed down, and her eyes wandered forward for two steps, trying to reach out and grab her falling companion. In that moment of hesitation, she revealed a clear flaw. Several zombies pounced on her, biting her small arm and breaking her cannon. Irene. Snap out of it, Eula is already dead. The companion's roar abruptly awakened Irene. She screamed in pain. The mortar on her left arm was completely damaged, the zombie's sharp teeth pierced her skin. Irene kicked the approaching group of monsters, lifted her right arm, aimed the cannon at the zombie's head hanging on her and pressed the trigger without hesitation. A blazing red light flashed by. The zombie's head, Irene's arm, and the cannon she held all flew out together. A heroic sacrifice, Irene blasted off her own left hand. This is the most sensible choice right now, but not something an ordinary person can do. Let's cheer for Irene, and keep the votes rolling. Ah K seized this wave of high traffic, desperately encouraging the audience. I will always love Irene, she's like resilient grass facing the raging wind, never giving up even in desperate situations. Nana was a sensitive artificial intelligence, and tears were welling up in her eyes as she saw this. Irene. Irene. The audience's cheers surged higher and higher, and Irene's approval ratings peaked, surpassing all the other players. Group D. Lin Yu Yu retreated while singing, her voice never stopping, buffing Su Cha, who held the front and cleared the kills. When the insight glasses lit up, a damp, eerie rainforest covered the entire field of vision. Giant plants above blocked the sky, and the fetid air made it difficult to breathe. However, Su Cha seemed to be accustomed to walking in this environment. His movements were not slow at all. The venom enhanced abilities spread extensively, causing swathes of zombies to fall. On Lin Yu Yu's side, the surroundings turned into a hospital, resembling an intensive care unit. A blurry figure lay on the bed, and countless zombies were pressed against the glass outside, roaring and banging on the walls. In the next second, they were about to rush into the ward. The person lying inside seemed to sense the danger, and the ventilator alarm blared, signaling imminent danger to their life. This was probably the last thing Lin Yu Yu wanted to face in her mind. She shook her head, forcing herself to stop thinking about these things and focused on dealing with the zombies in front of her. Named randomly, since entering the competition and deliberately keeping a low profile, they had always maintained a moderate to lower popularity. Apart from them, there weren't many popular contestants in Group D. Ironically, this group had the lowest level of attention. Ah K glanced at the screen, uninterested, and switched to the next group. Group G. Song Ku and Su Xing stood back to back. Su Xing released a blizzard to gather a horde of zombies, while Song Ku harvested the zombies' heads with her twin blades. Facing ordinary zombies, the two coordinated seamlessly, with no pressure throughout, and the kill count kept rapidly increasing. The insight glasses lit up, and the surroundings changed. On Su Xing's side, it was like a zoo, with all sorts of strange and bizarre zombies, zombies with two heads and six arms, water monsters with an elephant's nose and an eel's body, vividly appearing before everyone. Children fear simple things, and their imagination is overly rich. The style of zombies and monsters imagined by Su Xing was so different from reality that it actually helped them distinguish better. The fears of contestant Su Xing are very very simple, Ah Kei remarked. Team V587 is the dark horse of the Mirror Lake competition, and so far, the only team that has not received sponsorship from the consortium. Although there are only two of them, 
they have brought us quite a lot of surprises. What do you think, Yulika? Have you watched the Mirror Lake competition? Of course I have. Yulika's orange eyeshadow twinkled. This is also a treasure team that I support. I'm curious about contestant Song Ku's fear. Could it be the water monster she has killed? Both guest invitees directed their gaze towards the screen for Group G. What was Song Ku's fear? The insight glasses flashed, revealing an unexpected image. Pure white. A blinding pure white. It seemed to be a closed room, but the space was extremely small, with dazzling spotlights from all directions. The bright lights made it difficult to open one's eyes. In the distant sky, there seemed to be blinking red dots. Ha! Huh. Is the insight glasses broken? Yulika asked disappointedly. Well Ak was also at a loss for words. Technically, official equipment shouldn't break. It can only be said that contestant Song Ku's thoughts are very unique. Perhaps, she's afraid of the dark. So she prefers to stay in bright places. Ah K speculated boldly, stroking his chin. Finding herself in a brightly lit setting, Song Ku also looked confused. What was this situation? Was this her fear? Inexplicably, a glint flashed in front of her eyes, and amidst the group of zombies she was dealing with, a sudden figure emerged. Sai Yang's mechanical exoskeleton bent into claws and lunged directly at Song Ku. Song Ku reacted very quickly, raising her twin blades to block, clang. The intense friction between the metals produced sparks. WH what are you doing? Song Ku exclaimed angrily. This competition was about killing the number of zombies without requiring them to kill each other. Why did Sai Yang attack her? Chapter 80 the disappearing AI. Finally caught you. Last time you slipped away pretty fast, Sayong laughed sinisterly. Your level 2 crystal, give it to me. Sayong was inherently greedy and had long set his eyes on the green crystal in Song Ku's hands. Unexpectedly, the day after the Mirror Lake competition ended, Song Ku left Ferrara and completely disappeared. He searched for a long time but couldn't find her. Now that he finally got into the same group, he naturally wanted to seize this opportunity and snatch the crystal. If Song Ku was sensible, she should have obediently handed it over. If she dared to resist, he would kill her immediately. Crazy. Song Ku cursed in her heart, always acting like he's someone superior. I'll show you who's the boss. She turned around and advised Su Xing, Xiao Xing, keep killing the zombies. Then she fearlessly went up to confront him. The short knife sliced across Sai Yang's chest, causing sparks to fly. Sai Yang's mechanical body seemed to be made of some unknown material it didn't cut through even after a strike. Song Ku frowned slightly, pushed forward another half meter, narrowing the distance between her and Sai Yang, preparing to strike again. Sai Yang took a half step back, his mechanical chest rapidly reassembled, and suddenly activated automatically, revealing a small hole. The dark gun barrel aimed at Song Ku, and countless superpowered shotgun pellets shot out. Sneaky. He deliberately exposed a vulnerability to bait Song Ku into attacking. Ha ha ha. Naive. I will kill you and then take the crystal. Wouldn't that be even more enjoyable? Before Sai Yang's laughter could end, Song Ku clashed her twin blades, merging them into a spiritual weapon umbrella. In a critical moment, she quickly opened the umbrella, and all the shotgun pellets hit the blue umbrella surface, being completely absorbed. Then she leaped into the air. In Sai Ang's astonished eyes, her Ame thorn rotated and stabbed fiercely into his skull. After piercing through the skull, Song Ku didn't stop. She picked out the two tubes connected at the back of his brain, cutting them one by one. Sai Ang's head was mostly mechanical. It rolled down to the ground, smoking, and was severely damaged. The mechanical skull was probably scrapped. It was unknown if he could salvage his life. Oh! Ah K exclaimed, contestant Song Ku single-handedly killed contestant Sai Ang. She soloed a B-level awakener. Outside the central square, Zhuang Qinyan watched the screen, observing the slender and seemingly frail yet explosively powerful figure. His lips slightly curved. Dr. Fong, 
you should consider yourself lucky for making the right decision. Feng Jixu soberly watched Song Ku's entire match. He slowly raised his eyelids and, after a moment of silence, spoke hoarsely, I admit she's strong, but so what? The opponent is just a B-level awakener. Zhuang Qinyan shook his head, his voice carrying deeper implications. You're wrong. She is far stronger than you imagine. And the luck I mentioned is not about Song Ku's strength. Oh, then what is it? Feng Jixu retorted coldly. Zhuang Qinyan sighed vaguely, she is not only powerful but also compassionate. Feng Jixu looked at the screen where Song Ku's face was full of disdain, kicking Sai Ang's head away, then turning back to the battlefield and rapidly harvesting the zombie heads, as if chopping vegetables and cutting fruits. Feng Jixu shrugged his head slightly inside his cotton coat, not commenting on Zhuang Qinyan's assessment of her being compassionate. Zhuang Qinyan smiled and didn't say more. He turned his gaze to Group F, where Wu Xianghai was. Zhuang Qinyan watched the actions of the people in the footage, his brows furrowing more and more. Wu Xianghai changed his attacking technique again, this time using an ability similar to devouring. A black hole appeared in his chest corresponding to the same position on the zombie, creating a rather disgusting sight. The clearing speed was not fast, clearly lagging behind the leading teams Wu Xianghai's own face was grim, and it was unclear whether it was because of the peculiar ability or the lagging progress. Zhuang Qinyan silently observed for a while and softly exclaimed, Ah! So that's how it is. Originally, it wasn't his own ability, so naturally, he couldn't use it well. Regarding the types of abilities, Qinglan Institute had conducted numerous experiments. The final data showed that the awakening of abilities was not entirely random. Some individuals were born with a predisposition to malevolence, a base nature, accustomed to stealing and robbing. Consequently, their awakened abilities were akin to rats in the sewer, dirty and dark. Ten minutes before the countdown ended, Song Ku had already defeated enough zombies to advance early. She and Su Xing walked out of the competition area and looked up at the suspended display screen in the sky. There were still three groups of matches yet to conclude, but the participants she knew had mostly secured their advancement. Song Ku retrieved her terminal and glanced at the message, then chuckled. What's going on? Su Xing asked. Something good, Song Ku happily shared with him. Maeda Jiu unexpectedly came to watch the competition. Although his attitude was indifferent, he specifically sent his location to Song Ku, urging her to come as he had only half an hour before returning to his team. Song Ku planned her next steps in her mind. First, she would meet up with Zhuang Qinyan, then call Lin Yuyu, and together they would go find Maeda Jiu. She wondered what expression this old-fashioned person would have upon seeing his idol in front of them. The thought was quite exhilarating. Song Ku held Su Xing's hand and eagerly headed towards the central square. Suddenly, the sky erupted in a brilliant fireworks display, which Song Ku assumed was arranged by the organizing committee. She glanced back. Almost immediately, she realized something was wrong. After the crimson fireworks burst, a glaring word appeared. Freedom. It was the resistance faction. But could they, relying on those motorbikes, truly impact the throne race competition? Song Ku couldn't help but doubt. Soon, she realized she was mistaken. This time, the ones taking action weren't petty street thugs. The fireworks were just a signal. The high voltage pulses at the top of the tower suddenly surged by several million volts, bang bang the high frequency floodlights burst in succession, and the entire city's power grid short circuited instantly. The Ferris wheel stopped, the neon dimmed, and the ubiquitous music fell silent. And on the high altitude stage, the figures of Ah K, Yulika, and Nana, projected by holograms, suddenly froze while speaking, like light screens losing signal, rapidly flickering for a few seconds, and then, they disappeared into thin air. After losing power, all artificial intelligences disappeared. The venue plunged into complete darkness, and the audience fell into endless confusion and chaos. What happened? Why is there a power outage? Where's AK? Where's the screen? Why is everything gone? Damn, don't step on me, it's too dark. For a while, 
the long-abandoned loudspeaker was pop-pop tapped twice, and from inside came a panicked voice. Um that, sorry everyone, I am a committee member in charge of cleaning no, logistics personnel. Due to that technical issue, the throne race competition is temporarily suspended. The results of the 32 qualifiers will be announced at a later date. Song Kuk tightened her grip on Su Xing's hand. Let's go quickly. Maeda Jio studied the point where the competition ended and hurried to the scene. Suddenly, Ferrara experienced a power outage. He stood at the alley's entrance, waiting for Song Ku to come. In the quiet night, faint sounds of a heated argument came from deep within the alley. When I sold the spot to you, how come you assured me? Didn't you promise guaranteed advancement? Now that I'm eliminated, I've lost all my money. A man's voice sounded angry. The other person apologized meekly, I'm sorry, I'll try to figure something out, get another spot. What are you thinking? You're useless. You claim to be a sea level awakener, but I think you're not even a level. Truly pure trash. I must have been blind at that time. The first man's voice abruptly stopped, followed by a thud as a heavy object hit the ground. Maeda Jio furrowed his brow and headed towards the source of the sound. A man of medium build had his back to him, panting heavily. In the man's hand was a sharp stone, and on the ground lay a warm corpse, its head smashed, blood flowing all over. Hearing footsteps, the man turned around in panic, a bewildered expression on his face. Wu Xianghai. What are you doing here? Maeda Jio glanced at the corpse on the ground and raised his voice, saying, You killed someone. Wu Xianghai was sobbing, his legs giving way as he knelt down. Deputy Captain, it's not like that listen to my explanation, I didn't mean to kill him. He forced me I didn't want to. I just lost control I, I just hit him once. Maeda Jio's face turned solemn, and his words were cold and cutting. I don't care about your conflicts, but you're an awakener. Even if your awakened ability isn't offensive, you shouldn't harm civilians. I will report tonight's incident to the Ferrara patrol team. Explain yourself to them. Wu Xianghai turned pale upon hearing this. No, Deputy Captain, please don't tell the patrol team. Maeda Jio snorted and turned away. I should have known what kind of person you were. I shouldn't have brought you out of District D. Wu Xianghai's pleas fell silent for a moment. Maeda Jio was in a bad mood, and after dealing with the trouble, he just wanted to find Song Kuk quickly and then return to the team. Suddenly, his steps halted. A cold black hole appeared in front of him a strange ability unfamiliar to him devoured him. Maeda Jio was caught off guard, falling down with his eyes wide open. Chapter, 81 She wanted to kill this person with her own hands. The city of Ferrara, known as the Nightless City, was suddenly attacked by the rebels. The energy to the tower was cut off, plunging the entire city into chaos. Song Ku and Su Xing hurriedly made their way back to the central square. In Song Ku's mind, Zhuang Qinyan and Fang Jixu were both weak men and had no ability to protect themselves. Putting them in a crowded place was usually fine, but the current situation was too dangerous. As darkness fell, the audience at the scene was initially briefly bewildered. Then, internal panic was infinitely amplified, spreading outward. Countless people desperately pushed to get out, and due to not being able to distinguish the direction, there was shoving, falling, and even trampling incidents. Fang Jishu stumbled and was bumped by people rushing out from an unknown direction. Zhuang Qingyan's wheelchair was constantly jostled and scraped, tilting and swaying, making it difficult to maintain balance. His face was stern, his eyebrows furrowed, enduring as much as he could. His right hand was just about to rise. A slender hand reached from behind, steadying him. Song Ku had come back. Song Ku held the wheelchair with her left hand and pulled hard with her right hand, pulling Fang Jishu, who was being tossed around, back. Then she dragged Su Xing like a little tail, against the crowd, and managed to escape the congested center with difficulty. The four of them moved away from the chaos and found a relatively less crowded corner to stand in. The Res Resistance F faction, they've T taken action. Song Ku asked. It was Lian who took action, Zhuang Qinyan corrected her. 
the rebels were just troublesome pests and couldn't stir up a major storm. But Lion, supported by the century-old consortium, was different. He used a killer move as soon as he acted. Cutting off the tower's energy was a direct attack on the vital point. After all, Ferrara's artificial intelligence was composed of data, and the central hub that stored massive data required energy support, much like a human heart. An artificial intelligence without a heart, losing its central hub of stored data, undoubtedly entered a death state. After listening to the explanation, a hint of doubt flashed in Song Ku's mind. Lion's success tonight came too easily, right? The tower was Ilya's stronghold. Would he really surrender so easily? This super AI was said to control everything in Ferrara, so did he really have no knowledge of the underground activities of the rebels? Song Ku voiced her doubts, and Zhuang Qinyan hesitated for a moment before speaking. Just then, a gentle female voice came from behind them. Ilya won't lose so easily. It was Lin Yuyu and Su Cha. They had arranged to meet here after the match, and despite the unexpected events, the two of them still showed up. Wh what do why you mean? Song Ku asked. Lin Yuyu adjusted her mask, not taking it off even in the darkness. I've heard Nana mention it. The central hub of Ilya is not in the tower at all. In the whole Ferrara, no one knows where its true form is. So even if the rebels destroy the tower's energy, it won't restrict Ilya. Moreover, they've underestimated this ruler, Lin Yuyu sighed. Ilya doesn't have much sentiment for the people of Ferrara, but his desire for power is top-notch. He won't allow anyone to challenge his authority, especially humans. In the central square, the panicked crowd was running around like headless flies, and the ruler of this city had yet to appear. Zhuang Qinyan suggested reasonably, we shouldn't get involved in this matter. Let's observe quietly for now. Song Ku nodded. In any case, the struggle between Lion and Ilya was Ferrara's internal affair. Their identities were just participants in the throne race event. It was not their place to intervene. It was time to get things done. Song Ku turned to Lin Yuyu, eager as she tugged at her sleeve. Ko come with me, let's G go meet as someone. Lin Yuyu looked helpless. You have to tell me who we're meeting first. Your fan, Song Ku grinned foolishly. She glanced at the terminal and noticed that Maeda Jio had not moved for a while. She urged, hurry. What if he got impatient and left? Song Ku dragged Lin Yuyu towards the location, with Zhuang Qinyan and Su Cha following behind. Who is this person that you're treating so well? Why do I have to go meet them personally? Hee <laughs> hee, you'll K no in a mo moment. When they arrived at the alley where Maeda Jio was supposed to be, it was empty. Song Ku double checked, yes, this was the place. So where was he? He will wouldn't shy away and hide, would he? That's not Lee like him. He sh shouldn't know that I'm b bringing Lin Yuyu, she wondered aloud. Song Ku looked left and right but couldn't find Maeda Jio. All she saw was a dark, seemingly endless alley. She thought for a moment and then stepped into it. The further she went, the dimmer the light became, and the surroundings grew eerily quiet, as if even the flow of air had come to a halt. Deep in the alley, a faint figure lay. Song Ku halted her steps, a bad premonition rising in her heart. She slowed her breathing, and a blue light flashed in her palm as her amethyst thorn spun into view, slowly approaching the dark figure. In the bleak moonlight, the person's face gradually became clear. The sight made Song Ku's pupils shrink, her heart pounding violently, blood rushing to her brain, and her whole body buzzing. Maeda Jio's eyes were open, breathless, lifeless, lying on the ground. Maeda Maeda. Song Ku rushed forward and touched him. His body was cold he had been dead for some time. She struggled to accept it, attempting to feel his pulse and listen to his heart, but there was complete silence, no response at all. Ting. The ame thorn fell to the ground, making a crisp sound. Maeda. An incredulous and pained cry echoed throughout the alley. How could this be? Maeda Jio, how could he die here? Due to the immense shock, Song Ku's thoughts descended into chaos. He was fine just moments ago, even messaging her. Why, why hadn't they been in touch for a while, 
and he was already dead. So close to her, right before her eyes, Maya Reggio was killed by someone. Song Kuk trembled all over. It was a tremor of extreme, infuriated grief. Who was it? Who killed Maya Reggio? Tears streamed down her face. It was all her fault. If she hadn't invited Maya Reggio over, if she hadn't insisted on surprising him, pulling him along to meet Lin Yuyu, would this have happened? Did she cause Maya Reggio's death? Song Kuk cried she couldn't control her tears, grieving inconsolably. The others behind caught up, witnessing the scene, their faces filled with shock and disbelief. Fang Jishu glanced at the person on the ground, momentarily stunned, then closed his eyes. Once a doctor, he used to be saddened by the departure of life despite being accustomed to life and death. However, later, those devastating blows completely extinguished his compassion. Now, his heart would no longer fluctuate. Lin Yuyu had the most intense reaction among the remaining people. She stared blankly at Maya Rejo's body, at a loss for words. Song Kuk kept talking all the way, unusually talkative, sharing a lot about this person. She mentioned how he was usually very old-fashioned but oddly liked to listen to her songs. If someone else sang poorly, he would get angry. Lin Yuyu could tell that, even though Song Kuk kept saying what was wrong with him, she was actually full of anticipation. Otherwise, she wouldn't have dragged her to meet this fan. And now, the person described by Song Ku, who was old-fashioned and awkward yet genuinely loved her as a fan, had died silently and unceremoniously. They hadn't even met. Lin Yuyu exhaled heavily, a bitter feeling in her chest. She could understand Song Ku's pain. Su Cha, go have a look. Su Cha silently approached, squatting down to examine Maya de Jiu's body. There was a clear missing piece on the left side, exposing a hollow wound. He activated his ability, and small dark green dots entered Maya de Jiu's mouth, capturing the traces left by the awakened energy. The killer was a person with abilities. A few meters away lay another person, fatally injured in the head. Su Cha picked up some of the blood dust on the ground, brought it close to his nose, and sniffed. Besides the smell of blood, there was also an unfamiliar scent. The killer had hastily escaped after the murder, leaving behind many traces. Being from the rainforest, he had the innate skill of tracking ingrained in his blood. Given some time, he could find the culprit. Zhuang Qinyan wheeled forward, Song Ku with her back turned, trembling slightly. He sighed silently and gently pressed Song Ku's shoulder. Let's inform Wu Juamin first. Yeah. It took a long time before Song Ku replied in a low voice. The next thing she had to face was probably Wu Juamin's wrath. Wu Juamin arrived very quickly. Not only him, but all seven remaining Azure Phoenix team members from Ferrara had also come. Seeing Maeda Jiu's body, Oh Yang Pei couldn't contain himself and cried out in deep sorrow, Deputy Captain. Wu Juamin walked closer step by step, surrounded by surging abilities, exuding an oppressive feeling of an impending storm. He squatted down, silently gazing at Maeda Jiu for a while, then reached out and gently closed his eyes. Then he stood up again and said somberly, Salute. The seven Azure Phoenix team members, including Wu Juamin, uniformly removed their hats, placing their left hands flat in front while saluting with their right hands in the standard alliance military salute. Maeda was an excellent soldier, obedient to orders, strictly disciplined. Since joining the 11th team, he has been diligent and has never made any mistakes, Wu Juamin said. A person like him could die on the battlefield, die at the hands of enemies, or die in the course of a mission, but he cannot die here without reason. Wu Juamin turned to Song Ku, his voice dangerously low, tell me, why did he die? Song Ku hesitated. Lin Yuyu stood in front of Song Ku, blocking her, hey, captain, she didn't kill him. She came here with us and knows nothing. Song Ku is already upset. Don't question her like this. Wu Juamin remained expressionless. Maeda took an hour off today to come and meet her. Now, something has happened to him. If I don't question her, who should I ask? He wouldn't leave the team easily. What did you say to him? Wu Juamin continued. 
Song Ku answered slowly, I said, I, I had a, a surprise and A asked him to come and W watched the competition. What surprise? Wu Juamin's tone was cold as ice. Why did you specifically want to surprise him? Because of me, the person Song Ku wants to take him to see is me, Lin Yu Yu said, removing her mask and revealing her true face in front of others. Wu Juamin frowned, apparently not recognizing Lin Yu Yu's face. Maeda Jiu always respected Wu Juamin and regarded him as a role model for his actions, so he naturally wouldn't reveal his star chasing preferences in front of him. Ouyang Pei, who had a closer relationship with Maeda Jiu, recognized her. He approached Wu Juamin and quietly explained Lin Yu Yu's identity. Song Ku patted Lin Yu Yu and stepped forward to explain, We had a an arrangement to M meet after the competition. Five fifteen minutes a ago, he sent me his location. I, I didn't tell A anyone about his WH whereabouts. The other members of Azure Phoenix team had already checked the nearby surveillance cameras. However, due to the citywide power outage, the cameras were off, and the patrolling city defense robots had stopped working. At the scene, apart from the two bodies, there was no evidence left. After listening to Ouyang Pei's explanation, Wu Juamin's gaze returned to Song Ku. His eyes were red, his hands clenched tightly by his sides, and he looked like a taut bow, and he was on the verge of breaking out. Wu Juamin calmed down and realized that Song Ku couldn't have killed Maeda. She had no motive and no time to commit the crime. However, the incident was indeed related to her, and he acknowledged his own prejudice born out of losing control of his emotions. But Wu Juamin was also human, a person with flesh and blood. A fellow comrade, fighting shoulder to shoulder, had died in this filthy place. How could he face this rationally? How could he swallow this indignation? The atmosphere in the narrow alley grew even colder than the harsh winter. It was at this moment that Zhuang Qinyan spoke up. Captain Wu, I may have some clues regarding the killer who murdered Maeda Jiu. All eyes turned towards him, and Zhuang Qinyan saw mirrored expressions of grief and hatred. He organized his thoughts and began to analyze slowly, Maeda Jiu was a sea level awakener. He awakened a defensive ability. If he was on guard, the assailant couldn't have succeeded easily. However, besides the fatal wound, there were no signs of a struggle on Maeda Jiu's body. You mean the killer was someone he knew, Wu Juamin noticed the key point. Zhuang Qinyan confirmed his statement, most likely not just new, but in Wu Juamin's eyes, the killer wasn't even aggressive. At least, the killer didn't possess the ability to kill him. That's why Maeda turned his back to the assailant. Zhuang Qinyan's gaze fell on Maeda Jiu's mouth. Su Cha had just removed the clothing fragments there, revealing the hollow in his heart that looked like a black hole. I'm trying to reconstruct the crime scene. Maeda Jiu was originally positioned at the alley's entrance. After the power outage, he wouldn't have left his spot for no reason. So it's very likely that he discovered or saw something, like the killer committing the murder. However, this person didn't seem threatening to him, so after dealing with the situation, he didn't feel the need to be on guard and turned to leave the assailant took advantage of this opportunity and killed him. Wu Juamin furrowed his brow, pointing out the contradiction in Zhuang Qinyan's deduction. Unreasonable. If Maeda was sure that this person wasn't a threat, why was he killed? Because Zhuang Qinyan's expression turned cold. From the very beginning, the killer deceived everyone. Su Cha waited patiently. Tiny green light dots emerged from the black hole in Maeda Jiu's mouth, tracing the traces of awakened energy, leaving luminescent marks on the ground, extending in a certain direction. I think I have an idea of who it might be. I can find this person, Su Cha and Zhuang Qinyan spoke almost simultaneously. Wu Juamin's expression became stern. Who is it? Where is he? His black finger joints creaked. Lead me to find him. I'm going with you. Lin Yu Yu stood behind Su Cha. Song Ku also stepped forward, her eyes reddened, a smoldering fire burning within them. And me. Never before had she felt such a strong urge to kill. She wanted to kill this person with her own hands. Chapter, 82 Bad Seed There is a kind of person in this world, born in the dark and cramped slums, wandering in the dirty sewers. 
They envy others' wealth and happiness, often cursing the unfairness of the heavens and harboring a deep resentment towards their own incompetence. Wu Xianghai was one such individual. He was a seasoned pickpocket, or rather, a thief, with a vile and shameless nature. He targeted the elderly, the weak, and women and took pride in it. After the apocalypse, Wu Xianghai's awakened abilities were related to this. Although it was only the lowest E level, he could steal others' abilities through theft and even level up using this stolen ability. The condition was that he had to personally kill the wielder of that ability to completely strip them of it. The first person Wu Xianghai killed was a fragile female awakener. He relied on a sneak attack from behind. When he struck, he was trembling with fear, his heart pounding wildly. With an axe, he viciously smashed the back of her head. Blood sprayed out, and Wu Xianghai was both terrified and oddly exhilarated. During the process of taking the ability, fragments of the woman's consciousness entered Wu Xianghai's brain. He saw her past her gentle lover, caring parents, friends her happy upbringing remained untouched even by the apocalypse. Good. Wu Xianghai licked his lips, a perverse sensation filling his mind, everything is mine now. Knowing that his true ability must remain hidden, Wu Xianghai used the stolen object sewing ability to register as an E-level awakener. Later, when he fled his homeland, he luckily encountered the Azure Phoenix team and others who were evacuating, and he was taken away as an awakener. Wu Xianghai acted timidly and pretended to be a simple and honest person, successfully following them to District C-72. Ferrara, this free city, amplified his ambitions and malevolent thoughts completely. The second person he killed was a carefully selected D-level awakener, possessing an aggressive dark-type ability. As usual, it was a sneak attack. Upon killing the person, Wu Xianghai learned from the fragments of consciousness that this individual intended to participate in the throne race competition. The countless points, alliance coins, and the possibility of fulfilling desires the enticing conditions and plentiful rewards further inflated Wu Xianghai's desires. He firmly believed that he was like the protagonists in those leveling up stories, rising from being a useless underdog, crushing everyone in his path, and couldn't wait to obtain a powerful ability to trample everyone. By stealing abilities, Wu Xianghai became a D-level awakener. He used the money and channels left by the deceased to buy a slot from the intermediary, replacing that person in the throne race competition. However, the reality that followed was different from what he had imagined. In this world, there were far too many individuals stronger than him. On the night of the Mirror Lake competition, Wu Xianghai was in dire straits. He almost capsized in a gutter, nearly sending himself to the underworld. Wu Xianghai, who luckily advanced, felt a dark mood. No, he needed an even more powerful ability. Later, he finally killed a sea level awakener. The person had an incredibly elusive ability called Black Hole Devour. From this person's memories, Wu Xianghai unexpectedly learned about the secret of Ferrara. The deceased belonged to a convoluted organization that claimed to be a resistance faction. Their goal was astonishingly to destroy all artificial intelligence. Wu Xianghai realized he had gotten himself into serious trouble. He carefully destroyed the body and all evidence of this person's existence. But he never expected that in the round of 32, he would lose. Despite having acquired the ability of devouring, he could never fully integrate it. It was as if it was inherently rebellious and could not be completely controlled. The consequences of losing the match were dire. The intermediary interrogated him vehemently, but Wu Xianghai was no longer the initially obedient character. He had transformed from a thief to a butcher, his hands stained with blood. Wu Xianghai's malevolent thoughts spiraled out of control. He picked up a stone from the ground and killed the defiant intermediary. What are you doing? You've killed someone. Wu Xianghai never expected that Maeda would witness the murderous scene. The wrong person appeared at the wrong time and place, discovering his vile nature. Wu Xianghai begged desperately, pleading for mercy. If his true ability was exposed, everything would be over. But Maeda simply didn't listen. He was stern and merciless, threatening to inform the patrol team. Wu Xianghai knocked his head on the ground, looking at Maeda's retreating heels through the cold gap. His eyes were gradually consumed by darkness. I gave you a chance. Since it's come to this, then just die. 
Seizing the opportunity while the other was off guard, Wu Xianghai made another sneak attack, killing Maeda and stripping him of his ability. Then he fled in a panic. Back at his residence, Wu Xianghai was engulfed by immense panic. He anxiously bit his fingers, drawing blood. What to do? What to do? The people from Azure Phoenix won't let him off. Wu Juamin thinking of the captain's sharp eyes, Wu Xianghai couldn't stop shivering, cold sweat trickling down his forehead. It's okay, it's okay, he consoled himself. He had escaped quickly, leaving no traces. Tonight's power outage ensured that no one knew. After the panic subsided, a familiar excitement gradually surged. Wu Xianghai moved his right hand gently, and an invisible air barrier appeared around him. It could spread out or change shape with his movements, wrapping around him like layered soft armor, its transparent surface indestructible. As expected of Azure Phoenix team's deputy captain, Wu Xianghai's smile was greedy and cruel. This was the most practical ability he had ever seen. The chaotic night passed without any incidents. There were no pursuers and no patrol teams Wu Xianghai, who had been living in fear, slowly began to ease. He had escaped, he was safe. In a few days, he would leave Ferrara and start anew somewhere else. Wu Xianghai relaxed his mind, lying on the bed with his legs crossed, humming a pleasant tune. He flipped his palm back and forth, admiring his new ability. A few fireflies drifted in from the window, their dim green light flickering and dotting his body. Wu Xianghai reached out to shoo them away, but they didn't budge. The next moment, his movements abruptly stopped. These weren't fireflies at all this was psychic tracking, an awakener. Wu Xianghai jumped up from the bed. A poison dagger shattered the wall, a murderous aura surging as it pierced the gap between his legs. The venom spread, corroding the bed instantly. Thankfully, he moved quickly, or he would have lost his legs. Wu Xianghai, like a mouse, lowered his head and darted into the corner, trying to escape through the hole. Ethereal singing echoed, infiltrating his ears. His legs felt like they were filled with lead, making it difficult to even lift them. A strong debuff control ability. More than one awakener had come. Wu Xianghai frantically erected a defensive barrier, tightly wrapping himself up. Bang! The door blew open, and a stern figure emerged against the dawn's light. Wu Xianghai turned his head in terror, saw the person clearly, and his eyes widened in despair. Wu Juamin it was Wu Juamin who had come personally to capture him. Captain Wu he stammered. Wu Juamin's expression was icy, giving him no chance to speak. Quick and decisive, he vanished on the spot. The person was an A-level speed type awakener. Wu Xianghai's awakened energy surged, exerting all his power to ensure the barrier covered his entire body without any gaps. Clang! A terrifying force struck the back of his head, causing the barrier there to teeter, a large crack forming. Wu Xianghai hurriedly began repairing it in a fluster. Wu Juamin reappeared from high-speed movement, his voice furious and shocked, you you're using Maeda's ability. His gaze made Wu Xianghai tremble all over, as if he had fallen into an abyss. You killed Maeda and deprived him of his ability, Wu Juamin said each word distinctly. Under the terrifying pressure, Wu Xianghai struggled to form a coherent sentence. It was already winter, and the biting cold wind blew in from outside, bringing with it two figures, a man and a woman. There were three awakeners chasing him. Cold sweat dripped down Wu Xianghai's forehead, and he felt trapped. Wait, something's wrong. The air seemed to stop moving. A more domineering and overbearing pressure than Wu Juamin swept over, brushing against Wu Xianghai like a wild wind sweeping leaves. His whole body stood on end, paralyzed. Behind Wu Juamin, another figure emerged, encased in frost. The girl held a fierce tang sword, stepping towards him, the tip of the blade exuding extreme killing intent. Wu Xianghai knew her this woman named Song Ku had terrifying combat power. In Mirror Lake, she could single-handedly kill mutant zombies and mutant water monsters, escaping unscathed from a hundred-person siege. Last night, she even decapitated the mechanical head, Sion, with a single stroke. Why would such a grim reaper appear here? Wu Xianghai's legs weakened, unable to withstand the dual pressure. 
Tears and mucus mixed together as he cried and begged, Captain Wu, don't kill me. I was wrong, I know I was wrong. Please, don't kill me. I beg you, I know many secrets. I'll tell you everything, spare me, please. Wu Juamin coldly looked down at him, as if looking at a corpse. Wu Xianhai cowered and turned toward Song Ku, trying to break through from her. You you're participating in a throne race competition, and you want to win, right? I know many secrets, the resistance faction, yes, I know their next plans. I'll tell you everything, please don't kill me. While begging for mercy, Wu Xianhai carefully observed their reactions and cautiously retreated. Song Ku's expression remained unchanged, her eyes locking onto him. You, deserve to die. No matter what this person said, she wouldn't spare him. The blade turned, and without a second thought, it slashed at the air barrier, a sharp and grating sound filling the air. Wu Xianghai was terrified, knowing there was no hope in pleading with this person. He turned towards Wu Juamin, shouting desperately. Captain Wu, Captain Wu. The key. I know where the key is, I've seen it. Wu Xianghai accessed the fragmented memories of Maya De Jiu, seeing the image of Xie Zua and unexpectedly learning about Azure Phoenix's mission. This was his only bargaining chip at the moment. Wu Juamin moved lightning fast, blocking Song Ku's attack with his black gloves. Song Ku was stunned and turned to glare at him. Why was he still listening to him? Chapter 83 Bad Seed Where is he? Wu Juamin stared intently at the kneeling man. There was hope. Wu Xianghai's eyes darted around, attempting to buy some time. Once, when I was buying a slot from the intermediary, I saw that person, he was with someone with blue eyes, at, at. Where? Wu Juamin shouted sharply. Wu Xianghai's breath became rapid, the pressure making his mental power run wild, about to explode. Monzoni Street, number 16. The person is there. I'm sure. While Wu Juamin pondered the address for a second, Wu Xianghai's ability suddenly expanded outward, pushing away the few people in front of him. Wu Juamin realized and punched. Bang! A severe impact rang out. The ability barrier, released at full strength, surprisingly withstood his attack. Wu Juamin attacked again, one punch after another, with astonishing destructive power. However, the air barrier tightly wrapped around Wu Xianghai, like an impenetrable cocoon, unable to reach his true self. You can't kill me. You can't kill me. Wu Xianghai laughed manically. He now possessed a defensive ability, and nobody could break his barrier. Great stuff, Deputy Captain Maeda's ability. Ha ha ha, great stuff. He described wildly, shouting fearlessly. Wu Juamin was furious, thinking of Maeda Jiu, a trustworthy teammate who always stood behind him for support. That was his comrade's ability how could it be desecrated by such a person? With a slight movement of his palm, a highly destructive particle weapon appeared out of thin air. Wu Juamin adjusted the aim, targeting Wu Xianghai. If this shot went off, the entire house would be leveled. But a figure rushed past him even faster. Song Ku leaped high in the air, her weapon slashing with the force of tearing the sky apart. The ferocious Tang sword chopped down, directly clashing with the barrier. A dazzling light flashed, the air barrier shattered inch by inch, and the blade continued down. Blood splattered as Wu Xianghai's left arm was severed. Ah! A heart-wrenching scream resounded. What did a defensive ability matter? What did an air barrier matter? A metal-type ability could cut through everything. He was just a vile thief, inherently evil. If Song Ku wanted him dead, there was no way he could survive today. Wu Xianhai rolled around in a miserable state on the ground. Seeing Song Ku raising her blade again, he raised his voice, babbling incoherently, disregarding everything. You can't kill me, don't kill me. Maeda Jiu, there's something he hasn't had a chance to tell you. Don't kill me, I'll tell you. This was becoming unbearable. Song Ku lowered her eyes, her offensive in no way paused. Never give the enemy a chance to speak this was a lesson reiterated by her master. 
The Tang sword once again chopped towards the barrier, transparent glass shattered, a clear path unhindered, viciously plunging into Wu Xianghai's mouth. Same position, same method of death just how he killed Maya De Jiu, that's how he died under Song Ku's blade. Blood splattered, and Wu Xianghai's heart burst instantly. His breathing abruptly stopped, his eyes bulging out, like a dirty rat in the sewer, stomped to death. Song Ku withdrew the Tang sword, her face covered in bloodstains, expressionless. Another fierce strike, stabbing down. Completely dead. The room fell quiet. Song Ku walked up to Wu Juamin, silent for a long time, unsure of what to say. Finally, she said, I'm sorry. The one who should have received the apology was Maya De Jiu, but he could never hear it again. Wu Juamin looked at Wu Xianghai's body on the ground and spoke coldly, to enter the Azure Phoenix's ranks of Awakeners, one must not only pass the ability assessment but also undergo a test of character. Both are essential. Therefore, not all Awakeners can travel with us. I was wrong. I shouldn't have taken you with us. Song Ku had no words in response. If it weren't for Wu Juamin, she might have been trapped on the island in F-177, helpless and waiting to die. This captain of the Azure Phoenix had done everything within his power, rescuing civilians and Awakeners from different places, leading them all the way to evacuation. He was undoubtedly a good man, but now, he said he was wrong. Wu Juamin glanced at her and said coldly, from now on, don't see anyone in the team, don't contact anyone. That's it. There's no connection between Azure Phoenix and you anymore. Wu Juamin left. Song Ku looked down at her own shoes, lost in thought for a long time. Kuo Lin Yu Yu called her worriedly. Song Ku snapped out of it, and when she looked up again, her expression was calm. It's okay, let's go. On the hotel's upper floor, Song Ku sat on the railing, silently looking outside through the floor to ceiling window. She had been in this state for several hours. Su Xing peeked at her from behind, hesitant to approach. Instead, he went to fetch reinforcements. First, he went to find Fong Jishu. Dr. Fong was lying on the sofa, the back of his hand against his forehead, eyes half closed. He wasn't asleep, lost in thought about something. Hey, lazy old man, Su Xing lightly kicked his leg, aren't you a doctor? My dad said you can come up with all sorts of comforting words. Hurry, go talk to my sister. Fong Jishu grunted, What's it to me? He turned around, his back to Su Xing, and added nonchalantly, In situations like this, you have to find your own way out. I can't do it myself, so how can I advise others? Su Xing felt helpless in the face of his indifference, stomped his foot, and went to knock on another person's door. Zhuang Qin Yan was in his room scrolling through the display, fingertips sliding rapidly, swiftly perusing a massive amount of data and information. Daylight shone on his profile, his expression especially focused. A night had passed, and Ferrara's energy had been restored, but artificial intelligence was still absent. Su Xing fidgeted on the carpet, reluctantly speaking up, uh, could you go and talk to sister? He never really got along with Zhuang Qinyan. Strictly speaking, this was the first time the irritable little lion had ever softened, using a somewhat imploring tone to speak to him. Zhuang Qinyan glanced at him curiously and teased, what? Worried she'll keep sinking into despair. Su Xing pouted. Although he didn't answer, that was exactly what he was worried about. Zhuang Qinyan turned the wheelchair and changed direction, pressing the pause button. Rest assured, she's not as fragile as you think. But, it's time to end the indulgence. As he passed by Su Xing, Zhuang Qinyan flicked his head, saying, instead of worrying about your sister, why not focus on improving your abilities? Don't always hold her back. Are you aiming to become the champion of swimming, or do you want to be a lazy fish that only shouts 666 foot? Su Xing held his head in his hands, yelling in annoyance, mind your own business. Zhuang Qinyan chuckled lightly and went to the balcony, passing by Su Xing. What are you thinking? The wheelchair stopped behind Song Ku, and he asked in his usual tone. Song Ku didn't look back but instead tapped the invisible glass in front of her. This marvelous piece of technology could seamlessly blend into the air, like a barrier. 
Only when you pressed on it with your fingertips would it slightly reveal itself. Wu Juamin S.A. said he was W.R. wrong, she calmly recounted. He said he S.H. shouldn't have taken us to E-evacuate. Today was the first day of energy recovery. Looking down from a high vantage point, Ferrara's streets were desolate, the whole city eerily quiet. He told me not to see contact anyone else in the T-team. Does this upset you? Chuang Qinyan asked. Not upset, Song Ku shook her head. I'm T thinking that uh, maybe I was wrong T too. She sighed and counted on her fingers. I'm very, be very unlucky, and N not very S smart. I, I shouldn't have kept S such a close distance FR from them, BR bringing disasters upon O others. She still remembered back in Hua City when Zhou Anqi called her a star of disaster. Song Ku didn't take it seriously at the time and just wanted to give her a good slap. But now, she felt her words were prophetic. It seemed like people around her were always unlucky because of her. I, I shouldn't have brought why you all back. And maybe why without me, things W would be be better. Her fingers weren't enough, and Song Ku slumped her shoulders in frustration. I won't pee pick up people A again in the Fu future. As for Wu Juamin, I won't comment let him solve it himself, Zhuang Qinyan said. As for you, don't take everything on yourself. Maeda's death was because he encountered a natural bad seed like Wu Xianghai. In a sense, it was his own carelessness that was the fatal cause. It's not your fault. Your luck is a bit lacking. Chuang Qinyan smiled. It's quite difficult to drag others down. At your young age, don't be so superstitious. As for the people you brought back, let's start with Su Xing. There's no need to say much. Those two coolies were turned around at your whim, yet they didn't storm off. Even Fang Zixiu, if you were to go back and ask him if he regrets following you, he'd probably just roll his eyes and continue sleeping where he is. Their answers are all there for everyone to see. Aren't you clear about it? No one regrets it. Hey, and what about why you? Song Ku's clear eyes looked at him. Me? Xuan Qingyan's smile gradually widened. You're my golden thigh. I haven't had a chance to hug you tightly, how could I regret it? Song Ku was left speechless for a moment. But strangely, her lips couldn't help but curve upward, and a small dimple showed on her cheek. Xuan Qingyan's gaze lingered on her face for a couple of seconds, and he leisurely added, however, I agree with the last sentence. Don't bring people back anymore. Your arms are so thin, and there are too many people to carry. Song Ku slowly turned her head, staring at him expressionlessly. After a while, she hopped off the railing, murmuring to herself as she touched her stomach, I'm hungry. Zhuang Qingyan's wheelchair followed behind her. Now that there's no robot butler, we have to do everything ourselves. After walking a few steps, all the terminals, televisions, screens, and projections in the hotel suddenly lit up, displaying the same image. A middle-aged man with a stern face was seated at a desk, arrogantly delivering a speech. I am Lion, the newly appointed magistrate of Ferrara. I now announce that the artificial intelligence known as Ilya has been completely eradicated. From today onwards, Ferrara will enforce new rules. Rule 1, strict entry restrictions will be implemented citywide, expelling unidentified refugees. Rule 2, all music performances and entertainment activities are prohibited. Holding large public events must be approved by the city hall. Rule 3, all residents are prohibited from hoarding any form of artificial intelligence. Those found in violation will be severely punished. Rule 4. Rule 10, the ongoing throne race competition will be taken over by the city hall, and the rules and procedures will be redesigned. Upon hearing this, Zhuang Qinyan let out a cold laugh. Cancel all major events, but conveniently leave the throne race. It seems they don't intend to let go of this lucrative opportunity. Song Ku furrowed her brow. Is he announcing Ilya's death like this? The resistance faction had just succeeded last night, and they hadn't confirmed the final result yet, but Lion was in a rush to declare sovereignty. Was Lion too proud and reckless? Wouldn't Ilya make any move? As they were speaking, a deafening roar echoed from a certain direction within the city. 
Song Kuk focused her gaze, is that the Sakara Theater? Just as Lion was delivering his speech, thousands of zombies surged out from underground beneath the Sakara Theater. Chapter, 84 Are you looking for me? A drop of ink splattered onto the white paper, spreading out in large splotches. When a zombie broke free from its restraints, it triggered waves upon waves of frenzy. This was the current situation at the Sakara Theater. Starting from a single point, it rapidly spread in all directions, an eerie zombie horde that sent shivers down one spine, crawling out from underground and flooding the streets and alleys of Ferrara. In all the screens and projected images, Lion's speech was abruptly interrupted, leaving him with a bewildered expression. His passionate speech had just been brutally debunked, turning into a ludicrous joke. V587 had once taken on a commission to clear the zombies at Luli Port. At the time, the system had popped up with a strange prompt, asking them to capture the zombies and bring them back alive. Song Ko had followed a transportation truck, only to discover that these zombies were being transported to the underground of the Sakara Theater. She, like others before, had thought that zombies were just fodder for the throne race competition. But now, reflecting on it, perhaps it wasn't fodder, but rather a means to cultivate something, and such crazed behavior would ultimately lead to disaster. Cultivating zombies was already an extremely dangerous endeavor, especially when their numbers exceeded the threshold they could control. Seven to eight out of ten abnormal sources from nearby C and D grade cities flowed into Ferrara. While this city claimed to be one of freedom on the surface, its dark underground had long belonged to a vast kingdom of the undead. Now, all the undead had escaped. The ordinary citizens strolling on the streets hadn't yet grasped what was happening. They looked around in confusion, their dilated pupils capturing the swiftly approaching figures of the zombies. In an instant, the zombies lunged at them, biting their necks. Ah! Help, help! Similar tragedies continued to unfold in Ferrara. In a high-rise hotel, Song Ko furrowed her brow, asking, H how did it come to this? Zhuang Qinyan joined her in looking down, his tone indifferent, the Sakara Theater is under integrated management, with everything from security, monitoring, logistics, to defense systems controlled entirely by artificial intelligence. Song Ku immediately realized, the A artificial intelligence has be been shut D down. Zhuang Qinyan nodded, exactly, Lion was too engrossed in enjoying the fruits of victory and didn't promptly eliminate potential risks. Song Ku still couldn't fully grasp one thing. Even if artificial intelligence managed more accurately and was far more secure than humans, could it truly be flawless, immune to any malfunctions? Wasn't there any emergency plan within the theater, allowing such a significant threat to erupt unchecked? Zhuang Qinyan seemed to understand what she was thinking and raised an eyebrow, do you think these zombies escaped on their own, or were they deliberately released? Song Ku She abruptly turned to look at Zhuang Qinyan, his expression was serious and it didn't look like he was joking. A chill ran down Song Ku's spine. If the zombies were intentionally released, then in all of Ferrara, only one person could have done it. Song Ku remembered Lin Yuyu's statement about Ilya having no feelings for the people and a sense of dread enveloped her. Did artificial intelligence truly have no pity for humanity? Ferrara, without artificial intelligence, faced disasters far beyond this. The citizens of Ferrara were like oversized infants indulging in a dreamlike illusion, full of bravado in words but practically useless in combat, with a combat effectiveness of less than zero. They took pleasure in watching the Awakeners massacre zombies, but when it came to facing the same situation themselves, they were terrified. Most people trembled in fear, unable to even lift their weapons. The zealous audience who had once criticized the participants as useless and couldn't even kill a few zombies were now scared witless, wishing to stay at home forever. On the first day of the zombie outbreak, 90% of the public sector came to a standstill. The residents of Ferrara neither had work nor needed to go to the office. Engrossed in their leisure, everything from food, accommodation, transportation, and commerce was handled by AI. In their free time, they engaged in various entertainment activities. But now, with a colossal change in their lives and fear surrounding them, the frightened populace hid in their homes, anxious and fearful throughout the night. On the second day, some awakeners came out to hunt and kill zombies, but the effect was minimal. They killed the old ones, and new ones emerged. 
with too many people being bitten, they kept transforming into mutant zombies. Ferrara's municipal hotline was almost overwhelmed, flooded with angry citizens denouncing Lion as a coward for not deploying forces to suppress the zombies. Lion was powerless in this situation. The cold artificial intelligence was unafraid of death, enabling it to valiantly confront the zombies. However, humans were afraid. His personal guard consisted of humans, and not a single one dared to step forward to kill the zombies. Regarding Lion's inaction, Zhuang Qinyan gave a cold two-word evaluation, utterly pathetic. Song Ku wholeheartedly agreed. The resistance faction was a group of spineless individuals who only knew how to bicker amongst themselves. Compared to Tongwan's security team, they were worlds apart. The contrast was stark. Zhao Liqiang and his team, when faced with the zombie tide, could choose to stand their ground, but Lion couldn't even manage to drive away the zombies. On the third day, the conflict escalated further. Some of the zombies fled Ferrara, providing the city's residents with a brief respite. The enraged populace regained their senses and initiated massive protests and demonstrations. Lion hid behind the screens, attempting to pacify the people through a public speech. However, every place he showed himself was pelted with stones, and countless people cursed at him, get lost. Within a short day, Lion faced assassination attempts over a hundred times. Unable to withstand the threat of death, he awkwardly chose to step down. He became the three-day ruler, the shortest serving leader in the history of the Alliance. After Lion announced his departure, chants for Ilya erupted throughout Ferrara, starting from scattered calls to a thunderous, unified roar, echoing throughout the entire Ferrara. Ilya. 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 In Ferrara, many absurd things were possible. Ilya achieved victory in this bloodless struggle without expending a single soldier, without even showing up. Song Ku fastened the buttons of her coat and gripped the spiritual weapon on the table. I I am going oh out to take a look. The people behind her seemed to want to speak, but she interrupted them preemptively. None of why you are allowed T to go. It was chaotic outside. She could venture out alone, while her companions should stay in a safe place for now. Zhuang Qinyan, Su Xing, and Fang Jishu remained in the hotel, allowing her to act with peace of mind. Song Ku leaped and sprinted between the rooftops. The north wind billowed her coat, making it look like wings were sprouting from her back. The distance between the two buildings in front of her was a bit far. Song Ku accelerated and leaped, releasing her transformed spiritual weapon bone whip mid-air, entangling the low-altitude track above her. With a swing, she smoothly landed using the momentum. As soon as she landed, heavy panting was heard behind her. Song Ku didn't stop, rolling forward, and sharp claws sliced through the spot where she had just been, leaving deep marks. Song Ku quickly turned around, ready for action, but then froze. The zombie in front of her was noticeably different from the one she had seen before. It was larger, its skin tougher, its nails sharper, and even its pupils were not the common grayish white but closer to pitch black. Her heart skipped a beat this zombie seemed to have evolved. The seemingly evolved zombie crouched down, kicked with its right leg, and sprang forward like a spring, with incredible speed and explosive force. Song Ku lashed out with her bone whip, the sharp and slender segments tightly entwining around the zombie's neck. She pulled back with one hand, but it didn't budge. Had its strength increased as well? She hesitated for a moment, then shifted to a two-handed grip on the whip. Engaging her waist and abdomen, she swung her arms, rotated her entire body, utilizing her core strength to viciously swing a half-circle, executing a shoulder throw that flipped the zombie to the ground. The zombie roared and struggled, but it was trapped, unable to move. Song Kut tightened the whip's end. Crack. The protruding bone crushed its neck, and the fierce head rolled off, splitting the body into two parts. After this peculiar zombie's death, Song Ku thought for a moment. As a precaution, she pulled out a dagger and forcefully stabbed into its skull. A quick twist left the dagger tip hitting something hard. She pulled it out and found a sparkling, emerald-like crystal. Though its color wasn't as deep as the one from the Mirror Lake's water monster, it was undoubtedly a level 2 crystal. Song Ku stood up abruptly, looking down at the ground. 
there were still many wandering zombies in the streets and alleys. Given the astonishing number, she didn't believe this was the only evolved zombie. Could Ferrara have really bred a zombie king? Suddenly, her gaze focused on a familiar figure passing in a certain direction, entering a tower. Song Ku had excellent eyesight and quickly identified the person. Lu Xinglan. Wasn't he supposed to have withdrawn long ago? Why was he still in Ferrara? And why enter the tower at this time? Song Ku pocketed the crystal and quickly followed. The tower was Ferrara's tallest skyscraper, essentially a gigantic server room, housing the central hub for all artificial intelligence. There were no stairs or elevators inside the tower, making it completely inconvenient for humans. Song Ku could only use the brute method, climbing floor by floor. Around the seventh floor, she didn't find Lu Xinlan. Instead, she reached a dead end and saw a platform over two meters high. Subtle movements came from under the platform. Song Ku circled around and found a miniaturized robot in a corner, repeatedly hopping in place, struggling to reach the top but failing. The little robot had a square body with wheels on both sides, round eyes resembling binoculars, and two short mechanical arms. Song Ku passed by it, exchanged a two-second gaze with it, and the robot's movements paused momentarily before its two mechanical arms started to sway happily. All the artificial intelligence in the tower had already been shut down. This was probably a robot with a route programming error, lacking self-awareness, which was why it kept bumping into walls here. Song Ku ignored it and effortlessly leaped upwards, gripping the platform with one hand, preparing to climb up again. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it up. Something had caught her trouser leg. Song Ku looked down, and the adorable little robot was looking up at her. Its mechanical scissor hands were unapologetically latched onto her. She tried to move upwards, but in an attempt to free herself, the hem of her coat got caught as well. Song Ku let go and crouched down, attempting to communicate with it, s stop fooling A around. I, I have things to do. Can why you play by why yourself? The little robot tilted its head, its round eyes blinking, not knowing if it understood. Song Ku took a couple of steps forward, and the little robot was dragged along like a pendant. She shook her leg, and half of the robot's body began to dance like seaweed, its program beeping incessantly in alarm but still not letting go. Song Ku grew irritated with the constant shaking, and with a bit of force, twisted and fastened its two scissor hands together, rendering it completely immobile. The round eyes of the little robot blinked, seemingly bewildered by the loss of its arms. Finally, it became quiet. Satisfied, Song Ku picked it up, tucked it into her collar, zipped up, and climbed back onto the platform. First, she carried it with her, intending to find a random place to dispose of it later. On the top floor of the tower, a massive floating screen quietly hovered in the center. In front of the wall formed by an immense flow of data, stood a figure. Song Ku hid in the corner, secretly observing Lu Xinglan. He carefully touched the surface of the screen as if searching for something. Just as she was about to move closer, Lu Xinglan, who had his back to her, spoke in a deep voice, Come out, I've been waiting for you. Song Ku sighed her hiding skills were indeed lacking. Lu Xinglan turned around, and upon seeing her face, his ice-blue eyes flickered, slightly surprised. It's you. It's me, Song Ku answered in a deep tone, thinking to herself, of course it's me, who else would it be? Was it you following me just now? Why did you do that? Lu Xinglan asked as he withdrew his hands and put them behind his back. Why did why you come to the tea tower? Song Ku asked in return. Answer my question first, Lu Xinglan said arrogantly, and also, things that don't concern you, don't ask or get involved. Song Ku slowly replied, why? Just be because you you're from District B. Oh. Lu Xinglan smiled, and the unique color of his pupils rippled. You know quite a bit. The next moment, his smile vanished, and his expression turned as cold as his eyes. I don't want to waste words with you. Where's the other person? Tell him to come out. What other P person? Song Ku was puzzled. You've been following me all the way and still pretending. I don't have time to beat around the bush with you. Quickly call him out. Who? 
Song Ku was speechless. Lu Xinglan stared at her bewildered expression, gradually furrowing his brow. What's going on? Is she pretending to be clueless, or does she really not know? In his hand behind his back, a light orb formed as the code 101010 danced within it. If it wasn't the person he was waiting for, then he wouldn't hesitate to act. Song Ku opened her mouth, about to speak. From the bulging collar, a cute little robot emerged, and a rough electronic voice sounded mechanically. Are you looking for me? Song Ku. Oh my god, how is this one alive? She was utterly shocked. Chapter, 85 Requiem for the Soul Are you looking for me? The small robot emerged from Song Ku's collar, and its somewhat stiff tone echoed in the spacious surroundings. Both Lu Xinglan and Song Ku were startled, lowering their heads to look at it. The robot's eyes, resembling a telescope, turned and finally focused on Lu Xinglan. The binary code 101010 in Lu Xinglan's palm disappeared, and his hands were placed back in his pockets. His expression seemed nonchalant, but Song Ku observed the tension in his posture, indicating his nervousness. Lu Xinglan sneered, unbelievable. The mighty magistrate of District C dares not reveal his true identity. The robot's round eyes flickered, and it spoke in a flat, mechanical tone, the body is just an external manifestation. At least, I am certain that my consciousness is still mine. Song Ku. She silently swallowed. Could this little robot be Ilya? She had just been thinking about where to toss it. Luckily, she hadn't thrown it away yet. Lu Xinglan stared at it intently, his expression playful. Is that so? But it seems you're hardly functional once detached from your original body. Is this your purpose? The robot calmly said, you colluded with that foolish human to find my original form. Song Ku's mind raced. The foolish human, was it referring to Lion? Lu Xinglan wanted to find Ilya's original form, but he didn't know the super central hub wasn't in the tower. With the inferior intelligence of humans, you can't possibly break through the defense mechanisms here. It was you who breached the firewall and cut off the tower's power. Song Ku looked at Lu Xinglan in horror. The true orchestrator of the three-day turmoil was not the resistance faction used as a diversion but the man before her. The little robot continued in a methodical tone, the Lu family of the Yajia clan, known for their ice-blue pupils, have awakened hacker abilities without exception among their gene-optimized individuals. And you, Lu Xinglan, an A-level awakener. You came all the way from District B-8. Your true purpose is to capture me. Song Ku's gaze darted back and forth between the two, feeling her brain struggling to keep up. Lu Xinglan chuckled and asked, Are you so sure I came for you? The robot replied, The decline of the Lu family was already evident. The cessation of starship operations was just the first step. Let me guess, the supercomputer you boasted about, is it dead? Crashed. So you needed a replacement, right? You selected meticulously, and in the end, chose me to be your Lu family's SLVE. Lu Xinglan's mouth tightened, and his hands in his pockets gradually clenched into fists. His thoughts, plans, and all intentions were completely exposed. In front of artificial intelligence, he felt completely naked, without any secrets. You deliberately participated in the throne race competition, allowing me to see you, attempting to confuse and conceal your true purpose in coming to Ferrara. But in secret, you colluded with the resistance faction, aligning with them seamlessly. They wanted power, and you wanted to take away my core. Lu Xinglan sneered, indeed, you're a super artificial intelligence. I underestimated you. I didn't expect you to be so prepared. The small robot calmly stated, I know everything about Ferrara. From the moment you stepped into the city, I have been observing you. The sentence Ilya knows everything suddenly appeared in Song Ku's mind. Lu Xinglan extended his hands from his pockets, looking proud, so what? As long as I capture you, I can still strip away your consciousness. His hacking abilities were the bane of artificial intelligence. All he needed was some time to break through Ilya's firewall and destroy its autonomous consciousness, and then it would be at the Lu family's disposal. Lu Xinglan suddenly launched an attack, targeting Song Ku and the small robot near her collar. 
His awakened abilities surged from his palms, and massive data streams wove into a mobile net, continuously tightening towards them. The small robot sat in front of Song Ku, partly encased in a zipper, and waved its short scissor-like hand. The relationship between artificial intelligence and hackers is one of strength and weakness, you are not qualified to stand before me. As soon as the words were spoken, the machinery in the tower suddenly moved. In an instant, it reassembled into massive arms and swung wildly at Lu Xinlan. These giants didn't need an energy source. Song Ku screamed internally, don't involve me in your fight. She did a one-handed somersault, skillfully dodging Lu Xinlan's attack, and seized the small robot scissor hand, ready to quickly throw it away. The robot's half-body tilted in mid-air, its head turned a full circle, and it stared at Song Ku slowly. Although its simple mechanical face showed no expression, Song Ku always felt like it was conveying a message, dare to throw me? I, I won't randomly pick up people again. Including robots. She held on to the small robot, desperately rolling and weaving through the dense stream of 101,010 code. Lu Xinglan chased from behind, occasionally dodging the mechanical giant arms that swung towards him, his movements a bit hurried. He mocked, Magistrate, without your original self, you're just a waste, relying on a human to carry you around. The small robot remained silent, seemingly admitting to his words. Lu Xinglan sneered, I have never been merciful when dealing with waste. His mental strength surged throughout his body, controlling all the data on the top floor of the tower. It merged into the tracking network, forming a surging wave. Song Ku stumbled and was violently washed away by the torrents of data from all directions. She was thrown several meters and struggled to get up, her hand still on the ground. The small robot slipped from her grip and fell to the ground, twitching violently like it was electrocuted. Ilya she hurriedly got up, about to ask if it was all right. The small robot's eyes flickered and then completely extinguished two seconds later, emitting smoke from its head. Oh no, oh no, Song Ku panicked. Did she break it by dropping it? Lu Xinglan laughed triumphantly as the data streams folded and rolled, isolating Song Ku from the outside. The small robot rolled a few times, motionless. Lu Xinglan approached, placing his foot on its body. You've lost, it's your fault for choosing such a basic body. He reached out with his left hand, probing into the robot's body, attempting to find Ilya's consciousness. The airflow stagnated for a moment. The next second, the data tsunami that had been under Lu Xinglan's control suddenly turned, rushing violently toward him. Lu Xinglan was shocked and hastily retreated, but it was too late. He was covered from head to toe in complex data, his vision incredibly chaotic. In the midst of the data deluge, a pair of mechanical giant arms came swiftly and pierced through his abdomen. Lu Xinglan stared in disbelief. On the rooftop platform of the tower, a tall figure slowly emerged. Dazzling golden hair, colorless pupils, an overall noble and elegant aura. You forgot, I just said, the body is just an external manifestation. Who says I will always be there? Humans are always deceived by inertia thinking that's why you are so easily defeated. Ilya raised a finger, and a vast data stream enveloped Lu Xinglan completely. His voice was light and ethereal, faintly tinged with a sense of joy. Song Ku stared at him without blinking. This was the first time she sensed human emotions from Ilya. What was he happy about? Ilya slowly approached Lu Xinglan, lowering his head to gaze at him. Do you know? In fact, our goals are the same. His voice was so faint, almost inaudible. You want my core, and I want an unrestricted body. Lu Xinglan's entire figure froze. The data stream covered his face, and his ice blue pupils gradually dimmed, finally losing consciousness. At the moment he fell, the hacker ability failed, the tower lights came on, and all the artificial intelligence returned to Ferrara. Ilya turned around and looked quietly at Song Ku. A cold chill emerged from the soles of her feet and shot up to her head. Song Ku cautiously took a step back, her palm transforming into a spiritual weapon. She hadn't intervened earlier because it was a struggle between Lu Xinglan and Ilya. But now, if Ilya targeted her, she had to defend herself. Ilya tilted his head, mirroring the small robot, but Song Ku no longer found it cute. 
Fortunately, Ilya just stared at her for a while and had no intention of harming her. I don't like owing favors to others. As a repayment for bringing me up here, I can tell you a piece of information. Monzoni Street, bloodshed and violence are spreading. I think you need to know. Remember to be quick, or it might be too late. After saying this, Ilya took the fallen Lu Xinglan and disappeared on the spot. Song Ku stood still, bewildered. What did this piece of information mean? In the streets where zombies were swarming, the holographic projection flashed, and a handsome young man in green clothes and jade flute suddenly appeared. Qingha it's Luo Qingha. Luo Qingha has returned. The citizens of Ferrara, upon recognizing his figure, were on the verge of tears out of sheer joy. I'm sorry, everyone, for my late arrival, Luo Qingha sighed softly. His long hair moved without wind, and his sleeves fluttered. Behind him, numerous transport vehicles and mechanical arms were mobilized, sweeping away the fleeing zombies in the streets and alleys. Similar scenes were playing out everywhere. Look over there, it's the Rainbow Band. A rock band descended from the sky, their exhilarating drumbeats echoing in the hearts of the people. Accompanying them were extremely long mechanical arms that, to the beat of the music, were mowing down hordes of zombies. Yulika, Nana, a K familiar artificial intelligence appeared in succession in the Ferrara sky. Woo woo. The citizens of Ferrara covered their faces, unable to contain their sobbing. For the past three days, they had lived in chaos, fear. And anger the original inhabitants knew deep down that they were different from the residents of other districts see they were completely dependent on artificial intelligence, even if they were insulted by it. At the highest point of the tower, a giant spotlight shone down, illuminating an elegantly graceful figure as they slowly stepped out. He was still dressed in a white suit, with radiant golden hair, but his eye color seemed to have changed, faintly revealing a hint of icy blue. Ilya The excited citizens, unable to control their emotions, fell to their knees as if worshipping their deities. Ferrara's human magistrate, Lion, brought turmoil and despair, while the artificial intelligence Ilya restored hope to them. At this moment, Ilya's reputation in Ferrara was unparalleled, beyond comparison. You've all worked hard. Everyone quieted down, focusing on that figure. Ferrara is my city, and everything here belongs to me. As long as my consciousness exists, I will never give up. All difficulties, pain, and confusion will fade away. You will embrace a new life of beauty, peace, and happiness. A requiem, may all souls find tranquility. The song that cleansed the soul echoed throughout the entire city. Amidst the background sounds of mechanical zombie clearance, it was like a lament for the deceased. At the top of the tower, on the upper floors of the hotel, Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan were both watching everything that was happening. What an ironic scene the citizens seemed to have found spiritual solace, kneeling on the ground in devout prayer. Ilya claimed that everything in Ferrara belonged to him, including all the people. He had no emotions towards humans. He could release ferocious zombies for power, but he was not born to hate humans. He simply enjoyed being in control, relishing the pleasure of wielding power. Song Ku remembered the song Paradise Ilya sang when she first arrived in District C-72. In the future, Ferrara would probably truly become an Eden for artificial intelligence. Ferrara's disaster came to an end, but she had more important things to do. Monzoni Street what was there exactly? It was worth Ilya's special reminder. Song Ku sprinted at full speed, heading towards her destination. On Monzoni Street, the staff of Ferrara Daily were recording a program. The tumultuous three days finally came to an end. To celebrate Ilya's return to the throne, we specially invited the top ten supernovas, real idols, and virtual idols to attend and shoot a short film together to cheer everyone on. The host softly reminded the female star waiting beside, Yu Yu, it's your turn soon. Are you okay? No problem, Lin Yu Yu smiled confidently. The lights were set up, and cameras of all sizes were aimed at Lin Yu Yu as she displayed her signature sweet smile. I know everyone has been working hard lately, but after the storm, there will always be sunny days. In the days to come. Lin Yu Yu suddenly paused in her speech, her gaze involuntarily shifting to the window. 
On the opposite rooftop, a figure as graceful as a swallow moved up and down, jumping into the nearby villa area. Song Ku. Why is she here? And alone? Lin Yu Yu stared in the direction she disappeared, lost in thought. Yu Yu, did you forget your lines? A staff member waved puzzledly, bringing her attention back. Ah, I'm sorry. Shall we try again? Sure. In the days to come, no matter if it's sunny or rainy, as long as we are filled with hope, every day is a beautiful day. Okay, next is a personal interview, the logistics quickly arranged the next segment. However, Lin Yu Yu made a pause gesture, I'm not feeling well today, let's reschedule the interview. Ah, uh, alright. Take a rest, we'll schedule someone else. Lin Yu Yu had a good reputation in the industry, never acting like a big shot. The staff quickly agreed, assuming she was genuinely unwell. Lin Yu Yu sat back in the rest chair, covered herself with a blanket, sat for a while, looked at her toes exposed outside, and then softly said to the air, Did you see her? M. Mm, the man concealed in the darkness responded impassively. What is she doing? Lin Yu Yu asked. Whatever she's doing is none of your business, Su Cha replied coldly. You're right, Lin Yu Yu mumbled. She lay back in her chair, took a sip of water, put down the cup, picked it up again after a while, and realized she had just taken a drink. She changed her mind and hugged the cup to her chest. Her thoughts kept wandering, replaying the events of the day the power went out, the fan she never met in the end, the dark alley, and Song Ku sitting on the ground, shedding tears. Since that day, Song Ku never contacted her again, seemingly intentionally keeping a distance. Lin Yu Yu sighed and murmured to herself, I still owe her one last commission. Su Cha remained silent. People came and went in the studio, and Lin Yu Yu sat in the rest chair, lost in thought for a long time. Then she placed the cup back on the table, making a soft clink sound. Let's just take a look, without her noticing. If there's a need, lend a hand, she said. There probably won't be any need, Su Cha ruthlessly pointed out. With Song Ku's capabilities, they didn't need to intervene. Lin Yu Yu looked serious, even so, I'll take a look. Settle the debt, and then I have no connection with her. Seek a clear conscience, she spoke to herself, as if convincing herself. In the residential area of Manzoni Street, Song Ku lurked on the roof of one of the buildings, surveying the open space in front. What does Ilya mean by bloodshed and violence? What does it refer to? The door of a certain villa opened, and several uniformed soldiers emerged, escorting a man. Wu Juamin. Song Ku felt a bit surprised. Wait, Monzoni Street, that name sounds familiar. Did Wu Xianghai mention it? Back then, he said, the key is there. Song Ku realized something and suddenly looked up, focusing her gaze. All the weapons of those present were aimed at the person on the ground. The person turned awkwardly, revealing a stunning profile. Song Ku widened her eyes slightly. Xianing Yu. Chapter, 86. Bloody Hunter. Xianing Yu looked disheveled, half of his face swollen high with a clear palm print. The pampered young master had probably never experienced such rough treatment in his life. He grumbled, his neck stiff, who do you think you are? Daring to lay a hand on me? When I return to District B, I won't spare any of you. I'll cut you all into pieces and feed you to the dogs. He cursed fiercely, but Wu Juamin remained unaffected, unresponsive to his threats. Oh Yang, verify his identity. Yes, Captain, Oh Yang Pei carefully took out a sophisticated device with the Qinglan logo from the space. He held Xianing Yu, aligning his entire face and pupils with the detection port. The device sounded an alarm. Oh Yang Pei, looking serious, pressed Xianing Yu's fingerprints against the device, but it still couldn't identify him. The expressions of everyone present, including Wu Juamin, instantly turned incredibly gloomy. After this series of operations that aimed to verify his biological information, Xianing Yu seemed to realize something. His eyes flickered, and a hint of panic crossed his face. Who are you what do you want? Wu Juamin's particle gun pressed against his forehead. How did you obtain Xie Zhu's genetic information? Xianing Yu shivered, a chilling wind sweeping over his body, 
and fine cold sweat appeared on his forehead. Wu Juamin scrutinized him. Coming out with a face like this, are you overly naive or just foolish? I don't know what you're talking about, Xianning Yu stubbornly retorted. Then let me make it clear to you. The Azure Phoenix's 11th squad is tasked with apprehending the key, Xiezhua. And you have the exact same face as him. Even so, you claim to know nothing. Wu Juamin continued. Xianning Yu's pupils contracted, and his face turned pale, realizing it was military personnel. Take him back for interrogation he will talk, Wu Juamin said calmly. The military's interrogation process was exceptionally harsh, leaving no room for deception. Xianning Yu was frightened and broke down, speaking in a panicked tone. I confess I confess. I stole it, the genetic information I stole it. My uncle once visited Qinglan for inspection. He he secretly kept this genetic data. I wanted Xiezhua's face, so I stole it to alter my own appearance. But I was afraid my uncle would find out, so I fled to Urjiao. Did you only steal the genetic information, or did you steal anything else? Wu Juamin stared at him. What do you mean Xianning you shivered, shouting, no. I really didn't. I only changed my face. I didn't know anything else. You can't touch me I'm a distant branch of the Xia family in Beijun. The Xia family won't spare you. Wu Juamin's voice was icy. I will take you back and hand you over to General Xia Lan for personal disposition. Xia Lan, the highest commander of the Azure Phoenix and the actual power holder of the Xia family in Beijun. Xianning Yu felt as if his vocal cords had been cut, unable to say anything. His head was pushed into the ground, and the swollen face splattered with mud. Finally, fear crept in, and he whimpered, Lu Xinglan, damn it, where are you? Come and save me. Song Ku, crouching on the roof and silently watching the turn of events, sighed. Lu Xinglan was struggling to protect himself he probably wouldn't be able to save you. She looked at Xianning Yu rolling on the ground, his exquisite face smeared with tears and mucus, looking extremely miserable. An inexplicable feeling surged within her. Looking at it now, Xianning Yu indeed didn't deserve this face. If it were Xie Zhua at least he wouldn't show such a humiliated expression. Remembering that brief glimpse of an image, the extreme coldness in the young man's brows and eyes, Song Ku couldn't help but feel regret for his premature demise. According to their conversation, Xie Ningyu had stolen Xie Zhua's genetic information and underwent plastic surgery to look like him. But due to lack of understanding of the situation and not knowing that Xie Zhua was being hunted, he brazenly went out and got caught by Wu Juamin, who had a mission. Regardless, Wu Juamin was determined to take him back. She couldn't interfere in this matter. Xie Ningyu would have to fend for himself. Song Ku pulled her head back, about to retreat, when suddenly, the situation took a sudden turn. A deep rift tore open in the space in front of Wu Juamin, and another team of about 17 or 18 people in uniforms, exuding a powerful aura, appeared out of thin air. Long time no see, Captain Wu, greeted the tall man at the front, his gaze dark. Sanada Nabumesa, called out Wu Juamin, stating his name. Song Ku looked at the newly appeared man. His uniform, in terms of specifications and design, was extremely similar to Wu Juamin's. Could this man be the captain of the Azure Phoenix squad as well? Sanada Nabumesa scanned the scene and sneered, I thought you had disappeared from the military. Turns out you were reassigned to District C. Wu Juamin's expression turned cold. I still have a mission. I'll leave first. Wait, Wu Juamin, Sanada Nabumesa said leisurely, since you found the key, why hesitate? Have you forgotten the Alliance's orders? Kill him on the spot. Xianning Yu trembled, looking at the two of them in fear. Wu Juamin calmly said, he's not the key. I need to hand him over to General Xie. Sanada Nabumesa raised his voice, shouting, in the name of the captain of the 27th squad of the Azure Phoenix, I repeat the highest order of the Alliance military. Eliminate the key at all costs on the spot. All members of the 11th squad, are you going to defy military orders? Wu Juamin said coldly, I only obey General Xie's orders. Oh. You are indeed loyal. 
Since we have different orders, don't blame me for taking action, Sanada Nabumesa chuckled ominously. You can try, Wu Juemin said calmly. Without further ado, Sanada Nabumesa attacked, both arms shining with a metallic gleam, his skin extremely tough. He viciously lunged towards Wu Juemin, who faced his attack head on. The clash between the two resulted in a clang sound, and Sanada Nabumesa took a step back. In an instant, Wu Juemin teleported, accelerating to the limit, disappearing from sight, impossible for the naked eye to catch. Song Ku was taken aback. This Sonata was actually a metal type awakener. He could fight neck and neck with Wu Juemin, he was probably A level 2. It was her first time encountering an awakener of the same type, and she couldn't help but focus her gaze. Sonata Nabumesa sneered and sent a series of punches into the air, his movements swift like the wind. Amidst the continuous attacks, a moving figure faintly appeared in the air. Sonata Nabumesa thought he had found a flaw and suddenly transformed his metallic arms into sharp spikes, fiercely stabbing towards the shadow. Pfft. The shadow was torn apart, and a weak mental power dissipated, vanishing without a trace. Sonata Nabumesa was greatly shocked. This was a clone. He hadn't expected Wu Juemin's awakened ability to have reached such an advanced stage, capable of creating clones. In the moment he lunged and missed, a nimble figure appeared behind him, launching a counterattack like a juggernaut. Wu Juemin's knee hit Sonata Nabumesa's spine. Rolling him over, he pinned his arms and then exerted force. Crack. Sonata Nabumesa's metallic arms were broken, emitting a crisp sound. Even if they were both A-level, there were differences in strength within the same rank. Sonata Nabumesa was clearly not a match for Wu Juemin. Captain. Captain Sonata. The members from both sides shouted loudly. Their tones were clearly divided, with the 11th squad being excited and proud, while the 27th squad was angry and panicked. Wu Juemin stood in front of Sonata Nabumesa and coldly said, Take your people and disappear. Sonata Nabumesa spat, unflinching even though his arms were broken. He sneered, too late. Seizing the moment when everyone's attention was focused there, Xian Yu suddenly broke free and sprinted forward. He had just heard that those people were going to kill him. Tears of fear kept falling. He realized he was wrong he shouldn't have stolen his uncle's identity card and sneaked into the office to copy the genetic information. He just wanted to look a bit better. After all, Xie Zhua had been missing for so many years what was wrong with using his face to live. Xie Ningyu didn't expect to get into such big trouble. It was only now that he suddenly realized why Xie Zhua had disappeared for no reason. Why was his genetic information so important? He knew nothing, yet he had inadvertently caused a huge disaster. And Lu Xinglan, that jerk. It was all his fault for insisting on coming to District C. If he had known he was so unreliable, he shouldn't have gone to Urjiao. A huge mound of soil loomed ahead. Xian Yu couldn't break in time and tumbled forward, eating a mouthful of dirt. Ouyang Pei came from behind and pressed his head, burying it in the soil again. Behave. Let go, I'm not Xie Zhua. I'm Xian Yu, and I don't know anything. Xian Yu was terrified, struggling and yelling. Ouyang Pei was about to scold him to be quiet when his whole body suddenly froze. An inexplicable and intense fear enveloped the two. Their scalps tingled, as if they were being targeted by a fierce and ruthless wild beast. Ouyang Pei looked frantically at Xian Yu, seeing a similar fear in his eyes. Boom! As if in a slow-motion replay, they both vomited red like fireworks, blood mist filling the air, and shattered flesh splattered. Breathless, they fell to the ground. Ouyang! Wu Juemin abruptly turned around, shouting in distress, losing his composure. The people at the scene were also stunned by the sudden and unexpected turn of events, frozen in place. From the spatial rift brought by Sonata Nabumesa and others, a man over two meters tall slowly emerged from the shadows. The overwhelming pressure overflowed with his every step, and some people couldn't bear it, dropping to their knees and blood trickling from the corners of their mouths. Hidden on the rooftop, Song Ku furrowed her brow, her fingers curling tightly. 
This was the most terrifying awakener with psychic ability she had ever encountered. The man had a sturdy physique, muscular and knotted, with an especially detestable face. The left half of his face was charred and necrotic, the muscle tissues adhering together. One of his eyeballs was completely white, giving an eerie and cruel appearance. Bloody Hunter, Wu Juamin said each word distinctly. The Bloody Hunter, Punk, an S-level awakener and the Alliance's chief executioner, was a killing machine specialized in eliminating major criminals such as traitors and death row inmates. Wu Juamin had heard of his infamous name but had never seen him in person, let alone expected him to appear in District C. Sanada Nabumesa picked himself up from the ground, reattaching his own arm and sneering mockingly at Wu Juamin. The Alliance's orders regarding the key have always been to kill without mercy. Even if it's a suspected key, Wu Juamin, you're harboring a fugitive and have evil intentions. Why not surrender and admit your guilt obediently to the military? Wu Juamin remained silent. Chapter 87 Bloody Hunter The Alliance had various forces pursuing Siejua. However, the mission of the Azure Phoenix's 11th squad was different from the others. It was an contradictory task, defying the Alliance's instructions to eliminate the key as soon as possible. The unspoken part of the order was protect and bring back Siejua. This was a mission conflicting with the Alliance's directives. Even though they fought side by side, Wu Juamin had never revealed this to his teammates. He had been carrying this secret mission, enduring it until today. Finally, he had found Xianingyu, a glimmer of hope, but it was mercilessly crushed by Punk. Xianingyu was already dead, and Ouyang Pei had lost his breath. Wu Juamin withdrew his hands from the two of them, his voice like a storm about to break. You killed a soldier indiscriminately. Punk smirked wickedly, despite saying, sorry, it was an accident. Although he said that, there was no trace of remorse on his face. Wu Juamin's fists clenched. You must pay the price. His figure disappeared, instantly appearing nearby. Sanada Nabumesa and his subordinates were caught in intense combat with the remaining members of the 11th squad. Captain Wu, it's better to surrender and confess to the military, Sanada Nabumesa didn't forget to kindly advise. Punk next to him smiled contemptuously, his mental power surge, blood beads congealed, heading straight for Wu Juamin in the crowd. The prelude to an explosion crackled in the air. This was his S-level ability, blood explosion. As long as fresh blood still flowed within the enemy's body, it could be detonated at any time, turning into a puddle of muck. A nimble figure suddenly jumped down from the roof, blocking in front of Wu Juamin, swiftly opening a blue giant umbrella. Blood beads burst on the umbrella surface one after another. Song Ko was pushed back by the powerful force, leaving long marks as she dragged her feet. She looked down, and the spiritual tool umbrella's surface was penetrated by blood, thin as cicada wings, thoroughly damaged. Punk could actually destroy her spiritual tool. Song Ko instantly realized that with such a powerful ability, there was only one possibility, the opponent was an S-level awakener. More help. Sanada Nabumesa sneered. Are you here to die together? What are you doing here? Wu Juamin discovered Song Ku, his eyes wide in surprise, his voice stern. Just passing by, Song Ku replied. It's none of your business, don't interfere, get lost. Wu Juamin's tone was harsh, even using foul language, something he would never usually say. Song Ku ignored him, her gaze fixed on the bored Punk. Punk glanced at her like she was insignificant, slowly stepping into the battlefield. With each step, members of the 11th squad fell, and the brutal human fireworks continued to burst, filling the air with the nauseating smell of blood. At the same time, Sanada Nabumesa also charged towards Wu Juamin. Song Ku swiftly moved forward, blocking Sanada Nabumesa. He contemptuously told her to get lost, not taking her seriously at all. Sanada Nabumesa's metallic arms attacked, but unexpectedly collided with an even harder blade edge. Song Ku wielded dual knives, her mental power spiraling out, leveraging her entire body's weight to jump high, and then she spun and slashed down. Sanada Nabumesa had no choice but to block passively. Clang! The metal abilities of the two clashed. 
Sonata Nabimesa's metallic arm cracked and shattered inch by inch, the arm that had just been repaired was instantly broken. His face turned pale with disbelief as he shouted, Who the hell are you? On the other side, Wu Juamin and Punk exchanged blows several times. Wu Juamin knew he was no match and could only fight desperately. His abilities surged, and his speed unexpectedly doubled. Dozens of clones darted around, launching fierce and impenetrable attacks. If it were anyone else, even A-level like Sonata Nabumesa, they would have long been overwhelmed. But Punk effortlessly dodged, commenting indifferently, you're indeed good among A-levels, but unfortunately, I haven't tasted blood in a long time. So you are undoubtedly dead. In an instant, Wu Juamin appeared in the air, aiming the particle gun at Punk's head and pulling the trigger. In that moment, Punk caught a glimpse of his afterimage. His fingers spasmed and trembled, an excited and cruel bloodthirsty look on his contorted face. His expanding mental power created intense fluctuations. Song could sense the immense ability and suddenly had an ominous feeling. She couldn't care about Sonata Nabumesa, hastily turning around and sprinting towards Wu Juamin. All the clones exploded in a bloody mist. Wu Juamin's figure abruptly stopped, and Punk reached out, forcibly seizing him from the air. The particle gun hit Punk half of his face was grazed by the super-powered particles, emitting a burnt stench. But Punk didn't care. He licked his lips, lightly mimicking the sound of fireworks blooming, boom. The next second. Crimson fireworks continued to burst, and Wu Juamin sprayed blood from his mouth, plummeting straight down. Wu Juamin. Song Ku shouted, running to catch him as he fell. Wu Juamin, on the ground, became a bloodied figure. The endless blood couldn't be stopped. Song Ku covered his mouth, but it flowed out from his abdomen, and as she blocked it there, it flowed from his head, as if wanting to completely drain him. Wu Juamin couldn't speak. He extended a weak hand and weakly pushed Song Ku away, go. His once serious and calm eyes gradually dimmed, finally losing their luster. Tears soaked Song Ku's eye sockets, blurring her vision. She clenched her teeth, gripping the spiritual tool. Punk! Are you insane? He's the captain of Azure Phoenix Squad. By killing him, do you want to be sent to a military court? Sonata Nabumesa's arm broke, his face contorted in pain, and he shouted in disbelief. Punk's sinister gaze was fixed on him. As long as everyone here is dead, no one will know. Sonata Nabumesa felt a chill down his spine, a relentless threat, a sheer menace. This executioner was nothing but a pure killing machine, utterly insane. What was wrong with the Alliance's higher-ups, releasing him for a mission? Wu Juamin was dead. The people he brought were all killed. The Azure Phoenix 11th squad completely wiped out. Song Ku slowly stood up. So, this was what Ilya meant, the real bloodshed and violence. Punk's murderous gaze locked onto the only person standing in the arena. Only one left. Song Ku had no expression on her face. The blue light flickered in her palm, and a cold, elegant jagged blade, over three meters long, suddenly appeared. Unlike before, the blue light on the blade was astonishingly bright, a manifestation of filled awakened energy. Punk sneered and met her head on. He had just approached Song Ku when he instantly realized something was wrong. Song Ku held a blade several times larger than her body, yet her movements were exceptionally agile. The sharp edge effortlessly cut through his skin, and the domineering and majestic awakened energy followed. His hundred kilogram body was overturned, tumbling and rolling several times. Punk propped himself up with one hand, barely stopping his retreat. A hint of surprise flashed in his eyes, followed by an excited, light laughter. S level strong attack type. Interesting, ha 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 ha. Interesting. Who would have thought that in this trash heap, there's actually a hidden expert. Let's use you for the next fireworks. Song Ko remained as cold as ice, her assault relentless, the intent to kill surging as she continued her attacks. As long as she got close, Punk had no chance to retaliate, unable even to counter with blood beads. He rolled and dodged, struggling to evade. Blood mist continuously erupted around him, but she dodged quickly, avoiding it. The first strike, hitting the left arm. 
the second strike, hitting the back. The third strike. Taking advantage of the gap between him twitching and falling to the ground, Song Kook kicked in mid-air, kicking over that ugly face. The blue light on her right hand flashed violently, and an amay thorn suddenly appeared, piercing Punk's intact other eye fiercely. Blood suddenly surged out. Immediately after that, she took action with her cold jagged blade, seeing that the fatal blade was about to fall and decapitate Punk's head. On Punk's left half of the face, the pale eyes suddenly flickered. The surrounding time seemed to slow down, then slow down again, freezing into still frames, and then rapidly rewinding. The unexpected turn of events happened too suddenly. Just a second ago, Song Ku was only a few steps away from him. The next moment, she was pulled back several meters away. Boom! A few seconds ago, the fireworks she had avoided exploded again. The world fell silent. Song Ku lowered her head, a crimson mist appearing in her mouth. Punk was covered in blood, struggling to stand up. No one knew that he was actually an S-level dual ability awakener, with the first ability being blood explosions, and the second hidden ability time reversal. Punk, badly injured, took a step forward, glaring viciously at Song Ku lying on the ground. This person had pushed him to such a miserable state, causing him embarrassment and pain. She had even destroyed his other eye. He wanted to personally kill her. I will turn you into the most splendid fireworks. A world without you is a realm of darkness. A melodious song rang in the ears of everyone, and suddenly, for Punk and Sonata Nabumesa, everything became chaotic, and they couldn't see anything clearly. Shrouded by the song, a ghostly figure darted into the scene, scooping up Song Ku and disappearing into the darkness. Trying to escape. Today, no matter who comes, their lives will remain here. Punk activated his ability, time reversal. His vision instantly cleared, and dozens of meters away, a man and a woman were quickly leaving. Su Cha, did you inform Zhuang Qinyan? Lin Yu Yu shouted anxiously as she ran. Yeah, Su Cha could only manage a response. Then why aren't they here yet? By the time they arrived, the situation was already out of control. Song Ku and Sonata Nabumesa were fiercely engaged in a fight. They witnessed Wu Juamin's death and Punk's brutality, managing to rescue Song Ku at the last moment. The flowing wind in their ears ceased. Time froze again and then rewound. Even though Su Cha and Lin Yu Yu had clearly run a hundred meters away, the next second they were back in the midst of the chaos. The blood soaked Punk appeared before them, a cruel smile on his lips. Since you're here, you might as well all stay. He took a step forward, blood filling the air, and the cracking sounds echoed through the air. At that moment, the air suddenly dropped in temperature, and snowflakes began to fall all around. Sonata Nabumesa and Punk found their feet frozen, their vision a vast expanse of white. A powerful, incredibly sharp killing intent surged towards Punk. The icy mental power felt like numerous sharp knives piercing into their heads, fiercely stirring. Sonata Nabumesa and Punk could hardly endure the intense pain, rolling on the ground and howling in agony. Punk was already heavily injured by Song Ku earlier, and his mental strength was exceptionally fragile. At this moment, under the sudden assault, his mind was dazed, and he knelt down on one knee. His mental sea expanded suddenly, as if it could burst open at any moment. Seizing this opportunity, Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha swiftly disappeared into the heavy snow. After a while, the surroundings gradually quieted down. Punk wiped the blood from his eye, silently chuckling. S Level Awakener Interesting, Very Interesting. Chapter 88 It didn't matter Fong would take action. The suspected key is deceased, mission accomplished. Sonata Nabumesa placed his fingers on Xie Ning Yu's neck confirming that he couldn't sense any breath. He turned his gaze towards Wu Juamin, a hint of regret showing once again. He was a man, a pity. Sonata Nabumesa's arms had been shattered by Song Ku, and he had been attacked by an unknown psychic force. He was in intense pain all over his body, severely injured, and urgently needed to return to District B for treatment. Considering the personnel casualties, the cost of this outing was even more brutal than he had imagined. Captain Sonata, what do we do now? Asked his subordinate. 
Retreat immediately, Sanada Nabumesa said. He turned around and saw Punk still standing in place, a clear look of disgust in his eyes. Punk, the bloody hunter and a killing machine for the Alliance, was usually strictly controlled. However, over time, his psyche had gradually become twisted. Every time he went out, he wouldn't stop until he saw blood. Sanada Nabumesa fell into contemplation again, but he didn't expect that he was an S-class dual ability wielder. No wonder this kind of lunatic was still highly regarded by the higher-ups. With this mission over, Sanada Nabumesa didn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Punk covered his injured eye, blood oozing out from his palm. He muttered to himself, in a small district C, there are actually two S-level awakeners. What do you want to do? Sanada Nabumesa was taken aback. Punk's smile was wicked, filled with a bloodthirsty intent. Of course kill them. They're not part of the mission objectives, and they've already fled, Sanada Nabumesa reminded him, his expression disapproving. If they've fled, I'll search the entire District C, Punk said, his face darkening. After saying that, he left the spot and headed towards the direction where Song Kut disappeared. Captain Sanada, should we pursue? No need, don't invite unnecessary trouble, Sanada Nabumesa replied. The subordinate sounded worried, but if the bloody hunter takes this opportunity to escape. Punk was released this time to assist them with the mission. If the target escaped, the alliance would surely hold them accountable. Sanada Nabumesa smirked coldly, rest assured, he won't escape. Since he was a mad dog, there was definitely a leash to keep him in check. Punk raced, his speed increasing, his sturdy body pounding on the ground, making the earth tremble. His heart was filled with a desire for slaughter, wishing to find those two S-level awakeners immediately and tear them apart with his own hands. As Punk ran, he continued to release blood explosions. The residents of Monzoni Street, pedestrians, wandering zombies whether indoors or outdoors, one moment they were conversing or walking, and the next moment their heads exploded like watermelons, houses collapsed, streets were damaged. Everywhere he passed, there was devastation, indeed flipping the entire city upside down as he had said. Chasing for several kilometers, for flowing data walls appeared out of thin air, blocking his way. Gradually, a vague figure appeared in the air, with golden hair and colorless eyes. Their voice was icy, outsider, who allowed you to wreak havoc in Ferrara. Punk was forced to stop and, recognizing the other's identity, slightly bowed in respect, Lord Magistrate. Yet his lowered head still displayed a wild expression, showing no respect even in the face of the highest authority in District C. Ilya walked slowly from the void, his crystal eyes faintly flashing with an icy blue light. I won't pursue your unauthorized entry, but that doesn't mean you can tamper with my things. Monzoni Street had already turned into ruins. This place was once a representation of Ferrara's architectural style, full of a sense of freedom and artistic beauty. Punk twitched his mouth, his burnt left half of the face looking unusually eerie, didn't expect the esteemed magistrate to be an AI who loves the people like a child and has learned useless and redundant human emotions. The data stream surged, and a slap landed on Punk's face, tilting his head slightly. Ilya wasn't provoked, his tone calm and gentle, but the words carried a cold mockery, just a dog in shackles, and you dare to bark wildly in front of me? An unruly thing, your master hasn't taught you well, so let me repeat it to you. Remember, when you're a guest in someone else's house, you should understand manners and not mess with the owner's belongings. Punk got beaten, his two eyes, one red and one white, staring at Ilya, suddenly and without warning, a blood explosion erupted. The data streams from all sides quickly flipped and recombined, like waves crashing into the blood beads. The bright red explosion collided with the 101010 code wall, and two powerful forces clashed fiercely, bursting in the air. Several blood beads broke through the blockade, rushing to Ilya, but turned into duds and dissipated on the spot. Ilya remained unchanged from start to finish, not even a flicker in his eyes. The artificial intelligence made up of data is never bound by the flesh, much less to bleed. Punk's abilities were ineffective against him. Punk snorted coldly, preparing to strike again. His time rewind ability worked within a small range, allowing the target's time state to reverse a maximum of 10 seconds. Data might not fear bleeding, 
but they should fear rewinding, right? The airflow suddenly slowed down, and the data stream wall was on the verge of collapse. Ilya's pupils flickered. The ring hidden in Punk's neck suddenly lit up, imprisoning him tightly. The extremely strong particle currents stimulated him, causing his whole body to tremble and his sea of consciousness to suffer a destructive shock. Punk fell to the ground in pain, his cries echoing. His pale left eye widened in horror, looking at Ilya in disbelief. How was this possible? The ring not only had a top-notch firewall, but it also required entering commands. Even among the Alliance's higher-ups, very few could use the ring to control him. How could a District C magistrate, just an artificial intelligence, break through layer upon layer of restrictions and activate the ring to imprison him? While Punk was still trying to make sense of it, a massive mechanical arm pressed down on him, and an iron cage descended from the sky, imprisoning this wild beast like catching a zombie. Ilya's face was both sacred and resolute, now, go back to where you belong. Su Cha, carrying Song Ku, joined up with Zhuang Qinyan and two others who hurried over, swiftly evacuating Monzoni Street under the cover of heavy snow. The road back to the hotel was bustling with people, quite far, and too dangerous, but staying in place meant Punk would soon catch up. Lin Yu Yu made a prompt decision, let's go to my studio. Lin Yu Yu's independent studio was nearby, not only providing good confidentiality but also equipped with a private hospital. Upon reaching the destination, Sucha placed Song Ku on the hospital bed. Song Ku's face was pale, her eyes half-closed, and her whole body appearing as if she had been pulled from a pool of blood. Su Cha had provided simple first aid for her on the way, but the blood wouldn't stop, already drenching the gauze, and kept seeping out. Sister Su Xing rushed forward but dared not touch her, looking utterly terrified and crying in fear. Song Ku, Song Ku, wake up. Lin Yu Yu's voice was gentle, yet filled with undeniable anxiety. Zhuang Qinyan looked at the barely breathing figure on the hospital bed, placing his hand over her pale fingers that were holding the Amei Thorn. Tink the Amei Thorn fell to the ground, surprisingly, Song Ku couldn't even hold on to her spiritual weapon. Zhuang Qinyan lowered his gaze, unusually silent, and no one could discern his expression at this moment. His ice-cold fingertips paused in front of Song Ku, and then slowly unwrapped the gauze. Lin Yu Yu and the others took in the sight before them and drew in a sharp breath of cold air. Everything was crimson. Judging solely from the wound, it was more severe than when Maeda died. After Wu Xianghai's ability engulfed him, it left only a black hole. But at this moment, Song Ku's flesh and blood were mangled, her organs shattered, making it impossible to determine the specific extent of her injuries. With injuries this severe, could she still survive? Everyone's heart sank. Thinking of something, Lin Yu Yu suddenly turned around and grabbed Fang Zhishu's collar, Hey, aren't you a doctor? Hurry, save her. Fang Zhishu glanced and only said three words, It's too late. Lin Yu Yu was both anxious and angry, What are you saying? How can you speak so coldly? Fang Zhishu was dragged here forcefully by Su Xing, nearly losing half his life in the mad dash. He leaned against the wall, panting heavily, trying to regain his breath. Being questioned by Lin Yuyu, he just shook his head, unwilling to say more. Ordinary people couldn't tell, but he was a doctor. With such a large gash on Song Ku, even if she were a deity, she couldn't be saved. Fang Jishu, have you awakened any abilities? Zhuang Qinyan asked softly. The same question, but with a completely different tone than the first time, carrying a sense of impending storm in his voice. Everyone had witnessed Zhuang Qingyan's recent mental attack, so they wouldn't perceive him as just an ordinary person confined to a wheelchair anymore. Fang Zhishu remained silent. Do you want to watch her die with your own eyes? Zhuang Qingyan asked again in the midst of the silence. Fang Zhishu tensed his back, his expression complicated. He looked up at the dying girl, a mix of pain and struggle flashing in his eyes. Through Song Ku, Fang Zhishu seemed to see another familiar figure, struggling between life and death. One moment, she smiled at him, and the next, she was pushed coldly into the morgue. Daddy, I really like you. When she smiled, the girl always acted sweetly with him, a faint dimple appearing on her cheek. But when she lay lifeless before him, 
Fang Zhishu's whole world collapsed. The girl's face gradually merged with Song Ku's. The last freeze frame was at the shelter, Song Ku looking into his eyes, her firm words, I can do it. Zhuang Qinyan and the others waited quietly for his answer. Fang Zhishu's eyes glistened, and he fiercely pinched his face, his voice hoarse. You guessed it right. I am a healing type awakener. Fang Zhishu, once the genius surgeon from Tongwan, was now an A-level healing type awakener. Lin Yuyu was in a state of shocked disbelief, staring at him, lost for words. Fang Zhishu pulled out a hair tie, pushed the messy hair behind his head, and tied it up, revealing his weathered yet clear eyes. Don't get your hopes up too high. I'm not certain. I can only try to save her. He turned to Lin Yuyu, do you have surgical equipment? She needs to establish extracorporeal circulation as soon as possible. Lin Yuyu replied, yes. The situation was urgent, and the conditions were rudimentary. Several people changed into sterile suits, and Fang Zhishu performed surgery and cardiac repair on Song Ku. When Fang Zhishu regained consciousness, there was a kind of focus surpassing everyone else when he held the scalpel. His fingers, as slender as a work of art, seemed to be playing a melody. The scalpel cut precisely, and from his palm, a translucent white ability flowed out slowly, flowing into Song Ku's body. Fang Zhishu's movement suddenly stopped. What's wrong? Lin Yuyu asked softly. The heart is shattered. It was more than shattered strictly speaking, Song Ku's heart had been completely broken into pieces, and not even a relatively intact fragment could be picked out. In such a dire situation, even Fang Zhishu didn't know where to start. Was it really going to end like this? Unable to save her. The atmosphere fell into a deep silence. Su Xing wept silently, tears moistening his entire collar. Wait! Fang Zhishu exclaimed, unable to control the astonishment on his face. It's repairing itself. Several people looked at Song Ku in astonishment. The fragmented parts of the heart, under everyone's gaze, seemed to have self-awareness, slowly wriggling in the cavity, seeking adjacent parts, gradually piecing together, merging, and gradually restoring their original shape. In a matter of moments, Song Ku's heart had miraculously regenerated mostly on its own. Fang Zhishu's hands were steady. Taking advantage of the self-repair of the heart, he inserted blood delivery catheters, repaired the damaged ventricular septum and atrial septum through the tricuspid valve, repaired the ruptured arteries, cleared the pleural effusion. In a short time, his ability flowed out in large quantities. Amazingly, Song Ku's body seemed to be cooperating with him. Wherever Fang Zhishu's surgical blade paused, the tissues there would automatically return to their original positions, facilitating his actions. After an unknown amount of time, Fang Zhishu let out a deep breath and sutured the final thread. Song Ku's breathing stabilized, and her vital signs gradually stabilized as she fell into a shallow sleep. Is she a dual Su Cha's expression was exceptionally serious. Back in the rainforest, one of his former colleagues had survived a severe leg injury by having the section automatically repaired, escaping death. That colleague was a B-level regeneration awakener. Considering Song Ku's recent condition, where her completely shattered heart had miraculously restored itself, both the speed and complexity of the recovery were beyond comprehension. Just as Su Cha was about to speak, he suddenly met Zhuang Qingyan's scrutinizing gaze. He looked at everyone, especially Lin Yuyu and Su Cha, with a chilling tone in his voice. Everything that happened here today, no one is allowed to speak about it. Chapter, 89 I will never lie to you. Ah, Fang Zhishu yawned, rubbing his eyes sleepily as he walked into the ward. These past two days, they took turns staying up all night watching over Song Ku. No one had rested well, but thankfully, she had regained consciousness last night, and her vital signs had stabilized. Postoperative rounds were the responsibility of the operating doctor. Even though he was now down and out, Fang Zhishu hadn't lost his habits. As a result, halfway through a yawn with his mouth wide open, he got stuck there was only a small bump left on the hospital bed, and his patient was gone. Fang Zhishu quickly took a few steps and pulled back the blanket. Su Xing's furry head peeked out, sleeping soundly and blissfully. He seemed to be having a pleasant dream, 
smacking his lips and wetting the pillow with saliva. Fang Jishu's anger surged. Without hesitation, he tapped Su Xing's head like a chestnut, still sleeping. Your sister has run away. Su Xing sat up with closed eyes, bewildered for a moment, and groped the bedsheet beside him. Run away. Sister. Where's my sister? How could such a big sister just disappear like that? Su Xing had been on night duty, but due to extreme tiredness, he had accidentally fallen asleep. In his dream, someone gently picked him up and caressed his head. Su Xing felt as if he were sinking into soft clouds. He couldn't help but curl up in the blanket like a caterpillar and then he fell asleep. Fang Jishu looked around and, lo and behold, the four bag and nutrition fluids were taken away, not to mention the medication box. He couldn't help but laugh in exasperation. He wondered if Song Ku could be considered obedient. If we talk about being obedient, she had just woken up and already ran away. What kind of critically ill patient was she? But if we talk about not being obedient, she remembered the doctor's orders very well she hadn't forgotten to take her medicine. Fang Jishu shook his head. It was his own fault for being presumptuous, stirring up trouble so early in the morning. Sleepiness crept back up on him, all right, go find her. Why are you leaving? Su Xing grabbed his clothes. To sleep. Fang Jishu answered with a straight face and laid down on the nearby sofa, falling asleep in three seconds. Su Xing. This was too much. With such a big incident, they left a child to face it alone. A few minutes later, Zhuang Qinyan, Lin Yuyu, and Su Cha were informed one by one by Su Xing and gathered in the ward. I just went to Monzoni Street to look, but she's not there, Su Cha said. Then let's search further away. She just woke up and has such serious injuries she shouldn't have gone far, Lin Yuyu said anxiously. I want to go too. Su Xing, feeling responsible for losing Song Ku, raised his little hand and requested to participate in the Finding Sister activity. Ah, Fang Jishu on the sofa turned over, completely unaffected by their conversation. Zhuang Qinyan touched the already cold other half of the bedsheet and said softly, There's no need to look I know where she went. Ferrara Public Cemetery This place was rarely visited, and it housed the remains of those without families, without backgrounds, the nameless and faceless deceased. The AI patrol team patrolled the streets and alleys every day. Once the bodies cleared exceeded the time limit with no claimants, they would be collectively placed here. The body that passed away two days ago had been cremated into ashes and stored in a small box. In front, a light screen displayed a brief epitaph. Here rests an anonymous traveler, buried on December 24, in the year 46 of the new calendar. A pair of delicate hands placed the pure white calla lilies beside the light screen. Apart from some miscellaneous items, there were also several epaulets piled on the box, indicating the identity of the deceased. Song Cook picked out seven of them belonging to the 11th squad, wiped their surfaces clean, and stashed them in her pocket. When Zhuang Qinyan found her, Song Ku was sitting on the platform, quietly gazing at the graves in front of her. The December wind tousled her hair, and her expression was an unprecedented calmness. Your heart has just been mended, and you dare to sneak out. Be careful not to get into trouble again Fang Jishu might not take action next time. Shu, Song Ku gestured silently towards him, D don't report me. I'll go back in a while. Zhuang Qinyan smiled. There was no need for him to report when Su Xing shouted through his little loudspeaker, everyone knew. Song Ku tucked the scattered hair behind her ear, speaking in a low voice, I always feel like, during this period, many people have died, so suddenly. She looked down at her palm the blue light sphere was particularly dim. Trying to condense her abilities, it blinked a few times and then went out, her mental energy severely depleted, needing time to slowly recover. I couldn't save th them I couldn't save Maeda I couldn't save Wu Juamin. Having a strong ability but seeing people around her die one after another, Song Ku felt for the first time that her power was inadequate. No one could. Zhuang Qinyan already knew the details of what had happened Song Ku had told them the truth after regaining consciousness. A silver wheelchair stopped beside Song Ku. Zhuang Qinyan and she both looked at the small light screen. 
No one's asking you to be a savior, and you're not obliged to save everyone. The death of Wu Juemin wasn't really sudden. You said it yourself that Sonata and Punk were transported through a spatial rift. Even the bloody hunter was mobilized, indicating that they had been targeting this place in advance, coming prepared. Song Ko frowned and thought slowly, came P prepared could it be that Xian Yu was being tracked? It's not Xian Yu, Chuang Qin Yan shook his head slowly, it's Wu Juemin. If Xian Yu was the problem, he would have been pursued and killed on the way to Urjiao. Since he arrived safely in Ferrara, it proves that, before this, he did not attract the alliance's attention. Chuang Qin Yan analyzed calmly, the problem lies with Wu Juemin. The mission he took is a real hot potato. Many eyes are on him from behind, wanting to use him, seize the credit, or eliminate potential threats. After all, everyone wants Xia Zhu dead, Zhuang Qinyan sighed. Because it involved the key, every step Wu Juemin took was extremely dangerous, like walking on a tightrope. And when he found the suspected key, Xian Yu, it was the moment the tightrope snapped. Song Ko fell silent for a moment and quickly pointed out the error in Zhuang Qinyan's words, it's not everyone. She recalled everything she saw on the rooftop that day, Wu Juemin didn't intend to kill Xian Yu he wanted to escort him back and hand him over to that person, Xia Lan, for General Xia to deal with personally. Zhuang Qinyan was slightly stunned and spoke again in a calm voice, is that so? But from the outcome, there's no difference. With people dead and buried, it was impossible to verify anything about Wu Juemin. Now, whatever was said would be futile. Song Ku looked at the resting box one last time and walked out with Zhuang Qinyan. Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha, how do you plan to handle them? Handle what? Your heart can heal on its own. Do you know what that means? Zhuang Qinyan's tone was serious. Regardless of the reason, a heart that shattered like that can recover. This will bring you great trouble. Fang Jishu not mutating after being bitten was enough to cause a stir, and once your condition is exposed. Do you know how many fanatical researchers will want to send you to the lab for dissection and thoroughly study every set of your cell genes? Song Ku imagined the scene Zhuang Qinyan described and suddenly felt a chill run down her spine. She had noticed before that she possessed extraordinary healing abilities no wounds left a trace, even the places where she was scratched by zombies didn't mutate. She used to think it was a side effect of awakening her special abilities, but now it seemed that the real reason far exceeded her understanding. She hadn't figured it out herself and didn't want to be studied. What does this have to do with them? I won't speak about your matters. Su Xing and Fang Jishu follow you every day. There's no opportunity for them to spill anything. As for those two Zhuang Qingyan's voice was distant. For Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha, they were outsiders to him, and with a criminal record, their level of trust was very low. She probably won't betray us, Song Ku already knew. It was Lin Yu Yu who had taken the risk to rescue her from Punk's hands that day. She felt that the other party should not do something like that. But you're right, having a past of B betrayal makes it difficult to trust again. So, I suggest, kill them. It's a clean sweep. Zhuang Qinyan made the suggestion lightly. Song Ku took a sharp breath, slowly clenched her fist, ready to hit him first, but as soon as her hand went up, she immediately expressionlessly covered her chest. Ah, my chest hurts. Song Ku wouldn't act spoiled for no reason if she said it hurt, it truly did. Zhuang Qinyan teased her into a smile, I know you don't want to, so there's only one choice left, let them join V587 and follow you from now on for easy supervision. Join V587. Song Ku was surprised she had never considered this possibility. Well using join might not be appropriate. You can think of them as temporary companions, no need for real feelings. Zhuang Qinyan explained. Will they agree? Zhuang Qinyan, shouldn't be a big problem. The only conflict is the throne race, but don't forget, what is our purpose for participating? Song Ku, money. The three members of V587 participated at that time just to earn alliance coins. Over time, this initial goal had been almost forgotten by Song Ku. Zhuang Qinyan nodded, so, what we want doesn't conflict. Lin Yu Yu wanted a promise from Ilya, and they were just in it for the money. 
If they united and truly won, there wouldn't be any conflicting interests. Oh. Song Kuk decided to go back and have a good talk with Lin Yu Yu. The two of them walked quietly side by side for a while. Their problem has been solved, in the atmosphere of calmness, Song Ku slowly spoke, what about yours? Mine. Zhuang Qinyan was slightly taken aback. Yeah, S level, psychic ability. That day I sensed it. Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair stopped, not knowing how to explain for a moment. Song Ku turned around, her expression fierce, stepping closer to him step by step. Weak researcher. Nothing special, just an ordinary person. Hugging thighs. Recalling that day, when Song Ku first sensed a powerful killing intent, it should have been from Zhuang Qinyan. His leg was injured for another reason, as Yang Bo and Wu Yuro were just two sea level awakeners, how could they kill an S level like him? Song Ku placed her hands on the wheelchair, her momentum overwhelming. As she spoke, Zhuang Qinyan took a step back, and with no further retreat, his back bumped against the wheelchair. Their noses were but a short distance apart. Song Ku lowered her head, her eyes burning with anger, from the beginning, you've been lying to me. Zhuang Qinyan protested loudly, I didn't lie to you. You never asked me. Unbelievable. Was it all her fault? Just as she was about to speak, she suddenly realized that she was too close to Zhuang Qinyan, close enough to count his long, dense eyelashes. Song Ku paused and withdrew a little. She asked very seriously, Have you never, ever, believed in me? No, Zhuang Qinyan remained silent for a long time, affirming, Fully trusting someone is something I find difficult to do. She might not express her disappointment or sorrow, but Zhuang Qinyan's honesty made it hard for Song Ku to find the right words. Song Ku, Zhuang Qinyan's low voice softly called her name. Song Ku glanced at him, not pleased, and remained silent. Perhaps you think I'm full of lies and don't believe me sincerely. Song Ku tilted her head, her expression clearly written with bewilderment, aren't you? Zhuang Qinyan sighed, I can't fully entrust you with a hundred percent trust. But there's one thing I can be sure of. As long as you ask, as long as I can answer, I will never lie to you. Oh, Song Ku responded. After a few seconds, she raised a question in a small voice, didn't you lie to me before? About being a drug researcher? I did that for someone else. If you believe it, can you blame me? Zhuang Qinyan raised an eyebrow. Song Ku's temper flared up instantly. She kicked Zhuang Qinyan's wheelchair with her toe, making him spin around. Zhuang Qinyan had a headache, Song Kiki, behave yourself if you're sick. Why are you still so mischievous? Hmm. Song Cook kicked faster, but accidentally used too much force, which affected the wound. With a sharp intake of breath, she covered her mouth and squatted down. This weak appearance was very different from her usually lively self. Zhuang Qinyan flipped her hood, covering her head, and rubbed her head absentmindedly. Be good, stop making trouble. Chapter 90 Luxurious lineup of V587. Song Ku played around like a primary school student for a while and was pulled back by the rationality of adults, preparing to go back and meet with the others. Not long after leaving the cemetery, a rotating data wall appeared out of thin air. The code composed of numerous small squares dissipated layer by layer, and Ilya walked from the void. Song Ku was surprised. This place was remote, and there were hardly any cameras, let alone holographic projections. Although artificial intelligence was everywhere, Ilya's sudden appearance was too abrupt. How did he manage it? Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan stopped, their eyes vigilantly fixed on the figure in front of them. Him appearing at this moment was not a good sign. Ilya leisurely examined her for a moment, a pleasant smile appearing on his face. Indeed, still alive. Song Ku frowned slightly. She was now full of suspicion and vigilance towards Ilya. Leaving aside the matter of the tower, at that time he clearly knew everything, knew the arrival of the bloody hunter, but left only a vague blood and violence and led her to Manzoni Street. She didn't know what his intentions were. Surprised to see me? Judging by your expression, it seems you're not very welcoming, Ilya said, taking the initiative. 
His dazzling golden hair shimmered in the sunlight, as if coated with a honey-like hue. Although it was just a casual thing, I helped you intercept a chase. Aren't you going to thank me? Oh Song Ku thanked him emotionlessly. Thank you. It was close. She had a chance to kill Punk herself, but unfortunately, due to his unexpected sneak attack, she couldn't succeed. Song Ku never underestimated her enemies. The reason she was severely injured this time was that she didn't know there was a dual element awakener, and she never expected Punk's other ability was the rare time element. But Punk, an S level, was not invincible. Song Ku thought that if she encountered him again, she would definitely cut off his head. Ilya walked lightly around her for two steps, lowered his gaze to observe her shoulders, limbs, fingers. There was no frivolity or flirtation in his eyes, only pure appreciation. If I hadn't already made a choice, I would still like this body of yours. Song Ku stared at him expressionlessly and spoke coldly after a while, I can still kill you. Ilya met her gaze for two seconds, sensing the burst of killing intent from her, and quickly changed his tone, just kidding. I came to tell you that the throne race will be postponed for three months. During these three months, I don't want any accidents to happen to Ferrara. Having experienced the resistance faction, the zombie siege, and the blood explosions, Ferrara was already heavily scarred and could no longer endure any further torment. This city desperately needed a period of peace to recover and prosper. As early as the previous day, the advancing participants received a notification about the postponement of the throne race. Why did Ilya come to her specifically to convey this? Song Ku was puzzled, how does it concern me? Ilya's tone was meaningful, of course, it concerns you because you are the biggest wild card. Although I sent the bloody hunter back, as long as you are here, we never know when they might return. So I have a suggestion. How about you go outside and take a break? She understood the reasoning they were worried she might cause trouble for Ferrara by staying here. But was her presence that much of an issue? To the extent that the highest ranking official personally chased her away. Song Ku glanced at Ilya he seemed relaxed in his tone but didn't appear to be joking. This suggestion wasn't unreasonable. They hadn't intended to stay in Ferrara indefinitely, and there was no need to confront him head-on at this juncture. Song Ku nodded, okay, but I have a few Q questions. Please go ahead. A data stream formed a spacious chair, and Ilya sat in it, appearing relaxed and regal, as if he held the fate of Ferrara in his hands. Did you alter my level? This was a statement of certainty. Song Ku remembered Punk's words vividly from that day. She was an S-level strong attack type with a gold element ability, but her ability certificate showed only A level. Upon careful thought, all the tests were conducted in Ferrara, and the only one who could discreetly modify the results was Ilya. Ilya didn't deny it, yes. Song Ku asked, why? Ferrara is my territory. If an S-level awakener appears here, too much attention will be drawn. I don't want to attract excessive scrutiny at this critical moment, Ilya said lightly, as if altering someone's ability level was a trivial matter. Anyway, for you, the level isn't that important. When you're outside, A-level is more convenient than S-level. He smiled, and his face seemed to show more emotions, becoming more and more like a true human. Just didn't expect there's not just one hidden S-level. Ilya's gaze fell on Zhuang Qinyan, who was sitting in a wheelchair behind her. Zhuang Qinyan smiled slightly at him, looking calm. Ilya glanced at him a little longer and then turned his gaze away. Since you are so concerned about Ferrara, why did you release the Zozombies? Song Ku asked. Why can't I? Ilya countered. If a room is dirty, you clean it up in time, get rid of what I don't want, and what's left is what I like. His casually dismissive tone sent a chill down one spine. Song Ku pursed her lips. Why do you collect zombies and hold the TH Throne race competition? Ilya smiled slowly. Because I'm bored. Don't you think it's interesting to observe humans showing various expressions? Awakeners and their former kind killing each other, what a splendid performance. You can only see it in Ferrara. Song Ku understood completely. 
This unconventional artificial intelligence ruler acted on whims, regardless of right or wrong, and couldn't be held to human moral standards. I have no more questions, Song Ku said. Ilya smiled slightly. Then, see you at the competition in three months. With that, he disappeared on the spot. We underestimated him. Perhaps even Lion's Rebellion is part of his calculations, Zhuang Qinyan said with a serious expression. Starting from organizing the throne race, this super artificial intelligence had been playing a very significant game. Song Ku turned her head. Why three months? Zhuang Qinyan pondered. He's eliminating potential threats. There's only one possibility during these three months, he can't appear and personally manage Ferrara. Song Ku was stunned. Why couldn't Ilya manage Ferrara personally unless he had something more important to do? Lu Xinglan Song Ku uttered a name. Since Ilya took Lu Xinglan away, she hadn't seen him again. And his offhand mention of a body always sent a shiver down her spine. After returning, Su Xing transformed into a spoiled child when he saw her, clinging to Song Ku and refusing to let go. Sister did you carry me to sleep last night? His voice was soft and sweet, and his two watery eyes blinked and blinked, shamelessly acting cute. And, you need a good sleep to grow tall, Song Ku said, patting his curly hair, educating the young child. In front of her, Su Xing was always obedient and amiable. However, Song Ku had witnessed him explode in rage and curse at the shelter, so she knew that the child's true character wasn't as perfect as it appeared. But what did that matter? Compared to the lifeless and forever gone person, he was lively and vibrant, which was good. After comforting Su Xing, Song Ku went to Lin Yuyu. I need to talk to you about something. Lin Yuyu was carefully applying lipstick in front of the mirror, and she had an online interview to record later. You and Su Cha, join V587, Song Ku said. Lin Yuyu's hand trembled, smearing the lipstick crookedly, leaving an abrupt line at the corner of her mouth. Can you repeat that? She asked incredulously, thinking she had misheard. You and Sucha, join V587, Song Ku repeated. Lin Yuyu widened her beautiful eyes, her slender fingers trembling as she pointed at her, Song Ku, I risked so much to save you. I thought we were even. You still hold a grudge against me for what happened at Mirror Lake. Song Ku said, it's not. It's fine if you're not grateful, but you still want me to continue being your coolie. How can your heart be so dark? The big star got into her acting mode, whimpering a couple of times and leaning on the table with teary eyes filled with accusation. Song Ku muttered softly, it was Zhuang Qinyan. He was a afraid you'd report me and spill the beans about my heart. Zhuang Qinyan beside her was mercilessly exposed. Lin Yuyu's hypocritical sobbing got stuck in her throat. She was angry, her tone rising sharply, nonsense, am I that kind of person? In fact, you can consider it as a deal, Song Ku explained seriously. Lin Yuyu and Su Cha joining them, working together with them, until the throne race ends. After that, if they get eliminated or win the championship, and when Song Ku leaves Ferrara, they can decide whether or not to report anything. Lin Yuyu could choose to withdraw. This proposal was both a limitation, restricting their personal freedom during this time, and a new collaboration led by Song Ku after Mirror Lake. The relationship between them was like temporary partners no close bonds were required, just unified action. The most important thing was the tempting conditions on the table. If we win the championship, we'll get the money, and the O oh opportunity for a wish, we'll give it to you. This is my promise. Lin Yuyu was startled after hearing this. She knew deep down that she and Su Cha were doing fine at the moment, but as the competition progressed, there would be more skilled competitors. It would be difficult to win the championship with just the two of them. But if if they joined V587, they could form a formidable, unbeatable team of five. Thinking about this, Lin Yuyu's heart started beating faster and faster. She couldn't help but hold her head, forcing herself to calm down. Wait, let me think about it, she said. She thought about it for the whole afternoon, and by dinner time, Lin Yuyu appeared radiant. We can join V587, she agreed in her first sentence. Su Xing, 
who was happily sipping on juice, was so shocked that the juice box slipped from his hand and fell to the ground. He was utterly dumbfounded. Why? Why did the person he disliked the most become his teammate in the end? This world was so cruel to him. But I have a condition, Lin Yuyu continued. I need him, she pointed to Fang Jishu, who was dozing on the couch, to heal someone for me. Fang Jishu, it was Fang Jishu again. No wonder healing awakeners were always in demand wherever they went. Song Ku's heart, Zhuang Qingyan's leg, and now Lin Yuyu all needed Fang Jishu. But whether Fang Jishu himself would cooperate, Song Ku had no assurance. The immediate priority was to understand what Fang Jishu wanted and complete the task he had in mind, so there was hope for negotiating conditions with him later. Song Ku approached the sofa. Under normal circumstances, this person had a very low presence, but no one would easily overlook him. Thank you, she said to Fang Jishu. If it weren't for him taking action, even if her heart could self-heal, the process would have been even more difficult. Fang Jishu lifted his eyelids and made a nonchalant hum. He had vowed never to pick up a surgical knife again, and he hadn't expected to break that promise so soon. In the next few days, we'll be leaving Ferrara. When I'm feeling better, I'll help you, Song Ku explained the arrangements for the coming days and paused, then went straight to the point and asked, can you now tell me which magistrate you want to kill? It's not necessary, Fang Jishu replied unexpectedly after a moment of silence. Saying things that can't be done will only cause unnecessary trouble. Why can't it be done? Song Ku was puzzled. Is our strength still insufficient? Lin Yuyu and Su Cha had already decided to join V587. With Fang Jishu, they had two S-level and three A-level awakeners, plus one B-level. With this luxurious lineup, they could dominate anywhere. Fang Jishu shook his head slowly. It's not a matter of strength. To kill someone, you need to see the person first. The most stringent access system, do you mean the C55 district? Zhuang Qinyan asked quickly. Chapter, 91. Let's go to Sin City. Ferrara Tongwan Arc End. The New Asia Alliance has a total of 50 C districts, and each sea level city has its unique irreplaceability. And Mu City C55 district is the Alliance's arsenal. The economic lifeline of Mu City is firmly controlled by the local large scale arms dealers, who have absolute power and even collude with the magistrate to continuously channel money and resources for greater gains. The magistrate supported by armed forces is an absolute dictator, wielding an iron fist, bestowed with the title tyrant by the outside world. Unlike Ferrara's democratic elections, the magistrate in Mu City has not changed for 26 consecutive years. The admission criteria for C55 district were notoriously strict even before the apocalypse. Mu City does not welcome refugees, rejects people from remote areas, and the entry approval process is complex and cumbersome. The backgrounds of newcomers, if even slightly ambiguous, would be ruthlessly turned away, even if they were completely innocent without any suspicion. Sometimes, applications submitted might have no progress for months. This situation escalated after the apocalypse, gradually becoming extreme, and Mu City almost blocked all admission channels. If Ferrara welcomed all incoming travelers, then Mu City welded its gates shut, refusing entry to anyone. Zhuang Qinyan finished analyzing the information about Mu City. Song Ku counted on her fingers. Well, refugee knowing that Fang Jishu is currently missing, can only be considered a refugee, coming from the remote area her and Su Xing, and those with unclear backgrounds Zhuang Qinyan and Su Cha, it seems they've all fallen into the trap. Lin Yuyu still has a bit of hope, but she's operating outside and can't use her real name. No wonder Fang Jishu said that knowing was futile. If she were a household registration officer in Mu City, she wouldn't let these dangerous elements in. After Fang Jishu listened, he stared at Zhuang Qinyan and asked, How do you know so much? Song Ku immediately chimed in, He knows all the information about the alliance. While saying this, she proudly raised her chin, looking like she had some honor, as if Zhuang Qinyan had given her face. Zhuang Qinyan caught a glimpse of her expression and silently curved his mouth. Sneak in and give it a try. Su Cha, who had been listening quietly, suggested an idea that suited his personality. 
Chuang Qinyan quickly denied, the border is heavily guarded, and there's a specialized organization to combat intruders. I'm afraid that as soon as you step into Mu City, you'll be greeted by thousands of particle cannons, reducing you to ashes in just three seconds. Is there really no other way? Lin Yu Yu asked. Like coming up with a special reason, official business trip, or visiting relatives. Zhuang Qinyan shook his head, it's hard to deceive the registration department of the alliance. The group sighed instantly. Su Xing was a beat slower and, to fit in, sighed along, looking like a little adult. Fang Zhixu's expression remained calm, but the flames of hatred burned slowly in his heart, never extinguishing. He had long learned to face the reality of helplessness. In the midst of silence, Zhuang Qinyan slowly spoke up, actually there might be a way. Five pairs of eyes looked at him in unison. Song Ku urged, speak quickly. Pausing for a moment, she added, keep it simple, no bee beating around the bush. Zhuang Qinyan, whose old accounts were inadvertently brought up, cleared his throat, without admission permission, we could forge a fake one. All information about household registration is synchronized to personal terminals. Just tamper with it a bit, make it look real, change our household registration location to C55 district. That way, we won't need to submit an admission application and can enter Moose City without anyone noticing. You mean, hack the registration department system and alter the results? Lin Yu Yu was surprised. This guy was really audacious. Song Ku thought of Ilya her ability level was modified by him. If not for Punk, she might have been kept in the dark. It was a good idea, but achieving seamless perfection was lacking a crucial element. Song Ku looked at Zhuang Qinyan with mixed feelings and said, Can you hack the system? Can you hack the system? Su Xing, like a follower, furrowed his little brow and imitated Song Ku's expression, asking. Yeah, speaking so casually, can you? Lin Yu Yu crossed her hands and glanced at him skeptically. The remaining two males gave Zhuang Qinyan a bit of face, just looking at him with a hint of suspicion. I can't, Zhuang Qinyan's answer was quite straightforward. Song Ku, if you can't, why boast about it? Zhuang Qinyan said slowly, I can't do it, but someone else can. Song Ku, Su Xing, and Lin Yu Yu asked in unison, who? Zhuang Qinyan mentioned a name, do you remember Lu Xinglan? Song Ku nodded, I remember. Lu Xinglan, due to impure eye color, wasn't highly regarded in the Lu family. Even if he went missing, it wouldn't attract much attention. However, as a genetic candidate, he awakened the Lu family's exclusive hacker ability. You want to find Lu Xinglan? Song Ku reminded, but he's with Ilya. Zhuang Qinyan smiled slightly, I'm not looking for him. He just reminded me of someone. Ten years ago, in the Lu family, there was an astonishingly talented and brilliant individual named Lu Xiaoyu. He was the top-notch hacker, whether within the Lu family or across the entire alliance, as long as there was data, he could easily defy everyone. I considered him let's say, a friend. Zhuang Qingyan's eyelid twitched. Thinking of the glorious deeds this friend dragged him into, they were all extremely unpleasant memories. Where is he now? Erjia? Song Ku asked. Zhuang Qinyan said solemnly, No, he's in the death prison. Ah. Uh. Not only Song Ku, but everyone else looked extremely shocked. Su Cha suddenly spoke, By the death prison, do you mean the one in F-180 district? That's right, Zhuang Qinyan said, The underground death prison of Sin City. The alliance districts were not only classified by levels, but much information could be inferred from the numbering. For example, the lower the number, the stronger the overall strength, and the higher the status in the alliance. F-180 district, on the other hand, was the worst among the worst, completely abandoned by the alliance, the kind they wished to discard immediately. Although it didn't have a name, it had a dread-inducing aliasity of sin. Song Ku couldn't understand. If Lu Xiaoyu was as formidable as Zhuang Qinyan described, he should have been highly regarded within the Lu family. How could he have fallen to such a lightless place as the death prison? Zhuang Qinyan sighed, because Lu Xiaoyu is not only a genius but also a complete madman. Five years ago, he almost destroyed Lu family's supercomputer. 
After the Alliance trial, they decided to banish him to the death prison, with the sentence lasting until the end of his life, never to be reincarnated. Everyone fell silent. The supercomputer was the cornerstone of the Lu family, so was this the I'm ruthless enough to eliminate even myself? Lu Xiaoyu was indeed a lunatic. So, are you suggesting that we find your friend first, rescue him from the death prison, and then have him handle the registration system? Lin Yuyu looked skeptical, but why do I feel like the former is more difficult? Rescuing someone from the death prison? Has anyone ever succeeded? District F is dangerous it's hard to get there, Su Cha also questioned. At least District F has no admission restrictions. Zhuang Qinyan remained unfazed and even in the mood for a joke. Song Ku was concerned about another issue, are you sure he's willing to help us? That's easy. Once we find him, I'll handle it, Zhuang Qinyan promised. But that's the death prison, not a marketplace. I said, brother, you are also quite crazy, aren't you? It's impossible from the get-go. Sister, what's the death prison? Everyone discussed in a clamor, unable to convince one another. Stop. Song Ko took a deep breath and shouted loudly, one at a time. She paused, her gaze gradually becoming determined, rescuing people, I'll handle it. Snooping around, I'll handle it, Su Cha said, turning the dagger in his hand, his tone devoid of fluctuation. Lin Yuyu opened her terminal, I can arrange transportation to F-180 district. The division of labor was immediately clear. Su Xing looked left and then right, realizing he couldn't help with anything. Oh no, he had really become the kind that Zhuang Qinyan described, only capable of shouting 666 foot dot. Su Xing pouted in frustration and in the next moment, his eyes lit up, thinking of his value, I have money, I'll handle the spending. Fang Jishu looked at the person in front of him, his palm clenched and then relaxed. He knew that ultimately, the decisions they made were for him. These people sought his help, and came for his ability, but what did it matter? As long as he could seek revenge, he was willing to give everything. So, let's give it a try. After sleeping for so long, it was time to open his eyes. We can't stay in Ferrara, let's go back to Tongwan for a few days to rest and discuss the specific plan, Zhuang Qinyan concluded. In the first collective meeting of the new V587 team, several parties preliminarily reached a consensus and achieved a successful conclusion. Chapter, 92 Let's go to Sin City. Ferrara Tongwan Arc End Tongwan Outpost A private steamboat was opened by the guard, and it underwent immigration inspection. Song Ku got off the boat, connected with the terminal and the guards, and her ability information was displayed on the screen. I'm sorry, ma'am, the commission you accepted has expired, and the access permission is no longer valid. The medical support was originally just a part-time job, so Song Ku might spend one day as a volunteer and another day outside, and she even went to do extra work to rescue Tao Tao. Half a month later, the form of completing this B-level commission changed to a full-time, one, requiring a 24-hour standby on duty. Recently, the pressure of zombie transformation has been too great, and manpower is insufficient. The magistrate has issued a new policy, explained the young guard, if you don't have access permission, you cannot enter. Zhuang Qinyan showed half of his face and glanced at him, saying, you're new, aren't you? How did you know? The young man was surprised. He had just joined the guard less than a week ago and was still doing the most basic outpost checks. He wondered if he had missed something and it was noticed. Song Ku knew why. When Zhuang Qinyan was in Tongwan, he spent every day in the archives flipping through information and already knew all about Tongwan's awakeners. Zhuang Qinyan nodded slightly towards him and said calmly, Last month, we helped Captain Zhao resist the invasion of the zombies. Brother, we are all law-abiding citizens, not criminals. Can you make an exception and let us in? Well I can't make the decision, the young man scratched his head. He had heard the seniors talk about the shelter, but he wasn't sure if these were the people. If they deceived him and he let them in, he would face consequences. While the group was in a stalemate at the city gate, Zhao Liqiang happened to pass by with a middle-aged man. Song Ku saw this and immediately shouted, Captain Zhao. 
Zhao Liqiang noticed them and whispered to the person next to him. The group of people walked towards them. The leading middle-aged man had a steady temperament, determined eyes, and was dressed in the popular Tang suit from the old times. A faint herbal fragrance emanated from him. The young guard, upon seeing the man, stood at attention and saluted, with an excited voice, Good day, Lord Magistrate. So this was the Magistrate of Tongwan, Song Ku thought to herself, the person who single-handedly organized the defense of the city and guarded the medical and pharmaceutical hub. Zhao Liqiang introduced respectfully, Dr. Chen, they are the V587 who helped us in Lujia shelter, as I mentioned. Chen Zui, Tongwan's highest governing officer and a doctor specializing in ancient medical practices, nodded at the group, on behalf of Tongwan, I would like to thank you. The first encounter with such a courteous magistrate made Song Ku a little embarrassed, waving her hands repeatedly, no need, no need to thank us. What happened? Why are you blocked at the entrance? Zhao Liqiang asked. The young guard explained to Zhao Liqiang that Song Ku and her group did not have entry permits. Dr. Chen, they want to stay in Tongwan for a few days, what do you think Zhao Liqiang inquired softly. A hint of surprise flashed in Chen Zui's eyes, you don't plan to stay in Tongwan? Yes, just a temporary stopover. We plan to go elsewhere afterwards, Zhuang Qinyan replied politely. Chen Zui sighed regretfully. He himself was just an ordinary person and would usually pay special attention to and recruit high-level awakeners. A powerful team like V587, if they could join the guard, Tongwan's security would be more fully insured. However, he also knew the principle of not forcing things building good relationships for future encounters is better than having more enemies. Tongwan won't turn away friends who have done us a favor. Let them in, consider it my special approval, Chen Zui said with a smile, but the necessary checks still need to be done, to confirm no zombie transformation and no threat. Of course, Zhuang Qinyan said with a smile. Chen Zui looked at the group one last time and said solemnly, Tongwan will always keep its doors open for you. After they entered, Lin Yuyu couldn't help but comment, this magistrate seems nice. Song Ku was more mature now, knowing that judging people based solely on appearances is not wise. She turned to Zhuang Qinyan, what do you think? Zhuang Qinyan pondered, Chen Zui is very tactful and wise. As an ordinary person, he thinks things through very thoroughly. Every nest has its eggs. Chen Zui's life is tied to this city. Guarding Tong Wan is also protecting himself. In this sense, he is indeed a competent magistrate. The next day, Song Ku went to the 119 hospital. She came to see Wen and Wang Chang, the only two remaining members of Azure Phoenix 11th squad. When they first met, Song Ku almost didn't recognize the two. Wang Chang used to be a tall, silly guy who loved to laugh and joke around with Ouyang Pei, but now his entire right leg was made of bionic material. He hadn't completely adapted yet, and there was a strange awkwardness in his movements. As for Enchi Wen he had become drastically thinner. The once confident and carefree soldier who used to hold a cigarette and confidently blast open the side door of Ulab was gone. He had become much more subdued, and from a distance, he looked like another Wu Juamin. Song Ku stopped in front of him, pondering how to start the conversation. If you want to inform me about Maeda and the captain, I already know, and Chi Wen anticipated what she was about to say. We have an intercommunicative life detection frequency within our group. A few days ago, everyone's signals disappeared, Wang Chang lowered his head, trembling all over, his mechanical leg creaking. They say real men don't shed tears easily, but he couldn't control the dampness in his eyes. That day, I was at the scene, Song Ku said slowly. And Chi Wen suddenly looked up at her, his gaze incredibly focused, so you know what happened, right? Song Ku nodded and told An Chi Wen and Wang Chang everything about Manzoni Street. Bloody Hunter and Chi Wen repeated each word slowly, clenching his fists tightly, his eyes cold. Afterward, WH what do you plan to do? Song Ku asked. I'll return to North County B6 District. The mission failed, and all members of the Azure Phoenix 11th squad, except in Chiwen and I, lost their lives. I have a responsibility to report everything to General Xie, and Chiwen said solemnly. 
Song Ku took out the seven shoulder patches from her pocket and handed them back to An Chiwen, take them, and go together. Thank you, An Chiwen carefully put them away, we're leaving. If there's a chance, we'll see you in North County. Song Ku leaned against the corridor, watching An Chiwen and Wang Chang leave the hospital. Song Ku, how come you're here? Lu Ning had just finished a surgery, rubbing her tired forehead. She came out to catch a breath and unexpectedly saw her. I thought you weren't volunteering anymore. I'm not. I'm going on a trip. A trip? I heard it's chaotic outside. Take care of yourself. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lu. The two of them stood quietly, feeling the breeze. Doctors in white robes hurriedly passed by the corridor behind them. In a place like a hospital, the busiest people were always the doctor surgery after surgery, sometimes working for over ten hours straight, yet getting only a few minutes of rest. Lu Ning noticed her gaze and sighed softly, recently, the number of patients turning into zombies is increasing. The medical pressure is one thing, but I'm worried that the patients and their families can't handle it mentally, and it might cause trouble. Song Ku, Dr. Lu, may I ask you a question? Lu Ning, of course. In your eyes, what kind of person is Fang Jishu? Fang Jishu wanted to disappear from the medical community in Tongwan, and Song Ku respected his wishes, not revealing his whereabouts casually. But since he wouldn't say anything, she had to indirectly understand his situation from others. Brother Fang. Lu Ning's character was truly bold, and after some thought, she suddenly dropped a bombshell, actually, I had a crush on him for a while. Song Ku's eyes widened instantly. Don't get me wrong, he got married a long time ago, and I gave up when I found out. Besides, I'm married now too. Song Ku's expression was overly exaggerated, making Lu Ning somewhat nervous, hastily waving her hands to explain. Although I don't know much about his personal life, one thing I'm sure of is that he's a good doctor, a very good one. Tong Wan holds free medical consultations every year, helping those children with basic illnesses who can't afford surgery. Brother Fong always goes there, but it's secretly and anonymously I discovered it by chance one time, nobody in the hospital knows about it. Despite his great reputation, he goes to these consultations without seeking anything in return. He must genuinely want to help those children. As a doctor, he has a compassionate heart and is genuinely gentle with patients, Lu Ning said with a faint smile. The Fang Jishu mentioned by Lu Ning was exceptionally talented and had a proud disposition, yet his heart was extremely soft. He had nothing in common with the current guy who hung out with them every day, the weathered uncle with a beard, messy hair, and an indifference to everything except sleep. What kind of blow did Fang Jishu endure to undergo such a drastic change? Mu City, C55 District Song Ku silently repeated this place name in her heart. She would definitely go there. Tun Chin came from Mu City. Song Ku hadn't found his body in the martial arts hall, indicating that he most likely returned to the C55 district ahead of time. If she could meet him there, she really wanted to ask what had happened in the martial arts hall during those last few days. Two days later, Lin Yu Yu got in touch with a private transportation convoy, paid a toll, and arranged for them to travel to F180 district. On the first day of the new calendar year in the 47th year of the new era, Four months after the apocalypse, on an ordinary sunny day, a relatively unknown group of Awakeners, V587, set off on their journey to Sin City. Chapter, 93 Black on Black A high-chassis six-wheel off-road vehicle raced through the desert. After leaving Tongwan, V587 traveled a distance with a private transport convoy. They were dropped off on a stretch of road hundreds of kilometers away from the F180 district. The convoy leader knew he wasn't being fair, having taken the money without completing the task. He explained with an embarrassed expression, I can only take you this far. It's not that I'm being difficult, but I fear going any further might be a one-way trip. You'll have to go the rest of the way on your own. Song Ku and the others had no choice but to change to a different mode of transportation. From District C to District F, the level of technology plummeted, and they couldn't find any autonomous vehicles along the way. In the end, they had to opt for primitive gasoline cars, with Su Cha taking the wheel. In the daytime desert, the sunlight was particularly harsh. 
The group wore protective goggles and progressed smoothly following the navigation prompts. Have any of you be been to the F-180 district before? Song Ku asked. No, everyone replied. Song Ku looked at Zhuang Qinyan, who also shook his head. This was a completely unfamiliar city to them. It made sense why would ordinary people, living their lives well, come to District F. The navigation indicated that they were approaching the western border of the Alliance, entering the destination area. Song Ku pulled off her goggles, put them back on, and climbed through the sunroof. She leaned out of the car, facing the scorching wind and sand blowing on her face. As far as the eye could see, it was a desolate desert with no traces of a city. She couldn't help but be surprised. Was this it? The Sin City? The group circled the desert for countless rounds. The location on the navigation seemed within reach, but they couldn't get there. There were no city gates nearby, no watchtowers, and no human figures. The only distinctive features were several towering, oddly shaped quadrangular pyramids, somewhat resembling the pyramids of ancient times, standing in the open desert, reflecting a silver-white luster on their surfaces. Song Ku and the five others got out of the car and walked toward these pyramids. Upon approaching, they found tightly closed gates. They tried various methods, pulling, tugging, and prying. Su Cha tried using poison, Su Xing used ice, and Song Ku attempted transformation but gave up due to rapid mental exhaustion. None of them could break the access control. The surface of the pyramids was made of a material that exhibited extremely strong resistance to supernatural attacks. Wheelchairs were impractical in the desert, so Zhuang Qinyan switched to crutches. He walked slowly around the pyramids, observing the structure of the gates with lowered eyes. His gaze lingered for a few seconds on the overhead monitor, the closed gates, and the adjacent groove. He spoke, it seems like this is the gateway to Sin City. But we can't open it, Song Ku said. Don't worry. If it's a gateway, there must be a key. Let's look for it again. Su Cha drove and circled the area for nearly half an hour until they saw a few blurry figures by the side of the road through the rolling dust. Through the rolling dust, those people heard the sound of the engine and ran to the middle of the road, waving to them from a distance. There are people, Song Ku reminded. The off-road vehicle slowly decelerated and came to a stop. A girl with colorful braids and brown skin approached the driver's seat and knocked on the car window. Mia waited by the roadside for almost three hours. Apart from two desiccated zombies passing by, she didn't see any other living people. Finally, just before the sun set, she spotted an off-road vehicle. Mia knocked on the car window. The glass slid down slowly, opening a narrow gap. In the front seats, on the left and right, sat two young men. Mia smiled and said, Friends, our car broke down. Could you tow us for a short distance? It's not far ahead. As she spoke, she pointed to the pickup parked by the road, its hood open, with a man tinkering there. Are you also heading to the F-180 district? We're going the same way. Please help us. I've been waiting all afternoon, and you're the only ones passing by. Mia folded her hands together, her tone very sincere. The desert is terrifying at night. I really don't want to stay outside. The two men exchanged a glance but before they could speak, the back door was suddenly yanked with force. Bang thud. The person outside was rough, not expecting the car to be locked from the inside. He couldn't open it in one go. AMU, don't be rude. It's very impolite. Mia scolded loudly, then turned back to the two men with an apologetic smile. I'm sorry. We've been waiting for a long time, and my friend was worried you wouldn't take us, so he's a bit anxious. A 17 or 18-year-old girl leaned over from the back, speaking to the man in the front passenger seat. After the man listened to her, his gaze stayed on Mia for a moment and then nodded gently. Three people. Mia made a mental note of that. All right, said the handsome man sitting in the front passenger seat. That's great. Thank you. I'll ask AMU to hook up the towing rope, and I'll sit in your car to guide you. Finally, the car door opened, and Mia eagerly climbed in. It was then that she noticed, besides the young girl, 
there were three more people in the back row a middle-aged man dozing off with half-closed eyes, a child with a clean face and clothes, and a brightly dressed woman wearing sunglasses. She blinked, smiling warmly, and greeted them, are you a family of four traveling together? The dad, the elder daughter, the young son, and this must be the stepmom, right? PFF the girl in the front couldn't help but let out a light laugh. Mia looked at her in confusion. Did I say something wrong? The girl shook her head, her lively expression somewhat mischievous. They are a family of three. I'm not. Hey. The glamorous woman took off her sunglasses, glared at the girl, and moved her lips, but in the end, she didn't say anything. Mia muttered to herself, thinking the stepmom's temper wasn't great at all. She turned to the little boy, trying to strike up a conversation, little brother, where are you guys from? The bratty kid gave a disdainful hum, completely ignoring her. Mia's forehead veins throbbed. Damn brat. The two cars, one in front and one behind, drove for about ten minutes in the desert and reached a desolate and rudimentary campsite. Apart from a few tents and makeshift structures, there was nothing else. We're here. Do you want to get out and rest for a while? Mia offered an invitation. No need, the man in the driver's seat coldly refused. Mia held the handle of the car and said meaningfully, I suggest you take a break here. The upcoming journey will be quite challenging. As a gesture of gratitude, I can give you some gifts. The people in the car fell silent. After a while, the man in the driver's seat and the girl got out of the car, following Mia towards the campsite. Mia led the way, glancing back a few times midway. The footsteps of these two were too light, like ghosts, always making her think they hadn't followed. At the camp entrance, Mia sighed with regret, you know, you could have gone somewhere else for a trip. Why pick Sin City? Could it be that you believed those rumors outside and thought there are fewer zombies here? Is it not okay? The girl asked in confusion. It's okay, of course it's okay. I should thank you for coming. Mia beamed and turned towards the direction of the tents, shouting, Azza, it's time to slaughter the sheep. As she finished speaking, a sandstorm suddenly erupted in the camp. The solid ground disintegrated abruptly, and over a dozen people burst out from beneath the yellow sand, surrounding the off-road vehicle parked in the distance. On the side of the man and the girl, another group of people emerged from behind the tents. Glinting knives were placed at their necks. A muscular man named Azza had his body covered in swirling yellow sand, his eyes fixed greedily on them, licking his lips. These ambushers were all awakeners. Are you robbers? The girl asked bewildered. Mia laughed heartily, you're mistaken. Robbers want money we don't. We want your lives. After all, you lost sheep willingly walked into our trap. She flickered flames at her fingertips, her expression gradually turning fierce, you're surrounded. Give up resistance, and I might consider giving you a quick death. Without further ado, she transformed the condensed flames into sharp blades and thrust them straight towards their necks. The girl swiftly moved, and somehow, Mia didn't touch even a strand of her clothes. She chuckled, revealing two faint dimples on her cheeks, and imitated Mia's words, you, are, surrounded. Mia snickered. Was this person daft? Just the two of them, and they thought they could surround over twenty of us. A beautifully curved crescent moon blade appeared out of thin air. The girl held it in her main hand, lifting it up in a move that severed the knife at her neck. Following swiftly, she struck again. In the wind and sand that surged up, there was a flash of dark light, Mia's eyes widened, her colorful braids were chopped off, falling all over the ground. Mia rolled in a sorry state, and the tall man also made his move, weaving through them like a ghost. Soon, two companions fell. Kill the people in the car first. Mia shouted loudly into the distance. Soft persimmons had to be picked first. First, eliminate the four useless people, young and old, inside the car, and then turn their focus to deal with these two troublesome ones. AMU and Azza immediately charged towards the off-road vehicle. In an instant, the number of people attacking the vehicle reached twenty. All the greedy rivers drying up in the fragrant desert. The sandy ground under their feet suddenly started to flow, sinking like a swamp. 
They were trapped and unable to move. At this moment, a furry head popped out of the sunroof of the off-road vehicle. The haughty little brat clung to the roof with both hands and jumped up on tiptoe. Around him, numerous ice blades swiftly flew out, piercing the people trapped in the sand, turning them into hedgehogs. Mia cursed under her breath, damn it. She had misunderstood. What stepmom and brat, what family going on a trip these people weren't fat sheep they were more like butchers. They were the fat sheep. Act quickly and retreat. Mia shouted in a panic, then turned and ran. A cold mental force pursued her like a shadow. Mia didn't have time to struggle. Her figure paused and fell to the ground. The last thought that flashed in her mind was sloppy, these people did it on purpose, and we fell into their trap a trap within a trap. Time rewound half an hour ago. People, Psalm Ku alerted. The others focused and saw several blurry figures ahead. Lin Yu Yu frowned slightly, blocking the road in the middle, they're deliberately not letting us pass. Su Cha, hostile approach. Zhuang Qingyan's mouth curled into a cold smile, it's getting dark soon, appearing at this time is deliberately exploiting the vulnerability of newcomers. It seems we've been treated as fat sheep. Who P preys on whom is yet to be seen, Song Ku muttered. Since we can't find the entrance for now, why not try targeting them? Zhuang Qingyan smiled. Agreed, fat sheep should act like fat sheep and offer th themselves, Song Ku's eyes brightened. Mia thought she had encountered lost lambs, but little did she know, this was clearly a group of cunning and sly wolves. Song Ku and Su Cha took a few minutes to clear the area. They hadn't found a way to enter the F-180 district yet, and they were already encountering robbers. Could this be said to live up to the name of Sin City? Hey, what's this? Song Ku flipped out an object resembling a sign from Mia, which had many gray bars, three of which Mia had already marked in red. She fiddled with it for a while, unable to figure it out, and casually threw it to Zhuang Qinyan. The last trace of the setting sun disappeared below the horizon, and it was now dark. In the dark desert, something was stirring, and danger lurked everywhere. Zhuang Qinyan rubbed the sign he had taken from Mia, his eyes lowered in thought. Let's go back to the pyramid we were at earlier. I have some new ideas. The group drove back to the vicinity of the pyramid. I've always wondered, what permissions do we need to have for the passage here to open for us? Have you heard of the seven deadly sins? Pride, envy, wrath, sloth, greed, gluttony, and lust, as well as the resulting killings. Why is the F-180 district called Sin City? Perhaps it's because only those guilty are accepted here. The monitor above identified the smell of blood on Song Ku and Su Cha, prompting a new response. Please show introducer information. A line of text suddenly appeared on the facade. Zhuang Qinyan raised his hand and placed Mia's sign in the depression. The tightly closed door slowly opened, revealing a spacious space resembling an elevator in front of Song Ku. The six of them stepped in, and the elevator started, descending rapidly. Ding a crisp and pleasant reminder sounded. Welcome to Sin City. The tightly closed elevator doors opened again, and Song Ku, Lin Yu Yu, and Su Xing couldn't believe their eyes. A bizarre underground world presented itself before them. Tonight at 11 o'clock, Ross Casino's grand opening, free drinks for all. New biomimetic materials, take a look, medical technology from Tong Wan. Auction of zombies and fierce beasts. We buy crystal stones of all qualities. Just a few meters from the entrance, two pedestrians erupted into conflict. Supernatural abilities clashed on the street, and the loser was blasted into pieces, while the winner laughed heartily and walked away. Chaos, violence, rampant crime, contempt for life. This was the real Sin City. Chapter, 94 Who shares a room with whom? Beneath the desolate desert lay a bustling underground city. Here, there was no sun. Artificial lighting simulated natural light sources. Giant electronic screens were installed overhead, replacing the presence of the sky. There were no seasonal winds, no various circulations, and no natural ecosystems insect chirps and bird calls, as well as cats and dogs, were all artificially maintained. 
The overall style was rough and bold, resembling an eternal urban night. After exiting the elevator, they were greeted by a long trading street. The crowd surged, and the shouts from earlier echoed from both sides. Apart from the entrance they came through, there were many elevators in all directions. Ding! The sound of the elevator arriving rang out. People continued to come and go, making Song Ku and her group appear even more ordinary. Passersby gave them a cursory glance and did not pay much attention to them. In this unfamiliar city, amidst the noisy environment and indifferent residents, Song Ku felt a moment of difficulty fitting in. Zhuang Qinyan suggested, let's wander around nearby, see if we can gather any information and find a temporary place to stay. The six of them roamed aimlessly on the streets. A young man wearing a duckbill cap rushed towards them. He was looking down, in a hurry to move forward, and didn't notice, colliding into Su Cha's firm chest. Sorry. The man took two steps back, mumbled an apology, and then sidestepped past them. The man brushed past Lin Yuyu, a smirk slowly forming at the corner of his mouth. Before he could fully break into a smile, a slender hand suddenly gripped his forearm and twisted it harshly backward. Ah! The man's expression contorted as he screamed in pain his arm was broken. The dark-eyed girl stared at him expressionlessly, extending her hand toward him. The item, give it back. Ah! Lin Yuyu suddenly realized and reached for her wrist her terminal was gone. While everyone's attention was on Su Cha, who had been collided into, they hadn't noticed that this man was a skilled pickpocket. He had stealthily taken advantage of the moment their attention shifted and targeted her. Song Ku applied a bit of pressure, making the pickpocket's wails even more miserable. Stop, stop. I'll give it back to you. He reluctantly pulled out the rose gold lady's wristwatch. Song Ku took it and coldly said, Scram. The pickpocket clutched his broken arm and fled in embarrassment. Be more careful this place is different from other cities, Zhuang Qinyan reminded. After this incident, all six of them became extremely vigilant. Song Ku's group continued forward. They hadn't gone far when someone called out to them from the side of the street, Hey, you guys. Song Ku turned around, and a woman with a sharp gaze, half-shaved hair and half-dyed purple hair, was looking at them with interest. I've been observing you for a while. Are you interested in doing some business with me? Song Ku, business? The woman said, any kind of business works, as long as there's money. I'm Cheng Yi, a crystal procurer on this street, also selling various information. You're newcomers, and being clueless won't do. How about buying some information from me? How do you know we're new here? Zhuang Qinyan asked casually. Cheng Yi pursed her lips and gestured to the place they had just passed. That pickpocket you dealt with earlier has some notoriety in this area. You subdued him effortlessly, and your faces are still unfamiliar. It's easy to tell. Song Ku was cautious now, staring at her with a skeptical gaze. Why should we trust you? What if Cheng Yi was just like Mia, with ulterior motives, wanting to take advantage of them? Cheng Yi smiled confidently. You're quite cautious, but no need to worry. You can ask around the trading street. I've always been honest in my dealings, never deceiving anyone. Money and goods are exchanged, and that's it. Song Ku remained skeptical, turning to her companions for their opinion. Zhuang Qinyan leaned back in his wheelchair and lazily said, You've already identified us as newcomers. How can newcomers judge if what you're saying is true or not? Moreover, to do business, this level of sincerity isn't enough. Cheng Yi looked at the man in front of her. He appeared calm and composed, clearly a skilled negotiator. If they didn't gain some insight beforehand, this deal might fall through today. All right, how about this? I'll give you a few pieces of information for newcomers for free. You can listen and then decide whether or not to do business with me. You may proceed. Cough cough, next is a quick guide to integrating into Sin City. If you want to make money quickly, go to the casino or underground boxing matches. If you want to drink and have fun and hear gossip, go to Misty Summer Club. It's one of the safer chain bars in the city with fewer shady activities. When staying in a hotel, avoid those with room numbers containing Red Willow in the name. 
They are shady businesses that exploit out-of-towners, unless you want to wake up in the middle of the night with your head chopped off. Also Cheng Yi pointed at Su Xing, Lin Yuyu, and Song Ku in turn, kids and girls, remember not to go out alone. There are many human traffickers here. Cheng Yi, a savvy merchant operating in District F, proved quite shrewd, honing in on the most pressing needs of Song Ku and her group. At least these pieces of information were very useful to them. H. How do we make the trade? Song Ku decided to trust her for the time being and asked, and how much does it cost? Not money, Cheng Yi shook her head and casually knocked on the sign in front of her. Money depreciates the fastest. Currently, the only accepted hard currency in Sin City is crystals. With your skills, you must have a lot of good items, right? Cheng Yi greedily rubbed her hands together, practically drooling. Well, it turned out she had her eye on the crystals in their pockets from early on. V587 had indeed accumulated quite a few crystals some time ago, such as the commission Su Xing took during special training, the zombie wave in Luo Jia, and the upheaval in Ferrara. Altogether, they had over a dozen. Song Ku took out a level 1 crystal from her space, and Cheng Yi reached out to grab it, but she pulled it back just in time. We need to ask some questions first, Song Ku insisted. Ask away, I'll answer everything, Cheng Yi's eyes were glued to the crystal, urging them repeatedly. Zhuang Qinyan took out Mia's badge. What is this? Cheng Yi glanced at it briefly, then moved her gaze away, not very interested. That's a crime record, a special monitoring device for released convicts. The horizontal bars marked on it represent the owner's criminal index. If it exceeds five bars, they will be arrested again. But this is just a piece of metal. How does it monitor crimes? Su Xing asked, puzzled, holding Song Ku's hand. Cheng Yi shrugged. The crime record is a technology brought from District B. Nobody knows the specific principle, but in any case, it has never made a mistake. When we entered, what was the introducer mentioned at the entrance? Zhuang Qinyan asked again. For newcomers entering Sin City for the first time, they need an introducer's guidance to activate the elevator, Cheng Yi explained. As Cheng Yi spoke, she seemed to have a realization. These people could produce a crime record but didn't know what it was. Did they eliminate their introducer directly? You guys are quite ruthless, she exclaimed dramatically. Just survival of the fittest, Zhuang Qinyan chuckled. It was the style of Sin City, and Cheng Yi suddenly understood. She restrained her expression and extended her hand to Song Ku, saying, Have you asked enough? It's time to pay. Following the trading regulations, Song Ku placed the crystal in her palm. Cheng Yi received the crystal and treasured it immensely, exhaling in appreciation. She took out a magnifying glass from her pocket, pinched the edge and carefully observed while complimenting, not bad, the quality is good. After saying that, she bit into it, confirming its hardness. Song Ku and the others felt a chill. Oh no, that was dug out from a zombie's head. We still want to ask about. Wait, Cheng Yi raised her hand to stop them, her expression serious and solemn. This counts as the second question, one crystal per question. You profiteer. Su Xing scolded. Cheng Yi immediately retorted, Nonsense, what profiteer? I told you in advance, this is called clear pricing. Song Ku endured the pain and pulled out another crystal. Regarding death prison, how much information do you have? Death prison? Cheng Yi casually laughed, well, just keep going along this road without turning, after about 5 kilometers, you'll see an underground sea, and that's death prison. That's simple. Song Ku was surprised. For a prison of this level, its location was widely known without any confidentiality measures. So, how do we get in? Ha ha ha. Cheng Yi burst into laughter, holding her stomach. You guys are really newcomers, huh? Ha ha ha. Why are you laughing? Song Ku didn't understand. Was the question she asked really that foolish? Wiping away the tears of laughter, Cheng Yi said, Come on, this is Sin City. Who hasn't been to death prison a few times? Don't believe it. Just take a good look. 
almost 99% of the people coming and going on this trading street are released convicts. Indeed, with a glance, the surrounding pedestrians all wore bright red badges, with one, two, and even four bars. Cheng Yi unceremoniously took the second crystal and admired it under the artificial light. It's getting late. Although the underground city is perpetual night, I still recommend you rest early and not wander around. In the future, if you have business, remember to come to me. After leaving the trading street, the six of them walked for another half hour. The hotels without the name containing Red Willow were scarce. After a considerable effort, they managed to find one that was still open, though it appeared somewhat run down. The second floor walls had a large charred patch, and ashes were falling from it. Hello, checking in, Song Ku said. The receptionist glanced up and scanned them, saying, only three rooms left, want them? How come there are only three? Aren't the rooms behind you also available? Lin Yu Yu pointed to the display screen behind the receptionist. The receptionist sighed, there was a fight on the second floor last night, and the whole floor got burnt. It's under renovation now, so no one can stay. Anyway, there are only three left. It's up to you if you want to stay. Song Ku, stay. They had been searching for quite a while, and they might not find anything better if they continued. They decided to settle for a night. Here are the key cards. After paying for the rooms, the receptionist efficiently opened the rooms, fearing they might change their minds. Now, the question was, with three rooms and six people, how to allocate them? Holding three key cards, Song Ku looked somewhat conflicted. Su Xing, the clever one, immediately hugged Song Ku's thigh and pouted, I want to stay with sister. Song Ku looked at the others. It turned out that Fang Zixiu was the most indifferent. As long as he had a bed, or even an empty space on the floor, it didn't matter to him. With his vagabond style, he didn't care who he shared the room with or where he slept. He could fall asleep instantly anywhere. For the remaining people. Song Ko handed one of the key cards to Lin Yu Yu, saying, You and Su Cha can stay together. In this way, Zhuang Qinyan and Fang Zixiu would be together. That settled it. Song Ko felt quite pleased with herself. She was indeed an astute captain. However, the result was unexpected. Su Cha spoke softly, not convenient. Lin Yu Yu glanced at the key card in her hand but didn't say anything. Ha! Huh. Song Ku was stunned, looking back and forth between Lin Yu Yu and Su Cha. Whenever they met, the two would act together. She had always thought they had that kind of relationship. Was she mistaken? But if Su Cha didn't stay with Lin Yu Yu, how would they divide the remaining rooms? Tricky. Song Ku looked conflicted, considering various combinations in her mind, always feeling like none was quite suitable. Lin Yu Yu chimed in, I have a suggestion. She grabbed Su Xing's hat and pulled him off Song Ku's leg, saying, why don't you stay with me? I am also a big sister. Su Xing flailed his arms and legs, his expression saying, what? Lin Yu Yu smiled kindly, didn't Mia regard me as your stepmother? Don't worry, I can take care of children. Su Xing's eyes became teary, choking out, Woo Woo, bad woman. Lin Yu Yu ignored him and pointed at Su Cha and Fang Zixiu, you two in one room. Finally, she turned to Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan, you both can stay in the remaining room. There's no problem, right? Zhuang Qinyan said, what did she mean by no problem? His lips moved, about to speak. Song Ku said, okay. Zhuang Qinyan. Half an hour later, come to my room for a M meeting. Song Ko stood in a corridor, reminding the others. Then she closed and locked the door. As she turned around, Zhuang Qinyan looked at her with a serious expression, Song Ko, I think we need to have a serious talk. About what? Song Ko jumped into bed, stretched her limbs, and lazily yawned, showing no signs of self-awareness. Zhuang Qinyan's voice was hoarse, I think your gender awareness is very unclear, and you don't have a good understanding of boundaries with the opposite sex. For example, not knocking before entering his room, or sharing a room with him and sleeping soundly in front of him, and so on. The list was endless. You're still a girl. 
this could be very dangerous if it continues. Song Ku hugged a pillow, lying on her back with a blank look, huh? I don't understand. Can you speak in human language? Zhuang Qinyan took a deep breath, his wheelchair slid to the edge of the bed, and he lowered his head to lock eyes with her, who was lying upside down at the end of the bed. Do you not see me as a man? Or are you just overly confident in yourself? Even when turned upside down, Zhuang Qinyan's face was still breathtakingly handsome. His features were clear and cold, his thin lips pressed tightly, and his deep black eyes seemed to want to pull people in. Song Ku blinked slowly, then reached out and pushed Zhuang Qinyan's face. She rolled over, planning to sit up and speak. However, she sat up too abruptly, and the two of them, unprepared, bumped their foreheads together with a loud thud, and both fell backward. Song Ku tumbled into the bed, while Zhuang Qinyan moved towards the back of the chair. Song Ku Ku, Zhuang Qinyan gritted his teeth. I'm so so sorry. Song Ku frantically apologized, landing on all fours. Her knees rapidly moved forward, but she miscalculated and ended up stepping into thin air, causing her to fall off the bed with a plop and land between Zhuang Qinyan's legs. Silence spread. Song Ku laughed awkwardly, her hand inadvertently resting on Zhuang Qinyan's thigh. She earnestly explained, I know you won't do anything, so sharing a room with you is not a problem. Zhuang Qinyan froze, suddenly saying in a deep voice, Say it again. Ha! Huh. Song Ku was puzzled. She obediently repeated, I know you won't do anything. Zhuang Qinyan looked at her, raising an eyebrow. Song Ku, have you noticed that your stuttering has improved a lot lately? Song Ku was stunned. She hadn't realized it herself, and it was only after Zhuang Qinyan pointed it out that she belatedly reacted. Since the last time she was injured and unconscious on Manzoni Street, and woke up, she had indeed become more fluent in her speech. Though her pace of speaking was still slow, and there were occasional hesitations between sentences, her stuttering had noticeably improved. But her stuttering was congenital she had never managed to overcome it since childhood. How's the wound in your heart? Chuan Qinyan asked. It's much better, Song Ku replied. It had been less than a week since she was injured, and Song Ku's strength had almost recovered to about 50%. The blood vessels and tissues in her body were self-healing at an incredibly fast pace. It should be due to your second ability Zhuang Qinyan mused. Zhuang Qinyan fell into contemplation. What exactly was Song Ku's second ability? Self-healing. But why was her language ability subtly improving? A dense fog of confusion. Zhuang Qinyan gave a serious admonition, regarding your second ability, it's crucial to keep it secret. Keep a close eye on those two individuals. Understood, Song Ku nodded solemnly. Another awkward and stifling silence. So, can you release your hand now? Zhuang Qinyan spoke expressionlessly. Chapter, 95 Who to send to prison? Half an hour later, it was time for the meeting. Considering the chaos in Sin City, it's always wise to be more cautious. Su Cha and others entered the room. Su Cha, with hands adorned with black finger stalls, carefully inspected inch by inch along the door seams, walls, windows, and ceiling, confirming that there were no listening devices. He nodded to them. As Lin Yu Yu entered the room, she casually asked, What happened to both of you? Song Ku and Zhuang Qinyan had red marks on their foreheads, looking slightly swollen upon closer examination. Song Ku concealed and said, It's nothing, just bumped into something. Lin Yu Yu didn't think much of it initially, but since Song Ku seemed guilty, her gaze lingered on their foreheads for a few seconds, smiling meaningfully. Oh, how coincidental, the bump is in the same place. Song Ku cleared her throat. Let's start the meeting. The six individuals either sat or stood, finding their respective places. Song Ku was surprised to find that Fang Jishu was also present. It wasn't unusual for Fang Jishu to be there. They never avoided him when having small meetings before, and he would usually sleep through them, impossible to wake up even with thunder. But his state was noticeably different today, with disheveled hair tied in a messy bun at the back of his head, and his gaze was unusually clear. 
Song Ko recollected and realized that since they departed for F-180 district, Fang Zhishu had significantly reduced his sleeping time. Although he remained as silent and unnoticeable as ever, that gloomy and world-weary face of his hadn't shown up for a long time. Zhuang Qinyan organized the existing intelligence. Clearly, Sin City is very different from what we initially thought. The existence of the death prison is not a secret, and ordinary people have a casual attitude towards it, speaking of it without hesitation. They had initially thought that the death prison was a forbidden place for incarcerating serious offenders, expected to be remote, heavily guarded, and little known. Even if ordinary people knew about it, they would avoid discussing it. However, they underestimated the madness of this sinful place, where almost everyone had a criminal record. I just went around near the underground sea, Su Cha opened the terminal and projected the images and videos he had taken. In half an hour, if he went all out, it would be enough for him to make a round trip to the underground sea. A pitch black ocean appeared on the screen, with a still and waveless surface. There were no guards around the edges, only the familiar tetrahedral structures towering above the sea surface. It's difficult to dive in, Su Cha frowned and said. The death prison is located beneath the underground sea, with no place to land around it. The elevator on the sea's surface is the only entrance, but like the desert, it requires specific permissions to activate. Even Su Cha felt it was difficult to infiltrate, and the others were equally helpless. No need to dive in, Zhuang Qinyan said after a moment of thought, there's a simple way to enter the death prison. What method? Others looked at him one after another. Zhuang Qinyan placed Mia's badge on the table. The way the people here enter is the same way we will. You mean, commit a crime? Song Ku realized. That's right, cause a bit of trouble, get our people sent in, but not too serious. They can be released after a while. The only way to catch tiger cubs is to go into the tiger's den, Zhuang Qinyan quoted an ancient saying. It sounded absurd, but upon careful consideration, it made sense. The oversight and the supervision of the death prison was unimaginable. Who would go to such lengths to get themselves imprisoned? But who do we send in? Song Ku asked a crucial question. At this point, they still didn't know the specifics of the death prison. Sending everyone in was definitely inappropriate. The person chosen to enter the death prison would bear both hope and risk, requiring strong agility and responsiveness. I'll go, Su Cha said. I'll go too. Little Su Xin, afraid of falling behind, raised his hand and shouted. I can go too. Surprisingly, Fang Zhishu volunteered. Or, I'll go. Song Ku stood up. Zhuang Qinyan stopped her. Your injury hasn't fully healed. Take it easy. He then turned to Fang Zhishu. Although you are A-level, your ability isn't quite suitable. Children should learn something good. Su Xing was directly excluded. Finally, Zhuang Qinyan looked at Su Cha. Among us, you are the best candidate. Su Cha, hailing from the rainforest, excelled in stealth, concealment, reconnaissance, and assassination. He had top-notch individual combat skills and was an A-level poison-type awakener. Going into the death prison, at least, his self-defense was assured, and the others didn't need to worry too much about his safety. He had always followed behind Lin Yuyu, often overlooked, but in reality, Su Cha was a powerful awakener. The remaining task is to figure out how to get you in, Zhuang Qinyan said. Lin Yuyu voiced her concern, but we don't have any assurance about how long a crime would be incarcerated for. F-180 district was isolated from the outside world by yellow sands, with no internet connectivity within the area. In this dark and lawless underground city, there were no rules or regulations to follow everything relied on their own exploration. If it was just a minor offense and they were detained for a few days, that would be fine. However, if they were imprisoned for several months or even a year or more, their plans would be in jeopardy. Determining the degree of offense for committing a crime was extremely difficult. Song Ko recalled something, the people at the city G-Gate weren't arrested. When they first arrived, they witnessed a street fight, with one side even committing murder, but the murderer was not apprehended. I have another question, how does the death prison apprehend people? Lin Yuyu asked. 
When a criminal record reaches five bars, what does the death prison deploy to capture the criminals? Is it something like the Awakener Security Squad in Tongwan, or the AI patrol robots in Ferrara? In case the criminal is an Awakener and is unwilling to surrender, can they ensure they'll be able to subdue the target? Zhuang Qinyan tapped his fingers on the wheelchair, deep in thought. What you all have said is correct, so before taking action, it's best to find a demonstration first. As they were discussing, there was suddenly a commotion from upstairs. They were on the third floor, and the noise was coming from the fourth floor, sounding like a fight. Song Ku made a quick decision, let's go check it out. In the stairwell of the fourth floor, a desperate-looking waiter covered his face and said, why is there another fight? Are we not allowed to do business? A burly man stood in the corridor, his arms suddenly swelling four or five times its size, turning into a massive chunk. It slammed down with a bang, shattering the door, and the person inside didn't even have time to cry out before meeting a sudden death. The man momentarily lost control of his supernatural ability, smashing a hole through the hotel wall, allowing the cold wind to rush in. For bars, Su Cha reminded in a low voice. Song Ku and the others looked intently, and indeed, the man's badge on his arm had lit up with four bright red bars. And just at the moment when he killed the guest and smashed the hotel wall, the fifth bar slowly lit up. With all five bars filled, the criminal record rebooted, and the person committing the crime would be sent back to the death prison. Lucky break, Chuang Qinyan said, referring to the demonstration he mentioned. Just as Song Ku was about to see the people coming to arrest him, something strange happened. The man suddenly clutched his head with both hands, violently trembling all over, his upper body bending into a strange shape, writhing in agony. After a few seconds, it was as if he was being choked, and his voice abruptly stopped. Then the man stood up stiffly, with a vacant look in his eyes, losing consciousness. He moved forward with rigid limbs, guided by the five glowing bars, passing by Song Ku and the others who were watching. What is this coded syndrome? Fang Jishu suddenly spoke up. Zhuang Qinyan nodded slowly. Exactly. The cause should be his criminal record. Lin Yuyu asked in confusion, what are you talking about? What's coded syndrome? Zhuang Qinyan gestured to the side. Let Dr. Fang explain it to you. Fang Jishu looked serious. Coded syndrome, also known as the walking corpse syndrome, is caused by pathological changes in the parietal and frontal lobes of the brain, with delusions of emptiness and negation as the main symptoms. During an outbreak, a normal person will briefly enter a state of a walking corpse, believing that their organs have decayed, leaving only an empty shell of a body, with the whole world devoid of anything. This is accompanied by dullness of sensation, disintegration of personality, and other abnormal behaviors. The man faced the direction of the death prison, moving stiffly. He stepped into the nearest elevator, and he actually turned himself in this way. There was no need to send someone to arrest him. All criminals triggering the effects of the five bars would voluntarily return to the death prison like a walking corpse. But how is this achieved? Song Ku found it hard to understand. Criminal record, Zhuang Qinyan brought out Mia's badge again. I guess the particle currents embedded inside contain the triggering frequency range of Codred syndrome, which forcibly stimulates the brain. This shouldn't be achievable with the technological level expected in District F. It seems the Alliance has put a lot of effort into constructing and maintaining the death prison. Lin Yuyu frowned, with such an electric current stimulating the brain, wouldn't it lead to dementia? In the long run, it's possible, Fang Jishu said in a deep voice. But what about Su Cha? She hesitated, looking at Su Cha. It's fine, I don't have a criminal record yet, Su Cha replied. For Sin City, they were still newcomers, and their past sins were defaulted to be cleared. Currently, they were as clean as a blank sheet. However, new problems had emerged. Since he was a first time offender and didn't have a criminal record monitoring, how could Su Cha voluntarily turn himself into the death prison? It was a headache. Let's put the matter of the criminal record aside and focus on how to do something bad, Zhuang Qinyan suggested. The others all looked at Su Cha, after all, he was the one going to prison, and he was also the one to commit the bad deed. We'll do our best to send you to jail. Song Ku blinked, wearing a sincere expression. 
Su Cha. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the temperature on the desert surface approached 70 degrees Celsius. This was the hottest time of the day, and the scorching sun in the sky almost made people dizzy. The scorching hot quicksand could cook raw eggs. A group of awakeners was hunting zombies in the oasis camp. The zombies in the desert were noticeably different from those in the city, with slender bodies, dry skin, and visible cracks on the surface, but their movements were exceptionally agile, leaping and jumping like monkeys. The one they had their eyes on, conservatively estimated, was an evolved level 2 zombie. This group fought with the zombies for a full 40 minutes, exhausted and with throats almost smoking, but they were close to succeeding. Suddenly, another group of people jumped out from the side. Robbery. The leading girl held two crescent moon shaped knives, rotating them crosswise, shouting aggressively. Another elusive figure flashed from behind them, surrounded by a ghostly green poisonous mist, charging towards the barely breathing zombie. Swish. The blade flashed, and the zombie let out a miserable scream, falling slowly. In the shattered head, a green crystal faintly sparkled. Before anyone could see clearly, it was instantly snatched by the man. Damn! Daring to steal my crystal, you're tired of living. Watch me chop you all up. After struggling hard for half a day, they were intercepted at the last moment. The awakeners were infuriated and wished they could smash the intruder's heads. You coward, I hate that you're such a coward. A sweet and soft singing voice rang in their ears, and this group of people felt their bones turn soft as if melting, and their mental strength was extinguished in succession, unable to lift their arms. In the shadows, the poisonous mist man used his knives to cleanly topple the people at the scene and leisurely retreated with the crystal. You forgot to shout the slogan. Behind the sand dune, a clear child's voice sounded. The knife-wielding girl also looked at the poisonous mist man and urged, hurry up, shout the slogan. The man frowned, his expression looking extremely strange, and there was a fleeting distortion at the corner of his mouth. In the end, he convinced himself and, with a blank expression, said to the stunned people on the ground, V587, who's the coolest of them all. Silent but cool, I'm called Su Cha, remember my name. After saying that, amidst the shocked gazes of the fallen people, the man hastily retreated like a sandstorm and disappeared without a trace. The group of awakeners stood still for a long time, cursing in a daze, damn, where did this show off come from? Ha ha ha. Lin Yu Yu laughed heartily, tears welling up at the corners of her eyes, completely losing her image as the sweet girl she used to be. She wiped her tears while exclaiming, oh my goodness, who thought of this slogan? It's too refreshing. Song Kub puffed up her cheeks in silence. I I thought of it. Wasn't it quite good? Despite being just a few short sentences, it revealed their team name and the name of the suspect, Su Cha, making it clear who was the wrongdoer. If those people wanted to report a case, they could find the person. Song Ku looked proudly at his companions, but they were all holding back laughter except for Su Cha. As for Su Cha his face was as dark as a boiler. Song Ku felt inexplicably guilty. All right, stop laughing, everyone. Su Cha, do you have any adverse reactions? Zhuang Qinyan said, telling everyone to stop laughing, but his own lips had a faint upward curve. No, Su Cha shook his head. Was robbing allowed? Or perhaps, it couldn't be done in the desert. Let's try it back in the underground city. The group took the elevator back underground, but there was still no abnormality. It seems the degree is not enough. Committing robbery in Sin City doesn't even qualify for a trial. Let's discuss something, Su Cha, usually reserved and quiet, spoke up for the first time, I can cooperate with any experiments you want to try, but can we change the slogan? Well you'll have to ask the captain. Zhuang Qingyan's eyes curved, unreservedly passing the responsibility. Song Ku felt deflated. Chapter, 96 Sent in Hey, did you hear? Hear what? Recently, there's this guy named Su Cha. Oh man, he's truly wicked, doing all sorts of evil deeds deception, robbery, arson, murder. He even captured a child and insulted him. This guy is beyond bad. When he sees a dead body, he'd step on it a couple of times. 
Mias and Gaitas, several teams have been wiped out by him. Impossible, really? Can he take out so many people by himself? Well, not exactly. He operates with a gang. What's their name again? My memory is terrible I can't recall it right now. It's called V587, a voice nearby reminded him. Right, right, V587. They're quite imposing, shouting slogans every time after doing bad things, afraid that others won't remember them. Oh. Cheng Yi, do you also know about these people? Cheng Yi twirled her purple highlighted hair with her finger but remained silent. She thought, not only do I know, I know too well. They were looking to buy information from me yesterday, and I even know who their next target is. The two speaking individuals approached cautiously. Do you have information on them? Share it with us. Cheng Yi tapped her emblem and said, Sure, do you have crystals for exchange? The person asking choked a bit, muttering softly, Stingy, money's all you care about. Cheng Yi shrugged nonchalantly, You guys have really exaggerated the rumors. Child slave. They were together to begin with. And as for the arson and robbery, it was Gaeta losing a level 2 crystal, and in frustration, spreading false information. We don't care if it's true or false. The more sensational, the better. By the way, Cheng Yi, why do I feel like you have a bias towards this V587? Cheng Yi affectionately touched her new crystal bracelet she had strung together in the past few days, with a mysterious smile, just wait and see, there's more drama to come. Desert Camp Song Ku wore a troubled expression, sighing, sigh. Su Xing held his sunburnt face in his hands and sighed along, sigh. Sai Lin Yuyu, infected by them, held her head and let out a long sigh too. The atmosphere was gloomy and filled with despair. It's no wonder they were so disheartened. In these past few days, V587 had gained some notoriety, unfortunately for the wrong reasons. They tried all sorts of methods theft, robbery, intimidation they did all sorts of bad things, but the effect? Zilch. Su Cha was still hanging out with them just fine. Do you think those people have reported the incidents? How come there's not a peep? Song Ku muttered to herself. Every time they committed a crime, they practically wanted to announce their names through a loudspeaker. Could these victims please show some backbone and use the legal weapon to protect themselves? Oh, wait, in Sin City, there seemed to be no such thing as law. Song Ku was getting sunstruck, her gaze unfocused, drifting into wild thoughts. A bottle of cold water was pressed against her face, and Zhuang Qinyan kindly advised, have some water, snap out of it. The provider of the cold water was Su Xing, the mobile fridge of V587. In such scorching conditions, the existence of an ice element awakener was truly a godsend. Su Xing finally got his wish and became the team's mainstay. Now, everyone couldn't do without him. At present, ordinary crimes go unpunished, Zhuang Qinyan summarized, so, only one possibility remains. What possibility? Su Cha leaned against the wall, adjusting his fingerless gloves. Murder, Zhuang Qinyan announced the word heavily. But the people at the elevator weren't captured, Song Ku expressed confusion. The two people at the elevator had a dispute that escalated into a life and death duel. In the rules of Sin City, the winner doesn't have to take responsibility for the other person's death, so it doesn't count as killing, Zhuang Qinyan explained. What we need to do is to legitimately kill someone without a direct conflict. The key is, who do we kill? Lin Yuyu asked. Although criminals roamed the streets here, they weren't indiscriminate killers. They couldn't just randomly pick someone to massacre, right? Louis the Ripper, Zhuang Qinyan said a name. From the intelligence provided by Cheng Yi in the last exchange, this person is active near the trading street. He has a fierce and cruel personality, takes pleasure in torturing the weak, specifically targeting children and single women. After killing the victims, he would mutilate their bodies, hence the nickname. Lin Yuyu and Su Xing listened with furrowed brows, their expressions filled with hatred and disgust. Such scum deserves nothing less than death. Lewis has a significant reputation in the underground, and he's already at level 4. 
If we eliminate him, the death prison will definitely detect it. If this isn't enough to get Su Cha inside, then we might have to consider alternative ideas. Doesn't this count as ridding the people of a menace? Song Ku always felt something was off, it feels like we're doing a good deed. Chuan Qin Yen shook his head, remember, in Sin City, there's no goodness, no good people. Everything we do is to achieve our goals. Song Ku was convinced, eager to get started, all right, let's go. We'll take him down tonight. Lin Yuyu chimed in, let's prepare to give Louis a nightmare. Let's go. Su Xing clenched his small fist, encouraging everyone. Yeah, but Louis is cautious in his actions. We need to discuss how to lure him out. I think there's a person best suited for this task, Zhuang Qinyan smiled faintly, and the corners of his peach blossom eyes curved cunningly. Su Xing, why does this sound so familiar? Late at night, in the alleys behind the trading street. A young boy, dressed in a manner suggesting affluence and about ten years old, roamed the desolate path. Every two steps he took, his shoulders would tremble in fear, and there was a faint quiver in his voice, Woo woo sis, sis, where are you? A cold, eerie wind blew from behind, and the young boy anxiously looked back, finding nothing. He suppressed his urge to cry, wiped away his tears, and ran deeper into the alley. Accidentally stumbling over a stone, he fell with a thud. The boy, at a loss, rubbed his knee, unable to hold back any longer, and burst into loud cries. The crying continued for about ten minutes until a pair of men's feet suddenly appeared in front of him. The boy stopped sobbing and looked up at the newcomer, dumbfounded. Louis, his face scarred all over, squeezed out a strange smile and said, Little boy, are you lost? The young boy was startled, his pupils trembling, and his little legs frantically kicked, trying to retreat. Louis seemed to enjoy seeing the boy's terrified expression, his mouth curling, and his eyes growing more excited. He observed the boy in secret for a long time, making sure there was no one else around. Only then did he reveal himself, unable to contain his excitement. Tonight's delicious snack had arrived. Louis slowly raised his right arm. The boy suddenly noticed that there was no hand on it instead, there was a rapidly spinning cutting blade. Don't be afraid, uncle is here to accompany you. You'll fall asleep soon. Louis raised the deadly weapon high, aiming it at the boy's chest, about to make the cut. Suddenly, the boy flashed the most sickeningly sweet smile at him. Louis's face changed drastically, and his danger radar beeped frantically. He then realized that his legs were frozen. You brat, you're an awakener. Su Xing promptly got up from the ground, looking composed and not at all like before when he was lost and scared. He had cried for almost ten minutes. Louis was quite cautious, never revealing himself. His throat was now dry, and he was irritated, feeling cold and impatient. He had no idea how many times he cursed Louis in his mind. Bleh bleh. Su Xing stuck his tongue out at Louis. You're done for. As soon as he finished speaking, a ghostly figure flashed in the darkness and ruthlessly attacked the immobilized Lewis. Lewis was utterly shocked this person had been hiding so close, yet he hadn't sensed anything. A surge of murderous intent came at him from above, and Lewis, unable to move his lower body, quickly raised his right arm to block. Clang the cutting blade blocked a sharp dagger, and its spinning speed slowly came to a stop. Just as Lewis heaved a sigh of relief, he realized that something was wrong. Dark green rust spots appeared on the blade's edge, spreading rapidly at an astonishing speed, creeping over his arm, mouth, and neck gradually covering his entire face. This was Poison Ability Awakener. Ah! A piercing scream echoed in the alley, heard far into the distance. What's that sound? It sounds a bit like Lewis the Ripper. He wouldn't be slaughtering women and children again, would he? This guy is really bad luck. No why do I feel like it's him screaming? The two speaking individuals exchanged a glance. They were bold and daring, venturing into the alley in the darkness to investigate. On the cold ground, Lewis lay with a ghostly green complexion, his eyes wide open, resembling a poison frog, devoid of life. Inserted into the still-cutting blade on his right arm was a small flag. 
The individuals examining the scene approached for a closer look, and there were some small words written on it, done by V587 Su Cha. Both of them. It's often said that those who do bad deeds should remain nameless, but this Su Cha seemed quite arrogant. Louis the Ripper was dead. Killed by Su Cha from V587. The sensational news quickly spread throughout the entire underground city. Criminals whispered to each other, feeling uneasy. Who exactly was this Su Cha person? Stirring up trouble for several days in a row, unsettling both the desert and the underground. This time, he took down Lewis. What about next time? Will it be their turn? And the V587 team, known for their strange slogans where did they suddenly come from? Their actions were so audacious, showing complete disregard for them. It was infuriating, truly infuriating. Gaeta, what are you up to? Humph, settling scores. Gaeta, who had his level 2 crystal stolen by Su Cha in the desert before, gathered a large group of awakeners who had suffered similar persecution. They decided to confront Su Cha, daring to be so arrogant in Sin City, watch me make him pay. It's still no use. Song Ku rested her chin on the wheelchair, her face full of disappointment. Her semi-long hair fell on Zhuang Qingyan's shoulder. A few strands brushed against his collarbone, creating a ticklish sensation. It had been two days since Su Cha took down Louis the Ripper and he still hadn't been arrested. Couldn't they even catch a murderer? Sin City truly lived up to its name as a paradise for villains. They could practically do as they pleased. In the silence, Fang Jishu suddenly spoke up, why could the man in the hotel that night activate the criminal record? Lin Yuyu said, oh. Yeah, why could he enter the death prison? The few of them pondered seriously at the mention. When it came to murder, the man did indeed commit the act. However, they had confirmed that just killing someone wouldn't allow entry into the death prison. Other than that, if there was something else special, it was. Song Ku blinked, and a light bulb went off in her head, thinking of something. Perhaps Sin City simply didn't care about the life or death of criminals, but if you disrupted the foundation of this city. Bang! The front door was kicked open, and a large group of fierce awakeners stormed in. The people who were originally dining in the restaurant sensed danger and scattered one after another, the faster the better. Even the boss hid. The hall was empty, leaving only Song Ku and her group of six. Gaeta gave them the middle finger, provoking them like mad, Hey, Sue, I'll kill you today. Without another word, the group rushed at them, using both their hands and feet, unleashing their abilities towards V587. Chaos erupted on the scene. Su Cha kicked the person in front of him, and one of the awakeners had legs similar to Lewis, both composed of mechanical cutting blades. He stumbled and fell backward, slipping on the ground. He collided with the nearby running elevator, and the sharp blades sizzled against the door frame, quickly cutting out a small crack. Su Cha's poison mist hovered over it, swiftly corroding into the steel reinforcement in the vacancy. Shu, Shu faint sounds came from inside the elevator cabin. In just a few seconds, the entire door frame collapsed with a loud bang, taking the esper whose foot got caught in with it. The elevator plunged uncontrollably into the depths of the underground. Boom a deafening noise shook the entire Sin City, freezing everyone's actions. Just when Song Ku and the others were uncertain about what was happening, the giant screen above instantly changed direction. Numerous bright artificial light sources automatically focused on Su Cha, blinding him. He could only shield his eyes with his hands. Su Cha was illuminated all over, as if standing at the center of a spotlight, becoming the most conspicuous presence. Snowflakes flickered on the screen, and then, as if the power was cut off, everything turned pitch black, with no imagery. After two seconds, a cold and stern voice echoed throughout the entire city. Criminal Su Cha, you are under arrest. Immediately drop your weapons and surrender. Proceed to the death prison for surrender. I repeat, Criminal Su Cha, you are under arrest. Immediately drop your weapons and surrender. Proceed to the death prison for surrender. I repeat. After repeating the announcement three times, the light disappeared, and the artificial sky vanished, but the danger wasn't lifted. 
hundreds of heavy weapons appeared above their heads, their particle cannons aimed at Su Cha. The light gradually condensed, and if he dared to resist, regardless of the Awakener's level, they would be instantly blasted into pieces. Su Cha dropped the dagger and slowly raised his hands. He glanced back at Song Ku and the others, nodding discreetly to them. Then, step by step, he walked in the direction of the underground sea. Chapter, 97 Who is going this time? There was a significant difference between the elevator to the death prison and the elevator into the city. The elevator into the city appeared silver-white on the surface, with a large and spacious interior and accompanied by crisp prompt sounds. On the other hand, the interior of the death prison elevator was pitch black, resembling the open mouth of a beast. Stepping inside felt cramped and claustrophobic. Under the threat of hundreds of heavy weapons, Su Cha slowly entered the elevator. The oppressive feeling like a thorn in the back finally disappeared. The particle cannon retracted its barrel and disappeared back into the shadows. Artificial light sources and the sky reappeared, and the underground city returned to calm. Su Cha looked inside the elevator at the floor index. There were no buttons on it. A black number slowly appeared, minus one. Suddenly, the elevator cabin plummeted rapidly, and a strong sense of weightlessness hit Su Cha. He quickly stabilized himself. After about ten seconds, at a depth of fifty meters from the sea surface, the elevator arrived at the death prison. The elevator doors slid open slowly, revealing two sturdy fences in front of Su Cha. A man wearing a black uniform and a police cap stood behind the second fence and said to him, Your name is Su Cha. I am your supervisor, Kunbu. Su Cha took a small step forward, but Kunbu immediately stopped him and scolded him sternly, Did I tell you to move? Su Cha stopped moving, remained silent, and slowly clenched his fists. Are you mute? Say yes, sir. Kunbu said coldly. Yes, sir, Su Cha replied with a sour expression but obediently. Kunbu snorted lightly, not entirely satisfied with the expression, but didn't continue to pick at it. Listen carefully, after the first fence opens, turn left to get your tag, then go to the room on the right for inspection. Understand? Su Cha nodded slightly. Understood. Kunbu narrowed his eyes. Did you forget what I just taught you? Su Cha raised his voice. Understood, sir. Go. The fence opened slowly, and Su Cha walked to the left as instructed, covertly observing the surrounding environment. At the end of the road, there was a small window with a countertop holding a tag. Su Cha looked down and saw that the bars on it were all gray, indicating his crime record. Kunbu's voice came through the corner speaker, put on the tag. Su Cha hesitated for a moment, extended his finger, and prepared to pick up the tag. The moment he made contact, he felt an extremely uncomfortable and chilling sensation. The consciousness in his mind was scattered, as if his body and soul had drifted away from him, leaving behind a sense of emptiness in the whole world. This feeling was fleeting Su Cha quickly regained his clarity. However, his mental acuity realized that he was being monitored, not by a camera on the wall, but deep within his consciousness, being fiercely watched by a pervasive and ever-present gaze. As long as he committed another crime, this force would manifest and compel him back to the death prison. No wonder the convicts in the death prison didn't need to wear shackles. From the moment they received their criminal record, they became lifelong prisoners. The power in the criminal record was currently beyond his control. He could only turn back and think of a way to resolve it. Su Cha put on the identification tag and followed Kunbu's instructions, turning right and entering the room in the opposite direction. The structure of this room was somewhat similar to an interrogation room. Kunbu still observed him from behind a barrier, pointing to an empty basin on the ground, the death prison implements zero-entry management, and no personal belongings are allowed. Take off your clothes, all of them, and put them in the basin. Then go into the inner room for a shower and come out for inspection. Remember, you only have five minutes. Su Cha swiftly began to undress his coat, belt, pants, combat boots, the dagger strapped to his calf, the hidden dagger in his shoe, and even the concealed weapon Song Ku had intentionally given him all clattered into the basin. In the end, only his underwear remained. 
Kunbu glanced at him. The man behind the barrier was tall and muscular, with a solid body and no excess fat. When he turned around, the fierce black snake tattoo on the back of his neck gradually revealed itself. Looking further down, the man's back was covered in scars, with hardly a patch of unblemished skin. Some scars were so pronounced that just by looking at them, one could imagine the brutal circumstances at that time. The rainforest Kumbu's eyes flickered, and he thought to himself, seems like a tough one. Su Cha entered the bathroom, cold water pouring over him. He had a brief moment to contemplate. From what he could see so far, the management of the death prison was very primitive, and the way of incarceration was similar to other cities on the surface. Aside from ubiquitous surveillance and the unique underwater location, there were few traces of technology here. The existence of the criminal record was like an astonishing BUG, completely surpassing the overall level. The three-minute cold shower ended, and Su Cha went into the inner room to undergo a machine scan and change into prisoner's clothing. He then returned to the initial room. Finally, the second barrier in front of him opened. Kunbu sat at the desk, opening the recently delivered file box and reviewing his information. What crime did you get in for? It should be damaging public property, Su Cha thought for a moment and said, not entirely sure. Damaging public property? Kunbu quickly flipped through a few pages, second floor confinement, one month sentence, must pay a fine of 130,000 alliance coins before release. Huh, it was personally issued by Warden Shi, what did you destroy to get such a heavy punishment? The city elevator. No wonder that's Warden Shi's money bag. Kunbu put down the documents in his hand, clasping his hands against his chin, looking particularly serious. I don't care about your identity outside, as long as you're in the death prison, you belong to me. I advise you to behave and not cause trouble for me. Understood, Su Cha said, quickly adding, Sir. Kunbu was satisfied with his obedience. Since you're a newcomer, I can give you some guidance. Do you have any questions? Yes, Su Cha nodded, how many floors does the death prison have in total? Why do you want to know this? Kunbu asked. Just curious. Excluding the activity floor between 6th and 7th floors, the death prison has a total of 18 floors. The further down, the longer the sentence. Kunbu disdainfully glanced at him, kid, stow away your curiosity. Believe me, below the 7th floor, even understanding is a form of pain. Why am I on the 2nd floor? Su Cha asked. Kunbu thought he was complaining about the long sentence, and answered unexpectedly detailed, for a regular charge of damaging public property, at most, you'd stay on the first floor for ten days to half a month. But your charge was issued by Warden Shi, and since he suffered a financial loss, he won't let you off easily. Warden Shi. Su Cha recalled the cold voice when he was arrested. Kunbu explained, the death prison is jointly managed by three wardens. Warden Shi is primarily responsible for floors 1 to 6, Warden White for floors 7 to 12, and as for floors 13 to 18 they are under the jurisdiction of Hades. Just as Su Cha was about to speak, Kunbu interrupted him, I advise you not to inquire about Hades's matters. His gaze fell on Su Cha's identification tag, implying something, Hades knows everything. When you know about him, he also knows about you. Any other questions? Kunbu closed the file box, I'll have you taken to your cell. I have another inmate to attend to. Is there any way to shorten the sentence? Su Cha asked. One month was too long. His original plan was to spend a week understanding the internal situation of the death prison, then go out and meet up with Song Ku and the others. Kunbu smiled, you're quite experienced. Yes, the sentence can be offset through labor, with a maximum of eight hours per day. If you work actively, you can probably reduce it by half. Su Cha asked what kind of labor? Kunbu's smile became intriguing. A new drug test subject in the laboratory, a sandbag in the black boxing training hall, a sand filler in the undersea tunnel, and a dust collector in the mechanical room. Let's see how long you can endure. Which type of death are you inclined towards? Su Cha. Guided by Kunbu, Su Cha arrived at the second floor. As soon as the elevator door opened, 
countless pairs of gloomy eyes immediately turned towards them some were inmates, and others were patrolling prison guards. The entire second floor resembled a massive assembly line factory. Just looking at the space, it was even wider than the trading street, with a large number of prisoners laboring at each station. At 6 a.m. Every day, the labor list is updated. Sign up first, then go to the designated location to swipe your ID badge for entry, Kunbu explained as they walked. You must reach the labor point before the countdown ends don't wander around on the way. We're here, go in, Kunbu stopped in front of a cell, unlocked the door, and pushed Su Cha in. Behave yourself and strive to get out as soon as possible. The next day at 5.50 a.m. Su Cha opened his eyes on time. He got off the narrow single bed and waited quietly at the door of the cell. Exactly at 6 a.m. The labor list was updated. Su Cha quickly selected Boxing Companion, or commonly known as the Sandbag. The cell door automatically opened, and Su Cha headed to the Black Boxing Training Area, memorizing the route along the way. Once there, he put on his gloves and began eight hours of labor. The labor was quite simple, getting punched. Su Cha had his hands up in front of his face, defending diligently, keeping an eye on the surroundings. His mind was elsewhere. The boxer across from him kept missing, growing increasingly frustrated and resorting to all sorts of underhanded moves. Su Cha grew annoyed and retaliated with a punch. The boxer was hit on the bridge of the nose, flying backward and crashing onto the ground, instantly unconscious. The noise around them quieted down. A guard rushed over and yelled at Su Cha, What are you doing? Trying to fight? Su Cha tried to explain, No, officer. I assigned you to be a sandbag, not to hit people. Go back. Today's labor time is null and void. He reluctantly took off his boxing gloves and turned to leave. The look of frustration vanished in an instant as he walked out of the gym. Su Cha's eyes were calm as he silently slipped into the shadows. The various cells on the second floor were well organized, with clear division of labor on the assembly line, and there was no sign of any anomaly for the time being. Suddenly, a dark red elevator in the corner caught his attention. Su Cha's expression changed slightly. Was this an elevator for the internal floors of the death prison? He stealthily made his way toward the target. The elevator doors were tightly closed, and the badge couldn't swipe it open. Su Cha was contemplating when footsteps approached from behind. He rolled on the ground and concealed himself in the darkness. Two prison guards were escorting a disheveled inmate. One of them seemed to be the inmate's supervisor and was scolding him, Look at you. You're about to be released in less than half a month, and you're causing trouble at this critical juncture. Now you've been assigned to the fourth floor for a whole five years. Take your time to endure it. The guard showed an adapter on his wrist, pressed it against the elevator, and the elevator slowly started moving, making the three figures disappear. Su Cha furrowed his brow in the darkness. It seemed that the internal elevator could only be opened with the guard's authorization. However, in the death prison, accumulating offenses allowed one to go to deeper floors that was some new intel. The second day, the third day, Su Cha diligently participated in the labor reform. When he returned to the cell at night, he used a nail file obtained from the gym to draw a map on the wall. The three-dimensional map in his mind became clearer, he was on the second floor, which had a total of 12,000 cells. It was said that the first floor had over 20,000 cells. Based on this estimation, the total number of prisoners in the entire death prison exceeded 100,000. Floors 1 to 6 were considered the light crime zone, 7 to 12 were the medium crime zone, and there was an open activity area between levels 6 and 7 for recreational activities. As for below the 12th floor, there was currently no available information. Su Cha carefully recalled and documented every detail, then smoothed the wall with the nail file. The scope of the death prison was even larger than he had anticipated, many times larger, making it incredibly challenging to find someone inside. He didn't know where that person, Lu Xiaoyu, was being held. Judging by Zhuang Qingyan's description of his offenses, he was likely below the seventh floor. Eight days later, Su Cha was released. Kunbu handed back his clothes at the elevator entrance. 
Make a fresh start when you go out. Don't come back in. Su Cha said in a low voice, Sir, I have one more question. During this time, Su Cha had behaved himself, and Kun Bo found him more pleasing than when he first arrived, so he casually answered, What's the question? How long have you been here as a supervisor? Seven years. Seven years. Enough time for the outside world to undergo drastic changes, such as the apocalypse, the appearance of zombies, the collapse of cities. Yet, the death prison seemed like a still pool with no ripples, unchanging except for the constant influx and outflow of prisoners. So, do you remember the names of all the inmates you've come into contact with? Who would bother remembering such things? Kunbu said nonchalantly. If you can't recall, just check the records. Su Cha nodded. No need. Sir, see you next time. He stepped into the elevator. Kunbu stood still for two seconds, then suddenly realized, Kid, what do you mean by see you next time? See what? The pure black elevator rose slowly, and Su Cha recalled the information he had gathered over the past few days. Ding! After reaching sea level, he stepped out. By the seaside, five people of varying heights were waiting for him. Zhuang Qinyan and Fang Zhishu were talking and looked up at him. Lin Yuyu and Su Xing were arguing, dissatisfied, discussing who kicked the blanket last night. Standing on the raised platform, Song Kun noticed him and waved, Hey, we're here to pick you up after your release. Ichem. Su Cha, who hadn't spoken much in the past eight days, cleared his throat, feeling the darkness of the death prison slowly receding from him. He had a tracker from Song Ku in his clothes they could track his location, which wasn't surprising. Are you hurt? Lin Yuyu asked worriedly. No, Su Cha shook his head, let's talk at the hotel. Back at the hotel, after cautiously inspecting the room, Su Cha's first words were, there's something we've all misunderstood. The true Sin City is the death prison beneath the ocean. Only those who had been in the death prison knew that those who were released were people who had committed relatively minor crimes. As for those merciless demons with no chance of pardon, they would only fall layer by layer, endlessly plummeting. Su Cha recounted his experiences from the past few days to Song Ku and the others, then drew a map of the second floor and the activity area from memory. Truly an intelligence expert, he pieced together the fragmented clues, gradually unveiling the mysterious veil of the death prison. Zhuang Qinyan analyzed, from the two maps, the activity area is nearly one-third smaller in size than the second floor. The death prison should be an inverted cone. Lin Yuyu exclaimed, are you saying the death prison has three wardens, each in charge of different monitoring levels? We have to undress to enter. Su Xing was puzzled. I suggest we don't waste time in the underground city, Su Cha suddenly spoke amidst the chatter and discussion. We should all enter the death prison. Chapter, 98 Of course together. We should all enter the death prison. Su Cha usually didn't like to talk, but unexpectedly, he scared everyone as soon as he spoke. Song Ku's eyes widened, taking in a breath, you, haven't had enough of being in jail, and you want to drag us along with you? The others looked at him with various expressions. Su Cha hesitated, no. I actually think it's a good idea. In the quiet atmosphere, Zhuang Qinyan lightly tapped the wheelchair with his fingers and analyzed calmly, these days we've been gathering intelligence in the underground city, to be honest, we haven't made any progress. Song Ku thought about it carefully and realized it was true. Since we've confirmed the person is in the death prison, it might be better to go in and look for them earlier. Perhaps there's a better chance. I have objections, Fang Zhishu unexpectedly spoke, raising his tired eyes slightly, perhaps my thoughts are more pessimistic. If everyone goes in and there's no support outside, what if things don't go as planned and we can't come out? Aren't you still going to participate in the throne race? Can you ensure finding the person and safely leaving the death prison before that? Don't end up with nothing at both ends. Though Fang Zhishu's words were harsh, they were very realistic. If they entered the death prison at this time, they didn't know how long they would stay inside, and it was very likely they would miss the next round of the throne race. For Song Ku, Zhuang Qinyan, Su Xing, and Fang Zhishu, participating in the competition was not so urgent, but for Lin Yuyu. 
she had always wanted the opportunity to make a wish to Ilya. Lin Yuyu knew they were waiting for her answer. She was torn inside, as if standing at a fork in the road. She had always thought that the throne race was the only hope to heal her loved one, so she tried her best to fight for the slim chance. But now, things had taken a turn. Fong Jishu was an A-level healing type awakener. Should she continue to pursue elusive promises, or seize the opportunity right in front of her? Although Lin Yuyu debuted with a sweet image, her true character was decisive. She gritted her teeth and confirmed, Hey, Fong Jishu, we'll kill the person you want us to kill, and you promise to help us heal, right? Fong Jishu stood up and solemnly nodded at them, saying, As long as I can fulfill the obsession of this lifetime, I will do my utmost. Whether it was Zhuang Qingyan's legs or Lin Yuyu's bedridden loved one who had been suffering for a long time, healing couldn't be achieved solely through abilities. The best solution was for them to return to Tongwan, where they would have the support of top medical resources, and undergo surgery with Fang Jishu as the lead surgeon. Lin Yuyu bit her lip and nodded slowly, saying, All right, I'll give it a try. Isn't it just going to jail? Just the 18th floor. Our purpose in coming to Sin City is to rescue people, and we absolutely cannot return empty-handed. Even if we have to dig three feet into the ground at death prison, we must find that guy with that surname Lu. Lin Yuyu was resolute, shouting her slogan passionately, eager to charge into death prison. Song Ku looked stunned, gaping at her. No matter how many times she had witnessed it, she still wasn't used to it a celebrity's image was truly fake. Zhuang Qinyan leisurely extended her hand and helped her close her jaw, which had dropped in shock. Now that we are in agreement, let's discuss how to get in, Su Cha said, pulling up a floor plan on a screen. He pointed a finger up one level, saying, I suggest going directly to the fifth or sixth floor. The sixth floor and above fall under the jurisdiction of the same warden. We have confirmed that destroying public property will lead to arrest and imprisonment the remaining issue is the length of the sentence. The sentence on the fourth floor starts at five years. As the adults gathered around to study the floor plan, Song Ku's hem was tugged. She turned around and found a distressed Su Xing with a small, pained face. Sister, I I don't want to go. Since officially joining V587, Su Xing had always been Song Ku's little follower. Every time she had to do something, Su Xing would cheerfully shout Kagogo. This was the first time he had voluntarily expressed a desire not to do something. What's wrong? Song Ku valued his opinion greatly, crouching down to meet his gaze and asking seriously. Su Xing fidgeted with his clothes, hesitated for a long time, and then mumbled very softly, have to undress, completely, little elephant. The little boy was in the midst of puberty, and his self-esteem was extremely fragile. Song Ku exclaimed, Huh. She was still pondering what little elephant meant when Zhuang Qinyan turned around expressionless and said, No need to strip naked, you can keep your underwear. Indeed, men understood men the best, even though Su Xing wasn't quite a man yet. Su Xing blinked his big eyes, and he said oh belatedly, and the frustration on his face was wiped away. Then he said happily, it's okay, sister you continue with your discussion. Song Ku exclaimed, ah. The trading street was brightly lit, bustling with people. Cheng Yi was loudly discussing business with someone when a group of people approached from a distance. The young girl at the front waved at him and shouted joyfully, Cheng Yi. We've come. Cheng Yi looked left and right, behaving like a thief, and quickly ran over to cover the girl's mouth, leading them to a nearby deep alley. Shu. Sure. Keep it down. Do you know how much trouble you're attracting? I'm just here for business, not to get involved in your affairs, she warned. Woo woo. Song Ku grumbled. Cheng Yi released her hand and casually twirled her long purple highlighted hair with her finger. What do you want with me? Same rule applies no crystal, no deal. Mysteriously, Song Ku took out a green crystal, one they had snatched from Geta in the desert. Cheng Yi paused her hair-twirling gesture, revealing a longing expression. Wherever Song Ku's hand moved, her gaze followed, fixated on the crystal. Business, do we have a deal? Song Ku asked. Deal, deal, deal. Of course, let's do it. It seems like a big deal. 
He he, he he he, Cheng Yi exclaimed excitedly, rubbing her hands. Do you know what kind of crime would land you a minimum of ten years in prison? Song Ku asked seriously. Ha! Huh. Cheng Yi doubted if she heard correctly. What are you saying? Prison. And starting from ten years. Are you guys all right in the head? Her gaze swept across the six people, noticing Su Cha and the badge on his shoulder. Cheng Yi suddenly understood and pointed at him, aggrieved. Didn't you just go in for a whirl? How come, addicted to prison already? Still trying to fool your companions to join you. I have to say, you're really morally deficient. Su Cha, there was no way to argue. Song Ku smiled lightly. It's not about him we're going there on our own. Cheng Yi couldn't quite comprehend. Why were there people eager to go to prison? But regardless of what they were thinking, turning down business opportunities would be foolish. She lowered her voice conspiratorially. You want to all go in? Not impossible. Just have to create a bit of a commotion to get out. Do you know there are three wardens in the death prison? Song Ku nodded Su Cha had already informed them of this information. Here's something you probably don't know. A warden surname she loves money more than life. He stays in death prison all year round but still finds ways to amass wealth. Warden White is stern and violent, readily resorting to whipping and punishment. In his hands, the prisoners' lives are worse than death. Cheng Yi licked her lips, maliciously speaking ill of the wardens. But I suggest you start with Warden Shi after all, you have a criminal record. If you handle it well, not just ten years, even twenty or thirty years won't be a problem. I guarantee you'll enjoy your stay. Song Ku responded with an understanding hmm and suddenly realized something was off. Although there were three wardens in the death prison, Cheng Yi had almost ignored the one named Hades without much thought, and the topic was deliberately ended. She exchanged a glance with Zhuang Qinyan and saw him shaking his head slowly. Song Ku understood without further probing and skipped over this matter. Cheng Yi leaned out and looked around the mouth of the alley for a long time, making sure no one was eavesdropping. Then she smiled darkly. I know where Warden Shi's lifeblood is. Chapter, 99 Of course together. Song Ku and the others were led to a splendid building that was not yet open. Beside an exquisite signboard, there was a line of small characters written in decorative script. Rose Auction House, Zhuang Qinyan read the name in a low voice. Cheng Yi sneered, crossing her arms the name seems quite fragrant, doesn't it? Unfortunately, what goes on inside is nothing but the dirty business of human trafficking half-fish people, zombies, fierce beasts, foreign slaves, and kidnapped young boys and girls. Life here is the lowest of commodities. As long as you're willing, you can buy all sorts of bizarre goods. This is the most important money bag for Warden Shi. After saying this, there wasn't any particular reaction from Song Ku and the others. Instead, they huddled together and whispered, seeming to have some disagreement. Cheng Yi tapped her fingers on her arm, waiting for a full ten minutes, but the people on the other side didn't come up with a decision. A hint of imperceptible impatience flashed in her eyes. Just as Cheng Yi was getting impatient, Zhuang Qinyan stepped forward from the crowd, smiling meaningfully at her. Manager Cheng, we want to enter the death prison, and there are other ways we can explore. But using us so blatantly, you've got quite a scheme going. Yeah, now that she was found out anyway, Cheng Yi admitted openly, I do have ulterior motives. I've been fed up with this place for a long time. But I'm a businesswoman, and businessmen are fundamentally profit-driven. I haven't deceived you. The Rose Auction House is indeed the lifeblood of Warden Shi. As long as you destroy it, none of you can escape, and you will all be thrown into the death prison. This cunning merchant had finally exposed a flaw, and Zhuang Qinyan being Zhuang Qinyan, how could he easily let this opportunity pass, taking advantage of the situation to drive a hard bargain? Since Manager Cheng wants us to work for you, can you show some sincerity first? This kind of place, TSK TSK, it's not easy to handle. Zhuang Qinyan was calm and composed, while Cheng Yi appeared conflicted. The negotiation roles reversed, and they remained in a stalemate for a while. 
In the end, Cheng Yi gritted her teeth and said reluctantly, Fine, I will only charge you for the information and send you in for free. But let's make it clear, if the operation fails, you absolutely cannot implicate me. Anyway, I won't acknowledge it. At 10 o'clock in the evening, it was the most bustling time in the underground city. Cheng Yi, dressed in a sequin suit, walked into the Rose Auction House with a handsome man, his hair tied in a bun at the back of his head. The security guards at the entrance stopped the two of them, asking for an invitation. Cheng Yi took out a black card with gold embossing from her wallet and handed it to the security guard. After careful verification, the security guard looked up in confusion. Miss Li, there's only your name on it. Cheng Yi moved her finger slightly, and a delicate auction paddle with the number 38 appeared. Participants in the auction could bring one companion, as per the rules of the Rose Auction House. The security guard didn't inquire further and immediately allowed them to pass. Once inside the venue, Cheng Yi lowered her voice and asked, Have your people all entered? Fang Jishu, with drooping eyelids, said nonchalantly, No need to worry. They should not fail. Cheng Yi managed to obtain two invitations one for Zhuang Qinyan and the other for herself. She brought Fang Jishu in, stating that, in her opinion, Fang Jishu was the only man among them who appeared relatively normal. After all, the others. One was a disabled person in a wheelchair who always had a cunning smile, one was a violent and icy guy, and then there was a little radish head they were just too conspicuous, not at all low-key. The two found their seats, and Fang Jishu observed the surroundings. The furnishings here were ordinary. Apart from the crimson auction stage in front and the huge screen occupying one entire wall, the rest of the place looked like an ordinary auction venue. There were no visible signs of the illicit human trafficking activities being conducted in the background, indicating that the owners were quite cautious. Shortly after Cheng Yi and Fang Jishu entered, two more people arrived at the entrance of the Rose Auction House. A boy of about ten, dressed in a small suit with a neat tie, pushed a silver-white wheelchair forward. A languid man reclined in the wheelchair. When they approached, the man held the invitation between his slender fingers and handed it to the security guard casually. The security guard glanced down and recognized Mr. Vyacheslavsky. He was indeed a distinguished bidder. The guard nodded respectfully and without further ado, prepared to allow them inside. As they passed, another security guard hesitated, unsure whether to stop the boy pushing the wheelchair. Mr. Vyacheslavsky gave him a casual glance, his fingertip brushing over the blanket on his leg. This child is attending to me. The security guard, having worked here for a while, knew exactly what kind of activities were taking place inside. When he heard the word attending, he immediately understood and quickly nodded. Yes, of course, Mr. Vyacheslavsky, please come in. Out of the security guard's line of sight, Su Xing released his hands from the wheelchair and instantly jumped in front of Zhuang Qinyan, gritting his teeth and shouting, You're treating me like a SLVE. Zhuang Qinyan said calmly, Be quiet. Do you want the whole place to know we're here to cause trouble? Be careful not to ruin the plan. Your sister won't forgive you. Su Xing quickly covered his mouth, staring at him angrily. Zhuang Qinyan beckoned to him. Come here, and push me along, little SLV. At the rear entrance of the Rose Auction House, there was a food transport passage. After the sentry finished checking, the rolling shutter door opened automatically, and a white food cart slowly entered the venue. Lin Yuyu and Song Ku were dressed in white waiter uniforms, blending in with the crowd and moving forward. You two, stop. The captain of the food delivery team suddenly stopped them. Song Ku's footsteps halted, her right hand subtly moving towards her uniform pocket. You're here to deliver vegetarian meals. You need to go to the other side don't get it wrong. Okay, Lin Yuyu said, lowering her head and nodding obediently. Song Ku breathed a sigh of relief and put her right hand back by her side. She and Lin Yuyu exchanged a glance, and Lin Yuyu playfully winked at her. The two of them quickly disappeared into the passage. At eleven o'clock in the evening, the auction officially began. An auctioneer with slick back, shiny hair stepped onto the stage gracefully. Good evening, esteemed guests. Welcome to the 278th Specialized Auction at Rose Auction House. 
I am Alan, a registered auctioneer of the Alliance. All the items for tonight's auction can be viewed in the catalog next to you. Without further ado, let's begin the bidding. Alan clapped his hands, and the backstage staff immediately wheeled in a massive iron cage. The first item tonight to make its appearance, Pure White Grace, sourced from District C-75, features six innocent and pure teenage girls. I can almost smell the fragrant scent they exude, Alan said, his expression intoxicated as he sniffed the air. Only available for bundled sale, starting bid at 50,000 alliance coins. The curtain was raised, and the girls inside the iron cage were suddenly exposed to the light, trembling in fear and huddling together. Scum, Lin Yu Yu cursed from behind the curtain. She looked up, and Song Ku had successfully climbed to the top steel beam, signaling her to get ready. Lin Yu Yu scanned the seating area, quickly finding Fang Zhishu and Cheng Yi, Zhuang Qinyan and Su Xing, and signaled back to Song Ku that the four people were in position. Now they were just waiting for Su Cha. Pure White Grace was eventually sold for 350,000 alliance coins. However, as a display, the sold item would remain temporarily in the venue and would be handed over to the buyer after the auction ended. Alan energetically introduced the second item, next up, we have quite a behemoth. Attention to all pet lovers. The closed compartment covered with black cloth was wheeled in, and Alan vividly explained, straight from District F-180, we have the deep crimson sand scorpion. Everyone, please take a look. He tore off the curtain, gradually revealing the monstrous creature inside the scorpion, with a length exceeding two meters. Entirely golden in color like a spider, was trapped in a transparent container, its sharp stingers banging against the walls. This is not an ordinary scorpion but a one-of-a-kind mutant scorpion. Everyone, please carefully observe its golden eyes. This unique pet will make you stand out wherever you go. As a gesture of goodwill, we will give the buyer a strong electric shock device, ensuring that it behaves obediently, transforming into a little sheep Alan imitated the posture of a scorpion, exaggeratingly twisting his body. Laughter intermittently emerged from the buyer's seats. Bang! The mutant sand scorpion hit the wall again. Alan glanced at it nonchalantly and turned his head to continue shouting, Starting bid is 300,000 alliance coins, with increments of no less than 10,000 each. I bid 310,000. I'll offer 330,000. I'll take it for 350,000. The mutant sand scorpion was eventually auctioned for a staggering 560,000 alliance coins and, like the six girls, was pushed to the display area to wait. Now, for the upcoming item, Exotic Allure, this is a rare sight once in a century, Alan said with a suggestive expression. Without further ado, let's first look at the actual item, and then I'll introduce it to everyone slowly. The black iron cage was once again pushed onto the stage, and a slender young man appeared in the center of the stage. He was extremely beautiful, with damp black hair clinging gently to his ears. His pupils were amber like honey. The upper half of his body was so white that it seemed to glow, but from the waist down, it was surprisingly a dark green, coiled snake tail. Alan's voice was unusually excited, the third item, coming from ULAB Laboratory, is the mutant snake-tailed youth. Song Ku, hanging on the beam, suddenly looked down. In the buyer's seats, Chuang Qinyan also frowned slowly. ULAB Laboratories had branches across various districts in the Alliance, not just the one near Tongwan. The Tongwan branch primarily focused on genetic research, while this snake-tailed youth clearly originated from ULAB's division specialized in human research. The snake-tailed youth held onto the railing with both hands, his clear eyes gazing outward, seemingly puzzled about his situation, innocently tilting his head. His action stirred the crowd, igniting an unprecedented wave of bids. Alan could only shout, starting bid at 1 million alliance coins, with increments of no less than 30,000. The auction paddles kept going up in quick succession, and Alan was busy confirming the bids, temporarily forgetting about the item. The snake-tailed youth curiously looked around, catching sight of Song Ku, who was hanging on the beam. Their gazes met, and his pupils suddenly shrank by a fraction. Song Ku. Oh no, why was she so unlucky? She quickly made a shush gesture toward him, disregarding whether the mutant could understand her or not. 
Fortunately, the snake-tailed youth didn't yell. He flicked his tail lightly and nodded with a mixture of belief and doubt. Song Ku breathed a sigh of relief, silently praying, Su Cha, Su Cha, please hurry up and create some distraction. We're counting on you. Five minutes later, a wisp of green mist subtly wafted in through the ventilation of the auction venue and quickly dissipated in the air. Song Ku keenly caught a fleeting use of special ability, recognizing it as Su Cha. He was in position. Song Ku signaled to Lin Yu Yu behind the curtain, and Lin Yu Yu nodded. Three million. Any more bids? Three million once, three million twice, three million. Alan was red faced, and the hammer was about to fall in his hand. Suddenly, the power in the auction venue was cut off, plunging it into complete darkness. Yes. Song Ku silently celebrated. Following the first step of the plan, Su Cha had cut off the main power. Buyers looked bewildered, whispering to each other, thinking this was some surprise event arranged by the auction. Alongside their ears came the haunting and sorrowful song, Why do you always leave me alone in the deep night I can't control this longing, searching for you. The mesmerizing song filled the ears of the crowd, gradually clouding their consciousness, making them leave their seats and wander aimlessly. Silent and unnoticed, a frost spread over their feet, slowing their movement, preventing anyone from taking advantage and escaping. Boom! A deafening noise came from above as a girl wielding a massive silver axe was smashing the ceiling, swinging her arms for another blow. Boom! The ground seemed to tremble, and the entire auction house felt like it was on the verge of collapse. Amidst the chaos, someone shouted in panic, Run! The items are out! Nonsense, how is that possible? Alan immediately protested. It was true. In the dark of the night, ghostly figures appeared at the display area, opening each cage. The six girls ran out in a panic. Lin Yu Yu pointed them in the direction of the exit. They hurriedly thanked her and helped each other make their way towards the main door. The mutant sand scorpion also escaped and wreaked havoc inside, flames of bright yellow erupting everywhere. The snake-tailed youth moved playfully, seemingly amused. He coiled his long tail around a person and casually tossed them away. Ah! Alan let out a miserable cry as the massive tail flung him towards broken steel rods, impaling him. Ha! Ah. The snake-tailed youth laughed joyfully. Song Ku and Su Cha seized the opportunity and wreaked havoc in the auction house. Their goal was not to kill but to wreck the place. As long as they tore it down quickly and mercilessly, the death prison would surely monitor it and come to arrest them. As expected, just two minutes later, hundreds of particle cannons were aimed at the heavily damaged Rose Auction House. Warden Shi's chilling voice came through the speakers, sounding angry and cold. Everyone inside the auction house, you're all under arrest. Drop your weapons immediately and go to the death prison to surrender now. I repeat. They did it. Song Ku was satisfied. Now the death prison would become very lively. Chapter, 100 The days are becoming more and more harsh. Name I'm asking you, don't look around. What's your name? The stern-faced female prison guard slammed her hand on the table, startling the girl in the prisoner's uniform. Song Ku Age 19 years old in the closed interrogation room, only a dim ceiling light was on. The prison guard, behind the bars, typed the name into the computer connected to the file room, pressed search, and found no information about Song Ku. What's your identification number? Report it. I don't does the Awakener certificate count? The prison guard lifted her head from the computer and sneered, we don't care about that here. Whether you have abilities or not, coming in here is the same. Anyone who entered the death prison, tagged with the crime record, was like wearing an invisible shackle. True freedom was never possible. So what if you are an awakener? Dare to act recklessly in the death prison, and you would instantly become a mindless walking corpse. The prison guard asked again, no identification, are you a black household? From District F. Song Ku admitted honestly, F-177 District. The guard halted the search, opened a new file, and began inputting information. 
Can you tell me how many years I'll be sentenced for? Song Ku asked tentatively as she watched the guard type. The guard spared her a sympathetic glance, you are suspected of intentional destruction of property, with a heinous circumstance and a serious nature. According to Warden Shi's orders, you will be confined to the fifth floor for a sentence of 19 years and 7 months, and you must pay a fine of 1 billion alliance coins. Song Ku gasped. 19 years and 7 months. That's older than her. The days were truly becoming more and more harsh. And one billion alliance credits. One billion. Was this a number that could be thrown around casually? Even if she spent her whole sentence, she wouldn't be able to come up with that much money. It seemed she had truly angered the guy surnamed she this time, and they had no intention of letting her go. What about the others with me? You still care about others? I advise you to reflect on yourself while you're in here, try to live a couple more years. The guard finished inputting her file, clicked upload, and stood up from behind the desk, saying, follow me to the cell. Get in. On the fifth floor of the death prison, Song Ku was pushed into a narrow cell. She looked around, and the surveillance above followed her. Apart from the single bed connected to the floor, the simple wash basin and toilet, there was nothing inside. Song Ku looked around curiously, walked to the door, and submitted her activity request for the next day on the screen. Then she lay back on the bed, adopting the carefree attitude of going with the flow. She closed her eyes, stretched her legs, and fell asleep. Without any fear. When Su Cha regained consciousness, he found himself in the familiar interrogation room. Kunbu sat across from him, glaring at him with frustration. Awake now. You, lad, are you serious? You've only been out for a few days, and here you are again. No wonder you said see you next time, to me. Do you think this place is a hotel that you can visit whenever you please? His head felt like it had been hit by a sledgehammer, and a cold, numb pain reverberated inside. Kunbu's voice seemed distant and muffled, making it almost impossible to hear what he was saying. Su Cha slowly regained composure, and his vision gradually focused. The chaotic and bewildering sensation finally subsided. Criminal record is this the coded syndrome it can produce? It's terrifying. At the time of the Rose Auction House incident, all of V587 were arrested, and the others, being newcomers, were coerced into surrendering by force. However, among the buyers on site were also individuals who had completed their sentences, including Su Cha. Regardless of the number of bars displayed by the criminal record before this, they all collectively lost consciousness in that moment and staggered back to the death prison like zombies. Su Cha's memory only remained up to when the voice with the surname she sounded. He didn't remember anything afterward. Seeing Su Cha silent, Kun Bu thought he felt remorse. But now, it was too late for anything. He sighed deeply with a heavy heart. Adding crime upon crime, this time you've been sent to the sixth floor, a sentence of forty years, mandatory labor, and no possibility of reduction. I wonder if you can endure this. The cells on the sixth floor were even more cramped, resembling solitary confinement rooms there wasn't even a bed inside, and given Su Cha's height, he could only crouch and turning around was difficult. He activated the light screen at the door, but the labor option was crossed out and turned into an unselectable gray. Fortunately, he could still apply for activities, but the conditions were more stringent, limited to once a month. Su Cha submitted his activity request for the next day. On the second day, when the activity time arrived, Song Ku lined up in the corridor. All the inmates who had submitted applications were taken to the mezzanine by the prison guards. She was looking forward to it, taking quick small steps. Inadvertently, she stepped on the heel of the inmate in front. The startled inmates slowly turned around, wearing an angry expression and clenching their fists, saying, Be more careful. Avoid trouble, avoid trouble, nineteen years and seven months, Song Ku silently recited her sentence in her mind. Then she took a step back, bowed her head, and gestured with exaggerated hospitality, saying, Please, please. The prison guard was nearby, and the inmate scowled at her timid appearance, making a disdainful sound and walked past with an indifferent gait. Song Ku breathed a sigh of relief. In the quiet reading room, Song Ku walked briskly. 
As she passed a handsome man sitting in a wheelchair reading a newspaper, she silently slipped a kunai into his collar. Continuing forward, she pushed the door into the coffee shop. A woman with long curly hair was waiting in line for coffee. Song Ko stood behind her, and their fingertips touched lightly, and another kunai was discreetly handed over. Song Ko casually found a table and sat down. The slender man across from her was focused on building blocks. Song Ko looked elsewhere, placing the kunai at the edge of the table. When the man picked up the blocks, he naturally picked up the kunai. The two faced each other without any communication. Shortly after, the man in the wheelchair, the woman with long hair, and the boy who came in happily holding the prison guard's hand all coincidentally sat at the same table. The activity time was only a short hour, and one person was missing. Ten more minutes passed, and a young man with a crew cut slowly entered through the door and silently sat at the neighboring table. Everyone was here. v 587s six members reunited in the death prison. This was the plan they had agreed upon before coming in. They would gather intelligence and arrange the next steps during the one-hour activity time. Using the act of drinking coffee as a cover, Song Ku whispered, I'm on the fifth floor, where are you guys? I'm on the first floor, Su Xing whispered back. The third floor, Lin Yu Yu said, sipping her coffee. Neither of them took direct action. Su Xing even discreetly used frost magic. Being considered suspects involved in a case along with Cheng Yi and others, they received relatively lenient sentences. Lin Yu Yu was mainly sentenced to the third floor for impersonating a food delivery person. Fang Jishu signaled four with the building blocks. Zhuang Qinyan folded the newspaper, revealing the number four as well. They both had forged identities and deliberately infiltrated the auction house, intentionally causing a disturbance to the scene. Hence, they received slightly heavier sentences. As Song Ku listened, she discreetly handed a kunai to Su Xing. All their communication devices had been confiscated, and they had no contact devices on them. These kunai were materialized by Song Ku using objects she had in the cell, carefully crafted without being seen by surveillance. Her spiritual artifact could track them using mental power, functioning as a tracking device to ensure they wouldn't lose each other. Sixth floor, Su Cha said lastly. He was the one sentenced the most severely among the six. The others showed expressions of sympathy, saying things like, I feel for you, that's so unfortunate, and light a candle for you. Song Ko made a subtle movement with her fingertips, and the kanai flew out. Su Cha effortlessly caught it and held it in his palm. I roughly calculated just now, there are about 3,000 cells on the sixth floor, Su Cha said unperturbed, as if he hadn't seen their various colorful expressions, and delivered the bad news that they could only move once a month. Zhuang Qinyan's gaze fell on the newspaper, and she spoke lightly, since we are on different floors, we can conveniently split up to search for people. There are still seven days left this month let's collect and summarize the information. Apart from the two floors that Su Cha had previously investigated and the monitoring layer controlled by someone with the surname Shi, they had their people on almost every floor. Considering that Su Cha would find it difficult to come out frequently and frequent meetings might attract the attention of the prison guards. Zhuang Qinyan decided to set the second gathering time for early next month, giving them seven days, which should be enough for them to get a rough idea. All right, they all nodded. While they were talking, they heard a commotion from behind. Two inmates bumped into each other, causing one of them to spill hot coffee all over the floor. You spilled my coffee. The bumped inmate stared at the spilled coffee on the ground and spoke rapidly. The one who caused the collision sneered, so what if I spilled it? If you really want to drink it, hurry up and lick it off the floor while it's still hot. The person suddenly raised his head and repeated, you spilled my coffee. He shouted loudly, and everyone in the coffee shop heard him. How did he provoke Jorik? A prisoner behind Song Ku whispered. Who's that? Crazy Jorik, got shocked too many times. The circuits in his head don't work well, the speaker pointed to his own head. He can only come out once a month, like clockwork, to have a cup of coffee. Although the activity floor was meant for leisure and entertainment, there were strict rules. It wasn't for the inmates to enjoy life. For example, 
the drinks in the coffee shop were limited to a small cup per person each time. If they missed it this time, they would have to wait for the next activity day. Listening to the conversation between the two, this Jorik seemed to be locked up on the sixth floor as well. This time, he missed his coffee and would have to wait another month. Jorik didn't look very old, with fair skin and a pampered appearance. He stared at the blistering on his hand, muttering softly, You spilled my coffee. After saying these words, Jorik suddenly exploded. He mounted the person who bumped into him, raised his fist high, his veins swelling, and his mental force bursting forth. In the presence of everyone, Jorik's smooth arms were covered in dense fur, sharp fangs grew in his mouth, and he instantly transformed into a half-wolf creature. He then pummeled the person's face with punches, blood splattering everywhere. Broken teeth and shattered bones flew out continuously. In just a few minutes, the arrogant inmate had no chance to fight back and was beaten to death on the spot. Jorik continued to punch, repeatedly saying the word coffee in his mouth, pounding the other person's skull, leaving it concave. Shape-shifting ability, Zhuang Qinyan murmured. A sharp whistle sounded from the speaker. Suddenly, Jorik's criminal record displayed five bars. He rolled on the ground in pain, clutching his head. All the inmates in the coffee shop were affected by the arm band, experiencing dizziness, palpitations, and other discomfort. Song Ku frowned slightly, suppressing the restlessness of her mental power and looking towards her companions. Zhuang Qinyan was an S-class mental power awakener, experiencing the least impact. There was hardly a ripple in his eyes. Lin Yuyu, Fang Jishu, and Su Xing felt slightly uncomfortable but were within controllable limits. Only Su Cha had a more intense reaction than all of them. He clenched his fists, pressing them against the table, trembling all over. The power of the criminal record has been amplified, Zhuang Qinyan said coldly. In the underground city, the limit of the criminal record's effect was one, but in the death prison, it was almost doubled, and strengthened to ten. After a while, the invisible sound waves disappeared. Su Cha's breathing gradually calmed down, signaling to them with his eyes that everything was fine. As for Jorik, he lay on the ground with a vacant look, appearing even more foolish. Suddenly, shouts came from the entrance of the cafe, the warden is here. Sitting together was too conspicuous. Song Ku and her companions immediately stood up in unison, pretending not to know each other. Two men wearing black overcoats, exuding a different aura from regular prison guards, strolled in slowly. Song Ku focused her gaze. The person on the left was slightly shorter, and the eyes under the police hat were as cold as a snake. The nameplate on his shoulder read Shi Liang. On the right, with a red, freckled face and a bulbous nose from alcohol abuse, it seemed like he had a bad temper. His name was William White. White took a step forward, looking at Jorik lying on the ground, and the body that was covered in blood and unrecognizable. His eyes flashed with hostility as he said, You bastard. The blood-stained whip was raised high, seemingly about to strike Jorik. A short cane blocked his movement, and Shi Liang calmly said, White, he's a prisoner from the sixth floor. You have no authority to deal with him. In White's eyes, there was a sense of impending doom, for the third time, this bastard has attacked my prisoner for the third time. Shi Liang, since you can't control your dog, why don't you just throw him down to the seventh floor? I'll teach him a lesson for you. Shi Liang sneered, no need. Song Ku took small steps backward, retreating to the inmate who had just spoken. They muttered to each other. Jorik always causes trouble whenever he comes out. Why, why not just let White deal with him? Hey, that guy's surname she can't let him go. Jorik's family is very wealthy, they contribute a lot of money every time they visit, he's like a golden goose laying eggs. Even if he causes trouble, he's only pressed down to the sixth floor. This was an unexpected discovery. So, different floor wardens couldn't interfere with each other. Song Ku thought to herself as she lowered her gaze. Shi Liang looked around at the inmates watching the commotion. Wherever he looked, the voices disappeared without a trace. The inmates were afraid of him, avoiding his gaze. Shi Liang raised his voice, today's activity time is over. Everyone, return to your respective floors immediately. 
Following the crowd, Song Ku walked towards the exit, suddenly feeling a chill down her spine. She turned around, and Shi Liang's cold gaze lingered on her and Su Cha for a moment longer.